Hi guys. I would like to invite you to the audiobook service where we upload more than 300 hours of different audiobooks a week, link in details in the video description. Chapter 181 Bill smiled bitterly and shook his head, and said, There are some rumors, but I think the goblins are mainly testing, and... After a brief pause, he continued helplessly, The mysterious man can provide the freedom that the goblins dream of. This it's the most exciting promise for fairies, and it's impossible for us to promise freedom to fairies. Bill works at Gringotts Bank and often interacts with goblins, most of Gringotts employees are goblins, so he is best suited to spy on goblins. Yes, there were many wars between wizards and goblins in ancient times. We finally won, but we also paid a price of countless blood. Professor McGonagall sighed, so, how is it possible that in the new era, we will bring our ancestors together again. Are all our efforts in vain? Xia Ran nodded slightly. Indeed, the war between wizards and goblins was protracted. The wizards finally won, completely suppressing the goblins and restricting their freedom. Although they controlled Gringotts, the goblins actually had no other rights. As the younger generation, how can they turn a blind eye to the struggles and bloodshed of countless ancestors? Voldemort can do things regardless of the interests of wizards because in his eyes, only he is the most important. Other wizards and goblins are irrelevant, but Xia Ran and the others cannot. Moreover, the goblins' desire for freedom has never stopped. This can be seen from the goblin rebellions that have occurred many times in history. Try your best, Dumbledore said. However, Bill, you can't show your attitude too obviously. We must have our own personnel in Gringotts. Yeah, I understand. Bill nodded. After talking about the regular tasks, it is now the turn of the most important topic of today's meeting. The atmosphere in the room seemed to be a little more solemn. So, Dumbledore, what do you think about the Ministry of Magic and Fudge? Sirius asked. He had previously talked to Xia Ran about the Ministry of Magic and agreed with Xia Ran's view. He decided be the first to stand up. What about you? Sirius smiled and said, the leadership of the Ministry of Magic has become corrupt, there is no need to keep them. You want to kill them? Tonk said in horror. How is that possible? Sirius asked, it's just that people like Fudge no longer have any need to stay in the leadership of the Ministry of Magic, and they should all step down. I agree with Sirius' statement. Xia Ran said, Fudge continues to serve as the Minister of Magic. Dementor attacks such as the Quidditch World Cup will only happen one after another. Instead of letting Fudge hold us back, we have to make there are many things that will make Voldemort happy, so why not just strike first and capture Fudge? He smiled coldly and said, for those people whose souls were sucked at the World Cup camp, Fudge must bear at least 20% of the blame for their death. He should go to Azkaban prison. That will be the most difficult thing for Fudge in the rest of his life. Great place to stay. Isn't it a bit too much? Lu Ping frowned. Past? Xia Ran sneered and said, then who are the more than 30 people who died to talk to? If Fudge took our reminder seriously, he would not even hold the Quidditch World Cup, or hand over the right to host it. If it were given to other countries, there would be a high probability that such a tragedy would not happen. I think it's best to kill Fudge directly. Sirius said, noticing the eyes of everyone looking at him, he shrugged his shoulders and said, it's okay not to kill him, sending him to Azkaban is a must. Moody gave his crutch a heavy tap and said, I agree. The blue magic eyes in his eyes turned, and he said in a deep voice, at the critical moment, you can't procrastinate or be long-winded. Just do what you have to do. If Cornelius Fudge makes a mistake, then step down. We don't have time to give him a chance. He makes amends. Now Xia Ran, Sirius, and Moody are supporting it, and no one else has expressed their stance yet. Dumbledore said tiredly, what do you think? Snape chuckled lightly and said, Xia Ran's suggestion makes some sense. Indeed, Fudge, a pure politician with no ability, is not qualified to be the leader of the wizarding world. But the problem is. If Fudge now that he has stepped down, who should come to power? Although he questioned it, he actually agreed to Xia Rant's proposal, 
and he gave Xia Ran and the others a chance to explain clearly their subsequent plans and intentions. Otherwise, others would inevitably be suspicious and hesitant, and they might not succeed in the end. It's very simple. Xia Ran said, pointed at Kingsley and said, isn't Kingsley a very good candidate? Me? Kingsley was stunned. He was still thinking, but the topic came to him. Xia Ran had his own reason for saying this, because after defeating Voldemort in the original time and space, the position of Minister of Magic was held by Kingsley, and Hermione finally succeeded him. Hermione is too young and is still in the fourth grade at Hogwarts, so Kingsley is the best choice. He can serve as the Minister of Magic in the original time and space, which shows that Kingsley has this ability, but it is just a matter of time. Just a few years ahead of schedule. Scrimgeer, the Minister of Magic who replaced Cornelius Fudge in the original time and space, is also within Xia Rant's reference range. Scrimgeer spared no effort in combating dark magic crimes. Even though he had many conflicts with Dumbledore, the two sides had not changed their stance on fighting Voldemort, but the methods they used were different. But since there is a choice, wouldn't Kingsley be the better candidate? But the only shortcoming is that although Kingsley's official position is not low, he is not the director of the Auror office after all, Scrimgeer is. I believe Kingsley can become a better minister of magic than Fudge. Xia Ran said accurately. After looking at Xia Ran, Kingsley was speechless. I'm not even that confident in myself. Well, where do you get the confidence to support me in taking over the position of Minister of Magic? Bill and Charlie looked at each other, then looked at their parents, raised their hands and said, We agree with Xia Ran's proposal. Snape clasped his hands and said softly, Kingsley. It is indeed a good choice. I also agreed to this proposal from a side perspective. Mundungus, Hagrid, and Tonks also expressed their agreement one after another. I calculated that among the people present at the meeting, Xia Ran, Alastair, Bill, Charlie, Dunge, Hagrid, Tonks, and Sirius wanted to say Snevellus, but thought about it it is not easy to cause internal conflicts at this time, so he immediately changed his mind, who? A total of nine of us agreed. Dumbledore, only your opinion is left. Remus, what about you? Lupin nodded slowly. Okay, that's ten people. Sirius clapped his hands. Professor McGonagall frowned. Judging from the current situation, only she, Dumbledore, and the Weasleys had yet to express their opinions. Seeing that Dumbledore was still hesitating, Xia Ran said, Dumbledore, the tragedy at the Quidditch World Cup camp happened once is enough. None of us want it to happen again, but if Fudge continues to lead the wizarding world, it will he comprehensively suppressed us and ignored Voldemort's strategy. Do you think this kind of tragedy will really only happen once? I don't believe it anyway. Xia Ran said and shook her head. Chapter, 182 Dumbledore, what do you think? Xia Ran asked at the end. Dumbledore remained silent, with a thoughtful look on his face. No one spoke anymore, everyone was equally silent, only looking at Xia Ran or Dumbledore. Kingsley felt very strange, why did my client have no sense of existence at all? Xia Ran didn't say much. He had already said what he needed to say. Now he just had to wait for Dumbledore's decision. So, what would Dumbledore make in the end? After a long while, Dumbledore smiled bitterly and said, Okay, you win, Xia Ran, yes, I agree. As soon as this statement came out, many people present were slightly surprised. If Dumbledore was behind this matter, it would be almost foolproof, but it still had to be guarded against the Dark Wizards being aware of it. Many people were thoughtful. Xia Ran smiled and said, Dumbledore, you won't regret it. Fudge must not see the future of the magical world as clearly as we do. He was quite sure of this. After all, Fudge only cares about fighting against Dumbledore, he is a pure blood wizard anyway, so how can he care about the dangerous state of the wizarding world? I hope so. Dumbledore was a man who had gone through many storms after all. He quickly regained his composure, looked at Kingsley, and said, Kingsley, you may need to pay more attention in the future, try your best. Sigh, now you'd better keep a low profile to avoid getting into other people's eyes. 
He also has great trust and respect for the candidate chosen by Xia Ran for the Minister of Magic, Kingsley Shacklebolt. He is a member of the Auror Office and is directly under Tonks. He is far away from the Auror Office. The position of director is only one step away. It can also be seen from this aspect that Kingsley's personal ability is indeed outstanding. After all, Auror is not something that ordinary wizards can serve, let alone a leader and general of the Auror Office. You are thinking of me now. Kingsley glanced at Xia Ran resentfully. As the person involved, he hadn't even had time to say a word. Ha! Huh. Okay, Kingsley, this is a great thing, be happy. Sirius laughed. Xia Ran just spread her hands. Kingsley was very depressed. Indeed, this was a great good thing for him. Even though the risks were not small, as an auror, he was faced with risks. It was a common occurrence and it did not scare him. Withdraw. But, why didn't Xia Ran and Dumbledore think of asking me first? Of course, he also knew the temperaments of Xia Ran and Dumbledore, what rights and prestige they had. In fact, neither of them valued it at all. Dumbledore valued peace and tranquility, while Xia Ran seemed to value her own strength very much. Kingsley is not sure. Although he has known Xia Ran for more than ten years, he really doesn't know Xia Ran too deeply. Anyway, he only needs to be sure that if he really becomes the Minister of Magic, neither Dumbledore nor Sharon will interfere too much with his governance. Xia Ran indeed values his own strength more. His biggest goal is to advance to level 7 and become a powerful wizard at the legendary level. Minister of Magic. Can it help him increase his magic level? Cannot. Eh, that's not right. Xia Ran suddenly had a thought in his mind. There are a lot of good things in the Ministry of Magic. After all, it is the official organization of the British magical world. If he had the opportunity to come into contact with many ancient objects that have gone through history. Xia Ran's heart suddenly pounded. To him, those are all force points. This means that his magic power and knowledge level have increased. But now that the proposal has been passed, there is no way he can withdraw it again. Besides, he really doesn't want to be the Minister of Magic, which is a waste of time, effort, and unflattering. With that time and energy, wouldn't it be better if he spent it on meditation and reading magic books? Anyway, he doesn't necessarily need to be the Minister of Magic to get access to those things. Can he just find an excuse and ask for a approval slip? He only needed to touch the ancient magic item containing force points for one second to absorb the force points. There was no way to pluck the wool back and forth for this kind of thing. The force points were certain and would be gone after being sucked away. This matter cannot be rushed and must be carefully planned. Lu Ping said, mysterious people and death eaters are lurking in the dark. If our methods are too rough, it will easily lead to an unstable situation and give the dark wizards too many opportunities. Take advantage of the opportunity. Yes, let's take a long-term view. Professor McGonagall spoke up and said, it is best to keep people's perception of fudge to the lowest point, so that when the new minister of magic comes to power, it will be welcomed by everyone, and no one will have any objections. His prestige has almost dropped. Sirius sneered. The Dementor incident and the Azkaban incident have caused many people who originally supported Fudge to return to a wait-and-see state. Not enough. Xia Ran shook his head and said, after all, Fudge has been the Minister of Magic for more than ten years. People are accustomed to Fudge appearing as the Minister of Magic, unless. There is another major mistake. No. Dumbledore said, the price of everything is the lives of innocent people. We cannot use this as a threat to coerce the people to force Fudge to abdicate. Otherwise, how will we be different from the Dark Wizards? This is something that the members of the Order of the Phoenix are unwilling to do. Even if they may not be required to take the initiative to do anything, they just stand by and watch at critical moments, but this is not their philosophy. Why do they want Fudge to step down? Isn't it just to better integrate the power of the magical world to fight against the Dark Wizards under Voldemort's leadership? Of course, Xia Ran couldn't agree with this approach. Without the same philosophy, they cannot become comrades in the same trenches. There is no need to stand by and let the Dark Wizard run rampant. 
Xia Ran said with a smile and said, we just need to pretend. You mean? Sirius's eyes lit up, we pretend to be a dark wizard to create an incident? But what if there are casualties? Xia Ran immediately waved his hand and said, no casualties are needed. Seeing the confused expressions on everyone's faces, he smiled and said, what do you think would happen to the magic world if the mysterious man appeared in public? Everyone's expressions suddenly became strange. Voldemort. The second generation Dark Lord, the super dark wizard. Impersonate him. Anyway, we are not alarmists. Xia Ran shrugged and said with a smile, we all know that the mysterious man has indeed been resurrected. Pretending to be him will only remind people in the magic world that the current situation is not safe. There is no peace and stability, and there are terrifying dark wizards lurking in the dark, waiting to riot and kill at any time. We don't think this is fake, do we? The mysterious man will be angry when he finds out, because someone dares to impersonate him. Xia Ran glanced around and said, What do you think of this idea? The person pretending to be the mysterious man does not need to do anything more, or even say a word. He only needs to be dark and cold. He will appear with Dumbledore. The imposter can just disapparate immediately, and no one will be able to find out the clues. Well, of course, except for the mysterious man himself. He added. Chapter, 183. Regarding the method proposed by Xia Ran, everyone looked quite strange. Impersonating Voldemort. This is so bold. How about it, isn't this a good idea? Xia Ran grinned. Great. Hagrid was the first to give a thumbs up and praised, Xia Ran, just pretend to be a mysterious person, you happen to be strong enough. Xia Ran's face suddenly turned dark. Hagrid, are you cheating on me? To impersonate Voldemort, there is no doubt that one must be strong enough. Originally, Dumbledore was the best choice. He would not lose to Voldemort. Unfortunately, when the fake Voldemort appeared, Dumbledore had to show up immediately to force away the fake Voldemort, so this matter only happened. Let the rest of the Order of the Phoenix take on the responsibility. Xia Ran felt that she was still a little behind. Ahem. He coughed lightly and said, I'm too far away from the mysterious man. In terms of magic power, don't I think Mad Eye is just right? Moody's blue magic eyes turned, locked on Xia Ran, and said calmly, You are no worse than me, Xia Ran, and you are still young. I think you are the best choice. Yes, Xia Ran, just go ahead. Lu Ping said with a smile. It happened to be your suggestion, Kingsley said with a smile. Xia Ran's expression froze, and she was extremely depressed. Mad Eye Moody was jealous of his enemies. He was also the number two figure in the Order of the Phoenix. He was more powerful than Professor McGonagall and Snape. He was obviously the best person to pretend to be Voldemort. Good choice. Are you guys working together to trick me? He glanced at everyone. The expressions of a group of people were very sincere, as if they were digging into their hearts. Okay, stop making trouble. Dumbledore stopped everyone's actions and said, who will pretend to be Voldemort? We will talk about this later. There is no need to rush it. Our goal now is to prepare for the upcoming Triwizard Tournament. Everyone's expressions suddenly straightened up and their expressions calmed down. The Triwizard Tournament. Bose batons is fine, but Durmstrang. Kingsley said, there are a lot of dark wizards coming out of that place. Xia Ran noticed that Dumbledore and Snape looked at each other vaguely. Something to do with Voldemort? He thought thoughtfully. The current principle of Durmstrang seemed to have been a death eater. When Voldemort fell more than ten years ago, in order to escape from prison, he reported many death eaters. I'm afraid Voldemort there, he didn't dare to go back. In the original time and space, he finally died at the hands of Voldemort or the death eater after several months of absconding. It doesn't matter. Dumbledore waved his hand and said, Karkaroff dares and cannot turn to Voldemort because of what he has done. Although he is not trustworthy, at least you don't have to worry too much. I know that guy, Moody said coldly, I caught him, but he got away with it in the end. He did a lot of credit, didn't he? Bill said, I mean, he confessed so many people, 
he should have saved the Ministry of Magic a lot of time and energy, right? That was his struggle and effort to save his life and not go to Azkaban prison. Mr. Weasley said, but he was not put in prison because he confessed too many dark wizards back then. I think after the mysterious man returns, I am afraid he will not be happy to see the former traitor as the principal of the magic school, with a high position. The Death Eaters who were betrayed by him must also be very angry. Hey, let's put it this way, Karkaroff is a good bait. If he can lure Death Eaters or even mysterious people. Xia Ran pondered. Dumbledore thought for a while and said, forget it, since the Ministry of Magic has acquitted Karkaroff, and he has paid for his mistakes and contributed to defeating the Dark Wizard, we cannot use him as a criminal. Use it as bait. Xia Ran was non-committal. The first event of the Triwizard Tournament is dragons. Take away the dragon eggs. After a while, we should collectively control the dragons and come to Hogwarts. Charlie said, he raised dragons in Romania, and he also unlike his brother Bill, who was ready to resign and return to England, he loved the work of raising dragons, which could only be achieved in Romania. Gringotts England where Bill works also has one. Gringotts Bank in Diagon Alley has existed for who knows how many years. Besides, he believed that the Order of the Phoenix also needed a member to collect intelligence abroad. By the way, Charlie, when will you return to Romania? Sirius asked. Charlie replied, just these two days, Romania is too far away from Hogwarts, the Dragon Farm needs a lot of preparations in advance, and many people will be needed to help along the way. Some wizard officials from the Ministry of Magic will accompany them. Be careful, and remember to inform us if there is any news. Lu Ping said. Xia Ran suddenly remembered a question. Dumbledore, will the Goblet of Fire be tampered with? He asked. Moody, disguised as Barty Crouch Jr. In the original time and space, enchanted the Goblet of Fire, causing Harry to be selected and become the non-existent third person. The four warriors of the magic school must prevent such a situation from happening this time. Voldemort is lurking in the dark, and as Harry Potter has a special relationship with him, it is not a wise choice to rush into the Triwizard Tournament. What's more, Harry actually has not reached the age limit set by Dumbledore. This time, no one is secretly controlling Harry's fate. It is a good situation that he will not be the second warrior of Hogwarts. To be honest, the current fourth-year Harry is definitely no match for the sixth-year Cedric Diggory. I will check carefully. Dumbledore nodded. After the Order of the Phoenix meeting, Xia Ran, Lupin, and Mundungus had dinner at the Black Mansion, everyone else left early, Creature, as a house elf, his cooking skills are indeed nothing to say. After returning home, Xia Ran only roughly packed her things, fed the owl, in fact, it also went out to hunt for food on its own, and then went to bed. Tomorrow is the first day of school, and she hopes nothing unusual will happen. At noon the next day, Xia Ran left Fremont Manor and arrived at her office in Hogwarts Castle via the Fleur network. Although she had not been back for several months, she was still as tidy as new, and she was clearly well fed. The elf cleans from time to time. If Hermione knew about it, I'm afraid she would reprimand her again. Xia Ran thought to herself. In order to protect the rights and interests of house elves, Hermione established an organization during the summer vacation, called S. W., which means the Society for the Promotion of House Elves' Rights. She also gave an explanation to everyone at the borough, hoping that they would pay attention to house elves. Elves, and work to change the bad situation of house elves. However, to join this association, you need to spend two silver coins to purchase a badge, and Xia Ran also bought one. But he forgot where he lost the badge. The rights and interests of house elves cannot be changed by these few people. Unless the Ministry of Magic, as an official organization, makes explicit legal provisions, everything else is false. After all, those who can have house elves are ancient wizarding families. Pure blood families such as the Weasley family do not have a house elf. Xia Ran didn't go downstairs until evening and arrived at the auditorium. Chapter 184. Heavy rain. When Xia Ran walked downstairs, she heard a familiar voice. She turned around and saw Sybil Trelawney, 
the professor of divination class, shaking out the brightly colored robe she was wearing and speaking in what she thought was the most beautiful way. Go downstairs gracefully. Professor Trelawney. Ah, it turns out to be Professor Fremont. Professor Trelawney said with an expression as if he had just seen Sia Ran, I read your interview report in the Quibbler, yes, I, I also subscribe to that newspaper. Even though a lot of the stuff is boring, such as the harassment bug, you are so brave, blatantly making up the Minister of Magic. Sia Ran raised her eyebrows and replied, Is that considered an arrangement? It's just telling the truth. But she was thinking in her heart, because you are bold to speak out like this. If you know what we are planning now, wouldn't you be frightened and faint immediately? Past. It was raining heavily outside, the sky was dark, and carriages began to appear at the end of the line of sight. The card is being pulled by a thestral. How can such an ominous creature appear openly in front of the students? Professor Trelawney frowned. Sia Ran looked sideways and saw carriages approaching. The one pulling the carriage was the thestral, a magical animal that only those who have seen death can look directly at. Because of this, the thestral often regarded as an ominous creature by wizards. Thestrals had no flesh at all on their bodies, and their black fur stuck tightly to their skeletons. Every bone was clearly visible. Their heads looked a bit like the heads of fire dragons. Their eyes without pupils were white and stared straight ahead. Wings sprouted from the ridge between the Thestral's shoulder bones big, black, tough wings that seemed indestructible and looked like giant bats. It's not their fault. Professor Flittick said as he took small steps downstairs. Death is an inevitable destination, and none of us can be exempted from it. This does not mean that it is unlucky. Humph, whatever you say. Professor Trelawney hummed, turning around and entering the auditorium. Professor Flittick looked at Sia Ran and said, Long time no see, Sia Ran, are you okay? I see you made a big fuss. Sia Ran just shrugged her shoulders. Come on, let's go in, the students will be arriving soon. Professor Flittick smiled. Sia Ran sat in her chair. Several teachers were already sitting there, chatting to themselves. After a while, screams rang out in the foyer outside the auditorium, as if the students had been frightened. Then came Professor McGonagall's roar, Peeves. Peeves. Give it to me right now. Come down. It turns out that Peeves, the ghost from Hogwarts, is causing trouble. The students screamed uncontrollably, pushed each other, and poured into the auditorium. Their bodies were covered with rainwater, and they looked like drowned rats. They looked so miserable. Sia Ran was secretly glad that fortunately I was a teacher and didn't need to take that train. Peeves. Get down now. Professor McGonagall's roar passed into the auditorium. I didn't do anything. Peeves chuckled. Sia Ran vaguely saw him through the door of the auditorium as he fired another water bomb at several senior girls. The girls screamed in fear and rushed into the auditorium. They're already wet anyway, right? Hey, little kid. Give me a shot. Peeves picked up another water bomb and aimed it at a group of lower level students who had just come in. I'm going to call the headmaster. Professor McGonagall threatened loudly, I'm warning you, Peeves. Peeves stuck out his tongue, threw the last few water bombs into the air, and then swooped up the marble stairs, laughing crazily. The group of junior students below were in bad luck, and they all became drowned rats again. Okay, let's go quickly. Professor McGonagall said sternly to the students who were soaked in the rain. Enter the auditorium, hurry up, don't block the students behind. They had no choice but to enter the auditorium with sad faces. Fortunately, the magnificent auditorium soothed the injured hearts of the junior students. For the new semester banquet, the auditorium was specially decorated. Hundreds of candles were suspended above the tables, making the gold plates and goblets shine. Shine. The four long college tables were already filled with chattering students, and at the top of the auditorium, there was a fifth table. Professors and teachers such as Xia Ran were sitting here, sitting on the inside, facing their students. This year's events. Hey, to be honest, I can't wait. Professor Flittick said, you know which event it is. He was talking about the Triwizard Tournament. 
I wonder who the champion of Hogwarts will be. I guess. Xia Ran chuckled, maybe it will be Cedric Diggory. Cedric? Professor Sprout from the herbology class smiled slightly and said, he is indeed a very talented student, and he also has a very bright future. Cedric Diggory is a student of Hufflepuff. As the dean of Hufflepuff College, Professor Sprout knows the outstanding students of his college very well. When Xia Ran was still studying at Hogwarts, Professor Sprout was the herbology professor at Hogwarts and the head of Hufflepuff. The other professors also nodded slightly. Indeed, in terms of the possibility of becoming a warrior, Cedric Diggory has the best chance. If Harry Potter were two years older, he might still be able to compete with Cedric. Now, Harry is still a little behind, as is Hermione and other outstanding students. By the way, hasn't our defense against the dark arts professor arrived yet? Professor Sinistra from the astronomy class asked. On the staff table, except for Professors Hagrid and McGonagall who went out to greet the new students, there was only one the empty chair was obviously the defense against the dark arts professor's seat. Dumbledore sat in the middle of the table, with long flowing silver white hair and a silver white beard that shone in the candlelight. His luxurious dark green robe was embroidered with many stars and moons, looking mysterious and ethereal, full of excitement. A mysterious and unpredictable feeling. The fingertips of Dumbledore's two slender hands touched together, his chin rested on the fingertips, and his eyes looked at the ceiling above through the half-moon lenses, the ceiling was enchanted and looked just like the outside. The sky was exactly the same, with heavy wind and rain, and black and purple clouds rolling above. As there was a burst of thunder outside, a fork-shaped lightning flashed across the ceiling at the same time, as if deep in thought, until Professor Sinistra asked a question, only to wake him up. Alaster, he might be late because he has something to do. Xia Ran moved the golden plate and said, Whenever Hagrid comes with the new students, I'm so hungry that I can't wait. As soon as he finished speaking, the door of the auditorium, which had been closed just now, opened, and everyone immediately fell silent. Professor McGonagall led a row of first-year freshmen to the top of the auditorium and stopped not far from the staff table. Xia Ran almost couldn't help laughing when she looked at these first-year freshmen, but she felt a sweeping gaze and immediately held it back. Chapter 185 Xia Ran looked at the pitiful appearance of the new students and couldn't help but sigh to herself, Hogwarts is so stingy. They don't even give them a new ship. Well, that's a tradition, so it can't be abolished. According to the tradition of Hogwarts, the freshmen got off the Hogwarts Express and took a boat across the lake to the square outside the castle. Because of the bad weather this year, with heavy rain and thunder, all the freshmen I was soaked in the rain and looked like a drowned rat. I was so pitiful that there was no dry place on my body. It seemed that they did not cross the lake by boat, but swam directly from the lake, and even fought with water monsters on the way. The reason why Hogwarts has such a tradition is because more than a thousand years ago, the four giants of Hogwarts, Helga Hufflepuff, Godric Gryffindor, Salazar Slytherin and Rowena Ravenclaw rode a boat across the lake and arrived at the current location of Hogwarts Castle, establishing the oldest magic school in Europe. Since then, it has become a tradition for freshmen to take a boat across the lake. When Xia Ran first came to Hogwarts, Hagrid also took him across the lake by boat, but he had better luck. He remembered that the sky was clear and the moon was bright, but there was no such heavy rain. The freshmen stood in a row along the staff table, stopped, and faced the senior classmates in the school. They were cold, hungry, and all nervous and shivering, except for a few children. At this time, Professor McGonagall took out the sorting hat and placed it on a three-legged stool. The first-year students were all stunned when they looked at the tattered, dirty, and patched hat. Others in the auditorium also looked at it, and for a moment, there was silence in the auditorium. Suddenly, a crack near the brim opened like a human mouth, and the sorting hat suddenly sang. A long time ago I had a new hat. Hogwarts hadn't been built yet. The four founders of Noble Academy thought they would never part ways. The same goal unites them. Each other's wishes are so consistent. To build the best magic school in the world. Let their knowledge be passed on and continued. We will build schools together and teach together. The four friends were very determined. 
however, they never dreamed that. One day they will be divided from each other. What kind of friends are there in this world? Better than Slytherin and Gryffindor. Unless you count another pair of close friends. Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw. How could such a good thing go wrong? How could such a friendship be written off in one stroke? Alas, I witnessed this sad story with my own eyes. So I can tell you about it here. Slytherin said, the students we teach. Their bloodline must be the purest. Ravenclaw said, the students we teach. Their intelligence must be superior to others. Gryffindor said, the students we teach. You must be brave and courageous, regardless of your own safety. Hufflepuff said, I have many people to teach. And treat them all equally. These differences emerged for the first time. It caused a small quarrel. Each of the four founders owns a college. Only recruit the boys they want. Slytherin recruits wizards like himself. Pure blood, full of tricks. Only those younger generations with the sharpest minds. Only then can you listen to the teachings of Ravenclaw. If anyone is bold and adventurous. He was admitted into the academy by the brave Gryffindor. The rest were taken in by kind-hearted Hufflepuffs. She taught them all her skills. In this way, the four colleges and their founders maintain a strong and sincere friendship. In those many happy years. Teaching at Hogwarts is enjoyable and harmonious. But then slowly a split appeared. And fueled by our shortcomings and fears. The four colleges are like four stone pillars. He once held our school firmly in place. Now they are against each other and have constant disputes. Everyone wants to monopolize power. There was a time. The school seemed to be dying. Countless noises, countless fights. Former good friends turned against each other. Then finally one morning. The old Slytherin suddenly ran away. Although the dispute had subsided by then. He still left us in despair. Only three of the four founders remain. From then on, the situation of the four colleges. I no longer want to be like what I imagined in the past. Live in harmony and be united. Now the sorting hat is in front of you. You all know the origin of the matter. I divide you into each student. Because my duties cannot be changed. But this year I want to say a few more words. Please listen carefully to my new song. Though I am destined to divide you. But I'm afraid that's not the right thing to do. Although I must fulfill my duties. Divide the new students each year into four parts. But I worry about such classification. Would lead to the collapse I feared. Oh, know the danger, read the signs. The lessons of history give us warnings. Our Hogwarts is in danger. Enemies outside the school are watching. We must be united internally. Otherwise everything will fall apart from within. I have told you plainly. I have sounded the alarm for you. Now let's start sorting. After the hat finished singing, he stopped moving, and there were scattered applause everywhere, mixed with whispers. Throughout the auditorium, students were whispering to the people sitting next to them, talking in lowered voices. Even the professors seemed embarrassed. Xia Ran didn't pay much attention and just looked at the sorting hat repeatedly. If I absorb the sorting hat's force points. The sorting hat has a full 150 force points. Xia Ran felt that she could definitely use this to push her magic level to level 6, which was the level of the four deans of Hogwarts. Alas. He suddenly sighed secretly in his heart. The sorting hat is a magical item with intelligence. What if the force points are sucked away and the sorting hat's ability is affected? Although according to his research and past experience of absorbing force points, the absorption of force points will not have a big impact on the magic item, but this does not mean that it will disappear. Dead objects may not be a problem, such as the sorting hat. Such spiritual items still require extreme caution. It looks a little different. Professor Trelawney whispered, looking at the sorting hat, the sorting hat also has language ability. Or does it know something from the principal? It's not like this has never happened before. Professor Sprout whispered, more than 10 or 20 years ago, when the mysterious man gained power, 
the sorting hat would warn us every year. Usually, the sorting hat only describes the different qualities valued by the four houses of Hogwarts and its own tasks for sorting new students, and rarely openly gives advice to the school and students. When this kind of situation occurred in the past, it was when Voldemort was at his peak. However, the professors had already known about Dumbledore's warning and believed in Dumbledore's words, so they didn't think it was anything. However, the students were greatly surprised. Chapter 186 The sorting has begun. Xia Ran said, still staring at the sorting hat. Before the teachers and students could continue to talk too much, Professor McGonagall unfolded a large roll of parchment. Whoever's name I call will put the hat on his head and sit on the stool. Professor McGonagall said to the first-year students, when the hat announces the house, go and sit at the corresponding table. Stuart Ackley. A boy walked forward. It could be seen that he was shaking from head to toe. He picked up the sorting hat, put it on his head, and sat on the stool. Ravenclaw. The sorting hat shouted without seeming to think. Stuart Ackley took off his hat and hurried to a seat at the Ravenclaw table, where everyone at the table welcomed him with applause. The sorting ceremony went quickly, and the number of first-year freshmen quickly dwindled, while warm applause sounded from time to time on the four long tables, welcoming another little wizard to their college. There is no doubt that Hufflepuff has the most new students, and this has always been the norm. This is clear from the lyrics sung by the sorting hat. Slytherin said, the students we teach must have the purest blood. Ravenclaw said, the students we teach must be intellectually superior to others. Gryffindor said, the students we teach must be brave and courageous, regardless of their own safety. Hufflepuff said, I will teach many people and treat them all equally. Gryffindor chooses brave and fearless people, Slytherin chooses people with pure blood and ambition, Ravenclaw chooses people with smart minds and outstanding intelligence, but Hufflepuff never chooses students based on any characteristics. As long as they are students, she will accept them, treat them equally, and teach them carefully. There is no distinction between education. Xia Ran secretly thought. He himself graduated from Hufflepuff House. Of course, in his opinion, the one he respects the most among the four giants of Hogwarts is Helga Hufflepuff. The common room of Hufflepuff House is not far from the underground kitchen of the house elves. When Xia Ran was still studying at Hogwarts, she would often sneak into the kitchen in the middle of the night to find food. Now that he is a professor, he doesn't need to be so sneaky. But Hufflepuff's golden cup. Xia Ran frowned. It was a relic belonging to Hufflepuff. It must also contain ancient magic items with force points, but it was made into a horcrux by Voldemort. The original time and space appeared in Gringotts in Diagon Alley, in the vault of the Lestrange family. Sirius's cousin Bellatrix Black married Rodolphus Lestrange and changed her name to Bellatrix Lestrange. Well, if I remember correctly, Bellatrix and Voldemort seem to have a daughter, her name is Delphire Riddle. Sia Ran said secretly, looking over Rodolphus Lestrange's head. It's a prairie. Does he know that he was cheated by his so-called master? Finally, the sorting ceremony ended, and with the shout that Kevin Whitby was sorted into Hufflepuff House, there was fierce applause on the Hufflepuff table. Professor McGonagall packed up the sorting hat and the stool and took them away. Xia Ran was not yet determined to take action on the sorting hat and absorb the force points, so she simply looked away and kept out of sight. Dumbledore stood up, looked at all the students with a smile, and opened his arms in a welcoming gesture. I only have two words to say to you. Dumbledore's loud voice echoed in the auditorium, eat. Every plate on the five tables was suddenly and magically filled with food. Xia Ran put a lot of her favorite things on her plate. Professor Fremont, would you like some mashed potatoes and steak? Hagrid said in a deep voice. Let's have some mashed potatoes. Xia Ran handed over the plate. The heavy rain was still pounding heavily on the tall, dark windows. Another burst of thunder made the glass windows rattle. A lightning bolt flashed on the hazy ceiling, illuminating the golden plates. The remaining first course of food quickly disappeared, and in the blink of an eye the plate was filled with various desserts. Xia Ran didn't like sweets very much, so she ate the food on the plate happily and ignored the dessert in front of her. 
Professor Trelawney and Professor Sprout seemed to like it very much. Finally, the desserts were mostly cleared away, and the last remaining crumbs disappeared from the plate, which was once again clean and shiny. Xia Ran burped and sighed, the food at Hogwarts is better. At this time, Dumbledore stood up again, and the buzzing voices in the hall suddenly stopped. Only the howling of the wind and the pounding of heavy rain could be heard outside. Okay, now we are all full and full. Dumbledore looked at everyone with a smile and said, I must ask everyone to pay attention again. I have a few announcements to make. Mr. Filch, the administrator, would like me to tell you that this year, several more items are prohibited in the castle. They are the Screaming Ball, the Wolf Fong Flying Saucer and the Combo Boomerang. The entire list includes approximately 403 17 items can be seen in Mr. Filch's office, and those who are interested can check them out. As he spoke, the corners of Dumbledore's mouth twitched a few times. Filch's prohibited list is too outrageous. But he continued, as before, I want to remind everyone that students are not allowed to enter the Forbidden Forest on the other side of the venue, and in Hogsmeade Village, no students below the third grade are allowed to visit. After a pause, he glanced at all the wizards in the room, and said with a solemn expression, Excuse me, I have to continue to say a few words, before Voldemort. In an instant, countless people shivered, and the entire auditorium went cold. Today when we return, our four colleges must unite and resolutely fight against the dark wizard camp. But that is a matter for adult wizards. As students, you should still focus on your studies, especially those in fourth grade and above. Deng Bulido said. Xia Ran glanced at it and found that most of the Gryffindor students were full of fighting spirit and seemed eager to fight against the dark wizards the Slytherin students basically sneered. Many of them may have someone in their family who is a Death Eater and follows them. Voldemort, of course, would not take kindly to this. Ravenclaw House has an indifferent attitude. What is a white wizard or a black wizard? Is it important to have knowledge? The Hufflepuffs looked at Dumbledore eagerly, as if expecting him to finish his speech and go back to sleep. In addition, I would like to tell you with great regret that the College Cup Quidditch competition will not be held this year. Dumbledore continued. What? Are you kidding me, Principal? Many students immediately came back to their senses from the strange and silent atmosphere just now, and shouted loudly, mostly Quidditch players from various colleges, as well as loyal Quidditch game spectators. Harry, Fred, and George all stared at Dumbledore silently with their mouths wide open, as if they were too surprised to speak. Chapter 187 this is because there is a big event that starts in October and runs throughout the school year, which takes up a lot of teachers' time and energy, but I'm sure you will all have a lot of fun doing it. Dumbledore faced all the students and announced, I am very pleased to announce to you that this year at Hogwarts. Boom! At this moment, a deafening thunder roared, and then the door of the auditorium was slammed open. Everyone immediately looked forward to it. A man stood in the doorway, leaning on a long cane and wrapped in a black traveling cloak. Who is he? Many people in the auditorium were whispering. Boom! Boom! The man removed his hood, revealing long gray hair, and began walking toward the staff table. This person is none other than Mad Eye Alastair Moody. It's the same opening as in the original time and space. Could it be that Moody has been replaced by Barty Crouch Jr.? Xia Ran couldn't help but secretly guess, but the possibility is very small. After all, Voldemort has been resurrected. Barty Crouch Jr. No longer needs to disguise himself as Moody and infiltrate Hogwarts. What's more, due to the news of Voldemort's return and the restart of the Order of the Phoenix, Moody is more vigilant than before. Unless Voldemort personally goes out, Barty Crouch Jr will not be able to subdue him, even if he adds one or two Death Eaters. The same goes for disciples. Because Moody's appearance was too scary, no students made any comments at this time, and they all stared at him blankly. Moody walked directly to Dumbledore and stretched out a hand. That hand was also scarred and was a medal from his former Aura career. Dumbledore shook hands with him and whispered something. Xia Ran didn't hear it clearly, but he was probably asking about something that had been arranged for Moody. Moody shook his head and answered in a low voice, still no smile. 
Dumbledore nodded slightly and motioned for Moody to take an empty seat to his right. Moody sat down, shook his head, and shook his long gray hair away from his face, then pulled a plate of sausages, raised it to his incomplete nose and smelled it. He then took out a knife from his pocket, poked one end of a sausage in, and ate it. His blue magic eyes were still turning around all the time, looking at the auditorium and the students and teachers. Please allow me to introduce our new defense against the dark arts teacher. Dumbledore broke the silence with a cheerful voice and said, Professor Moody. Normally, when a new teacher meets everyone, everyone will applaud and welcome him, but now, except for Dumbledore, Hagrid and Xia Ran, no teacher or student applauded. Xia Ran and the other three clapped their hands a few times, and found that the applause seemed lonely in the silent auditorium, so they put down their hands knowingly. The others seemed stunned by Moody's strange appearance and stared at him intently. Moody seemed unmoved by the lukewarm response. Xia Ran, please pass that thing to me. Moody said to Xia Ran, pointing to a plate in front of him that still had some food left. Xia Ran handed it over. Okay, why are you late? Xia Ran asked. Moody smelled the meat on the plate, cut some and ate, and replied, It's okay, it's been solved. I still have to ask you what you taught in the combat class. My defense against the dark arts class is a must. To teach something new, you cannot teach the same knowledge over and over again. Okay, no problem. Xia Ran nodded. And then Dumbledore cleared his throat. Ahem. He looked at the many students in front of him with a smile and said, As I just said, in the next few months, we will be very honored to host a very exciting event. This event it has not been held for over a century. I am here to tell you with great pleasure that the Triwizard Tournament will be held at Hogwarts this year. The atmosphere in the auditorium changed again, and it suddenly became noisy. You've got to be kidding me. Fred Weasley shouted. Dumbledore laughed happily and said, Are you kidding? No, I am not joking, Mr. Weasley, but since you mentioned the joke, I do know a wonderful joke about a troll and a mother. Yiksha and a little leprechaun, they both entered the same tavern. Professor McGonagall cleared her throat loudly and deliberately. Oh, it's a little inappropriate to say this now. Well, it's not appropriate. Dumbledore said, well, where did I just say it? Ah, by the way, the Triwizard Tournament. Dumbledore smiled and said, some of you still don't know what this competition is about, so I hope those who know the situation can forgive me for explaining a little here, and I allow their minds to open up for a while. Difference The Triwizard Tournament was founded about 700 years ago as a friendly competition between the three largest wizarding schools in Europe. The three schools are, Hogwarts, Bosebatons and Durmster Lang, each school selects a warrior, and then the three warriors compete in three magic projects. The Triwizard Tournament was originally held every five years, and the three schools took turns hosting it. Everyone agreed that this was a competition between young wizards from different countries. It was an excellent way for them to build friendship, but it backfired, and later the Triwizard Tournament had to be interrupted because there were so many deaths. The number of deaths. Many students, mainly the little witches, were surprised. However, most of the students were still excited and whispering among themselves. They were eager to hear the specific details of the Triwizard Tournament and were not interested in those who died more than a hundred years ago. Young people are always like this. Xia Ran shook her head and smiled when she saw this. Over the centuries, people have tried several times to revive the Triwizard Tournament. Dumbledore paused briefly before continuing, but none of them were successful. However, our Department of Magical Sports and Sports of the Ministry of Magic and the International the Department of Magical Cooperation believes that the time is ripe for another attempt. We have done a lot of work this summer to ensure that every warrior's life will not be in danger. In October, the headmasters of Bose Batons and Durmstrang will come with their carefully selected contenders, and the selection ceremony will be held on Halloween. An impartial referee will decide which students are the most qualified. Participate in the Triwizard Tournament, win honor for your school, and personally receive a thousand galleons in prize money. As Dumbledore finished speaking, the crowd became even more excited. A thousand gold galleons. I want to participate. 
I want to participate. I don't know how many students are eager to try. Goblet of Fire Xia Ran's eyes flashed. He was very interested in this thing that had carried the changes of the Triwizard Tournament for hundreds of years. Force Points He didn't even need to touch it personally to be 100% sure that the Goblet of Fire must contain Force Points. And it's definitely not low. Chapter, 188 It's Halloween, right? Xia Ran secretly made up her mind, at that time. I must find a chance to touch the Goblet of Fire. It's been a long time since he earned any force points. If Xia Ran wants to reach level 6 magic power, she still has to rely on force points, otherwise her hope will be too slim, at least in the short term. I know you are all eager to win the Triwizard Championship trophy for Hogwarts. Dumbledore said to everyone. All the Hogwarts students in the auditorium had excited faces and their eyes were shining, as if they had seen themselves becoming Hogwarts warriors and holding the Triwizard Championship trophy. There are many students who dream of becoming a Hogwarts warrior. Basically, at every table in the house, there was someone watching Dumbledore feverishly, or whispering excitedly to the usher. It wasn't until Dumbledore spoke again that the auditorium reluctantly became quiet. Due to the suspension of the Triwizard Tournament a century ago, the participating schools and the Ministry of Magic agreed that an age limit should be set for this year's competitors. Only those who are 17 years old, that is, 17 years old or above, students are only allowed to register for consideration, we feel. Dumbledore had to raise his voice because some people immediately protested angrily after hearing his speech, such as the Weasley brothers, who suddenly became angry. This measure is necessary because the events of the competition are still very difficult and dangerous. No matter how many precautions we take, it is simply impossible for students below 6th and 7th grade to cope with it. I will personally guarantee that there will be no one underage student can deceive our impartial judges and become a champion of Hogwarts. As he spoke, Dumbledore paused briefly, and his blue eyes glanced around the auditorium, especially for a moment on the dissatisfied and angry faces, with a meaningful light shining in his blue eyes. So if you are under 17, I suggest you don't waste your time applying. Delegations from Bosbatons and Durmstrang will arrive at Hogwarts in October and spend most of the school year with us. I know that while our foreign dignitaries are here, you will all be warm and friendly, and once the champion of Hogwarts is chosen, you will support him or her wholeheartedly. Okay, it's getting late now, and it's very important that you walk into class tomorrow morning refreshed and clear-headed. Go to bed, hurry up. Dumbledore sat down, turned to talk to Moody, and seemed to ask something in a low voice. The auditorium was filled with rattling and pinging noises as the students stood up one after another and rushed to a double door and entered the foyer. They can't do this. George Weasley did not follow the crowd towards the door, but stood there and glared at Dumbledore angrily, we will be seventeen next April. Why don't we give it a try? They can't stop me from participating. Fred said stubbornly, and glared at the guest of honor seat angrily, being a warrior, you can do many things that you are not allowed to do normally, and you will also have a thousand gold galleons. Here's the bonus. Yes. Ron murmured, with a dazed look on his face, yes, a thousand gold galleons. Harry is not tempted by a thousand gold galleons, he inherited his parents' inheritance, and there is a small vault under Gringotts. He may be richer than the Weasley family, but if he really becomes Hogwarts warriors. Harry quickly poked his head around and looked around, only to find that the Ravenclaw girl Chiu Zhang had already left. He suddenly felt a little regretful and hadn't said a word yet. Let's go. Hermione stood up and said, if you don't leave, we will be the only ones left here. Harry, Ron, Hermione, Fred and George began to walk towards the entrance hall. Along the way, Fred and George kept arguing about what Dumbledore would do to prevent students under the age of 17 from attending. Triwizard Tournament Who will be the impartial judge of who is a warrior? Harry asked curiously. I don't know. Fred said, but he is the person we want to deceive. I think a drop or two of age-enhancing agent will work, George. But Dumbledore knows you are not old enough, Ron said. Yeah but it's not up to him to decide who becomes the warrior. He's not a referee, isn't he? 
Fred chuckled, it sounds to me like the referee will decide who wants to participate. A school picks the best, and he doesn't care how old they are. What Dumbledore really did was to stop us from signing up. But a lot of people died. Didn't you hear what Dumbledore said? A century ago, the Triwizard Tournament had to be suspended because there were so many dead people. Hermione said in a very worried tone. At this time, they passed through a door hidden behind the tapestry and walked up a narrower staircase. Yeah, you're right, a lot of people died. Fred said nonchalantly, but that was all many years ago, right? Who cares? Besides, if there is no risk, what fun would that have? It would be boring. Hey, Ron, Harry, if we can deceive Dumbledore, do you want to participate? George said. What do you think? Ron asked Harry, it would be great if you could participate, wouldn't it? But I guess they want someone older. I don't know if we have learned enough. It's definitely not enough. Hermione vowed, otherwise Dumbledore wouldn't do the age requirement. Harry also felt hesitant. He knew that he had only a half-knowledge of many things, but if he could really become a Hogwarts warrior. His heart skipped a beat again. If. Well, if we can really hide it, it means we have a lot of knowledge, right? It can be considered as meeting the requirements, right? He said this way. Yes, very correct. Ron, Fred, and George nodded in succession. Hermione frowned and glanced at Harry. Harry deliberately didn't look at Hermione. That referee. George said thoughtfully, I think the professor must understand. Which professor do you mean to ask for advice? Fred's eyes lit up, now that we know the referee's information, we can make targeted plans. Ron said, Professor Fremont. He will tell us. Humph, don't be wishful thinking, Professor Fremont is not that kind of person. Hermione snorted. There's nothing wrong with giving it a try, right? Harry said. Snort. Hermione tossed her hair and slipped into the Gryffindor common room, ignoring the boys. Chapter 189. Indeed, as several people said, they really raised questions in Sia Rant's combat class, but they were quite restrained at first. Who can tell me what the Patronus charm is, or what type of magic it has, and what kind of magic it has? Sia Ran asked. He was teaching fourth grade students because of the Quidditch World Cup. During the Dementor attack, he decided to teach the students the Patronus charm in advance. In unison, a large number of arms were raised. Sia Ran was a little surprised. In the past, Hermione was usually the one who took the initiative, but it was rare for the group to be so enthusiastic. He looked at it and decided not to ask Hermione to get up to answer the question this time, and said, Neville, you tell me. Neville stood up nervously, raising his hands without even thinking about why. You don't have to stand up, just sit down and answer. Sia Ran chuckled. Neville sat back again and said slightly nervously, Well, Professor, the Patronus spell, the spell is to call. To call the God of Guard. It is specially used to deal with Dementors. It requires the happy memory in people's hearts as the source of magic power. Not bad. Sia Ran nodded appreciatively and said, Because of Mr. Longbottom's answer, five points for Gryffindor. Neville smiled sheepishly and happily. The Gryffindor student quietly gave a thumbs up. The Patronus charm, if done correctly, will create a Patronus. Sia Ran explained, it is the nemesis of the Dementors, well, I think you all know what kind of creatures a Dementor is, right? What happened last year, and what happened in the World Cup, the Patronus can drive away or even destroy the Dementors, or it can act like a shield and stand between you and the Dementors. After a pause, Sia Ran continued, the patron saint is a positive and happy force, which is the embodiment of the things that Dementors rely on for survival, hope, happiness, joy, and the desire to survive, but it unlike real people who can feel despair, the Dementors who feed on happy memories cannot do anything to it. However, I must remind you that the Patronus charm is a very advanced spell. Many adult wizards cannot master it. I cannot guarantee that each of you can master it. It can even be said that I will be very happy if one or two students from your two houses, Slytherin and Hufflepuff, 
can successfully master the Patronus charm. Xia Ran said. Professor, what does a Patronus look like? Harry asked curiously. Because of what happened last school year, the only student who was knocked unconscious by a Dementor, he was ridiculed by Malfoy for a long time, he was extremely eager to learn this magic spell. Originally, when he was in third grade in the original space and time, he learned the Patronus charm under the guidance of Lupin. However, due to Xia Ran, the plot changed, serious grievances were cleared, and the Dementors evacuated Hogwarts en masse. There is no need to learn the Patronus charm. Each patron saint is unique to the wizard who created it. Xia Ran said, of course, there will be some wizards who have the same patron saint, such as father and son, mother and daughter, husband and wife, brothers and sisters. He didn't say a word. Wizards who have a crush on others will also have the same patron saint as others. Regarding this, Severus Snape, the potions professor at Hogwarts, is the best. Illustration Of course, it would not look good to ask Snape. Professor, how did you change it? A little witch asked curiously. To chant a spell, you must focus everyone's thoughts on a moment that you think is particularly pleasant, so that the spell will take effect. Xia Ran explained, the patron saint is the embodiment of happy memories. There is no happy memory. Humans cannot use the Patronus charm. Okay, first think about a time when you were happy. Everyone frowned tightly, racking their brains to think of a happy moment, and many people even laughed stupidly because of it. Ahem. Xia Ran cleared her throat, woke up a group of students, and said, Okay, remember this feeling in your hearts now. The spell is. Call for divine protection. He waved his wand, and a silver-white animal jumped out from the tip of his wand and ran around the classroom, causing the students to whisper in surprise. Xia Ran withdrew her patron saint and asked, Get familiar with the spell and try to recall happy moments. Calling God to protect. All the students in the classroom began to whisper the mantra. Miss Granger, yes, you have responded. Three points for Gryffindor. Xia Ran nodded with satisfaction, and a string of silvery white mist emerged from the tip of Hermione's wand. She was the first student to respond. Hermione's face was bright red, trying not to look too proud. Mr. Potter, focus on your pleasant memories. Mr. Longbottom, read it out loud and it's still early for you to cast the spell silently. Malfoy, don't be lazy. Xia Ran walked around the classroom and returned to the podium. There was a large wardrobe beside it. Okay, stop for a moment, he said. The students stopped chanting mantras one after another. There is a bogget in this closet. I will change the image of being afraid of things in my mind. At that time, this bogget will turn into a dementor and appear in our classroom. Xia Ran said, and paused. After a pause, many people in the classroom immediately looked worried and fearful. Don't be afraid. This is not a real Dementor, it is just a transformation of Bogget, and it is also the best object for you to practice. Xia Ran said softly, then, who wants to be the first to come? He looked at the whole class. This time, no one raised their hands, even Hermione shrank her head. The bad feeling caused by the Dementors was still fresh in my mind. No one is willing to stand up. Xia Ran smiled, then I can only choose a classmate at random. He glanced around, and all the students immediately avoided his gaze, as if they were afraid that Xia Ran would call his name. In that case, let's. Mr. Neville Longbottom. Ah, uh, me? Neville was shocked and pointed at himself blankly, as if he suspected that Professor Fremont had pronounced the wrong name, such as Harry or Hermione. Everyone else breathed a sigh of relief. Don't be afraid, come up, Neville. Xia Ran said, motioning for the others to stand back and make room. Neville had no choice but to step forward with a grimace. The classmates around Neville laughed and pushed him. Get in line. Students in the back, don't snicker. After Neville, you have to come forward, no one can escape. Xia Ran said loudly, and suddenly the smiling faces of the group turned into bitter faces, and they laughed. The child disappeared without a trace. Neville suddenly felt his inner balance, took a deep breath, and walked to Xia Ran's side. Very good. 
Ran looked at Neville and said, So, Neville, are you ready? The Dementors are coming out soon. Neville nodded nervously. Chapter, 190 Very good. Ran held the wand in his right hand, raised it and tapped his head lightly. At this time, he used a clumency to deliberately change the image of the thing he was afraid of into the appearance of a Dementor, and then stood facing the big wardrobe. Neville, stand up further. Gudom. Neville swallowed and nervously took two small steps forward. So. Are you ready? Xia Ran asked with a chuckle. Okay, Professor. Neville said, clenching his wand so tightly that he was sweating. From the looks of it, he seemed to be trying to recall pleasant memories. Xia Ran said with relief, Don't be stressed, this is not a real Dementor, it is just a transformation of a Bogget. He said, grabbing the handle of the wardrobe and pulling hard. A Dementor slowly floated out of the cabinet. Its hooded face turned towards Neville, and a cold, mangy hand grasped the cloak. It seemed to appear in the classroom. A black hole, the light coming from the windows and doors was absorbed completely in an instant, as if it was the darkest night. The Dementors came out of the closet quietly, and only the rich darkness that swept over them showed the traces of the Dementors' existence. The group of students behind them all backed away, their faces showing fear. All the happy memories in their minds dissipated, and only the most painful and heartbreaking memories surfaced in their minds. Many students turned pale and their legs trembled, as if they were suffocating. Neville's pupils also dilated, showing a very frightened expression. He seemed to remember the tortured memories he had forgotten. The Dementors began to rapidly approach Neville, making low grunting sounds at the same time. A chill that penetrated the bone marrow enveloped Neville. Recall the happy memories and recite the incantation. Neville. Xia Ran reminded loudly. Neville woke up from a dream and shouted, Call God for protection. Call God for protection. Call God. However, both the classroom and the Dementors were disappearing, and Neville felt himself falling into a thick white mist. The painful screams of his parents echoed in his ears, as well as the wild and wanton laughter of several men and women. Look! Our Aurors and members of the Order of the Phoenix, can't they bear this little pain? Neville remembered the maniacal laughter of a woman. This woman was called Bellatrix Lay. Strange, she once personally released the Cruciatus curse on the Longbottoms, causing them to be tortured and crazy. There were several other accomplices, also laughing wildly. What a disappointment! A man's voice said disdainfully, it seems that they have no chance of knowing the whereabouts of the master. Bella, kill them? No. The woman at the beginning laughed crazily, continued to torture. I believe. To cut out the bones. Heartbreaking and bone-cutting. Ah. Another very shrill howl. Neville. Neville woke up suddenly. He lay on his back on the floor. The light in the classroom was bright again. He didn't need to ask what had just happened. Yes, no need to ask, he obviously couldn't deal with the Dementor, even if it was just a Dementor transformed by a Bogget. I'm sorry. Neville whispered, sitting up and feeling his clothes wet with cold sweat. Are you okay? Are you okay? Xia Ran asked, feeling a little guilty. When Neville was a child, he witnessed his parents being tortured and went crazy. This left him with two painful memories, just like baby Harry. During this period, he witnessed his mother being killed by Voldemort. Even though they were just babies at the time and would normally not be able to remember those scenes at all, weird creatures like Dementors can make a person recall the most painful memories. Even if those memories are forgotten by the person involved, they can still remember them. It makes the person involved think back instantly. Restore vitality. Xia Ran thought. Neville suddenly felt that his body was full of energy, and he was in a better state than he had been after breakfast this morning. Thank you, Professor. Neville said, raised his head and said, Professor, I want to try again. He stood up. Looking at Neville, whose round face was full of tenacity, Xia Ran agreed and said, Okay, don't think about the painful memories. Those are all in the past. We have to focus on the future. I think that that's what they want to see. 
He also knew the Longbottoms. Neville nodded. Don't be nervous, take your time. I actually didn't expect you to succeed in one go. Xia Ran said, facing all the students. They witnessed Neville's distorted face just now, and they all backed away again. They were leaning against the wall. If it weren't for the fact that they were not allowed to leave the classroom during class, they might have had someone run out of the classroom just now. Remember, happy memory, this is your only source of strength to fight against the Dementors. It's starting. Neville, pay attention. Xia Ran said and opened the big closet again. The Dementor reappeared in the classroom. The light dimmed instantly and the temperature dropped sharply. Calling for God's protection. Calling for God's protection. Neville's expression was firm as he kept chanting the Patronus charm. Memory, happy memory. Xia Ran's reminder voice seemed to come from far away. Neville thought of his mother's appearance two years ago when she could accurately pronounce his name, and his father's silly smile beside him. Call the gods to protect you. A huge, blurry silver-white shadow suddenly emerged from the tip of Neville's wand, hanging between him and the Dementor. Although Neville was exhausted, yes, the vitality he had just restored seemed to be far away in an instant. He left, his feet were weak, and he was not sure he could stand again. Funny. Xia Ran strode forward, waved the wand, and with a snap, the Dementor disappeared. And Neville's patron saint also disappeared, if that vague shadow can also be called a patron saint, he suddenly fell to the ground, exhausted, more tired than if he had run around the castle. Xia Ran drove the bogget back into the closet, and then said, Yes, Neville, very good. A fourth grade wizard can use the Patronus. Even if it is still very vague, it is already a very rare thing. Something happened. Neville scratched his head and smiled sheepishly. Rejuvenate. Xia Ran chanted a spell and said, Okay, Neville, go back to your classmates. Who else is willing to take the initiative to come forward? He looked at all the students. There were still almost no people raising their hands. The reason why I say it's close is because two people did raise their hands. Harry and Hermione both raised their hands, even though they looked fearful. Well. Hermione, come up and give it a try first. Xia Ran said. Okay, Professor. Hermione gripped her wand, took a deep breath, and stepped forward. Come on, Hermione. Neville whispered, returning to the crowd. Hermione forced a smile. Chapter, 191 Are you ready, Miss Granger? Xia Ran asked. Hermione nodded nervously. He opened the big closet again, and the Dementor walked out of it, bringing darkness and coldness. It made people feel cold all over, and they shivered with the coldness coming from the heart. Holy Guard! Guard! Hermione pointed her wand at the Dementors, her voice trembling as she recited the spell. Xia Ran's voice seemed to resound in the sky and reminded, Happy memory. It's just a creature that can be repelled and destroyed, calm down. Hermione shouted at the top of her lungs, calling the guardians. A ball of silver-white light and shadow emerged, knocking over the Dementor. Very good. Very good. Xia Ran praised, Next, Harry. Harry stepped forward with a bold look on his face, and the Dementors pounced on him like a shark that had seen the smell of blood. Guard! Harry shouted loudly. A blur of light and shadow stood between him and the Dementor. The Dementor seemed a little afraid of the silver-white light and shadow, even though the light and shadow were blurry and it was difficult to see its complete appearance. Ron! Xia Ran shouted. Ron nodded in disbelief. Did Professor Fremont call my name? He had no choice but to rush forward in helplessness and fear, but the moment he faced the approaching Dementors, fear surged into his heart, his face turned pale, and he could hardly control his urge to turn around and run away. Although he suppressed his impulse in the end, he was no longer able to recite the incantation. As for the act of summoning the patron saint to drive away the Dementors, he had no chance of doing so. Xia Ran's patron saint shot away the Dementor and stepped forward to pull Ron away. Rejuvenate. Take a rest first, okay, next, Malfoy. Xia Ran temporarily stepped aside. 
Ron returned to the crowd still trembling. Malfoy had no time to taunt Ron. He walked forward with a pale face and raised his wand tremblingly. Don't be afraid. Take courage. Xia Ran reminded, at this time the Dementor came forward again. Hall. Call for the guards. Call for the guards. Malfoy's hand holding the wand was trembling, his eyes were dilated, and he was sweating profusely. This was a sign of extreme fear. Xia Ran had no choice but to pull him away. Seamus. Dean. Goyle. Daphne. Finally, after the bell rang, almost all the students in the class faced the Dementors once. To Xia Ran's expectation, for students among them successfully summoned the Patronus for the first time. They are Neville Longbottom, Harry Potter and Hermione Granger, as well as Daphne Greengrass, a student of Slytherin House. Hermione is not surprising, she is the best student in this class Harry is also acceptable, although he is a bit partial, but he is indeed talented in some subjects only Neville. He used to only study in herbal medicine class great job, who would have expected that this time he would successfully summon the patron saint. Daphne also surprised her classmates. She looked weak, coughed frequently, and had a pale face with almost no blood even when the Dementors appeared. At first, the students were worried that she would faint when facing the Dementors. Who would have expected that Daphne would successfully summon the Patronus in the end? And the clarity and completeness of the Patronus is second only to Hermione? Okay, this lesson is over. Because Mr. Longbottom, Mr. Potter and Miss Granger successfully cast the Patronus charm, Gryffindor gets 15 more points Miss Greengrass also successfully summoned the Patronus charm. Plus 5 points for Slytherin. Xia Ran said, get out of class is over. The students filed out of the classroom, all discussing their inner feelings when they faced the Dementors. Daphne Greengrass walked away with a similarly weak and pale girl who was waiting for her outside the door. The two looked quite similar. Xia Ran knew the name of the other girl, after all, they were all his students, as Talia Greengrass, as you can tell by her name, she and Daphne are two sisters, one year younger than Daphne. Malfoy walked out of the classroom, saw the Greengrass sisters walking away, and suddenly ran after them, not even paying attention to Pansy, Goyle, and Crab who called him from behind. The Greengrass family. Xia Rant's eyes flickered. There was a curse flowing in the blood of this family, which caused all members of this family to be weak. He was quite interested in this. Curse. This kind of mysterious and weird thing often makes it impossible for people to effectively defend and resist. By the way, why don't you guys leave? Are there no classes below? Xia Ran asked as she looked at Harry, Ron, and Hermione who were still lingering in the classroom. Ron looked at Harry, Hermione looked like it had nothing to do with her. Harry could only sneer and say, Professor, that's it. After a pause, he whispered, Professor, the referee. Do you know anything? The impartial referee of the Triwizard Tournament. Xia Ran understood immediately and smiled and said, So you stayed here for this reason. He spread his hands and shrugged, I don't know. Even if I knew, I couldn't explain clearly. Didn't you hear Dumbledore's rules? Underage wizards are prohibited from participating. Registration is prohibited. What, you want to cheat? Xia Ran said with a half-smile. Although he knew the true identity of the fair referee, there was no need to tell Harry and the others at this time. He was not like the minibus disguised as Moody in the original time and space. Ty Crouch, who wanted nothing more than to get Harry to compete. Well, just ask, just ask. Harry said with a smile. Okay, let's go to class. I also have another class. Xia Ran said. The trio had no choice but to walk out of the combat class classroom. It seems there is no hope. I just hope that the fair referee will not be so fair. Ron sighed. Ron, what are you talking about? Hermione said dissatisfied, referees must be fair and impartial, how can they cheat? Ron and Harry looked at each other and saw the same thought in each other's eyes. If it was possible. Then how could they not cheat? In addition to Sia Rant's combat class, for the young wizards, the new defense against the dark arts professor, 
Mad Eye Alaster Moody, is also a very experienced and powerful wizard. The experience in combating black magic is particularly rich. Although Moody's class was a bit intimidating, the results were generally good. Moody became the second best defense against the dark arts professor among the students. The best was Professor Lupin. As for Professor Lockhart and Professor Quirrell, don't mention them. The next month or so was relatively calm, with members of the Order of the Phoenix visiting various places, including Lupin, Sirius, and Mundungus, and sometimes even abroad. Fortunately, it's not too difficult. Lupin said this during communication one day. Maybe it's because the mysterious man has not publicly announced his return, so those werewolves and vampires have not completely fallen to the dark wizard camp. A state of hesitation. But life at Hogwarts began to become restless. Chapter, 192 A notice was posted in the foyer outside the auditorium. Representatives of the Triwizard Tournament, Bosbatons and Durmstrang will arrive at 6 o'clock in the evening on Friday, October 30th, and the afternoon classes will end half an hour early. A large group of students crowded in the foyer to watch and discuss enthusiastically. The day before Halloween. I wonder what the students at Bosbatons and Durmstrang are like. I heard that Bosbatons has many beautiful girls. Xia Ran glanced twice, Bosbatons, Durmstrang. He shook his head slightly and went straight into the auditorium to eat. He is a professor, so there is no way he can compete. Besides, the Triwizard Tournament was ultimately just a duel between three magic school students. He felt that it would be more reliable for him to target the Ministry of Magic and Dark Wizards. However, the announcement in the foyer clearly had a very significant impact on other people living in the castle. In the next week, no matter where Xia Ran went, she could hear people talking about one topic, the Triwizard Tournament. At the same time, rumors arose, spreading rapidly among students like super-contagious germs. Who will compete to be the champion of Hogwarts? What other events will there be in the Triwizard Tournament? How will the students of Bosbatons and Durmstrang be different from them? Xia Ran also noticed that the castle seemed to be undergoing thorough cleaning, and several dirty portraits had been scrubbed clean. The characters who were scrubbed were very dissatisfied with this. They often sat huddled in the picture frame and muttered gloomily, every time he touched the newly exposed pink flesh on his face, he grimaced in pain. The originally dark and dirty armor suddenly became shiny, and no longer creaked when moving. Xia Ran also discovered that Argus Filch, the castle administrator of Hogwarts, would get furious whenever he saw a student forget to clean their shoes, scaring two first-year girls into hysteria. Other faculty and staff also seemed extremely nervous. Once when he was passing by the corridor outside the Transfiguration classroom, he heard Professor McGonagall's stern voice scolding him. Longbottom, please be kind and don't reveal your secrets in front of the people in Durmstrang and let them see that you don't even know a simple transformation spell. Professor McGonagall yelled, at that time get out of class was almost over, and Xia Ran happened to go to her combat class classroom. On the morning of October 30th, when Xia Ran went downstairs to have breakfast, she found that the auditorium had been decorated overnight. Huge silk banners hung on the walls, each one representing a house of Hogwarts, red with a golden lion for Gryffindor, blue with a bronze eagle for Ravenclaw. Yellow with a the one with a black badger is Hufflepuff, and the green one with a silver boa constrictor is Slytherin. Behind the staff table where Xia Ran and the others were working, hung the largest banner with the Hogwarts crest on it, a lion, an eagle, a badger, and a snake joined together, surrounding a large letter H. Xia Ran, would you like a piece of pancake? Hagrid was leaving the auditorium with a basket of pancakes. He greeted Xia Ran and motioned for him to have two pieces. Xia Ran immediately waved her hand to refuse and said, No, thank you. He knew Hagrid's cooking skills, and the pancakes could be used as stone slabs. By the way, you know, right? Xia Ran. Hagrid seemed to be unable to control his excitement, the Bosbatons representative is coming today. Of course I know. Xia Ran rolled her eyes and said, There is a notice in the foyer, I can see it. Suddenly realizing something was wrong, he looked at Hagrid suspiciously and said, The school here is not just Bosbatons, but also Durmstrang. You. 
Hagrid, do you know Ms. Maxim? I don't know you, I really don't know you. Hagrid waved his hands repeatedly, but his face covered by his big beard seemed to be a little red. Faced with Xia Rant's suspicious eyes, he finally gave in and said, Okay, I am indeed I really don't know her. But I have heard of Ms. Maxim's name. She is a... Well, how should I put it? He said and giggled. A hybrid giant like you? Xia Ran thought to herself, but didn't say it out loud. It's no wonder that Hagrid is so obsessed with Bozbatons. After all, it is related to his lifelong happiness. Hagrid walked out of the Great Hall happily. That day, the air was filled with a sense of joy and anticipation. In class, almost no one was paying attention to the class. Everyone was thinking that people from Bozbatons and Durmstrang would be coming tonight. Xia Ran had no choice but to talk about something casually in the afternoon class. Even if she couldn't bear the enthusiasm of the students, she talked about Bozbatons and Durmstrang. Because get out of class had to end half an hour early, the bell rang earlier than usual this time. Xia Ran also returned to her office, casually changed into a clean and tidy wizard robe, and then walked slowly to the foyer outside the auditorium. At this moment, the place was basically full of students and teachers. The deans of the four colleges are ordering their students to line up. Weasley, put your hat straight, Professor McGonagall said sternly to Ron, Miss Patil, take that ridiculous thing off your hair. Parvati Patil frowned unhappily and took off a large butterfly headdress from the end of her braid. Please follow me, Professor McGonagall said to the Gryffindor students. The first-year students are in front. Slow down, don't crowd. Xia Ran and the professor team filed down the steps. They did not line up and stand in front of the castle neatly like the students. Instead, they stood casually, a little distance from the student squares of the four colleges. It was a cold, fresh evening, night was falling, and a white, translucent moon was already hanging over the forbidden forest. After looking at the students in the phalanx, Xia Ran whispered, the two school representatives who came here probably set out several days in advance. Do you think? What method will they use to arrive at Hogwarts? Professor Sinister asked in the astronomy class. Flying broomstick? Ms. Hua Chi replied immediately, then shook her head, no, the distance is too far. I guess. Xia Ran chuckled lightly and said. I'll come here by boat or car. He remembered that Bozbatons arrived at Hogwarts in a carriage in the original time and space, while Durmstrang took a boat. It's almost six o'clock, are they almost here? Karedi Babaji, who was in the Muggle Studies class, said as she looked at her watch. Professor Bubaji was wrong, because after six o'clock, the two magic schools still had not arrived. The students excitedly scanned the darkening venue, but there was no movement. Everything was silent and quiet, no different from usual. Many people began to feel cold. After all, it was the end of October, and Hogwarts was located in the north of England. At this time, the weather had begun to get cold, especially when the sun went down. After Chapter 193 The students were a little impatient because after they were excited, they felt cold. At this moment, Dumbledore, who was standing with Xia Ran and other professors, shouted, Ah! If I am not mistaken, the Bozbatons representative has already arrived. Where? Where is it? Why didn't I see it? Many students immediately asked eagerly, looking up and down. Where? shouted a sixth grader, pointing his finger over the forbidden forest. A huge thing, much bigger than a broomstick, or a hundred broomsticks, was flying rapidly across the dark blue sky towards the castle, getting bigger and bigger. Dragon. It's a fire dragon. A first-year student screamed, so excited that he didn't know what to do. Oh, don't be silly. That's a house flying. Said another older student. Although both statements are outrageous, the latter statement is closer. When the black behemoth passed over the treetops of the Forbidden Forest and was illuminated by the light from the castle window, everyone saw a huge pink-blue carriage flying towards everyone. It is so huge, no smaller than a house. It is pulled into the sky by twelve flying horses with wings. They are all silver-maned horses. 
Each horse is about the same size as an elephant. It is really suspicious. How did they fly? Can the wings really carry it? The carriage flew lower and was landing at an extremely fast speed. The student standing in the first three rows hurriedly backed away. Then, there was a shocking bang, which made many students tremble. I saw those horse hooves falling to the ground with a bang, each one as big as a vegetable plate. In the blink of an eye, the carriage also landed on the ground, vibrating on the huge wheels. At the same time, the golden horses shook their huge heads, the big fiery red eyes rolled around. Xia Ran, you are right, it is indeed a carriage. Ms. Hu Qi said. Xia Ran smiled softly. The door of the huge carriage suddenly opened, and a boy wearing a light blue robe jumped out of the carriage, bent down, groping for something on the floor of the carriage, then opened a golden spiral staircase, and jumped back respectfully. A shiny black high-heeled shoe was stretched out from the carriage. The shoe was as big as a child's sleigh. A woman appeared in everyone's sight. Her size was beyond everyone's expectations. So many people gasped in shock. Among the teachers and students of Hogwarts, Hagrid was the only one who could compare with her. By the way, where is Hagrid? Siaran glanced and found that Hagrid, for some reason, was not present to greet the representatives of Bosbatons and Durmstrang this time. The woman had now reached the bottom of the steps, turned around, and looked at the crowd of people who were waiting with their eyes wide open. She seemed to be even bigger than before. When she walked into the light leaking from the foyer, everyone discovered that she had an unusually handsome olive face, a pair of big, dark, watery eyes, a pointed nose, and her hair. Tie it back and into a shiny bun at the base of your neck. She was wrapped in a black satin dress from head to toe, with many gorgeous gems shining around her neck and on her thick fingers. If it weren't for her ridiculous height, she would be a very beautiful and attractive woman. Dumbledore was the first to start clapping, and his classmates also clapped. Xia Ran and other teachers also clapped to welcome Bosbatons to Hogwarts. However, many people stood on tiptoes, wanting to see this woman more clearly. Her tense face relaxed, she smiled gracefully, stretched out a gleaming hand, and walked towards Dumbledore. Although Dumbledore was a tall man in every sense of the word, he barely bent down when he kissed this hand. Dear Madame Maxime, he said with a smile, I am pleased to welcome you and your students to Hogwarts. Dumbledore. Ms. Maxim's voice was deeper, I hope everything is well with you. Very well, thank you. Dumbledore smiled. By the way, my student. Ms. Maxim said, raising a huge hand and waving behind her casually. Xia Ran noticed that about twelve or three male and female students had gotten off the carriage. They were obviously the outstanding students selected by Bosbatons to participate in the Triwizard Tournament. But the champion of Bosbatons should be Fleur Delacour. Xia Ran glanced twice but didn't see Fleur because many Bosbaton students were wearing scarves or turbans covering their heads, making it difficult to see who was who. They were basically standing in the huge shadow cast by Madame Maxime, looking up at Hogwarts Castle with some look of awe on their faces. Is Karkaroff here? Ms. Maxim asked. He will be here any minute, Dumbledore said cheerfully. Would you rather wait here to greet him, or would you rather go in first and warm yourself up? It's better to warm up. Madame Maxime was fully considerate of her students, because none of the dozen Bosbaton students wore thick robes, but made of fine silk, nor did they wear the cloak was basically shivering from the cold at this moment. But those horses! Our care of magical creatures teacher will be happy to take care of them. Dumbledore said with a smile, but he has a little problem now. He will come back when he is done with it. It is his. Well, there are other things he has to look after. Something went wrong. My horses require very strong people to take care of them. Ms. Maxim said, seeming to doubt whether the care of magical creatures teacher at Hogwarts was up to the task. They have very fierce tempers. I assure you, Ms. Maxim, that Hagrid he is our care of magical creatures teacher, Robius Hagrid is fully capable of doing this job. Dumbledore said with a smile. Very good. Ms. Maxim nodded with satisfaction and bowed slightly, can you tell Hagrid for me that these horses only drink single malt whiskey? I'll take care of it, 
Dumbledore replied, bowing as well. Then. Come on. Ms. Maxim said majestically to her students, so the students of Hogwarts all moved out of the way, allowing her and her students to walk up the stone steps and enter. Great Hall. Next, Xia Ran and the others had to wait for Durmstrang's representatives. But there was silence everywhere, as if the Durmstrang people had given up on Hogwarts and were not ready to come. Couldn't Durmstrang have arrived earlier? muttered Professor Flittick. Xia Ran also frowned, he was ready to enter the auditorium and sit for a while. Chapter, 194 Aren't you coming yet? Many students were shivering slightly from the cold and their faces were pale. People raised their heads and looked at the sky eagerly, expecting to see a carriage arriving at Hogwarts. Xia Ran lowered his head and looked at the lake. At this time. Wow. Huge waves suddenly rolled up on the lake, and a very loud but strange sound floated towards everyone from the depths of darkness. It was a suppressed rumbling and sucking sound, like a huge the vacuum cleaner moves along the river bed. What is this sound? Professor Karidi asked with a frown. In the lake. Look on the lake. One of the Gryffindor students shouted loudly, pointing to the lake. Xia Ran and the others stood on the slope of the lawn overlooking the field, and could clearly see the calm, dark water, but at this moment, the water suddenly became no longer so calm. There was a commotion in the water in the middle of the lake. Water splashed suddenly, and the waves slapped the wet lake shore. The next second, in the very center of the lake, a large whirlpool emerged out of thin air, like a huge plug, which was pulled from the water. It's like it was pulled out from the bottom of the lake. A long black pole-like thing slowly rose from the center of the vortex, and then people saw the sail rigging. Sharon, you are right again, it is really a ship. Madame Pomfrey, the school nurse, said in surprise. Luck. Xia Ran smiled. You can't say that you already knew the plot, right? Although the plot has undergone huge changes now, some less critical aspects have probably remained the same. Slowly, the magnificent ship rose out of the water, shining in the dim light of the stars and moon. It had an eerie, skeletal appearance, as if it were the remains of a shipwreck that had just been raised, and the portholes shone with a dim, foggy gleam that looked like ghostly eyes. Xia Ran guessed that many myths and legends about the sea in the Muggle world were probably caused by wizards' various strange items, which were accidentally seen by Muggles and thus spread. Finally, with a faint splashing sound, the big boat emerged completely, bumped on the undulating water, and began to sail towards the lake shore. A moment later, everyone heard a splash, an iron anchor was thrown into the shallow water, and then there was another snap, and a wooden plank was put on the lake shore. Durmstrang, the school and former headquarters of the first Dark Lord Gellert Grindelwald. Xia Ran's eyes moved slightly and she thought to herself. The people on the boat were disembarking. Xia Ran could see the silhouettes of these people as they passed through the porthole light. He also noticed that these people all looked very tall, only slightly shorter than Hagrid. But this was not without reason, because when they got closer and walked along the lawn into the light cast by the foyer, Xia Ran discovered that the reason why they looked so big was mainly because they were all wearing a kind of a fur cloak with tangled fur. The man who led the Durmstrang students towards the castle was wearing a different kind of fur, silvery white, soft and smooth, much like his hair. Karkaroff, a former Death Eater, sold many of his accomplices to avoid prison. Xia Ran thought with a smile in her eyes, isn't he aware that Voldemort has been resurrected? Dumbledore Karkaroff called enthusiastically as he walked up the slope. How are you, my dear old fellow? How are you doing lately? Excellent, thank you, Professor Karkaroff. Dumbledore replied. Karkaroff's voice was mellow and sweet. When he walked into the light shining from the main entrance of the castle, people discovered that he was as tall and thin as Dumbledore, but his white hair was very short, and his the goatee didn't quite cover his thin chin. Karkaroff walked up to Dumbledore and shook his hand with both hands. Dear old man. Hogwarts. Karkaroff raised his head, looked up at the castle, and said with a smile. Even though he was smiling, there was no smile in his eyes. They were still cold and sharp, like a handful of steel. Just like a knife. It's great to be back here. 
It's great. They're all gone. By the way, Victor, come here and warm yourself up. You don't mind, Dumbledore. Victor has a little cold. Well, the journey is really long. Karkaroff motioned for one of his students to come forward. When the boy walked by, Sia Ran glanced at the eye-catching aquiline nose and the two thick, black eyebrows. He didn't need the whispers in the crowd to recognize who that figure was. Who? Crumb. Is it Victor Crumb? I can't believe he is Durmstrang's student. The students talked excitedly, and even a few teachers couldn't help but said in surprise, Crumb is still a student? It's really unexpected. By this time Dumbledore had invited Karkaroff into the Great Hall. Just a Quidditch player, is that all? Xia Ran raised her eyebrows. Oh, my God! Ms. Hua Chi looked at Xia Ran in disbelief and said, Xia Ran, do you know what you are talking about? Just a Quidditch player. That's all. Victor Crumb, that's the best seeker in the world. You can't find another seeker like Crumb in the world. Okay, don't get excited. Xia Ran shrugged. He was not interested in this sport anyway, but what Xia Ran longed for and was most interested in was how to enhance his magic power and how to increase his knowledge of various subjects. Isn't it the most important thing to be strong? He doesn't quite understand the thoughts of many people in the magic world, but he can accept it. After all, it is not easy to increase magic power and increase knowledge, not to mention how many people can really become legendary level wizards. In the contemporary wizarding world, apart from the most powerful white wizard Albus Dumbledore and the second generation Dark Lord Voldemort. The only one who can barely survive is the first generation Dark Lord Gellert Grindelwald who is in prison, but this is already the magic world has accumulated over the past hundred years. The difficulty of the legendary wizard can be seen through the lens. Without the help of force points, Xia Ran is basically hopeless. Let's go into the auditorium. The welcome banquet has begun. Professor Sinistra said, and a group of professors stepped up the steps behind them. Compared with the restrained excitement of the professors, the students were even more excited and did not hide it at all. Several sixth grade girls were rummaging around frantically in their pockets as they walked. Oh, I can't believe I don't have a quill with me. Do you think? Crumb will sign me with my lipstick. Absurd. How ridiculous. Hermione seemed to be one of the few sober people. Ron ignored Hermione, but looked at Harry and said, If possible, I would like to get his signed photo. Harry, you didn't bring a quill, did you? No, they're all in my bag upstairs. Harry replied. Hermione snorted haughtily. Chapter 195 When Harry and the others walked to the Gryffindor table and sat down, Ron deliberately sat on the side facing the door of the auditorium because Crumb and his Durmstrang alumni were still gathering. At the door, it seemed uncertain where they should sit. The Bosbaton students had chosen seats at the Ravenclaw table. After they sat down, they looked around the auditorium with sullen expressions on their faces. Three of them still had their heads wrapped tightly with scarves and turbans. It's not that cold, Hermione said dissatisfied, why don't they wear cloaks? Here. Come and sit here. Ron said hoarsely, here. Hermione, move over a little bit, make some room. What? Oh, it's too late. Ron said with a very regretful tone. Victor Crumb and his fellow Durmstrang alumni had chosen to sit at the Slytherin table. Harry could see Malfoy, Crab and Goyle all beaming with pride, and he could see Malfoy leaning forward to talk to Crumb. Ah, uh, yes, Malfoy is fawning over him. Ron said sharply, I bet Crumb can tell right away what kind of guy he is. I can say with 100% certainty that Crumb no matter where he goes, there are people discussing him and fawning over him. But he forgot his behavior, remembered one thing, and immediately said excitedly, You said, where will they sleep? We can provide him with a bed in our dormitory, Harry, I am willing to give up my bed to he slept and I slept on the cot. Oh, come on. Hermione snorted. They look much happier than the Bosbatons group. Harry looked back at the Ravenclaw table. He was not actually looking at his Bosbatons classmates. Durmstrang students took off their heavy fur cloaks and looked up at the dark starry ceiling with interest. 
Two of the students also picked up the golden plates and goblets and looked at them carefully. Obviously very interested. Over there at the faculty table, Administrator Filch was adding a few chairs and had donned his musty old tuxedo for the occasion. Harry was surprised to see that he had added four more chairs, two on either side of Dumbledore. But there are only two more people, two school principals. Harry wondered, why did Filch move out four chairs? Which two other people will come? Ha! Huh. What did you say? Ron said vaguely, still staring at Crumb longingly. After all the students entered the auditorium and took their seats at the tables in their respective houses, the faculty and staff finally came in, and they filed over to the guest of honor seat and sat down. Xia Ran sat down on his chair. Walking at the end were Dumbledore, Karkaroff and Madame Maxime. The Bozbaton students stood up quickly when they saw their principal appearing. Several Hogwarts students couldn't help but laugh, but the Bozbaton students didn't look embarrassed at all. It wasn't until Ms. Maxim sat down on Dumbledore's left-hand side that they sat down again. Down. Dumbledore remained standing, and the auditorium gradually became quiet. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and ghosts. Of course, there are also distinguished guests. Dumbledore said, looking at the foreign students with a smile, it is with great joy that I welcome you to Hogwarts, I hope and trust that you will feel comfortable and happy here. A Bozbaton's girl still wrapped her scarf tightly around her head and let out an unmistakable sarcastic sneer. No one forced you to stay. Hermione whispered, she was annoyed by the girl. Dumbledore seemed not to have heard and continued, the competition will officially begin at the end of the banquet. I now invite everyone to eat and drink as much as you would at home. He sat down, and Karkaroff immediately leaned forward to talk to Dumbledore. Xia Ran was thinking, I wish I could touch the goblet of fire with my own hands. But now that the goblet of fire is still in Filch's hands, he has to find a way to take over Filch's mission. Because he was thinking too much, even though the plate in front of him was piled with food as usual, the house elves in the kitchen seemed to have tried their best. This was a sumptuous dish that had never been eaten before, with a variety of dishes, including a few of them were definitely foreign, but he still didn't have much of an appetite. After eating a few mouthfuls, Xia Ran decided that he had to go out and walk around to look for opportunities. Hey, Xia Ran, are you full? Hagrid happened to come in from outside at this time, and the two of them looked at each other. Xia Ran smiled and said, when you are full, let's go for a walk. Then she changed the subject and whispered, Ms. Maxim of Bozbatons, I think she is very easy to get along with. Hagrid's face immediately turned red, but it was hidden by his beard so outsiders couldn't see it more clearly. Xia Ran laughed and stepped out of the auditorium. Filch, the castle administrator of Hogwarts, seemed to have finished his food and also wandered outside the auditorium for a while, holding a box in his hand. Is that the box that contains the Goblet of Fire? Xia Ran's heart immediately pounded. Mr. Filch. He coughed lightly. Filch followed the sound and looked over. He was a little surprised when he saw it was Xia Ran, and asked, Professor Fremont, what are you doing here? It's a bit boring, let's go for a walk. Xia Ran said and pointed to the wooden box unintentionally, which looked very old. Is this the Goblet of Fire box? Yes. Filch replied with a nod. Xia Ran deliberately coughed and said, I have nothing to do anyway, why don't you go in and eat something else? You weren't full just now, right? I'll just take this thing in for you later. Filch was a little hesitant. He was indeed not full yet and wanted to enjoy the lively atmosphere in the auditorium. You don't believe me, do you, Mr. Filch? Xia Ran pretended to be displeased. This is definitely not the case. Filch shook his head, hesitated, and then said, Okay, Professor Fremont, take it. When you hear or see Professor Dumbledore's instructions, you will immediately hold it. This box goes in. Yes, I understand. Xia Ran nodded repeatedly and took the wooden box from Filch's hand, feeling hot inside. Filch couldn't wait to walk into the Great Hall. Xia Ran looked around and saw no one around, and there was another burst of noise inside. She walked to a hidden corner and carefully opened the lid of the wooden box, revealing the goblet of fire inside. 
It was a roughly carved wooden goblet. The cup itself was inconspicuous at all, but it was filled with dancing blue-white flames. Goblet of Fire Xia Rant's eyes were hot. She held the wooden box in one hand and lightly touched the rough wooden goblet with the other hand. Triwizard Tournament, Goblet of Fire, Force Points, 200 Points, Do You Want to Absorb It? Chapter, 196 200 Force Points Xia Ran was startled, then overjoyed. Without hesitation, she even said in her heart, Absorb. Then a curtain of light appeared on his pupils. Force Points, 010, 1520. The number of force points is beating violently, and Xia Ran's heart is also burning. With these 200 force points, his magic power has been promoted to level 6, and there is no obstacle. Maybe I can jump to level 6 medium. Xia Ran secretly thought, her joy almost beyond words. He still controlled himself and didn't show it too obviously. 200 force points, which is several times more powerful than the ancient magic items he has absorbed before, such as Ravenclaw's crown, Marvel O'Gaunt's ring, Resurrection Stone, etc. Points. Xia Ran whispered in her heart, could it be? That the Goblet of Fire was related to the exchanges between European magic schools for centuries before? This is far more than a purely legendary thing, but it has little interference in reality and has not promoted anything. Several ancient magic items have far-reaching significance, so the number of force points has increased several times. He didn't know the reason, but he roughly had his own guess. Force points, 200 points. Xia Ran exhaled slowly, and finally absorbed all the 200 force points contained in the Goblet of Fire. However, it was not a good time now. He would not start to improve his magic power here. He would definitely wait until he returned to the office. There should be nothing wrong with the Goblet of Fire, right? Xia Ran's heart skipped a beat, and she raised her eyes to stare at the wooden goblet, only to see that the blue-white flame was a little dim. Compared with the brightness of the flame just now, it was like the sun at noon. The gap between the setting sun at sunset. It should be fine. Right? Xia Ran whispered and scratched his head. The Goblet of Fire only serves to select warriors. Some minor injuries probably won't affect the overall situation. Right? He carefully put the Goblet of Fire into the box again. At this time, the auditorium suddenly became quiet for a while, without the previous clinking of knives, forks, plates, and wine glasses. It was obvious that everyone had finished dinner and had begun to make the final announcement. Xia Ran stood by the door of the auditorium, looking at Dumbledore who stood up and walked to the staff table to speak. The moment has finally arrived. Dumbledore said, smiling at the upturned faces. The Triwizard Tournament is about to begin. I want to explain a few words first, and then bring the box in. He saw Xia Ran standing at the door and the old wooden box he was holding in his hand. He was slightly startled, why was it Xia Ran? Not Administrator Filch. Dumbledore quickly put it behind him and continued, I want to explain our activity procedures for this school year, but before that, please allow me to introduce two guests, because there are still people who don't know them. This is Jack Mr. Rumbarton, Director of the Department of International Magical Cooperation, Ministry of Magic. There was sparse applause in the auditorium. This is Mr. Ludo Bagman, Director of the Department of Physical Education and Sports at the Ministry of Magic. Dumbledore continued. The applause given to Bagman was much louder than that given to Button, perhaps because he had made a name for himself as a batsman, or perhaps just because he was much more relatable in appearance. Bagman waved his thanks cheerfully, but when Jerome Barton's name had been introduced, Barton had neither smiled nor waved. While Xia Ran was absorbing force points outside, these two senior officials from the Ministry of Magic entered the auditorium from another side door and sat next to Dumbledore. Over the past few months, Mr. Bagman and Mr. Barton have worked tirelessly to arrange the Triwizard Tournament. Dumbledore said with a smile. They will be working with me, Karkaroff and Maxim together, the ladies will form a panel of judges to judge the efforts of the warriors. As soon as they heard the word warrior, the students seemed to be more attentive, all staring at Dumbledore eagerly. Dumbledore seemed to have noticed their sudden silence. He smiled slightly and said, Professor Fremont, 
please bring up the box. No one noticed that Xia Ran had just walked out of the auditorium and was now staying in the shadows next to the auditorium door. They all turned around and saw Xia Ran walking towards Dumbledore, holding a large wooden box inlaid with jewelry. The box looked very old. The students watched with fascination and discussed with interest. Many students who were short or underdeveloped simply stood on their chairs and peered around in order to see more clearly. It's just that they are too short after all. Even if they stand, their heads are not much higher than others. Xia Ran placed the box on the table in front of Dumbledore. Without looking away, she calmly walked to her seat behind the staff table and sat down. She was even in the mood to take a sip of wine. Mr. Barton and Mr. Bagman have carefully reviewed the specific events for this year's Warriors competition. Dumbledore said. They have also made many necessary arrangements for each event. There are three events in total, one in taking place at different times throughout the school year, they will test the Warriors in many different ways. Testing their talents in magic, their courage and their ability to reason, and of course, their ability to overcome danger. After hearing the last sentence, the auditorium became silent, and it seemed that everyone stopped breathing. As you already know, there will be three warriors participating in the competition. Dumbledore said calmly, the three warriors each represent a participating school. We will rate them based on the quality of their completion of each competition event. After three events, finally, the warrior with the highest score will win the Triwizard Cup. The person responsible for selecting the warriors is a fair selector, and it is. The Goblet of Fire. Having said this, Dumbledore pulled out his wand and tapped the lid of the box three times. The lid slowly creaked open. Dumbledore reached in and took out the wooden goblet. The cup itself was not eye-catching at all, but there was a blue-white flame dancing inside. However, the brightness and concentration of the flame seemed a bit unexpected, and it seemed dim and dull, as if it would be extinguished soon. This. Dumbledore was stunned for a moment and looked sideways at Xia Ran. Xia Ran's face was calm, mixed with a bit of confusion, as if he knew nothing about the situation. He felt that there was no one who was better at acting than himself. He secretly praised himself in his heart. Ahem. Dumbledore coughed lightly, looked away, and placed the goblet of fire on the lid so that everyone in the auditorium could clearly see it. Chapter, 197 Every student who wants to run for a warrior must write his name and school name on a piece of parchment and throw it into this goblet. Dumbledore continued, those who are aspiring to become a warrior can do so in the second semester. Sign up within 14 hours. Tomorrow night, Halloween night, the goblet will select the names of the three students it thinks best represent the three schools. Tonight, the goblet will be placed in the foyer. All who are willing it's accessible to students who are running for office. But. As he spoke, he changed the subject and glanced around the auditorium, especially those students who were eager to try but had immature faces and were obviously underage. He said, in order for students who are not old enough to withstand the temptation, wait until the goblet is placed in the foyer. I'm going to draw an age line around it that no one under 17 can cross. Finally, I would like to remind every student who wants to participate in the election to note that this competition is not a child's play. It is completely different from the Quidditch game. Do not participate rashly. Once the warrior is selected by the Goblet of Fire, he must stick to the game to the end. Whoever puts his name into the cup actually forms a magical contract that must be abided by and cannot be changed. Once you become a warrior, you cannot and are not allowed to change your mind. So please think twice before you put your name in the cup and whether you are serious about participating in the competition. Well, I think it's time for everyone to go to bed. Good night to everyone. Dumbledore retreated into his seat. Xia Ran took another sip of wine and pretended not to notice the principal's gaze. Age line. At the Gryffindor table, Fred Weasley's eyes lit up and he said, This is easy to handle. You can definitely be fooled by age-enhancing drugs, right? As long as your name goes into that cup, you just laugh happily, it can't tell who is over 17 and who is under 17. At this time, the students all stood up and walked across the auditorium towards the opposite door leading to the foyer. But I don't think it's possible for someone under 17 to win, Hermione said. 
we haven't learned enough. You are talking about yourself, right? George said impatiently. You will also try to participate, won't you, Harry? Harry nodded deliberately, but he remembered Dumbledore's insistence that students under the age of 17 could not register, but his mind suddenly recalled the glorious scene when he won the Triwizard Cup. He thought to himself, if someone under the age of 17 really found a way to cross the age line, Dumbledore would be so angry. Where is he? Ron said, looking around for something. Dumbledore didn't say where Durmstrang's people were sleeping, did he? He didn't listen to a word they said, and only focused on searching for Crumb in the crowd. His question was answered almost immediately. At this time, they had reached the Slytherin table, and saw Karkaroff, the headmaster of Durmstrang, hurriedly walked up to his students. Okay, let's go back to the ship, Karkaroff said. Victor, how do you feel? Are you full? Do you want me to send someone to bring some mulled wine from the kitchen? Harry saw Crumb shake his head and put his fur cloak back on. Professor, I would like to drink some wine. Another boy from Durmstrang said with salivation. I didn't ask you, Polyarko. Karkaroff said sternly, his fatherly and gentle expression when facing Crumb suddenly disappeared, I noticed that you dropped food under the front of your robe is up, you annoying boy. Karkaroff, have you become so bad-tempered now? Suddenly a deep voice rang out, and Moody came over on crutches. Karkaroff's face suddenly turned pale, revealing a terrifying expression of anger and fear. It's you. Karkaroff said, staring blankly at Moody, as if he wasn't sure he really saw him. It's me. Moody said calmly, it seems that you lived a good life in Durmstrang. Karkaroff, your choice may have been right at the beginning, but I think those friends of yours, once friends, maybe they don't think so. You. Karkaroff seemed to want to say something, but due to Moody's power, he did not dare to refute directly. Harry and the others looked at Professor Moody in surprise. Did he know Karkaroff? Okay, let's go, don't block the road. Moody said. Indeed, half the students in the auditorium were waiting behind them, scrambling to look over the shoulders of those in front of them to see what was causing the obstruction. Karkaroff didn't say anything more, and he didn't dare to say anything, he waved his hand and walked away with his students. Siaran walked to the door at this moment, looked at Karkaroff, and said, Did you catch him in the first place? That's right. Moody nodded and walked away with the same cane, allowing the students behind him to leave the auditorium and return to their dormitories. The two walked to the square outside the castle. I heard that you don't use the unforgivable curse, but use other spells to capture the Death Eaters. Siaran said, shaking her head slightly and said, to deal with these Death Eaters, it's better to use the Avada Kedavra curse. Come clean. That's your idea. It's my responsibility as an Auror to capture them in Azkaban prison. Moody said, paused, but I have retired now. There is no need to be merciful when dealing with enemies. Siaran did not agree with his concept and said, as long as it is clear that the crime is serious, we will kill them directly. How can we give them so much sympathy? For those whose crimes are not that serious, we can leave them appropriately. Stay strong. Moody frowned and said, Xia Ran, you are too murderous. Maybe. Xia Ran was noncommittal. After chatting for a while, the two returned to their offices. Clang. Xia Ran locked the door and concentrated slightly. A screen of light appeared on his pupils. He focused on the magic power. Promote. A cool feeling swept through his body, and he could feel the wonderful feeling that the magic power was indeed increasing rapidly. Magic, level 6 elementary. Xia Ran's mind was agitated. The magic level was level 6, which was the top level in the wizarding world. Such as Moody, the dean of the four major colleges of Hogwarts, the second person in the Order of the Phoenix, and Scrain, the director of the Auror Office of the Ministry of Magic. People like Jia all have level 6 magic power. He finally reached such a top magic level. Well, although I can't continue to improve my magic level, I can still improve my magic level. Xia Ran whispered. He also upgraded his level of charms, from level 5 intermediate to level 6 elementary. 
At this point, his combat prowess is truly at the top of the magic world. The only ones who could completely overwhelm him were Dumbledore, the most powerful white wizard in the world, and the second generation Dark Lord Voldemort. The first generation Dark Lord Grindelwald, however, had been imprisoned for decades and was in a weak body. It was not too bad now. Incredible. Chapter, 198. Xia Ran concentrated on looking at the data on her panel again. Name, Charin Fremont. Age, 27 years old. Magic, level 6 elementary. Force points, 15 points. Transformation, level 5 elementary. Potion science, level 5 elementary. Charms, level 6 elementary. Herbalism, level 5 elementary. Flying, level 4 medium. Well, there are still 15 force points left. Save them first. If there is a chance to absorb the force points later, it will be just in time to push the magic power up a level again. Xia Ran touched his chin and whispered. Level 6 elementary, just entering the top ranks for the first time. He estimated that he might be the same as Professor Sprout, the headmaster of Hufflepuff House, and Professor McGonagall, the headmaster of Gryffindor House. As for Professor Flittick, the dean of Ravenclaw College, he was the champion of the duel club when he was young, so he must be very powerful. Severus Snape, the dean of Slytherin House, needless to say, is the strongest among the deans of the four major houses. Mad-Eye Alastair Moody, as the second-in-command of the Order of the Phoenix, is even better than Professor McGonagall and Snape. Needless to say, he is powerful, but now he is older and has hidden old wounds. Less becomes more, and the strength may decline slightly. But in any case, Moody is definitely not a top wizard with ordinary level 6 magic. Thinking about it this way, Xia Ran has begun to possess level 6 elementary magic power, which is similar to Professor McGonagall and Professor Sprout, Mad-Eye Moody, Professor Flittick and Professor Snape. Even though he has made such great progress, he is still a little behind. Dumbledore and Voldemort are not the characters he can consider now. Level 7 legendary horror wizards, those famous wizards in history, such as the Big Four of Hogwarts, Helga Hufflepuff, Rowena Ravenclaw, Godric Gryffindor, Salazar Slytherin, and the wizard who cultivated the terrible dark magic creature Basilisk Despicable Herbo. These legendary wizards who have left their names in the annals of history, regardless of whether they are black or white, good or evil. All have magic powers as deep as the ocean, and knowledge as vast as the stars in the sky, which is difficult to predict. It's not even close. Xia Ran whispered, and the pride in her heart dissipated in an instant. The next day is Saturday. Generally speaking, students go to have breakfast very late. However, when Xia Ran went downstairs to have breakfast, there were already more than twenty people gathered in the foyer, some of whom were still nibbling bread, and they were all looking carefully at the wooden goblet of fire. Harry, Ron, and Hermione were also there. The cup was placed in the center of the foyer, on the stool where the sorting hat usually rested. A thin gold line was drawn on the floor, with a radius of ten feet, surrounding the cup. Has anyone put a name in? Ron asked a third-grade girl eagerly. Yes, the Durmstrang group. The girl replied, but I haven't seen anyone sign up for Hogwarts yet. I guess someone must have put the name in while we were sleeping last night. Harry guessed, if it were me, I would do this. I don't want everyone to see it, you know, if the cup touches you how embarrassing would it be to crumble his name into a ball and throw it out. Professor, Ron shouted, Professor Fremont, do you know how to break the age line set by Dumbledore? Of course. Xia Ran nodded. With a sigh, more than twenty students all focused their attention on Xia Ran. Professor, really? A fifth-grade Slytherin girl said with eyes shining. Professor Fremont, can you teach us? Harry couldn't help but ask, wondering if Cho Chang would look at him differently if he became a Hogwarts warrior. Xia Ran raised her eyebrows and said, what do you think? The group of people suddenly became speechless. Suddenly someone burst out laughing. Xia Ran looked back and saw Fred, George and Lee Jordan hurriedly walking down the stairs. All three of them looked extremely excited. Professor, are you here? Fred seemed surprised. 
What potion did you drink? Are you planning to cheat? Xia Ran asked with a raised eyebrow. Professor has a keen eye. George smiled and said, Okay, just drink it. What? Ron asked blankly. Fool, agent enhancing agent. Fred whispered in a proud tone, One drop each, and we only need to grow up for a few more months. If any of us wins the Triwizard Tournament, your thousand galleons will be divided equally among the three of us. Lee Jordan said with a happy smile on his face. The professor won't stop us, right? George looked at Xia Ran and said. Xia Ran took a step back and said with a smile, If you don't use the right method, you won't succeed. Go ahead and try. I also don't think this will necessarily succeed. Hermione reminded, I'm sure Dumbledore will take this into consideration. Age-enhancing agents are of course within the scope of Dumbledore's consideration. The method used by Barty Crouch Jr., who disguised himself as Moody in the original time and space, is actually feasible. He released a confusion spell to make the Goblet of Fire think there was something wrong. If more than four schools participate, then just write the name of any school and you will be able to successfully become a warrior. Anyway, in the eyes of others, when the names of Hogwarts students appear, it naturally represents Hogwarts. Fred, George and Lee Jordan ignored it, hoping against hope. Are you ready? Fred was shaking with excitement and said to the other two people, Ben, come on. Okay, I'll go in first. Except for Sharon and Hermione, everyone watched with fascination as Fred took out a piece of parchment from his pocket with the words Fred Weasley, Hogwarts written on it. Fred walked right to the edge of the age line and stood there, swaying on his tiptoes like a diver preparing to jump from a fifty-foot platform. Then, with every eye in the foyer watching, he took a deep breath and crossed the line. Many people thought Fred had succeeded, and George thought so too. He shouted triumphantly and jumped forward after Fred. People opened their mouths to cheer. Xia Ran knew the outcome and just shook her head lightly. Boom! Boom! The twin brothers were thrown outside the golden coil, as if that place was a layer of springs. The twins flew ten feet away, hitting the cold stone ground. While feeling physical pain, they also received another shock. Humiliation. With a loud cracking sound, identical long white beards appeared on the chins of the two people at the same time, like two old men in their seventies and eighties. Everyone in the foyer burst into laughter. Even Fred and George couldn't help laughing when they got up and saw each other's white beards. Chapter, 199 Looking at the appearance of the two brothers, Xia Ran couldn't help but shake her head and laugh. I warned you. A low but amused voice said. Everyone turned their heads and saw Professor Dumbledore walking out of the auditorium. He looked at Fred and George with a twinkle in his eye and said, I suggest you both go to Madame Pomfrey, who is already taking care of Miss Fawcett and Hufflepuff in Ravenclaw. Mr. Summers, they both have also made up their minds to look a little older. But I must say, their beards are far less beautiful than yours. Fred and George set off for the hospital, accompanied by Lee Jordan, who was still laughing. Harry, Ron, and Hermione also chatted and laughed happily and went into the Great Hall to have breakfast. Good morning, Sharon. Dumbledore greeted. Xia Ran had a natural expression and replied, Good morning, Dumbledore, do you want to eat more? I'm hungry. After saying that, she entered the auditorium. Dumbledore touched the white beard on his chin, hesitated, looked at the goblet of fire, shook his head, and went upstairs to his principal's office. Xia Ran secretly thought, well, it seems that he will avoid meeting Dumbledore alone in the past few days. After a few days, all the warriors have been selected, and he will not be able to remember this matter. He still felt a little guilty. After all, the Goblet of Fire's dim luster and appearance of being extinguished were all caused by him. Xia Ran calmly walked to the seat and sat down to eat. This morning, the decoration of the auditorium changed again, because it was Halloween. A large group of live bats flew around the enchanted ceiling, and there were hundreds of little pumpkins carved in every corner. Looking askance at everyone. Charon, how is the arrangement? Professor Flittick asked, standing on the chair. Not bad. Xia Ran smiled, did you arrange it again, 
Professor Flittick. And Hagrid. Professor Flittick said. Every time there was a banquet in the school, Professor Flittick enthusiastically took over the task of decorating the auditorium. Of course, Hagrid would also be very enthusiastic to help sometimes. Hey, Xia Ran, it looks like you have undergone some changes. Professor Flittick suddenly said in surprise. Xia Ran smiled and said, small progress, small progress. Congratulations. After breakfast, Xia Ran returned to the office. He thought he still needed time to get familiar with the increased magic power. After the sun went down and they almost arrived at the hotel, Xia Ran went downstairs and entered the auditorium again. The goblet of fire had been moved and now stood in front of Dumbledore's empty chair on the staff table. Who do you think it will be? Sharon, the warrior of Hogwarts. Professor Flittick asked. Diggory? He has the best hope. Xia Ran answered. Yeah, I think it's him too. What a great young man. Professor Flittick said. Professor Sprout was smiling. Cedric Diggory was a student of Hufflepuff, and she was the headmaster of Hufflepuff House. Because of the Triwizard Tournament, basically all the staff of Hogwarts came to the auditorium, including professors, administrator Filch, librarian Mrs. Pants, and school nurse Ms. Pomfrey. The Halloween dinner seemed to take much longer than usual, perhaps because it was a banquet on two consecutive days, and many students were not as fond of these sumptuous dishes carefully prepared by the house elves as usual. People in the auditorium kept looking up, with anxious expressions on every face. Everyone was restless, standing up from time to time to see if Dumbledore had finished eating. Everyone is like this, eager to finish what is on the plate quickly so that they can quickly know who is chosen as the warrior. Xia Ran basically knew the candidates for the warriors, and he was one of the rare calm people in the auditorium. The warriors of Durmstrang and Bozbatons, who will they be in the end? Professor Trelawney whispered. Sybil, don't you know how to predict? Let's do some divination. Professor McGonagall said. Professor Trelawney snorted and said, the third eye will not be opened because of such a trivial matter. I think. Xia Ran smiled, Durmstrang, there is no doubt that it will be crumb. As for Bose Batons, the girl with Vila blood is also very likely. The choice has been made. This is how it was in the original space and time, and nothing should change now. As he spoke, the golden plate returned to its original spotless state, and the voices in the auditorium suddenly became much louder. Immediately, Dumbledore stood up, and the auditorium became silent again. Not only the students from the three schools, but also Professor Karkaroff and Ms. Maxim on both sides of Dumbledore looked as nervous and full of expectations as everyone else. Two officials from the Ministry of Magic were also there. Ludo Bagman was smiling and blinking at the students from various schools, while Mr. Barton looked uninterested and could almost be said to be a little bored. Okay, it's time for the goblet to make a decision. Dumbledore said with a smile. I guess it may take another minute. Listen, after the names of the warriors are announced, I hope they go to the top of the auditorium, and then walk past the staff desk and enter the next room. As he spoke, he pointed to the door behind the faculty desk and continued, they will get preliminary guidance there. He took out his wand and waved it widely. In an instant, all the candles except those in the jack-o'-lantern were extinguished, and the auditorium fell into a state of semi-darkness. The goblet of fire was now emitting a dazzling light, brighter than anything in the entire auditorium. The splashing blue-white flames were simply a bit dazzling at this time, but everyone was watching and no one looked away. Everyone is waiting. Who will become the warrior? A few people kept looking at their watches. Soon. Hagrid whispered, but even so his voice was still loud, startling Professor Flittick who was standing beside him. Feel sorry. Xia Ran didn't seem that interested. He held his chin with one hand and stared at the goblet of fire. Suddenly, the flame in the goblet turned red, crackling sparks burst out, and then a tongue of fire jumped into the air, and a piece of burnt parchment flew out of it. Everyone in the entire auditorium held their breath. Dumbledore caught the parchment and held it far away so that he could read the writing clearly in the light of the flames. The flame returned to blue-white at this time. The Warriors of Durmstrang 
Dumbledore announced clearly and forcefully, it's Victor Crumb. It's not surprising at all. Ron shouted loudly at the Gryffindor table. Applause and cheers swept the entire auditorium. Durmstrang's warrior was Crumb. This was expected by many people. Fact. Who else in Durmstrang can compare with Crumb? Chapter, 200. Charon, you are right about the first one. It depends on the second Bosbaton's warrior. Professor Flittick roared. The applause and cheers in the auditorium were too fierce Crum, as the world's most powerful a great seeker, there is no doubt about his popularity. If he didn't yell like this, Xia Ran wouldn't be able to hear what he said. Xia Ran clapped her hands lightly and saw Crum standing up from the Slytherin table and walking towards Dumbledore listlessly. He turned to the right and walked forward along Xia Ran's staff table. Go and enter the next room through that door. Awesome, Victor. Karkaroff roared loudly. Although the applause was loud in the auditorium, everyone could still hear his voice. I know you are destined to be a warrior. Finally, the applause and cheers died down, and now everyone's attention was once again focused on the goblet. After a few seconds, the flames turned red again, and a second piece of parchment jumped out of the goblet, propelled by the flames. Out. The champion of Bo's batons. Dumbledore glanced down and read aloud, it's Fleur Delacour. Sia Ran, you are right again. Professor Flittick was a little surprised this time. Sia Ran clapped her hands and smiled, but suddenly caught a glimpse of Professor Trelawney's frowning expression, and the others also looked slightly strange. As a divination teacher, Professor Trelawney couldn't predict who the warriors would be. Professor Fremont, a teacher who specialized in combat, made a very accurate prediction. How could this not make people feel weird? Who is the professor of the divination class? Xia Ran shrugged his shoulders. He couldn't help it. These few people became warriors in the original time and space, and there was nothing that couldn't be said, so he didn't want to talk nonsense. Professor Trelawney, I'm sorry. Xia Ran secretly said in her heart, but I still believe in you. Dumbledore also believes in you. Professor Sybil Trelawney, as a divination teacher, did indeed make accurate predictions, and even more than ten years later, they are still effective today. That is the prophecy about Harry and Voldemort. Oh, the other Bosbaton students are so sad. Hagrid said angrily while applauding. Sia Ran looks forward to it. I saw a girl who looked like a Vila stood up gracefully, shook her silver hair, and walked lightly through the gap between the Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff tables. Several boys looked at her back in a daze, as if they couldn't speak or move. However, Xia Ran thought that Hagrid put it too lightly. The word sad really couldn't describe the disappointment of other Bosbaton students. He even saw two girls burying their heads in their arms and seeming to whisper. Sob. When Fleur Delacour also walked into the next room, the auditorium became quiet again. This time the silence was even more fiery, because below were the warriors of Hogwarts. Who will become the champion of Hogwarts? Everyone almost held their breath, Xia Rand might be an exception, but she was still in the mood to take a sip of red wine, looking at the goblet of fire expectantly. And the blue and white flames in the cup suddenly turned into red flames, a piece of sheepskin the paper flew out immediately and was caught by Dumbledore gently. He looked down at the contents on the parchment. The champion of Hogwarts. Dumbledore raised his head, faced all the students in the Great Hall, and announced. Is Cedric Diggory. Cedric. The Hufflepuff table suddenly erupted in cheers and applause. Everyone was cheering and their excitement and joy were beyond words. Behind the staff table, Professor Sprout, the Dean of Hufflepuff House, applauded enthusiastically with the same joy. Looking at her, she seemed to be about to cry with joy. Sharon, you guessed all three correctly. Professor Flittick gave a thumbs up. Hey, luck, luck. Xia Ran smiled. At this time, Cedric Diggory stood up from the Hufflepuff table. He smiled brightly and walked towards Dumbledore. All the Hufflepuff classmates along the way cheered and celebrated. There were still many students congratulating Cedric at the tables of Gryffindor, Ravenclaw, and Slytherin. 
Of course, the whining dissatisfaction of a small group of students does not affect the overall situation. The cheers for Cedric lasted for a long time, and it was not until three or four minutes later that Cedric finally entered the next room and everyone became quiet again. There's no moth this time, right? Xia Ran whispered in her heart, and found no sign that the color of the goblet of fire had changed again. Okay, the three warriors have been selected. Dumbledore said loudly, they are Victor Crumb of Durmstrang and Fleur Delacour of Bosbatons. Cedric Diggory at Hogwarts. I know that I can completely rely on all of you, including my classmates from Bosbatons and Durmstrang, and you will go all out to support your warriors. By cheering for the warriors, you will also make a contribution to this event. A great contribution. Now, we. Dumbledore was still talking happily. There's no problem, that's good. Xia Ran secretly thought, but suddenly felt that it was a pity. If there was a problem, that would be the best. It would just be an opportunity to clear out one or two Death Eaters lurking in. If such a Death Eater if undercover agents really exist. Snape was a double agent, but he was actually working for the Order of the Phoenix. At this time, Karkaroff, Ms. Maxim, and two Ministry of Magic officials, Ludo Bagman and Jerome Barton, all stood up and walked into the room behind the door. Xia Ran did not follow, and there was no need to continue to waste too much time on this. He also wanted to go back early to adapt to the enhanced magic power. Everyone, please go back. Dumbledore announced the end of the banquet and followed him into the room. The auditorium suddenly became a commotion, and people were still discussing the three warriors intensely. Xia Ran stood up and was about to leave the auditorium when she suddenly heard Snape's voice, Professor Fremont, wait a moment. He turned his head and saw Snape winking at him. He immediately felt relieved, nodded, and sat back on the chair again. The other professors were slightly surprised. When did these two teachers have such a deep friendship? Hey, look, what is Snape talking to Professor Fremont? On the other hand, Ron noticed that Xia Ran was talking to Snape and said to Harry and Hermione. They were almost out of the auditorium. Hermione said, they are both teachers. Is it any wonder that they have good friendships? And. She lowered her voice and said, don't forget, Professor Fremont and Professor Snape are both members of the Order of the Phoenix. Member. Harry didn't pay much attention to Snape. He was still regretting that if he became a Hogwarts warrior, then. He even raised his eyes and looked around, but couldn't see the beautiful Ravenclaw girl, so he could only sigh. At this very moment. Ah. Harry suddenly let out a cry of pain and reached out to cover his forehead. A burning pain hit him, as if someone was roaring loudly and stirring wildly in his mind. It made his brain feel like it was going to explode. It was impossible to bear this drama. It hurt, and he passed out instantly. Chapter, 201 Harry, Harry Hermione reacted quickly and supported Harry who was unconscious, and shouted anxiously, Are you okay, Harry? Ron, call the teacher quickly, hurry up. Ron was almost stunned with fright. Hearing Hermione's urging, he just woke up from a dream and shouted, Professor, Professor Fremont, Professor McGonagall, Harry. Harry, he. What's wrong with him? As he spoke, Ron looked at Harry's body blankly. Harry's body was seen shaking, his face was twisted, and his chest was rising and falling violently, giving people the illusion that he was suffocating. The other students around were basically stunned. At this time, Xia Ran and Snape, as well as Professor McGonagall and Professor Flittick, also discovered the abnormal situation here and rushed over quickly. What's wrong? What happened to Harry? Professor McGonagall asked anxiously. I don't know, Professor, but he suddenly screamed and passed out, Hermione replied. Let me take a look. Xia Ran followed closely, pulled out her wand, nodded Harry's head, and said, Resume quickly. Rejuvenate. After using several spells in succession, Harry still looked painful and twisted, showing no signs of waking up. Xia Ran frowned suddenly. Harry's situation was not good. How's it going, Xia Ran? Hagrid asked. Xia Ran shook her head and said, the situation is not optimistic. I don't know the cause of his current illness. 
By the way, where is Madame Pomfrey? Send Harry to the school hospital first. I'm here. Madame Pomfrey's voice came from behind the crowd, and the crowd instantly gave way to a passage. Madame Pomfrey came quickly and checked Harry's physical condition with a very confused look on her face. Any questions, Poppy? Asked Professor McGonagall, after Madame Pomfrey's name. Madame Pomfrey frowned and said, Harry. Why does he feel like he's been under the Imperious Curse? The Imperious Curse? Poppy, are you right? Professor McGonagall was surprised. The Imperious Curse is one of the three unforgivable curses officially defined by the Ministry of Magic. No. Madame Pomfrey's eyebrows knitted together, and she overturned her previous statement and said, Take Harry to the campus hospital first, and I will give him a comprehensive and careful examination. Hagrid hurriedly took Harry's unconscious body from Hermione's arms, picked him up in one fell swoop, and hurried to the school hospital with Madame Pomfrey. Professor McGonagall also followed, and Ron and Hermione trotted after him. Behind. Sia Ran listened thoughtfully. Could it be? Because of Harry's connection with Voldemort? Snape noticed Sia Ran's special look and asked, Sia Ran, do you have any guesses? Some, but not sure. Sia Ran whispered. The students around him slowly all left, and they were even hotly discussing Harry's situation just now. Could it be that he couldn't accept it because he didn't become a warrior, so he passed out? When there was no one in the auditorium, Xia Ranfang asked, By the way, you seem to have something to say to me just now. Snape nodded and said, It's about Percy. What's wrong? He sent a summons this afternoon to say that Ollivander from Diagon Alley is missing, Snape said. You know what that means. Ollivander? The one who sells wands. Xia Ran frowned and said, You mean? The mysterious man captured him. He recalled the story in the original time and space, and it seemed that such a thing was true. Voldemort even went to Germany to capture Grigovich, the wand maker as famous as Ollivander, just to find the old wand. Wand, the elder wand among the three hallows of death. Of course, Voldemort would not know that the elder wand was in the hands of his greatest rival, Dumbledore. But in the original time and space, that happened during the summer vacation before Harry's sixth grade. Now Harry is only in his fourth grade. Sia Ran patted his head again, well, the plot has already undergone many major changes, and the original development trajectory in time and space can only be used as a reference, not as a basis. Harry. What happened to him? At this time, everyone in the room came out, Dumbledore asked. I don't know. He is in the school hospital now. Xia Ran replied. I'll go see him, Dumbledore said. Xia Ran said, let's go together. Snape's expression was still gloomy, and he walked out of the auditorium and turned to his office without saying hello to anyone. Xia Ran smiled secretly. She cared so much about Harry Potter, but could only watch from the sidelines. Snape must be feeling very complicated, right? Karkaroff and Crumb, Madame Maxime, Fleur Delacour, and Cedric all went back to their respective lounges. Xia Ran, what do you know? Dumbledore noticed that Xia Ran looked a little strange, so he asked. Xia Ran said softly, Dumbledore, how much do you know about Horcruxes? I mean about Voldemort. He felt that the matter of Voldemort's Horcrux should be properly explained. Horcrux. Dumbledore was stunned. Why did Xia Ran suddenly bring up this topic? Immediately he thought of something, his expression changed slightly, and he said, You mean? Harry is related to Voldemort's Horcrux. He seemed very unbelievable. At this time, Dumbledore had not yet fully understood the situation of Voldemort's Horcruxes. He did not know how many Horcruxes Voldemort had made, nor did he know that Harry was one of Voldemort's Horcruxes. Can a living person also become a Horcrux? Sia Rant's face became heavy and she said softly, Yes, I have this guess. After a pause, he continued, Harry's performance. You know, Harry knows Parseltongue, which is Salazar. The abilities of descendants of Slytherin, such as Voldemort himself, are one of them, and obviously, Harry is not a descendant of Slytherin, and the Potter family is not the Gaunt family. So, this ability. 
was passed down to Harry from Voldemort. Because of the soul fragments, Dumbledore was also a knowledgeable person and understood everything. However, he still couldn't believe it. You and I both know that the reason why Voldemort fell more than ten years ago was because Lily's magic, the magic about love, reflected Voldemort's Avada Kedavra, causing his death. Because of the weapon, he was not completely dead and still had enough energy to escape from Godric's hollow. Ran said, at that time, Voldemort's body was destroyed. Do you think? Could it be for this reason that a fragment of Voldemort's soul was allowed to escape? It's attached to Harry's body, you know, Harry was the only living thing in the house at that time. Dumbledore looked solemn, silent, thinking seriously, and whispered, I have to say, Xia Ran, your speculation is very reasonable. Xia Ran secretly said, this was originally your inference, but I just took it in advance and used it. Albus, Xia Ran. Professor McGonagall happened to come out of the school hospital and immediately saw Xia Ran and Dumbledore walking towards them. How is Harry doing, Professor McGonagall? Xia Ran asked. Chapter, 202. Fortunately, I woke up just now. Professor McGonagall said with a smile and said, Poppy gave him some soothing potion to help him sleep. Now that Harry has fallen asleep, I am about to leave. At this time, the school nurse Madame Pomfrey came out of her room. She was slightly surprised when she saw Xia Ran and Dumbledore, and said, Principal, Xia Ran, have you come to see Harry too? Don't bother me. Dumbledore said with a smile. No need to disturb, but don't stay too long. Madame Pomfrey said and shouted softly inside, same for you guys, please go back to the dormitory soon, so as not to affect the patient's rest. I know. Several people whispered. Xia Ran went in and saw Ron, Hermione, Fred, George, and Ginny. The five of them were standing or sitting in front of Harry's bed, and Harry had indeed fallen asleep. Professor. The five said. Xia Ran said softly, did Harry say anything when he woke up? Why did he suddenly pass out? The five people looked at each other silently, and the four Weasley children all had a look of fear on their faces. Finally, Hermione stood up and said, it's Voldemort. As soon as the name appeared, the four Weasley children, as well as Professor McGonagall and Madame Pomfrey, who came in again, all looked unnatural, as if they felt a chill to their bones. Okay, it's you-know-who. Hermione said, Harry, he told you-know-who's name, and there's another person. She looked at several professors and hesitated slightly. Xia Ran encouraged, just tell me, it doesn't matter. What did Harry say? He said. Hermione took a deep breath and said, he said that the mysterious man was asking someone about the whereabouts of something, and there was a high probability that he didn't get an answer. He was very angry. The mysterious man, he seemed very, very angry. Anger. Professor McGonagall looked strange and said, Harry. Isn't he hallucinating? What the mysterious man did now, Harry had not witnessed it with his own eyes, and he was thousands of miles away, how could he know? This child seems to be very ill and needs to stay in the hospital for a few more days. Madame Pomfrey said worriedly. Dumbledore tilted his head slightly and looked at Xia Ran, who nodded slightly. Did he say anything else? Dumbledore asked again. No more. Hermione shook her head and replied. Okay. Dumbledore said, you should go back quickly and let Harry rest for a while and come back to see him tomorrow. He turned around and left the ward again. Professor Fremont, do you know who that person is? Hermione asked, the person who was questioned by the mysterious man. You may all know tomorrow. Xia Ran said softly and walked out of the room, leaving everyone in the room looking around in confusion. Will you know tomorrow? Ginny's expression changed and she whispered, could it be? That he is a very famous person. Because he was kidnapped by a mysterious man, there will be reports about him in the newspapers tomorrow. This. Several people looked at each other. Professor McGonagall also followed out, and Madame Pomfrey continued to return to her room to rest. On the other side, Dumbledore waited for Xia Ran to come out and whispered, Is it because of the Horcrux? 
You are right, Xia Ran, Voldemort may indeed have a soul fragment attached to Harry's body. You know what this means, right? Xia Ran said. Dumbledore fell silent for a moment. Professor McGonagall caught up with him, looking confused, and asked, Albus, Xia Ran, what are you talking about? Alas! Dumbledore sighed, looking extremely tired. Yes, he should have thought of it earlier. Harry can speak parcel tongue. Isn't this the most obvious and eye-catching feature? As a result, he basically ignored it for more than a year, until Xia Ran reminded him tonight, he suddenly woke up like waking up from a big dream. Professor McGonagall was even more confused. About Harry. Xia Ran sighed, we need to think about it again, he must. After a pause, he still said, walking on the road to death. Professor McGonagall was stunned and said blankly, Xia Ran, are you kidding? Albus, this. She looked at Dumbledore and found that the headmaster was still tired but showed no objection. Now Professor McGonagall panicked and said, Harry is a student, a student at Hogwarts. He is also the only child of Lily and James. How could? How could? He won't die. We these adults will definitely protect him. She said this last sentence firmly. Xia Ran rubbed her forehead and smiled bitterly. Harry was Voldemort's horcrux. If Harry didn't die, Voldemort would not be completely eliminated. This situation would be fatal. In other words, Harry must die once to remove the fragments of Voldemort's soul from his body, so that they can finally deal with Voldemort himself. There was such a process in the original time and space. Harry, Ron, and Hermione solved each of Voldemort's horcruxes one by one. In the end, before Snape died, he gave his memory to Harry to let him know he learned the last and most important secret, which also prompted him to make up his mind. Harry watched Snape's memory through the pensive and learned his own fate. He could only die in order to completely kill Voldemort, the Dark Lord. As for that secret, before Snape handed over his memories, he was the only one who knew about it. Before that, of course, there was also an insider named Dumbledore, Snape was told by Dumbledore, but now Dumbledore has not fully understood the connection between Harry and Voldemort. Xia Ran has an understanding of the overall plot direction and can understand many secrets, even secrets that Voldemort himself does not yet understand. Xia Ran, are you lying to us? Professor McGonagall asked expectantly. Xia Ran did not answer, but said, this matter. Let's talk in detail in my office. Dumbledore suddenly interrupted Xia Ran and said, Minerva, please inform Professor Snape. What? Oh. Okay. Professor McGonagall walked away anxiously. Xia Ran followed Dumbledore to the principal's office on the eighth floor. Most of the portraits of the old male and female principals on the wall had fallen asleep at this moment, but when they saw Xia Ran, they quietly opened their eyes and listened to the conversation between the two. Something must have happened, otherwise why would he come to the principal's office so late at night? Unexpectedly, Xia Ran didn't speak immediately, as if she was waiting for something. Now, the old male and female principals of the past generations are even more awakened. Will there be anyone else? After a while, Professor McGonagall and Professor Snape came to the office at the same time. Charon, Professor McGonagall said you have any secrets about Harry Potter? Snape said slowly, you said he is going to die for the last time. Dumbledore, is that true? His expression was very strange and indescribable. Chapter, 203 Xia Ran said helplessly, this is indeed the case. Fact. Ha. Snape seemed to sneer, then looked at Dumbledore, and said slowly, so, our headmaster raised Harry Potter just to allow him to go to Dumbledore when necessary. Death. Like raising a pig to be slaughtered. Dumbledore was silent. Severus. Professor McGonagall was a little surprised. Snape had always disliked Harry, so why was he acting so weird now? Do you think he is happy? Definitely not he was very angry and sad, right? Not that much. Xia Ran understands Snape's mood. Harry has always been Lily's son and has the same green eyes as his mother. This is enough for Snape, just like he wanted Harry before his death in the original time and space. 
look at him the same. He wanted to look into those green eyes. Severus, don't tell me that you are starting to care about that child. Dumbledore said softly. Snape didn't answer, sitting on the chair that Xia Ran had just conjured up, silent and silent. Xia Ran, tell me what you learned, well, or speculated, about. Dumbledore said. Several people's eyes were focused on Xia Ran, even the principals on the walls. It seemed that there was something surprising about that child, Harry Potter, the only one who escaped Avada's cadaver curse. The expected thing happened. The mysterious man made a horcrux to ensure his immortality. Xia Ran said slowly, the diary in the Chamber of Secrets that Harry opened when he was in second grade was from when the mysterious man was young his student days to be precise. A horcrux made, the myrtle in the bathroom is the victim who the mysterious man used to split the soul fragments to make the horcrux. Follow up. Well, let's put this aside for now. Let's mainly talk about Harry. Xia Ran continued, the first time the mysterious man collapsed was because he attacked the Potter family living in Godric's Hollow. When Xia Ran said this, Snape suddenly looked a little uncomfortable. In the end, we all know that James died and Lily died. Before she died, she released an ancient magic that reflected the Avada Kedavra used by the mysterious man, causing his body to be destroyed and reduced to something worse than a wandering ghost. The inferior remnants, I remember I mentioned this to myself after the mysterious man came back from resurrection, also. Because of the Horcrux, the mysterious man never died completely, and no matter how bad his condition was, he still survived. However, in that room at that time, the mysterious man was struck by the rebound of the Avada Kedavra he had released, causing his body to be destroyed. Although he relied on the Horcrux to survive, his soul was inevitably divided and naturally attached to the body at that time. On top of the only living creature in the house. Xia Ran said, glanced around, and whispered, that's Harry Potter. You mean? Harry is one of the mysterious man's Horcruxes. Professor McGonagall was shocked, can living people become Horcruxes? Aren't only dead things able to be made into Horcruxes? There are always exceptions to everything. Xia Ran shrugged. Snape's face seemed to become more gloomy, and he whispered, Harry Potter is the Horcrux of you-know-who, which means. If you want to get rid of you-know-who, Harry Potter must die. I'm afraid you're right, Severus, Dumbledore said. Snape looked ugly and could hardly suppress his anger. He said word by word, Dumbledore, is this the promise you gave me? He glared viciously at Dumbledore. Dumbledore did not evade, with a lot of guilt and apologies on his face. He did not expect at first that Harry was one of Voldemort's horcruxes, and that death was Harry's inevitable destination. Xia Ran suddenly chuckled, facing the dissatisfied looks of Snape, Dumbledore, and Professor McGonagall, and whispered, I have always said that Harry must die for once, but I never said that he should die. I can only die. What's the meaning? Didn't the mysterious man always want to kill Harry with his own hands and get rid of the idea that Harry is his old enemy? Xia Ran chuckled, then let him, let's create opportunities for him. Xia Ran. Professor McGonagall was immediately dissatisfied. Professor McGonagall, don't worry, listen to me. Xia Ran raised her hand and said, Harry has a mysterious person's soul fragment in his body. For us, if we take action, it will naturally be both, Holly and the mysterious man's soul fragments will both die, but what if the mysterious man takes action himself? He chuckled and said, depending on the special connection between the two, he will probably only kill fragments of his own soul, but will not be able to endanger Harry's life. Probably. Snape repeated a word. No one is completely sure about this kind of thing, right? Xia Ran said. Dumbledore tapped his fingers on the table and said, Voldemort can only take action. After he takes action and kills Harry, he must prevent any subsequent harm. That's pretty much what it means. Xia Ran nodded. This was the situation in the original time and space. This kind of opportunity is not easy to find. Dumbledore said with a wry smile. Then do you have a better way? Dumbledore shook his head helplessly, yes, if you have a choice, why bother so much? The problem is that they have no other second choice. Horcruxes. 
Snape suddenly said, in addition to the diary, Harry Potter, and Slytherin's locket, how many horcruxes does the mysterious man have? If his possessions were not completely cleared before the final layout, horcrux, that is just a replay of the scene from more than ten years ago, and he will come back again in ten or twenty years. When this issue was mentioned, Sia Rant's eyes flashed, but he did not speak. He could not explain it well if he knew the details of Voldemort's horcrux. Dumbledore pondered, maybe I can find an old friend. If I guess correctly, it was from him that Tom learned about the concept of horcrux, an ancient evil black magic. Who? Snape asked. It should be familiar to you, Severus, Dumbledore said. Snape's mind was spinning and he whispered, Professor Slughorn. Before he took over as Slytherin's head of house, Slughorn was Slytherin's head of house and his potions teacher. It seems that I have to visit my old friend. I hope he has not moved. Dumbledore said. After chatting for a while, several people said goodbye to Dumbledore one after another and left the principal's office. The next day, because it was Sunday, there were no classes that day. Xia Ran still got up early to get familiar with the magic and improve her control over the magic. The news of Harry's coma has spread to the four colleges, as well as the two magic schools Bosbatons and Durmstrang. Many people say that Harry Potter was so angry that he eventually passed out because of jealousy because he did not become a Hogwarts warrior. Are they all irrational? When Harry learned this statement, he was immediately furious. Who would fall into a coma due to jealousy? You. Ron said, seeing Harry's angry gaze, and said, okay, just kidding. By the way, did the professor say who that person was yesterday? The person who was captured by the mysterious man? Harry asked again. Chapter, 204. Hermione shook her head and said, Today's Daily Prophet hasn't been published yet. Besides, if something happens to someone, do you think the Daily Prophet will really publish it? I'm guessing. As she said this, she made no secret of her disgust for the Daily Prophet. This feeling arose when the Daily Prophet was almost completely controlled by the Ministry of Magic and vigorously smeared Dumbledore and Harry. She basically doesn't subscribe to the Daily Prophet anymore. So I ordered, the quibbler. Ginny said. Luna and I are good friends, aren't we? I think Mr. Lovegood might report on related matters, provided. He has a way to find out. Got this news. Here we come. Ron suddenly pointed out the hospital window. A group of owls flew outside Hogwarts Castle, and two of them flew to this location in the school hospital ward. Ginny continued, open the window quickly, Ron. With a kata sound, Ron opened the window, and the owl flew in with a whir, and he said, thanks. Hermione fed the two owls with the soft food she had brought to Harry, and took off the newspapers hanging on the owls. One was the Daily Prophet and the other was the Quibbler. The owl pecked Hermione's finger lightly and flew away again. Super secret exposed. Secrets about Dumbledore when he was young. Ginny read, getting angry, the Daily Prophet knows how to smear Dumbledore all day long. Aren't you used to it? Hermione asked angrily, now the Daily Prophet doesn't release any news at all, okay? Ron, what did the quibbler say? Harry asked. Ron was holding the newspaper the quibbler and his brows suddenly furrowed. When he heard Harry's voice, he replied, the quibbler said that Ollivander is missing. Ollivander? Ginny raised her eyebrows, the wand maker from Diagon Alley. It turns out it's him. Harry said suddenly. He still remembered that when he first arrived in Diagon Alley, he followed Hagrid to buy a wand. The wand shop owner was so weird. Hermione looked at Harry and asked, is the person you are looking at Ollivander? The one who was captured by the mysterious man. I don't know. Harry smiled bitterly, I only know that he was lying on the ground. Well, the mysterious man, he caught a man and was tortured and interrogated. It seemed that there was no result, so he became furious. Then how did you fall into a coma? Ginny wondered, and how did you know these things? I mean, the mysterious man must be thousands of miles away, and you haven't witnessed it with your own eyes, how can you know about him? What are you doing now? It's like seeing it with your own eyes. I don't know. Harry still shook his head. 
Hermione thought thoughtfully and whispered, perhaps Professor Dumbledore and Professor Fremont should know something, judging from the situation last night. Did they say something? Harry asked hurriedly, he was also eager to understand what happened to him. Hermione shook her head. It seems that we have to find time to ask Professor Fremont. Ron said. On the other side, Sia Ran was sitting in the office, flipping through the latest issues of the Daily Prophet and the Quibbler. He only glanced at the Daily Prophet and threw it directly into the trash can. Waste of my time. Sia Ran whispered, flipping through the Quibbler again. In the Quibbler, the editor-in-chief Mr. Lovegood made sharp remarks. While criticizing Fudge and the Ministry of Magic, he also reported the disappearance of Ollivander, the owner of the wand shop in Diagon Alley, and pointed out that the Ministry of Magic had no control over the matter. The attitude of turning a deaf ear is really incompetent. Of course, the quibbler will definitely mention something about harassing horseflies in passing, which is considered to be a private matter. It's still the same, Mr. Lovegood. Xia Ran laughed. In the following weeks, the teachers and students of Hogwarts, including students from Bosbatons and Durmstrang, focused their attention on the Triwizard Tournament and the disappearance of a wand master. Few people cared at all, many people thought that Ollivander was traveling abroad. On the contrary, Harry Potter has always been the target of ridicule. In their view, Harry being so angry because he did not become a warrior is really interesting, especially to the Slytherin students. Harry felt like he was being laughed at everywhere he went, which annoyed him, but he was relieved that his close friends believed in him. On this day, Xia Ran received a request. Because Ollivander was missing, the Ministry of Magic could not find him, so the inspection of the wands of the three warriors needed another wizard to perform it. Xia Ran, I heard that you are quite accomplished in this area, right? Ludo Bagman said with a smile, it's just you. We hope you can help the three warriors check the wands to see if they have any something went wrong. Xia Ran hesitated. He does have some knowledge of wand science, but that was during his student days, and later he focused on improving his magic power. Now he doesn't pay much attention to wand science, as can be seen from the messages on his panel. Come on, Xia Ran, Ollivander is gone, and apart from you, it will be difficult to find the other wand masters in a short time. Bagman said, the Triwizard Tournament is also being held at Hogwarts. As a host, you have to do your best, right? Okay. Xia Ran finally agreed, and they came to a smaller classroom. At this time, there were already several people in the classroom. Most of the desks had been pushed to the back of the classroom, leaving a large open space in the middle, but there are three desks placed side by side in front of the blackboard, covered with a long piece of velvet. Behind the velvet-covered desks, five more chairs were placed, and on one of them sat a witch wearing a magenta robe. Xia Ran recognized her as Rita Skeeter, a reporter from the Daily Prophet. Xia Ran had dealt with her several times when she was still working at the Ministry of Magic. Victor Crumb stood in a corner with a gloomy face as usual, not talking to anyone. Cedric was talking to Fleur Delacour. Fleur seemed very happy. She kept shaking her head, making her long silver hair shine with a dazzling luster. Xia Ran observed three seconds of silence for Bill. The pot-bellied man holding a large black camera that was slightly smoking in his hand also peeked at Fleur from the corner of his eye. Oh, Xia Ran, it's so nice to see you. Rita Skeeter said with a fake smile, stood up and shook hands with Xia Ran. Xia Ran raised her eyebrows and said, really? However, I have to say, Rita, it's great to see you. Your report is great. Especially the description of my stupid brain. He said and moved his wand slightly, looking half-smiling. Chapter, 205 During the summer, because Xia Ran accepted an interview with the Quibbler and openly criticized Fudge, which made Fudge very angry. The Daily Prophet naturally had to follow suit and slandered Xia Ran, but it was not as powerful as Dumbledore is just lighter. Those reports were, of course, mostly written by Rita Skeeter. So when Xia Ran said this, he seemed to want to pursue it, especially when his fingers touched the end of the wand. Rita Skeeter's expression froze slightly. She had no fear at all. Even though she had slandered Dumbledore and Xia Ran by the way, she still dared to enter Hogwarts to look for report materials. 
but she didn't expect that Xia Ran didn't seem to be prepared to act according to the rules, which made her a little confused. She knew very well that whether she was facing Dumbledore or Charlotte Fremont, she would basically lie down instantly if they really made a move. Seeing this, Ludo Bagman coughed lightly and interjected, ahem. Xia Ran, please get ready. We are going to check the wand soon. I hope nothing goes wrong. He was really afraid that Xia Ran would just take out her wand and cast a curse on Rita Skeeter. Xia Ran seems different now from before, and has changed a lot. Okay, Rita, don't hide the news that should be reported. Xia Ran smiled, put down her fingers, and dropped the wand back into her pocket. Rita Skeeter breathed a sigh of relief and returned to her fearless state, saying, You are right, Xia Ran, I am very keen on reporting the facts, but... Ahem. Bagman coughed twice again. Rita Skeeter shrugged her shoulders and said no more. Xia Ran didn't say anything more. By the way, Xia Ran, how much do you know about our Savior Star? Rita Skeeter asked again, you are his teacher, you must know a lot, right? Saving Star. Xia Ran raised her eyebrows and said, it seems that you gave this nickname to me, right? Don't worry so much, it's always a good title, right? Rita Skeeter waved her hand, I believe people really like to watch news about Harry Potter. She said it with all her heart. Then go interview him yourself. Xia Ran said, it's useless to ask me. Okay. Rita Skeeter looked regretful. Aren't you late? At this time, several other referees, Dumbledore, Karkaroff, and Ms. Maxim, all entered the classroom. The classroom, which was originally relatively spacious, suddenly became crowded. No, Dumbledore, Karkaroff, Ms. Maxim, sit down quickly. Bagman smiled and asked the principals of the three schools to sit down. Rita Skeeter found a corner and sat down. She reached into her crocodile leather handbag, took out a long green dazzling quill and a roll of parchment, and then spread the parchment on her own on the knees. She put the tip of the green quill into her mouth, sucked it deliciously for a while, and then stood the quill upright on the parchment. The quill tube stood on the tip of the pen and trembled slightly. Xia Ran, I didn't expect you to come to check the wands of the warriors. Dumbledore said with a smile, it seems that I can open another wand school. Xia Ran shrugged her shoulders and said, then you can't ask me. A combat class is enough to keep me busy. Bagman looked at the few warriors and said, well, we have to check whether your wands are fully functional and perform well, because in future competitions, your wands will be your most important equipment. Xia Ran, can we start? Xia Ran nodded and said, Miss Delacour, you come first, okay? He walked to the open space in the center of the room. Fleur Delacour walked lightly to Xia Ran and handed him her wand. Xia Ran took the wand, recalled the wand knowledge in her mind, and felt the wand through the powerful magic power. Ha! Huh. He whispered, letting Fleur's wand rotate in his hand, and the tip of the wand suddenly spurted out many pink and gold sparks. He then raised the wand, put it in front of his eyes, and observed carefully. Not bad. Xia Ran said softly, well, the wand is nine and a half inches long. It's very elastic. It's made of maple. It contains. This is. Contains a vila hair. Fleur said proudly, it is my grandma's hair. Fleur was indeed part vila. Yes, that's right. Xia Ran said, I'm not a pure wand maker, but using vila's hair as a wand will make the wand too sensitive and willful. Of course, everyone has their own preferences. Since if it suits you, then. As he spoke, he passed the wand with his fingers and checked whether there were any scratches or bruises on it. Finally, the magic power surged slightly in his body, and he whispered, the orchids are in bloom. A bouquet of flowers blooms on the head of the wand. Great! Xia Ran said, waving the wand to make the flowers disappear, and then handed the wand to Fleur, next. Cedric, it's your turn. Fleur returned to her seat with brisk steps, and when she passed Cedric, she smiled brightly at him. Xia Ran has to observe three seconds of silence for Bill again. This is Mr. Ollivander's product, but he is missing. What a pity. Xia Ran took Cedric's wand, 
shook her head and sighed. Cedric smiled awkwardly. Well, let me take a look. Xia Ran studied the wand carefully for a while. Twelve and a quarter inches, made of ash wood, very elastic, with a core of unicorn tail hair, right? Yes, Professor, Cedric replied. It's in excellent condition. It seems you take care of it regularly. Xia Ran praised it. Just wiped it last night, Cedric said, grinning. Fire is raging. Xia Ran asked Cedric's wand to spit out a stream of red fire, turning into a badger squatting in the air. His eyes made of flames glanced around, and he waved the wand again to make the badger disappear. No problem, he said. Cedric returned to where he had been standing with his wand in hand. Mr. Crum, it's your turn. Crum stood up, shrugged his chubby shoulders, walked toward Xia Ran listlessly with his splayed feet. He stuffed the wand over and stood there with a frown on his face, his hands in the pockets of his robe. Inside. Gregovich's products, I have met him once. He is a very skilled wand maker, not inferior to Ollivander. Xia Ran raised the wand and looked at it carefully for a while in the sunlight outside the window. Horbeam wood contains the heart cords of the fire dragon, right? Crumb nodded. Much thicker than what is usually seen, very stiff, ten and a quarter inches. Flock of birds. Xia Ran waved Crumb's wand, and suddenly there was a loud bang in the classroom, as if a musketeer had just fired. A flock of snow white birds chirped and flew out of the window. Very well, no problem, Bagman. Chapter 206 Xia Ran stepped aside and was about to leave directly. Bagman stopped him and said, Xia Ran, don't be too busy walking and take pictures. Let's take a photo together. The man with the black camera jumped up and cleared his throat. Bagman turned to the principals behind the table and said excitedly, Take pictures. Dumbledore, Karkaroff, Ms. Maxim, take a group photo. Rita, the referee, and the warriors take a group photo, what do you think? Like? Great, right? Uh, okay. Rita Skeeter said, her eyes flashing, maybe we can take some photos of students in Hogwarts later. Xia Ran knew Rita Skeeter's purpose. Besides Harry Potter, who else among the Hogwarts students could interest her so much? But this was not a big deal. Dumbledore had not expressed any objection, so why should he jump out to refute it? It took a long time to take pictures because Ms. Maxim was too tall. She was even taller than Hagrid. This resulted in her blocking others no matter where she stood. At most, she was blocked. Show one hand or two feet. And the room was too small for the photographer to stand far enough away to frame her, so Ms. Maxim ended up sitting down while everyone else stood around her. Karkaroff kept twirling his fingers around his goatee, trying to curl it crumb, the best seeker in the world, was supposed to be used to this, playing in the World Cup Finals. Will he face this kind of situation less often? In the end, he was dodging and hiding behind everyone. The photographer seemed particularly motivated to get Fleur in front, who knows why. Right? Furong had no choice but to stand in front of everyone, right next to her principal. But she looked happy and didn't feel worried at all. After taking pictures, it was almost time for dinner, and a group of people entered the Hogwarts Great Hall. Just as Hagrid came in, he saw Ms. Maxim and seemed very excited and happy. Because he was covered in dirt, he didn't know what he had done before. I did something and felt a little embarrassed. Hagrid said hello, turned around and left immediately. Halfway there, he suddenly turned around and said, Sia Ran, can you come out for a moment? Xia Ran was surprised, but still followed. Hagrid, what are you doing? What's the matter? Xia Ran asked. Hagrid looked back again, and took a long time to look away. Xia Ran followed and looked over, and saw a tall figure disappearing behind the auditorium door, and immediately rolled her eyes. Ahem. Hagrid deliberately coughed twice, his face a little red, and muttered, You don't know, Xia Ran, you don't understand. You're too young. Come on. Xia Ran said angrily, Tell me, what's the matter? Hagrid looked around. At this time, they had arrived at the edge of the field, close to the forbidden forest. 
There were no more students playing around, but Hagrid still lowered his voice and said, You know what the first project is? Really, Xia Ran. The first event of the Triwizard Tournament. Xia Ranshin said that of course he knew, and he knew exactly what the second and third projects were. Grab the dragon eggs, right? He replied. Hagrid was startled and said in surprise, You know. Well, you're right, it's about grabbing dragon eggs. Saying that he didn't care where Xia Ran got the information from, his eyes revealed a look of obsession, and he murmured, Dragon egg, back then Norbert, oh, no, now it's called Norbert, that's a female dragon it hatched from an egg. Don't think about asking me to help you steal dragon eggs, right? Xia Ran said with a smile. No, no. Hagrid waved his hand, Charlie and the others haven't escorted the fire dragon to Hogwarts yet. Charlie Weasley is the second child of the Weasley family and raises dragons in Romania. Do you really have this idea? Xia Ran asked in surprise. Hagrid scratched his head and muttered, Is it an idea? Just think about it. It's not a crime, right? You have no chance. Xia Ran said, The fire dragons that the warriors have to face are all brought from the dragon farms in Romania. Charlie and the others have definitely counted the number of dragon eggs, and there is no way they will give you a chance to steal the dragon eggs. And he shook his head helplessly and said, Can the fire dragon be raised in Hogwarts? There are many strong wizards in the dragon farms in Romania, so that they can subdue the fire dragon. You alone. You can't raise it. Hagrid seemed to whisper a few words, and finally said, Xia Ran, please come with me to welcome Charlie and his dragon guard team in two days. I'm afraid it will be difficult for me to do it alone. Xia Ran agreed. Sure enough, another week passed, and on the weekend, Xia Ran received a notice from Hagrid, hoping that he would enter the Forbidden Forest together after sunset. The trio of Harry, Ron, and Hermione who sent the message were curious, Professor Fremont, what are you going to do in the Forbidden Forest? Isn't that place dangerous? The trio was able to violate the ban many times and go deep into the Forbidden Forest, and they were quite familiar with the situation inside. Xia Ran glanced at the three of them and said with a half-smile, You still know the danger, but how many times have you been in there? Well, Professor, this is different, right? Hermione couldn't help but asked, Is it related to the Triwizard Tournament? The Triwizard Tournament? Harry's eyes lit up and he asked, Yes, Professor, is it the first project? What are they going to do? Okay, you'll know when the time comes. Anyway, it's very exciting. Xia Ran said perfunctorily and sent the trio away. After dinner, he arrived at Hagrid's hut on the edge of the Forbidden Forest and stepped in together. Inside the Forbidden Forest. Are you really going to do this? Isn't it bad? A very low female voice suddenly said in front of the empty cabin door. Careful, Hermione, you stepped on me. Harry whispered. Don't worry, with Harry's invisibility cloak, Professor and the others won't be able to find us. Ron said confidently. It turned out that after Harry, Ron, and Hermione returned to the lounge, their curiosity became uncontrollable and they decided to use Harry's invisibility cloak to go to Hagrid's cabin in advance and wait for Professor Fremont to come. Then follow them deep into the Forbidden Forest to see what Professor Fremont and Hagrid are going to do in the Forbidden Forest. What is the first event of the Triwizard Tournament? There are many invisibility cloaks in the world, but the one inherited from Harry's family is one of the Deathly Hallows and the most concealed invisibility cloak in the world. Therefore, Xia Ran did not notice the invisible cloak more than a hundred meters behind her. Three Little Tales Of course, he didn't expect the trio to be so bold. The Forbidden Forest occupies a vast area, much larger than the Hogwarts Castle Square. There are countless dangerous creatures or endangered magical species living in it. It can be said to be one of the most mysterious forests in the world. Hagrid was very familiar with this place, and Xia Ran was brave and fearless. The two of them quickly penetrated several miles deep into the Forbidden Forest. Chapter 207 Xia Ran and Hagrid walked around a bush and walked to a relatively open area. They immediately stopped and stopped walking, as if waiting for something to arrive. 
the trio of Harry, Ron, and Hermione followed behind, cautiously. Fortunately, Sia Ran and Hagrid opened the way, and they were wearing invisibility cloaks, otherwise they felt that they would definitely encounter a lot of dangers. The Forbidden Forest is never peaceful and peaceful. What are they waiting for? Ron asked in a low voice. The trio, wearing invisibility cloaks, stopped in the shadow of the trees more than a hundred meters away. Harry shook his head and whispered in the same low voice, I don't know. It seems that Professor Fremont and Hagrid are waiting for something. Shoo. Hermione suddenly signaled the two of them to be silent. More than a hundred meters away, Xia Ran raised her eyes and glanced around, and even stayed in their bush for a moment. Harry and Ron didn't even dare to breathe with their mouths shut tightly. Xia Ran seemed unaware and looked away again. Ha Hermione breathed a sigh of relief and whispered, Professor Fremont's perception is so sharp. Harry and Ron both nodded. At that moment, they all felt that they might have been discovered by Professor Fremont. On the other side, Hagrid asked strangely, Xia Ran, what's wrong? Nothing. Xia Ran frowned slightly and replied, that place seems a little weird. There are a lot of weird things. Hagrid said disapprovingly, this is already deep in the Forbidden Forest. Nothing weird would be abnormal. Xia Ran thought the same, who knew what species existed deep in the Forbidden Forest. I'm afraid even Dumbledore, the eldest headmaster, doesn't know clearly. Look, it's coming. Hagrid suddenly raised his hand and pointed to the sky, saying excitedly. Xia Ran looked up at the sky, and saw a group of shadows flying quickly above the sky that had begun to darken, as if a mountain peak had collapsed. In the blink of an eye, it covered the sky above Xia Ran and the others, and the surrounding areas became completely dark and silent. The cute little guys are here, Hagrid said excitedly. Xia Ran is speechless, little one. I don't think even a real giant can match the size of a dragon, let alone a hybrid giant like you. But, dragons. Xia Ran marveled. Although these dragons with wings are not the kind of dragons he thought, but in any case, with their size, hard scales, and wild and ferocious flying in the sky, they are always. It will give people a shocking feeling. The trio of Harry, Ron, and Hermione behind them were completely stunned. That's. A dragon? Ron said in disbelief. No. Harry whispered, not one dragon, but three. This is the first project. Three dragons. Three warriors. Hermione whispered, although she was equally shocked. Are they crazy? Ron was shocked. Let the students deal with the dragon. Doesn't this mean that they will die? Look at their size. Harry felt that what Ron said was very reasonable. Yes, three dragons looked so fierce. How could students deal with them? He thought to himself that even the teachers in the school might not be able to cope with it, right? Now he understood why the Triwizard Tournament was banned and why there were dead warriors in the past. No wonder some warriors died. Hermione said, I have read in books that adult wizards cannot deal with the dragon alone. How can we students be able to deal with it? Fortunately, Dumbledore set the age limit, otherwise. Ron said, thinking that if he became a warrior, he would have to face such a terrifying creature. He shivered nervously. Harry also felt lucky. He had originally envied Cedric for becoming a Hogwarts warrior, but now that feeling of envy suddenly turned into sympathy. Hagrid, get out of the way, we're about to land. Someone suddenly shouted loudly from the dragon's back. Hagrid also shouted loudly, Get down, we retreat. Boom. 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 The three adult fire dragons were controlled by the dragon breeders and landed in the open space deep in the forbidden forest. Xia Ran felt that the ground was shaking for a moment, as if an earthquake had occurred. Dozens of figures jumped off the back of the giant dragon. They were all wearing thick robes. Their faces were haggard and dusty, and many of them had dark circles under their eyes. They were yawning constantly, as if they were very sleepy. Hagrid, Xia Ran is here too, please. One of them said, he was none other than Charlie Weasley. 
We need to surround the fire dragons with thick wooden boards first to prevent them from running around and breaking into Hogwarts. Another steady wizard said with a tired look on his face. Xia Ran said, thick boards. I'll do it. As he spoke, he took out his wand and waved it lightly, and the magic power surged out. From the edge of the clearing, pieces of hard wood fell from the sky. With the force of the fall, they penetrated straight into the ground and were erected four to five meters high, connecting the forbidden forest with the this isolation. What a powerful magic! The dragon breeders exclaimed. As wizards at the Romanian dragon farm, each of them is very strong, otherwise they would not be able to tame the dragon. However, to achieve this step, one person is determined to do so. It's possible, but only if a group of them take action at the same time. Charlie was also surprised and said, Xia Ran, your magic power has improved very rapidly. Xia Ran smiled. It's so beautiful. Hagrid said softly in a different tone than usual, his eyes fixed on the three adult fire dragons with a look of obsession. It seems that because of Xia Ran's magic, the three adult fire dragons were frightened or angered. They stood up on their hind legs, roared and snorted, and balls of flames emerged from their open mouths. The long fangs spurted out from the mouth and shot into the dark night sky. Their necks are raised high, and their mouths are as high as fifty feet from the ground. No matter how tall humans are, such as the hybrid giant Hagrid, they are like little humans in front of them. A silver-blue fire dragon with a pair of long sharp horns, a green fire dragon with smooth scales, and a red fire dragon with a circle of strange thin sharp horns around its face. The three fire dragons roared and roared, making a group of dragon keepers suddenly nervous. Quickly, subdue them and don't let them have the urge to break out. There are still a few days until the first event of the Triwizard Tournament. We can't leak the news in advance. A dragon breeder shouted loudly and ran up go. Let's talk about old times later. Charlie said, and ran forward. Seven or eight wizards worked together to deal with a fire dragon. They pulled on thick iron chains and tried desperately to subdue the three dragons. The iron chains were tightly connected to the dragon's legs. And a thick leather belt with a dragon's neck. So beautiful. Simply the most beautiful creature in the world. Hagrid murmured. Xia Ran didn't take action. After all, he was just a teacher at Hogwarts, not a dragon tamer. He raised his head and saw a pair of ferocious eyes, that of the red fire dragon. The pupils were as vertical as a cat's eyes, not just because of fear or anger, the eyes were bulging. The red armored fire dragon let out a terrifying roar, shrill and harsh. Its eyes were suddenly fixed on a certain place, and its ferocity and cruelty were unmistakable. Chapter 208 Hiss The moment the red-armored fire dragon stared at it with its eyes raised, Harry, Ron, and Hermione immediately took a breath and their hearts pounded. It. It found us. Ron's teeth were chattering. Probably. No. Harry's heartbeat increased and his palms became sweaty. Stop talking. Hermione whispered, her eyes still fixed on the red fire dragon. The fire dragon's vertical pupils were cold, as if looking at a few ants. As soon as the huge dragon head raised, a ball of red flames began to shine. That's. Hermione's expression changed drastically and she hurriedly shouted, Get out of the way. She no longer cared about the fear of being discovered by Professor Fremont. Harry also reacted in time, and together with Hermione, he pulled Ron and ran aside quickly to avoid the breath of the red fire dragon. What? Harry? Hermione? Ron? Why did you come here? Hagrid said in shock, you shouldn't have come. Suddenly he looked up at the fire dragon and shouted, run. Get away. Sia ran, Charlie. Hagrid was now deeply complaining about why he didn't bring his umbrella. His umbrella was his wand. Got it. Charlie shouted, quick. Subdue this fire dragon. A group of dragon tamers took out their wands and aimed at the red fire dragon. At this time. Collapse. A loud shout overwhelmed all other sounds and resounded throughout the depths of the forbidden forest. Call. 
A ray of fire was like a bomb shelling, lighting up the dark night sky and hitting the red fire dragon directly. Although the layer of red fine scales was thick, it was still unable to withstand the magic of the coma spell, and sparks shot out all over the sky. Beauty The red fire dragon had a crooked body and stood precariously on its hind legs. Its mouth was wide and it let out a final silent roar. The flames in its nostrils and mouth were suddenly extinguished, but it was still green. Smoke, then it slowly fell down, as if unwilling, as if angry, as if fear, and hit the ground heavily. Boom! This powerful red fire dragon with bright red scales weighing several tons crashed to the ground. The ground shook a few times and the trees shook, as if there was an earthquake. Who is it? The dragon tamers all looked up and looked back, just in time to see the sparks extinguish at the tip of Xia Rant's wand. Is it him? The combat professor at Hogwarts. So strong. One person subdued a fire dragon. We all need the combined efforts of seven or eight people to do it. A group of dragon tamers were shocked. Indeed, it was Xia Ran who took action. He had the wand in his hand, he had taken it out just now but had not yet put it back into his pocket, and turned around to aim at the other two fire dragons. Fainted to the ground. Fainted to the ground. He waved his wand twice in succession, and two brilliant blazes of fire flew quickly and hit the other two giant dragons. The smaller green dragon and the silver blue dragon fell to the ground one after another. Their layers were hard and thick. His scales seemed unable to withstand Xia Rant's spell, and he fell directly into a deep coma and sleep. The dragon tamers put down their wands and looked at each other. There was no need for them to act together in a tacit agreement. Xia Ran could handle it all by himself, which was really frustrating. They hurried towards the giant dragons lying on the ground. Each dragon was like a hill. They tightened the chain and tied the chain firmly to the iron pillar. Then they waved their wands and nailed the iron pillar deeply into the ground. In. Xia Ran, thank you. Charlie said, wiping the sweat from his forehead, you are much better than before. How can you deal with a giant dragon so easily? He was very emotional. Professor, if you are willing to be a dragon tamer, there is basically no dragon in the world that you cannot tame. Another wizard smiled. It really deserves to be Hogwarts. Another dragon tamer exclaimed, any professor can have such terrifying magic power. I had heard of the name Hogwarts when I was in my hometown. The White Wizard's Territory. Xia Ran thought to herself that I relied on the Force Points, otherwise. I would be lucky to become a level 5 wizard. How could I dare to hope for a level 6 wizard? But these words don't need to be spoken to outsiders. You three. Tell me, how did you get here? On the other side, Hagrid had a stern look on his face and was scolding Harry, Ron and Hermione. The trio bowed their heads and said nothing in response. Xia Ran and Charlie walked over, and Charlie also scolded with a serious face, Ron, who allowed you to run out at night. You also took Harry and Hermione with you. This is the Forbidden Forest. You don't know how big it is. Is it dangerous? Ron muttered something, but it was obvious that Charlie didn't hear him clearly. When he glared, Ron immediately stopped mumbling. Harry said in shame, I was the one who suggested following Hagrid and Professor Fremont to come over and see what happened. We were wrong. Hermione admitted her mistake sincerely. Hagrid's face brightened slightly and he said, Never again. You shouldn't know about this kind of thing. The trio breathed a sigh of relief, and Harry couldn't help but say, Professor Fremont, you are so powerful, you can subdue a giant dragon with just one spell. Yes, Professor Fremont, Charlie and the others were not subdued. Ron also said, sensing Charlie's gaze, he immediately shut up. Charlie hummed, if you had Xia Rant's skills, where would you like to go and how many people would ask? The question is, you are only in fourth grade, what do you know? Xia Ran smiled and said, you should study hard. There are not many shortcuts to the growth of magic power. Only when the magic power becomes stronger can we deal with various dangers. But she was thinking in her heart that force points are the best shortcut. Charlie, can we take a closer look? 
Hagrid turned back to look at the three fire dragons with an obsessed expression, as if he had seen Ms. Maxim. The trio looked at each other and giggled. Then let's take a closer look. Anyway, they were all knocked unconscious by Xia Ran. Charlie did not refuse. Xia Ran put the wand back in his pocket and approached the three sleeping adult fire dragons with the others. The huge dragon body, the ferocious dragon head, and the fierce breathing, the closer you get, the more you can understand the terror of the giant dragon. How about it? It's very powerful, isn't it? Charlie said with a smile, although raising a dragon is a very dangerous thing, it is always very satisfying to be able to tame these powerful big guys. Xia Ran squatted down and looked at the red dragon that he had knocked unconscious at the beginning. The eyes of the red fire dragon were still slightly open, as if Xia Ran's stun spell had not completely knocked it out. A layer of hard and thick scales with extremely strong defense. What kinds of things do you have here, Charlie? Xia Ran asked. This is the Chinese fireball. Charlie pointed at the red fire dragon in front of them and said, the smaller green one is the ordinary Welsh green dragon, and the last silver blue one is the Swedish Brachiosaurus. Chinese fireball. Xia Ran raised her eyebrows. Could this kind of dragon with wings be a giant dragon from China? Chapter, 209. It seems that I acted lightly just now. Xia Ran thought to himself, stood up, and the fire dragon's pupils moved with him. Well, I think we should give them a bottle of sleeping pills to let them sleep for a while, so as not to make them unhappy due to the fatigue of the journey and the unfamiliarity and discomfort of the new environment. Charlie said, helping the other dragon trainers take out that the potion was mixed into the food and fed to the three fire dragons. Although they were hit by Xia Rant's coma spell, relying on the dragon's strong body and hard scales, the three dragons fell to the ground and still managed to stay awake. Xia Ran guessed that it might take a level 7 wizard to knock them unconscious with one blow. Although a level 6 wizard could win with one blow, the effect was always lacking. Is this the fire dragon? Awesome! Ron whispered, looking at the three fire dragons with fear and hunger. He had the right to brag. That's right. Charlie's face suddenly became solemn, he turned around and warned, this is the first event of the Triwizard Tournament. You three must keep it secret. You must not leak the news in advance and let the three warriors know it. Yes, this will break the rules. Well, we won't, Hermione replied. Ron. Harry. Charlie called seriously. The two nodded slowly and said reluctantly, Okay, we get it. Xia Ran went around and saw that the three adult fire dragons were different, but their resistance to the wizard's magic was as strong as ever. Perhaps. Using fire dragon skin to make a robe or armor should be of great use. Xia Ran murmured in her heart, I am afraid that except for wizards above level 6, it will be difficult for other wizards to cause too much effective damage. Xia Ran soon thought that she was a level 6 wizard, so she gave up the idea. No wizard below level 6 would be his opponent. Level 6 wizards were on par with each other. The two terrifying level 7 wizards, Dumbledore and Voldemort were no match for him for the time being, so he had one more. A piece of fire dragon leather armor doesn't seem to be of much use. However, if most wizards in the Order of the Phoenix had a piece of fire dragon leather armor, their combat power would be directly increased by 20 to 30 percent. By the way, Charlie. Xia Ran came around and saw Charlie talking to Ron, asking him how his grades were and how Fred, George, and Ginny were doing now. Very good. Ron replied, then hesitated a little and said, but Fred and George don't know what they are doing. They always discuss it secretly. I think they must have some little secret. Oh, that's right, that's normal. Charlie said. The two twin brothers of the Weasley family didn't seem to really surprise anyone when they did any weird things. What's wrong, Xia Ran? He looked at Xia Ran and asked. Xia Ran coughed lightly and whispered, These dragons. Can they be killed? What? Charlie looked at Xia Ran blankly. Hagrid was also startled and said hurriedly, Xia Ran, don't be impulsive. These dragons are so beautiful, how can they be killed? Not to mention they will be used in the Triwizard Tournament. 
Professor, why do you think? Hermione couldn't help but ask. Kill these dragons. Xia Ran shrugged her shoulders and said with a smile, Don't you think the fire dragon scales are very effective when used to make leather armor? Well, what you said makes sense. Hagrid nodded first, then waved his hand and said seriously, But how can you kill such cute and beautiful creatures? It's too cruel. Xia Ran, really, yes, your proposal is too cruel. Okay, just kidding. Xia Ran said. Xia Ran, these dragons are rare. It would be illegal to do anything without permission. Charlie warned. Xia Ran said, Don't worry, I won't do anything. I never do anything illegal. I don't have much courage. Charlie wanted to say that you have been proposing to overthrow the Minister of Magic Fudge, which is the most daring thing to do, but you said you are cowardly. After looking at the three fire dragons in front of him, he finally swallowed these words. There are three in total. Hagrid changed the topic and asked, so, each warrior needs to deal with one, right? What do they need to do, fight the fire dragon? Impossible, Hagrid. Harry couldn't help but say, fighting a fire dragon? You have to be at least as good as Professor Fremont to do it, right? Xia Rant's level. Charlie smiled, that's not fighting the fire dragon, but a unilateral massacre, Xia Rant's massacre of them. Don't say that, Charlie. Xia Ran said, I won't take action randomly. Professor Fremont is so awesome. If I could be as awesome. Ron envied. Young man, work hard. Charlie said with a smile, you have to learn from Hermione. If you don't listen well in class and don't have enough mastery and proficiency in magic, it's all vain. I think Hermione might become like Xia Xia. If you are so strong, you. He shook his head as he spoke, not giving any face to his biological brother. Hermione blushed, trying not to look too proud. Xia Ran didn't say much, but he believed that Ron had indeed grown into a level 6 wizard. The possibility was almost zero, but Hermione and Harry had a certain possibility, as it was reflected in the original time and space. More than ten years later, Hermione became the Minister of Magic, Harry was the director of the Department of Magical Law Enforcement, and Ron was the owner of a shop. Well, I think. Charlie said, answering Hagrid's question, probably just passing by the fire dragon, if you really fight the fire dragon, let alone the students, even us adult wizards, except for Xia Ran and others among the few people we have counted. The others cannot deal with the dragon with the strength of one person alone, if the situation goes bad, we can come to the rescue at any time and recite the extinguishing spell to the fire dragon. What they want are female fire dragons that are laying nests and hatching eggs. I don't understand why. Charlie shook his head and continued, but I can tell you that anyone who encounters the Chinese fireball dragon will never get a good harvest. It is the most explosive among the three dragons. Thinking of the scene just now where the red fire dragon was constantly breathing fire, several people nodded immediately. At this time, Charlie's five dragon-taming companions walked toward the Chinese fireball with one foot high and one foot low. They carried a blanket with a nest of huge red fire dragon eggs inside. They carefully placed the dragon egg next to the Chinese fireball. Hagrid couldn't restrain his inner desire and groaned. I've counted them, Hagrid, said Charlie sternly. I know, I didn't think about it. Hagrid muttered, still staring at the fire dragon egg. Xia Ran tapped the fire dragon egg lightly with her wand. The surge of magic power inside was no weaker than that of a level 3 wizard. This was just a fire dragon that was still in its gestation period. Okay, it's getting late, you should go back. Charlie said, you three, don't tell others the news. He warned Harry, Ron, and Hermione again. Chapter, 210 when Xia Ran and the others walked out of the Forbidden Forest, the moon was in the sky, stars were hanging high in the night sky, and the castle was completely dark. Hu hu hu. The cold wind has started, and several people can't help but feel a little cold. Good night. Hagrid staggered towards his hut, still looking dazed, as if he had not recovered from the fire dragons and dragon eggs. Let's go. Xia Ran said, leading Harry, Ron, and Hermione into the castle. 
The trio was still immersed in what they had just seen deep in the forbidden forest and had not completely recovered. Fire Dragon Although they had seen a giant dragon once in Hagrid's hut when they were in first grade, it was a newly hatched juvenile dragon. How could it be compared with these fully grown, ferocious adult dragons? Powerful. Powerful. Horrible. Don't think about it. Xia Ran smiled and said, go back and rest. When will you have the magic power as powerful as a river? The so-called giant dragon is just a creature that can be defeated easily. But how long will it take? Ron said longingly, but if it really happens. As he spoke, his expression became dazed. After looking at Professor Fremont, Harry secretly made up his mind. He hoped that he could become as powerful as the professor. He decided to study hard with Hermione instead of lazily playing every day. Hermione applauded his decision. But unfortunately, a newspaper disrupted Harry's plan the next day, and a new issue of the Daily Prophet was released. Harry, it was so interesting to read the newspaper about you. When we went to the auditorium for breakfast in the morning, Fred handed over a newspaper with a narrow smile on his face. What? Harry still looked confused and reached out to take it. George also took a newspaper and read. I admit that not being able to become a Hogwarts warrior made me a little disappointed and unhappy. The coma that night was indeed partly due to this factor. Harry suddenly felt an ominous feeling in his heart. Ron grabbed the newspaper, unfolded it and read, Rita Skeeter's exclusive report, interesting facts about Hogwarts, events surrounding the Triwizard Tournament, and our survival in the catastrophe. S. Boy. Harry, when did you accept an interview with this woman? Ginny asked, Rita Skeeter is very good at adding insult to injury and telling nonsense. You are in big trouble. No. Harry exclaimed, on the day the warriors tested the wands, there was a woman walking around and said she wanted to talk to me for a while and talk about me and my family, but I didn't say anything. Boone and Hermione are both here, they can prove it. He pointed at two good friends. Ron and Hermione nodded. They proved useless. Fred said. It's all published in the Daily Prophet now. Take a good look. What exactly did you say? Ron cleared his throat and read in a low voice, Rita Skeeter's exclusive report, Harry Potter, a name familiar to all of us, the only person to escape from Avada's cadaver, Black the Devil's old enemy. It's okay. Harry said. Ron glanced briefly at the paper and said, Oh, man, I didn't think you'd want to hear any more. Read it, Ron, I want to hear it. Hermione said, Ginny, please pass me that piece of bread. I'm so hungry. I told you too, Hermione. George said with a smile. What? Hermione asked confused. Ron continued to read from the newspaper. I'm very happy that the Triwizard Tournament is being held, but I don't agree with Dumbledore's measures to set an age limit. He is too conservative and too old. He should abdicate and make way for others. That old guy can no longer keep up with the times. Cedric is a good classmate, but I think I am better than him, and I should be the warrior of Hogwarts. Think about it, who defeated the Dark Lord? It was me, Harry. Potter. In the opinion of our Harry Potter classmates, the reason why Dumbledore set the age limit is to exclude him, because if he is willing to compete, Cedric Diggory undoubtedly does not have any ability to become a warrior. Maybe, even Victor Crumb and Fleur Delacour, can they compare to the Dark Lord? No way. Far from it. How can they be his Harry Potter rivals? For Dumbledore, it would be too uninteresting for Harry Potter to participate in a must-win competition. Perhaps this is indeed why Dumbledore banned Harry Potter from participating. Neville was very surprised when he heard this and asked Harry, Harry, do you think so? Harry felt that he was filled with anger and had nowhere to vent. He said angrily, how is that possible? Aren't you familiar with my character? Harry, you are out of luck. Ginny shook her head pitifully and said, you have offended your classmates at Hogwarts, um. She looked at the pointing gestures of the Durmstrang and Bosbaton students. Click and continue, there are students from two other schools. The public enemy of the whole school. Fred praised, Harry, you are my idol. 
we really hope we can make it this far. George said. Fred, how about we also go to Rita Skeeter for an interview? Come on. Ginny sneered and said, that woman Rita Skeeter won't pay attention to you. The students having breakfast around him all pointed at Harry, and some even laughed and commented without scruples, such as the Slytherin group. He can definitely become a warrior. Can he defeat Cedric? Defeat Crumb? Oh, our Harry Potter warrior, his brain wasn't eaten by an ogre, right? Malfoy, Goyle, Crab and others laughed loudly. Harry lowered his head to eat, avoiding everyone's eyes. He was very angry inside. That woman. How could she say that? I never said these words. Don't worry, Harry, don't pay attention to them. Hermione comforted in a low voice. It's not over yet. Ron said, Harry, you can see for yourself. Harry took it and flipped through it. Ginny, Hermione, and Neville all leaned over to look at it. Why are you so confident in defeating other warriors? Harry's answer is not unexpected. I think it was my parents who gave me strength. I know if they could see me now, they would be very proud of me. Yes, I admit, I still cry for them at certain times of the night, I feel there is no shame in admitting this. I know that if I become a warrior and participate in the competition, then no one in the competition will be my opponent, and nothing can hurt me, because they are guarding me in the dark. Harry felt the food he had just eaten rolling around, and he was filled with a burning sense of shame, and his whole face seemed to be on fire. Chapter, 211 There is a second edition, Harry, you haven't finished it yet. Fred reminded. Hermione reached out and turned to the second page of the newspaper. Harry finally found his first love at Hogwarts. His close friend Colin Creevy said that Harry was inseparable from a girl named Hermione Granger. Miss Granger stunningly beautiful, extremely smart, and born into a muggle family, like Harry, she is also one of the top students in Hogwarts school. He also has two or more followers, please forgive me, I only identified two, one is Ron Weasley, his nominal good friend. The youngest son of the Weasley family, right, that Weasley, the poor red-haired Weasley, the other is Neville Longbottom, a boy who is often stupid. By the way, Ginny Weasley, the youngest daughter of the Weasley family, also seems to have an admiring attitude towards Harry. Therefore, she and Miss Hermione Granger are on the same level, often quarreling, and even directly take action. Fight for the ownership of Harry Potter. Harry also admitted that he was equally troubled by this. Harry was stunned. Are he and Hermione in a relationship? Ron and Neville are his followers. As for Ginny's admiration for him, he had always been aware of it, but when did Ginny and Hermione become inseparable? Still quarreling and fighting. Is this woman crazy? Harry asked angrily, how could she write something in the newspaper that I didn't say? Rita Skeeter is such a nonsense woman, Ginny snorted, sitting back, paying no attention to the news in the newspaper, if not ignoring the reddening of her ears. Harry, am I your follower? Neville asked blankly. Harry felt like he was going to vomit blood from anger. Okay, Harry, ignore these unreasonable reports. Hermione raised her head and said, whatever they say, just ignore it. She acted as if the word Hermione hadn't been mentioned in the newspaper. Harry felt that what Hermione said made sense but he had to endure the cynicism of people, mainly Slytherin students, when they saw him, and they laughed at him in different ways. Want a handkerchief, Potter? To save you from crying in transfiguration class. When did you become the top student in the school, Potter? Maybe you and Longbottom started this school together, right? Harry pretended not to hear these words, even though he felt very uncomfortable inside. But his mentality is obviously not as good as Hermione's. Because of Rita Skeeter's report, which said that Hermione was astonishingly beautiful and extremely smart, many Slytherin girls treated Hermione with the same attitude and launched sarcastic attacks. As long as they encountered it, they would never don't miss any opportunity to ridicule. Amazingly beautiful. Is it her? Pansy Parkinson said strangely when she met Hermione for the first time after Rita's article was published, is she judging the brown rat based on what? Ignore it. Hermione looked calm and spoke with no loss of dignity. 
she took the first step forward and strode past a group of giggling Slytherin girls, as if she didn't hear anything. These useless things. There is no need to pay attention to the words, Harry. To be honest, Harry expressed great admiration and envy for Hermione's mentality. But soon something else replaced Harry's troubled news reports, and he breathed a sigh of relief. The Triwizard Tournament is about to start its first project. Harry and the others saw the fire dragon and knew what the first project was. Are they really going to use fire dragons? One day, the three of them were chatting in the lounge. There were not many people around, and they were all laughing and playing, so the three of them could not be heard. Ron said uneasily, that's a fire dragon. I asked Charlie. Except for top wizards like Professor Fremont, even most adult wizards, if they are alone, will not be able to face a giant dragon. Just run for your life. Aren't there protective measures? Charlie said that they would all be waiting aside. Seeing that the situation was not good, they immediately stepped forward to subdue the fire dragon. Hermione also looked embarrassed. Dumbledore and the others will definitely be at the competition. Think about how easy it was for Professor Fremont to subdue the fire dragon, right? Harry said, nothing will happen. By the way, does that pretty boy Cedric know the news? Ron suddenly asked. What? The content of the first competition. Ron lowered his voice, didn't you notice? Hagrid took Ms. Maxim into the Forbidden Forest last night, oh, yes, you were not detained, I happened to be coming out of solitary confinement at Snape's place, and I saw Karkaroff following behind. They definitely knew the content of the first competition. They shouldn't tell their students, right? This is against the rules. Hermione said uneasily. Ron scoffed. Then let's find an opportunity to tell Cedric that I don't want the Hogwarts warriors to lose their first game, Harry said. The next day, the trio found such an opportunity. Hermione played a little trick and caused Cedric's bag to break. He had to stay to repair the bag and pick up the books. Hey, Cedric, the trio popped up. Hello. Cedric replied, thank you. He took the book that the three of them had picked up for him. I'll tell you a piece of news. Don't let it leak out, let alone us telling you. Hermione lowered her voice. What? Cedric said barely audibly. The first game is the fire dragon. Ron whispered, looking around like a thief. What? Cedric was stunned, how do you know? Harry said impatiently, don't worry about how we know it. Just remember that the first competition event is the fire dragon. Grab the dragon egg under the protection of the fire dragon. Let's go. After saying that, the three of them immediately went up the stairs, because footsteps came from the corridor on one side. Cedric was still in a daze, watching the trio leave. The trio went up two floors and breathed a sigh of relief. Ron looked over and saw Cedric walking towards the classroom blankly. He couldn't help but worry, he won't be frightened, right? This pretty boy. It took him a while to get used to it, and we were pretty shocked, right? Hermione said. Harry looked away, breathed out, and said, let's go to the library. There are still a lot of homework to be done. He groaned in pain. As soon as the trio started to move, a shout came from behind. Stop! The trio suddenly trembled and felt a chill in their hearts. Professor Fremont, good morning. The three of them said with a smile. The person who came was none other than Sia Ran. Chapter, 212 After looking at Harry, Ron and Hermione, Sia Ran said with a half-smile, you're so brave. I told you not to tell anyone, but you still informed Cedric, so I probably caught you. Um, Professor, you heard wrong. Harry said. Ron and Hermione looked very frightened. Did Professor Fremont hear their conversation just now? Professor, if it's okay, we are going to the library to study. We still have a lot of homework. Hermione said nervously. Okay, Stop being naughty and come to my office. Sia Ran said. The three of them looked at each other, all crestfallen and uneasy. They didn't know what would happen if Professor Fremont asked them to come to the office. Will you criticize them? Deduct points from Gryffindor. 
or invite parents. The three of them suddenly became more and more frightened. They followed into Xia Ran's office. Sit down, by the way. Xia Ran took out his magic wand and waved, and three chairs appeared out of thin air in his office, and he sat behind the desk. Harry and the others were still standing. What, don't you want to sit down? Xia Ran asked with a smile. The three people thought that in this situation, where would they dare to sit down? So Ron said, Professor, let's stand for a while so we can go out easily. Xia Ran waved her magic wand and the three chairs disappeared immediately. She asked casually, Do you know why I came to you? I don't know. The three of them pretended to be dumbfounded and shook their heads. Oh, really? Xia Ran raised her eyebrows, looked at the confused looks on the three people's faces, and smiled, I won't trouble you. After all, Durmstrang and the Bozbatan's warriors all know the information about the fire dragon. Only we Hogwarts warriors don't know, it's a bit unfair. The three of them were really stunned this time. Um, Professor, how did you? How do I know that those two schools know about the fire dragon? Xia Ran shook her head and said, Hagrid is obsessed with love. I'm afraid he won't refuse anything Ms. Maxim asks him to do now. Ron chuckled and said, Professor, does Hagrid really fall in love with Ms. Maxim? The weight of the child they give birth to will not break the world record, right? A child weighing one ton. Ha! Huh. Xia Ran raised her eyebrows again. Ron immediately retracted his head obediently. Let's not mention Hagrid, let's get back to business. Xia Ran coughed lightly and said, You three, come to my office every Saturday from now on. I will give you individual tutoring and teach you magic knowledge. What? Harry and Ron were startled. Really? Hermione's eyes lit up. Xia Ran smiled again and said, By the way, on Sunday you are going to Professor Snape's office to learn about potions and some special spells. Seeing the horrified expressions on the trio's faces, he chuckled why? Hasn't Professor Snape told you yet? The three people shook their heads, and Harry said in horror, let Snape teach us. We don't agree. Absolutely disagree. Ron also shouted. This is Dumbledore's rule. Unfortunately, your opinions are useless. Xia Ran smiled. This matter is actually mainly for Harry. As a Horcrux of Voldemort, he must be strong enough and have an unyielding heart. Otherwise, how can he have the courage to face death? Dare to face Voldemort? But that's Harry's only chance of survival. As for Ron and Hermione, they were herding one sheep and driving three sheep, which was just enough to provide a cover. Study with Xia Ran on Saturday and study with Snape on Sunday. Dumbledore, why? Harry was confused, what do we need to learn? Just go to class normally. Yes, Professor, this kind of private tutoring is rare, isn't it? Hermione felt a little uneasy and asked, others. They shouldn't have any objections, right? Just don't spread the word around. Xia Ran replied. He had no secrets during class, but students in each grade had different progress and different teaching focuses. And this private tutoring is related to the key to fighting against the Dark Wizard camp and defeating Voldemort in the future, after all. Harry is Voldemort's Horcrux, a Horcrux that he himself has not yet noticed, and he must not be careless at all. Do your best. If they had a choice, they would definitely want to minimize casualties. But. Harry couldn't help but said, Professor Fremont, can't you just give us tutoring? What do you want Snape for? He was full of resentment, and felt even more uneasy about participating in tutoring under Snape. Ron and Hermione obviously had the same idea. As the dean of Slytherin House, Snape not only favored the students of his own house, but also especially the students of Gryffindor House, especially Harry and the three of them. For some unknown reason, Snape was even more miserable. Intensified targeting. They disliked Snape very much and had no dealings with him at all. It's Professor Snape. Xia Ran corrected him. He knew that Snape's reason for targeting Harry was that Ron and Hermione were the ones who were affected, but there was no need to tell the three students, otherwise why didn't Nep challenge him to a duel? 
Professor Snape is the master of potions. There is almost no one in the wizarding world who is more proficient in potions than him. Hermione should know this. Hermione nodded reluctantly. What does that have to do with us? Ron asked. It's a great relationship. Xia Ran said with a smile, there is such a top potion master in the magic world who will specifically guide you. Many people dream of having such treatment. You should cherish it. Professor, you don't understand, Snape. Well, Professor Snape, he is. Very hateful, he deducts our marks at every turn, and he also likes to be sarcastic. Harry couldn't help but said. Xia Ran smiled and said, Anyway, as long as you know that Professor Snape will never harm you, if you encounter any danger, you can go directly to find him. Yeah, are you looking for him to stab him again? Ron muttered. Ahem. Xia Ran said sternly, This matter has been decided. It was decided by the principal himself. It is useless for you to refute. It is also good for you. You will know in the future. Seeing that the three of them wanted to speak again, he added, wait for you when you become stronger. He smiled secretly in his heart. He had always been the listener to such words in the past, but he could finally say them himself. But what he told was the truth. Now that Harry didn't have the toughness of mind to tell him the truth, it might even directly defeat him and completely lose all hope of life. When his mind undergoes a significant transformation, that will be the time to tell him the details. After all, for a person to face death calmly and admit that he is another person's horcrux, possessing the soul fragments of the enemy who killed his father and mother, is one of the sources of the enemy's immortality. Anyone who hears this news will probably collapse. No wonder Dumbledore had such good intentions. Xia Ran felt sad in her heart. Chapter, 213 In the end, Harry, Ron, and Hermione had no choice but to accept the tragic fact that they would have to study under Snape on Sunday. They felt better about attending Professor Fremont's class on Saturday. Even some sincere joy. Especially a few days ago, they had just witnessed the power of Professor Fremont, easily subduing three adult fire dragons. They were so unstoppable that they seemed invincible. Tomorrow's Triwizard Tournament, just be a spectator and don't cause any more trouble. Xia Ran said, and immediately sent the three people away. Instead of going to the library, the trio headed back to the Gryffindor common room. Listening to Snape's class on Sunday. God, please spare me. Ron wailed, with a look of despair on his face. Hermione had already calmed down, accepted this fact and showed an expression of joy. Hermione, you. Harry said in surprise. Professor Fremont is right about one thing, Hermione said. Snape is indeed very knowledgeable in potions. We can definitely learn a lot of useful things from listening to his lectures. Do you think he will teach us seriously? Harry said depressedly, Snape will definitely take the opportunity to torture us. Ron nodded repeatedly. Probably. No. Hermione said uncertainly, from what Professor Fremont said, wasn't Dumbledore the one who decided this matter? Huh, you'll know when the time comes. Ron snorted. On the other side, Xia Ran suddenly received a summons. Professor, it has been confirmed that Ollivander has been killed by a mysterious man. Half of Percy's body appeared in the green fire, his expression solemn and angry. What's Fudge's plan? Xia Ran asked. He had indeed expected that Ollivander would be killed. Although the plot direction is now very different from the original time and space, Ollivander was captured by Voldemort more than a year in advance. If he could not tell the whereabouts of the Elder Wand, so it was inevitable that he would be killed directly by Voldemort. It's a pity that one of the top wand makers in the magic world died in that unknown place. Percy sneered, he. Humph. The Daily Prophet was strictly ordered not to publish this news. Those of us who were insiders all issued a hush order. Anyone who dared to speak out would be dismissed from class, and he would even arrest him directly in Asga. Go to ban prison. Fudge has gone crazy. For his own powerful position, he has gone completely crazy. Speaking of Fudge, Percy said with a tone full of disgust, the Ministry of Magic is getting worse day by day in his hands. 
I have now reached the top and know a lot of secret information. Many of those high-ranking officials have begun today have fallen to the Dark Wizard camp, and I hope the mysterious man can capture the Ministry of Magic. Because they are pure-blood wizards and don't have to fear the mysterious man's liquidation and massacre. The Ministry of Magic has long been rotten. At this time, Percy felt ashamed of his previous yearning. Is such a decadent ministry of magic worthy of his respect? Xia Ran just opened her mouth. Percy's expression suddenly changed, he interrupted Xia Ran and said quickly, Professor, someone is coming, I'll leave first. After saying that, he immediately disappeared without a trace. He contacted Xia Ran through a fireplace in the Ministry of Magic. Percy was an undercover agent of the Order of the Phoenix who broke into the Ministry of Magic. The only people who knew his identity and had direct contact were Dumbledore, Snape, and Xia Ran. Ollivander. Alas. Xia Ran sighed as she looked at the fire that turned red, another innocent victim. He went out and told Dumbledore and Snape the news. Ollivander, was he really killed? Dumbledore looked gloomy and said, I was familiar with him. We were both old men. I didn't expect that he passed away before me. We can't delay it, Dumbledore. Snape said with a gloomy expression, the Ministry of Magic must usher in changes as soon as possible. If this continues, the mysterious man may really accept all the dark races and achieve his goal. We need to be surprised and catch the dark wizard by surprise. Severus, didn't Voldemort tell you his plans and goals? Dumbledore asked. Snape shook his head, nodded again, and replied, he should have said it, but he will not inform everyone. This is unrealistic. Only one or two Death Eaters may know about everything. I only understand I know nothing about his plans for Hogwarts or anything else. After a pause, he continued, I don't dare to ask nonsense. The Dark Lord has a very sensitive sense of smell. He has already punished three Death Eaters for lax speech. No one dares to speak nonsense now, because you don't know that others don't know what you know, and others don't know what you know. The Death Eaters are all in a state of fear and suspicion. They are afraid of angering the Dark Lord and being punished by him. Xia Ran sneered, it seems that he is going to dominate the entire Death Eater team through his own force. The opinions of the Death Eaters, even the most loyal Death Eaters, such as Bellatrix and Barty Jr. Crouch, he probably doesn't really care about their suggestions and opinions. But this is our chance. Xia Ran's eyes flashed slightly and she said, the reason why Voldemort is so difficult to deal with is that, in addition to the extraordinary terror of his own strength, only Dumbledore on our side can deal with him, the large number of Death Eaters who followed him. And there are also a large number of dark races who are also willing to follow Voldemort, such as vampires, werewolves, dementors, etc. These dark wizards and dark races are also very powerful. Voldemort is their leader. In fact, Voldemort is strong enough to subdue all these dark wizards and dark races, allowing them to launch wars for their own interests and goals, and start a protracted battle with us. Without Voldemort, those dark wizards and dark races would not be able to survive. Without those dark wizards and dark races, Voldemort alone would not be as difficult to deal with as he is now. After all, we still have Dumbledore, right? Xia Ran touched her chin as she spoke, and said thoughtfully, I think. It is imperative to divide the Death Eaters. Dumbledore and Snape looked at each other and nodded. The Dark Wizard camp is not just about dealing with Voldemort. Those Dark Wizards and Dark Races who unite under Voldemort's banner for their own interests are no easier to deal with than Voldemort himself, because this group is too large in number. Even the top brass of the Ministry of Magic have many Death Eaters. You can imagine how bad the situation in the wizarding world is. There must be a reckoning. Xia Ran's eyes were burning and he whispered, after these unrest factors are liquidated, the magic world will get back on track. Anyway, no matter what others say, since the positions are different, the only way to decide the outcome is through war. Whoever wins will have the right to decide and dominate the future magic world. Chapter 214 the Ministry of Magic under the leadership of Cornelius Fudge has become corrupt and is the biggest stumbling block to our current fight against the Dark Wizards. Xia Ran said softly, 
led by Voldemort, the alliance of dark wizards and dark races are enemies. There is nothing to say. They are already in a hostile relationship. But the Ministry of Magic was originally the backbone of our side, fighting against the Dark Alliance. The strongest shield. What now? Xia Ran sneered. He had a very bad impression of Fudge. Not only were their respective philosophies and policies different, but the main reason was that Fudge completely ignored the Dark Wizards and basically relied on the Auror Office to proactively hunt him down. He, a member of the Ministry of Magic, the leader, openly or secretly, has not expressed any signs or words of support, and there is no way to talk about practical help. If Xia Ran remembers correctly, in the original time and space, when Voldemort was resurrected and returned to recruit Death Eaters and recruit vampires, werewolves, dementors, and other dark races, the Ministry of Magic under the command of Fudge could not accomplish anything. Well, he did a great job of holding back the Order of the Phoenix and smearing Dumbledore, and he was a good hand. Fudge is a pure-blood wizard. He may not have openly declared that he supports the theory of pure-blood supremacy, but Xia Ran sneered, judging from what he has done, I'm afraid that the theory of pure-blood supremacy will not work for him. It's not exclusive. It's just that it hasn't reached the extreme level of Voldemort and the Death Eaters, not to mention. Looking at Dumbledore, he said calmly, Dumbledore, you should know that Fudge has been jealous of you all these years. Just like now, doesn't Fudge realize anything? No, he should have realized the news you announced. It was true, but admitting it meant that he had to take risks and delegate power. As a politician with a strong desire for power, this was a scene he absolutely did not want to see. To him, it was like a nightmare, far away more terrifying than the darkness sweeping across the magical world. Besides, he is a pure-blood wizard. As long as he doesn't fight to the death against Voldemort, I don't think Voldemort will be willing to spend more time on him. Dumbledore was silent. He was unwilling to openly overthrow the Ministry of Magic. Even though he agreed to Xia Ran and Sirius's proposal and appeared at certain points in the plan, he was still quite resistant in his heart. He believes that the most urgent task in the magic world at the moment is to unite and point the sword outward to fight against dark wizards and dark races. Xia Ran wanted to say that Dumbledore was too hesitant. Fighting foreign aggression does not necessarily require settling domestic affairs first. But the prerequisite is that the two sides must form an alliance and be willing to continue to fight against the outside world, rather than start conflicts with each other and start fighting. Fudge's Ministry of Magic now has such a practice. It ignores internal and external threats and does not listen or believe them. Fudge seemed to accept death. As long as he suppressed Dumbledore, he felt that his position would be safe and no one could threaten him. As for the many wizards and even innocent muggles in the wizarding world who have been persecuted by dark wizards or attacked by dark creatures, what does Fudge have to do with him? He wasn't persecuted and attacked, right? Because of Harry's coma a few days ago, Xia Ran believed that the launch date of the plan to take over the Ministry of Magic must be moved forward and could not be delayed any longer. Ollivander was the first victim, and there would be thousands of wizards in the future. Melon was killed. Xia Ran didn't agree with Voldemort's theory, and he didn't want to see the Muggle world and the Wizarding world in ruins. He felt that sometimes he had to stand up and push forward. Anyway, he already had level 6 magic and could be called the top wizard in the Wizarding world. Even if encountering the second generation Dark Lord Voldemort, who has a powerful magic power of level 7, there is no chance of resistance. Why shrink as usual? Snape also agreed with Xia Ran and said in a deep voice, We must speed up, Dumbledore, the mysterious man should be looking for something now. I don't know yet, but if he really succeeds, and gather together the dark wizards and dark creature races under his command can only rely on the Order of the Phoenix. Ha <laughs> ha. He only sneered at the end. Dumbledore pondered. The reason why he seemed hesitant was that apart from his unwillingness to face the threat of darkness, there was also another important factor in the fierce internal fighting between them and the Ministry of Magic. Dumbledore was afraid that his inner desire for power would peek out. He knew that he was not a saint, a great wizard, or a liar as the Daily Prophet said. In his youth, his desire for power, 
his dissatisfaction with the situation of wizards, and his friendship with Grindelwald or some other emotions led to serious and tragic consequences the unfortunate death of his sister Ariana Dang Bulado still remembers it, after all, his only living relatives no longer want to pay attention to him. He was worried that he would fall back on the same old mistakes. Xia Ran knew that Dumbledore was worried, and now it was up to him to see what Dumbledore thought, so he would no longer interfere. The portraits of the old male and female principals hanging on the wall no longer pretended to be asleep, and all stood upright. Countless pairs of eyes stared at Dumbledore, but none of them said anything to disturb Dumbledore's thoughts. After a long time, Dumbledore gave a bitter smile and sighed, Well, I am an old man now. I have only a few years to live, so what should I be afraid of? It would be too much to look forward and backward, but put countless people in danger. Take responsibility. So, what do you think, Xia Ran? When will you launch the plan? He said and looked at Xia Ran. The sooner the better. Xia Ran replied, then paused and said thoughtfully, Well, you don't have to be in such a hurry, maybe. You can change your mind. Tell me more about it. Dumbledore was interested. Xia Ran rubbed her forehead and said slowly, Overthrowing Fudge and putting our people in charge of the Ministry of Magic does not conflict with the fight against Voldemort and the Death Eaters. And, most importantly, we want everyone to see that Voldemort is not invincible. Death Eaters are also a group of characters who will die under a spell. Nowadays, wizards in the magical world have to say that their fear of Voldemort is a bit too much. They are afraid even when they hear his name and dare not call him by his first name. Snape looked slightly unnatural. What you say makes sense, Xia Ran. Dumbledore said thoughtfully, breaking people's fear of Voldemort is also an important task. Since he is an enemy, why should he be afraid? At the very least, we must dare to call him its name can be seen directly from its face. Snape looked increasingly unnatural. Hogwarts is not a good place. There are too many underage wizards. I think. Xia Ran said softly, the location in the Ministry of Magic is very good. It happens that there are many adult wizards there, and Aurors are often on duty, fighting. We have rich experience, so we won't be in a hurry, not to mention we have Aurors in-house who can make defense preparations in advance. Even if Voldemort assembles an army of Death Eaters, I'm afraid it won't be possible to attack him for a while. Snape suddenly interrupted, You are wrong about this, Xia Ran. Chapter, 215 Professor Snape, what do you mean? Xia Ran asked carefully. Snape smiled sarcastically, but not at Xia Ran, but at the Ministry of Magic, and said, The Ministry of Magic has long been a sieve. I'm afraid there are more Death Eaters in the Ministry of Magic than members of the Order of the Phoenix. Some of the Death Eaters I don't even know their names because of you know who. Well, Voldemort. He looked very awkward and continued, now it is forbidden to ask about other people's mission identities. I dare not ask inside the Death Eaters for fear of being caught and punished by Voldemort, but if you need it. No, Severus. Dumbledore interrupted him and said softly, your identity is still very useful. There is no need to expose it in a hurry. Voldemort still believes in you, so don't let him become suspicious of you. Snape nodded silently. I understand what you mean, Professor Snape. Xia Ran said, There are indeed a lot of Death Eaters in the Ministry of Magic, but do they dare to reveal their identities for the time being? He smiled indifferently and said, For a long time, the only one we have been truly afraid of is Voldemort. Other dark wizards and other dark creatures, with Voldemort, will make people equally afraid. Without Voldemort, when that darkness the leader of the world, the dark wizard, and the dark creature are all no match for us. All kinds of conflicts will even break out within them. Dog-eat-dog -dog incidents are common, just like the scene when Voldemort first fell more than ten years ago. Isn't Karkaroff such an example? At that time, it was unknown how many Death Eaters, in order to reduce their own sentences or avoid prison. Bitten other Death Eaters in an effort to prove their innocence, or have the wizard court retry them and reduce their sentences appropriately. However, with the existence of Voldemort, such a powerful Dark Lord who can subdue all Dark Wizards and Dark Creatures can make the Dark World obey his orders. After all, 
they will have more benefits after capturing the entire magical world. It's just. If we win this time, we must completely liquidate it. Xia Ran's eyes flashed with a sharp light. Let's talk about it then, Dumbledore replied, it's okay if we're not at Hogwarts. He suddenly sighed and said, Voldemort has made a comeback, the Death Eater army continues to gather, and dark creatures have come under Voldemort's command. These peaceful and peaceful days are probably only a few months away. This Triwizard Tournament may also be the last one. It's good to have a one-time competition and let the students have fun. Afterwards, they may have to face various threats. Can they complete their studies as scheduled and pass the N. T.S. Ultimate Wizarding Test? This is something that no one can guarantee. Dumbledore sighed. Xia Ran and Snape were speechless. On Tuesday, the atmosphere in the school was very tense and exciting in the morning, and all the students were excited for the upcoming Triwizard Tournament. Different from the original time and space plot, Harry violated Dumbledore's age limit to participate in the competition. This time Harry sat in the stands as an audience. Although his joy and pride as a warrior were reduced, he already knew that the warriors were about to face under such circumstances, he felt lucky in his heart that Dumbledore had set an age limit. What do you think the competition will be this time? I don't know. It looks like they are fighting for something. The other students in the surrounding stands were kept in the dark and were talking excitedly. Harry, Ron, and Hermione couldn't help but smile at each other. Hermione, do you know? Ginny's eyes lit up and she asked in a low voice. I don't know. Hermione shook her head. Ron smiled beside him. Look, Bagman is out. Harry suddenly pointed to the field below and said. This is a circular grandstand, built on a hillside stone wall. In the middle is a vast open space with towering stones and few roads for passage. Several large tents not far away shielded the warriors from what they were about to face. Thing. At this time, all the teachers and students of the school, including students from Durmstrang and Bozbatons, were all sitting in the stands. Dumbledore, Ms. Maxim, and Karkaroff, the three principals of the magic school, there were also Jerome Barton. An official from the Ministry of Magic, who had already taken his seat at the referee's table, and Ludo Bagman was the last one to come. The seat where Xia Ran was sitting was a little far away from the referee's seat. Most of the professors and staff of Hogwarts around him were paying attention to the field. Now, let's invite the first one today. Bagman's voice was extremely loud, resounding throughout the audience, Fire Dragon. There was an uproar at the scene. Fire Dragon? Is it a dragon? Did I hear correctly? Where is the dragon? Look, it's really a giant dragon. It's so scary. Everyone discussed loudly, their faces full of horror and excitement. A green adult fire dragon was seen arriving at the arena, driven and guided by a group of dragon trainers. Xia Ran watched as Charlie carefully stuffed a dragon egg next to the Welsh green dragon. Oh, little thing. Hagrid groaned, still staring at the dragon egg. Xia Ran shook her head. Hagrid's love for magical creatures, especially dragons, would probably never change in his lifetime. Of course, there is no need to change it. He just used this enthusiasm to teach his care of magical creatures course. The first warrior, Cedric Diggory. Appears. Bagman announced. When Cedric appeared on the stage, his expression was very stiff. When he actually saw the green dragon, the two sides looked at each other. The green dragon's huge eyes were ferocious, and his heart almost stopped for a beat. Fortunately, if Harry and the others hadn't reminded me yesterday and I was mentally prepared, today. I would definitely have weak legs. Cedric thought to himself, and couldn't help but feel sorry for Harry, Ron, and Hermione. Many thanks. But the top priority right now is how to win the Welsh Green Dragon Egg. That is his goal in the competition. He thought about the countermeasures he had come up with all night long, took a deep breath, walked around to the blind spot of the Green Dragon site. Took out his wand, and recited the transformation spell on a stone, and the stone suddenly turned into a puppy. Yelling, he ran towards the Welsh Green Dragon and ran around its periphery, while he himself carefully touched it. Ah, 
what a wonderful transformation. He must be Professor McGonagall's disciple. Will he succeed in using a puppy to attract the fire dragon's attention? Bagman praised. Xia Ran saw a look of pride flashing on Professor McGonagall's side face in front of her. He succeeded. The fire dragon went after the hunting dog. Bagman said rapidly. Ah, the fire dragon has changed his mind. He seems to have decided not to chase the hunting dog, but to catch our warrior first. Cedric, oh no, he is going to be caught. What a beautiful, wonderful move, it seems that Mr. Diggory is an excellent Quidditch player. Yes, he succeeded, Cedric got the golden egg. But our dragon trainers must stop the angry Welsh green dragon, otherwise the giant the dragon will kill Cedric. Chapter 216 There was thunderous applause in the stands. Awesome! Professor Sprout couldn't help but praise. She is the dean of Hufflepuff College and was also Sia Rant's teacher and dean. Cedric. His transfiguration is very successful. The number is just a little small, he should use a few more hunting dogs to attract the attention of the Welsh Green Dragon, so that he will not be chased by the Fire Dragon in the end and almost fail. There was a hint of regret in her words. Huh, Professor Sprout, your request is too high for Cedric's magic power. He is only a sixth-year student. Xia Ran smiled, after all, the Triwizard Tournament is still an event for students to participate in. Professor Sprout also smiled heartily. It is indeed very good. Now, let the judges give their scores. Bagman said in a loud voice. Everyone listened attentively. Dumbledore, 8 points. Karkaroff, 5 points. Ms. Maxim, 8 points. Jerome, 7 points. Well, of course, myself, 8 points. Bagman announced loudly, this time he read out the scores awarded by the judges. Not bad. Professor Flittick clapped his hands. It must be because he was burned by the fire dragon in the end, so he was deducted a few points. It's reasonable. Xia Ran looked around and saw that the dragon trainers had subdued the Welsh green dragon. They returned to the big tent on one side and brought out another adult fire dragon. It was a silver-blue short-nosed dragon, larger than the Welsh green dragon just now. The dragon is larger and looks very fierce and mighty. One is down, and there are two more. Bagman shouted, Miss Delacour, please come on. Fleur appeared with her head held high and her wand tightly clutched in her hand. She seemed to be shaking from head to toe. Bozbaton students all looked at Fleur expectantly. They were also glad that they were not chosen as the warrior in the end, otherwise, they would have faced such a ferocious and terrifying dragon. They shuddered and looked at Fleur with pity in their eyes. Ong. The silver-blue Swedish short-nosed dragon walked around irritably, holding a nest of dragon eggs behind its buttocks. It stared at Furong with a pair of huge and ferocious dragon eyes, and let out a violent and low dragon roar from its mouth. It seemed that if Furong got closer, the fire dragon would directly breathe out the dragon's breath, and Jiang Furong would be burned to ashes. At the referee's table, Ms. Maxim looked at Fleur nervously. Fleur and her principal looked at each other, took a deep breath, shook her head, her long silver hair swaying, throwing her fear and worries behind her head, and tried to recall the emergency training that Ms. Maxim gave her a few days ago. Because of Hagrid, they also knew the content of the first round a few days in advance. What is Miss Delacour thinking? Oh, she's moving. The Swedish Brachiosaurus is warning, be careful, the dragon is about to breathe fire. Ah, what a wonderful magic, coma spell. Hypnotic spell. In short, the fire dragon I'm drowsy and very tired. I have to say, Miss Delacour's magic is very good. Bagman praised loudly. His praise won a round of approval, and basically all the teachers and students thought that Furong had succeeded in using a special magic to put the Swedish Brachinosaurus into a strange drowsy state. Fleur lifted up her skirt and touched it quietly. Miss Delacour succeeded. Oh, what a pity, the fire dragon still breathed fire. Gentlemen and ladies, when the fire dragon is sleeping, it can also spit fire. Bagman said with regret in his voice. 
The entire audience also let out a sigh of regret at the same time. Miss Delacour's skirt is on fire. Should she put out the fire first or get the dragon eggs first? I hope the Swedish Brachiosaurus will not suddenly wake up during this process. Good water spell, extinguished the flames. Ah, yes, it worked. Miss Delacour successfully got the golden egg and escaped unscathed. There was another burst of thunderous cheers, and the cheers and cheers almost tore through the clouds in the sky. Xia Ran also applauded along with everyone. He believed that Furong's strategy was indeed correct, but it was just a little neglected in the small details. Her score should be higher than Cedric's. First of all, my rating is 9 points Dumbledore, 8 points Jerome, 8 points Ms. Maxim, 9 points and finally Karkaroff. Uh, 4 points. Bagman he was obviously surprised, and he didn't expect Karkaroff to give him 4 points. But people still gave Furong warm applause. Excellent. Said Hagrid, applauding enthusiastically. Miss Delacour gets high marks, Karkaroff's coward is not counted, and Ms. Maxim will be happy. Hagrid, are you happier? Xia Ran asked with a smile. Hagrid blushed and muttered something, but Xia Ran didn't hear it clearly. Let us invite the last warrior Mr. Crumb. Bagman shouted. This time, people's applause and cheers became even louder. After all, he was the best seeker in the world and the most popular one, even if this was Hogwarts. After Crumb appeared, his face was very gloomy. He looked at the red dragon, raised his wand, aimed at the fire dragon's eyes, and fired a dazzling light, which hit the fire dragon's eyes. Ong. The fire dragon was in pain, roared angrily, and struggled in pain. Its big feet stepped on it, and countless eggs were crushed to pieces, some real and some fake. Mr. Crumb must speed up, otherwise all the eggs will be crushed by the dragon, and he will have no choice but to face defeat. Bagman said. Oh, no. Hagrid moaned lowly, full of pain. Xia Ran discovered that the dragon trainers below also looked at the trampled Rayal dragon eggs with regret. They could endure the loneliness. The wizards who stayed at the Romanian dragon farm were all people who truly loved dragons and were naturally concerned about this situation. Regret and heartache. Crumb successfully took away the golden egg. At this time, the dragon trainers immediately stepped forward and hit the adult fire dragon with more than ten stun spells. The dragon suddenly fainted and the ground shook several times. I give Crumb eight points, Dumbledore, eight points Jerome, seven points, Ms. Maxim, seven points Karkaroff. Um, ten. Bagman was surprised again. Although Crumb successfully took away the golden egg, the fire dragon crushed so many dragon eggs, so points must be deducted. The crowd also booed, especially the Bozbaton students. Too bad. That coward. Hagrid complained dissatisfied. It's indeed very bad. Xia Ran agreed, but now that Voldemort has returned, Karkaroff won't be able to stand for long. Now it's just because Voldemort still doesn't want to openly come to the stage, the internal strife between the Order of the Phoenix and the Ministry of Magic is something Voldemort likes to see, to prevent being exposed. He indulged the traitors among the Death Eaters more than ten years ago and allowed him to it's up to them to continue to enjoy themselves, but there's definitely a time limit. If Voldemort completely declares his return, how can Karkaroff, a former betrayer, be able to find peace? He smiled and shook his head. Chapter, 217 Xia Ran stood up and followed the crowd slowly down the stands, chatting casually with several professors around her. Several warriors were taken to the temporary medical tent. After simple bandaging, they came out and arrived at the center of the field. By this time, the scoring had been completed. You all did a great job. Ludo Bagman said in a loud voice, with a face full of joy, as if he had just passed the test of an adult fire dragon three times in a row. Okay, I have a few more words to say. First of all, the second project will start at 9.30 a.m. on February 24th next year. Before that, you can take a long break, but we have left some questions for you. If you look down at those golden eggs you're holding in your hands, you'll see that they can actually open. See the seam there? You must unravel the clues provided in the eggs, 
which will tell you about the second project what is it, you can be fully prepared. Is everything clear? Is it no problem? Okay, let's go and go to the celebration banquet. Cedric, congratulations. Sia Ran patted Cedric on the shoulder. The young man grinned and looked very happy. A circle of Hufflepuff students surrounded him, looking even happier than Cedric. Professor Sprout was also in the crowd with a smile on his face, and many girls from other colleges congratulated Cedric. After Harry, Ron, and Hermione congratulated Cedric, they got out of the crowd and were caught by a woman. It was Rita Skeeter. She was wearing a bright green robe today, and the stenographic pen in her hand matched the color of the robe. Hello, Harry. Rita Skeeter greeted, looking at Harry with a smile on her face, I wonder if you can say a word to me? Your schoolmate became a warrior and successfully won the golden egg, how do you feel now? Do you think the referee's score is fair? Don't worry, just say it. Okay, I can have a word with you. Harry said angrily, goodbye. After saying that, he, Ron and Hermione walked towards the castle together. Don't leave in a hurry, Harry. Rita Skeeter stopped the three of them and asked with a smile on her face, Do you feel jealous of Cedric? It feels like he has taken away your share of glory. He's a despicable thief. Burglar. The three of them were immediately very angry. When Sia Ran and his group were passing by and returning to the castle, they happened to hear these words, so they stopped and said, Rita, you need to pay attention to that pen of yours. The three Harrys discovered that Rita Skeeter had put the shorthand pen back into her purse at some point, and said unmoved, Sia Ran, what, do you have any news to tell me? About Dumbledore Lucky? He is a treasure trove of news. She looked at Sia Ran with burning eyes. What's the point of asking for so much news? Sia Ran rolled her eyes and said, you can't publish it in the Daily Prophet anyway, so all this hard work is in vain. Rita Skeeter's face seemed to slump. Indeed, Fudge of the Ministry of Magic is trying his best to control public opinion. Any newspaper published by the Daily Prophet must be reviewed by Fudge's trusted officials in the Ministry of Magic in advance to confirm that there are no hidden dangers or information that should not be published before it can be published on a large scale. Mailed to all parts of the Wizarding World via Owl Postman. She has collected a lot of news materials, but there are really not many that can be used after being reviewed. Let's go, don't stand there in a daze. Sia Ran said lazily, urging several students to return to the school castle quickly. At this time, Rita Skeeter seemed to be interested in Hagrid and asked, Rubber Hagrid, gamekeeper and professor of care of magical creatures? Yes, what's wrong? Hagrid asked doubtfully. Do you have time? The cunning light in Rita Skeeter's eyes flashed. I mean, are you willing to accept an exclusive interview from me? If you can allow me to be on the side next time you have class, there's nothing better than sitting in. What? Hagrid showed great joy and agreed immediately, saying, of course, welcome. Very few people come to interview me. People are not that interested in magical creatures. Oh, that's because they won't appreciate it. Rita Skeeter's tone did not contain much curiosity. Well, I have class tomorrow, at nine o'clock in the morning, right on the edge of the square, next to the Forbidden Forest. If you are really interested. Hagrid said. I will arrive on time. Rita Skeeter waved her hand and said goodbye to the group of people, see you tomorrow, Hagrid. Goodbye, Sia Ran. Hagrid had a silly smile on his face, patted the wrinkles on his clothes, frowned and said, I have to wear good clothes tomorrow and be published in the newspaper. Hey, I have never dared to think about it like this. He couldn't help but giggle again. Hagrid, be careful, Rita's pen will not report truthfully. Sia Ran warned. Yes, I understand. Hagrid nodded casually and walked directly to his cabin, obviously not taking Sia Ran's warning to heart. Sia Ran shook her head helplessly, thinking that this was not a big deal, and she no longer put too much energy into it. After the first round of competition, the next day's newspapers, no matter which newspaper, Daily Prophet or The Quibbler, or some other small newspapers, all reported on this Triwizard Tournament. After all, this is the first Triwizard Tournament in more than a century. Surprise! 
an adult fire dragon appears in the Triwizard Tournament. Exploration and thinking about adult fire dragons and fire dragon eggs. The latter report was, of course, the quibbler, for which Mr. Lovegood is said to have written to Charlie asking for some information. However, these news did not seem to be timely for long. Within two days, many more news appeared, covering up the original information about the Triwizard Tournament. One of the news was about Hagrid. Rubber Hagrid, a half-giant, whose mother abandoned her husband when he was a child, made Hagrid very sad. According to exclusive news from this newspaper, Hagrid is very fond of Harry Potter because of this. He took care of it, because Hagrid seemed to think that Harry Potter was also a child in a miserable situation and gave Gryffindor a lot of points for no reason. This made the students in the other three houses angry, but they dared not speak out when they were angry, Hagrid is very smug, arrogant, and very fond of using force. Hermione read and said sadly, Oh, no, this is all about discrediting Hagrid. Who wrote the article? Ron asked. Let me see. Read a skeeter. Hermione rummaged through the article's byline. It's her, no wonder. Ron nodded clearly and said, that's a crazy woman who makes trouble out of nothing and never reports the truth. Hagrid should never have agreed to let her attend the care of magical creatures class in the first place. Hagrid is here. Harry suddenly saw a tall figure walking into the great hall, raising his hand to say hello. Hagrid, however, acted as if he hadn't seen him, his expression was dull, and he walked to his seat numbly, eating breakfast in silence without saying a word. Poor Hagrid, Professor Flittick sighed. Professor Flittick, please show me the newspaper. Sia Ran said, taking the daily profit handed over by Professor Flittick. Chapter 218 Sia Ran spread out the newspaper while eating. Professor Hogwarts, The Life of Rubius Hagrid Sia Ran raised her eyebrows, past events in her life. No one is dead yet. Inside Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, there is a teacher who once caused the death of students, of course, now his suspicion has been cleared, but as a hybrid giant, Rubius' father is a human and his mother is a giant. Hagrid may be qualified as a gamekeeper, but when a half-giant becomes a care of magical creatures teacher, we can't help but ask, is he really qualified? Does he have this ability? Maybe there's a question mark. Xia Ren secretly shook his head. Apart from anything else, Hagrid is indeed very proficient in the knowledge of magical biology. He is a master of magical biology. This is not because Dumbledore gave him away. The relationship has a back door. After all, care of magical creatures is not a defense against the dark arts class. Hagrid admitted that he still cried over the death of his mother, who left them and his son when they were children, and he said that he no longer felt sad. But whether this kind of language could prove that when he spoke where are the tears left? We remain to see. Regarding Harry Potter, Hagrid has an attitude of complete admiration and even flattery. In the past, Hagrid only did this when facing Dumbledore. It seems that Hagrid thinks that Harry, Potter and Dumbledore are equal parts. There is a long paragraph after that, anyway, it is teasing Hagrid in different ways, describing him as a villain who pretends to be powerful, which is contrary to his identity as a hybrid giant. Hagrid, who was at the end of the dining table, finished his breakfast in silence and left the great hall without saying a word. Harry, Ron, and Hermione quickly grabbed a piece of bread and followed. Rita Skeeter. Sia Ran took a slow sip of the clear soup, and listened to the ridicule of many students in the auditorium, mainly Slytherin Academy, and thought to herself, it seems that she has to be taught a lesson. Such a powerful pen will last a day. It would be a waste to only focus on these. He had made up his mind. It was said in the original time and space that Rita Skeeter was an illegal animagus and used her animagus beetle form to eavesdrop on many things that she should not know. Secret. Her control in the original time and space was finally grasped by Hermione. Sia Ran could copy Hermione's actions. Hermione still needs time to observe and think about the reasons. Finally, she can rely on her intelligence to discover Rita Skeeter's secret and catch her. Sia Ran does not need to be so troublesome. After all, he already knew Rita Skeeter's secret. As long as he paid more attention in the later period, he could easily capture Rita Skeeter. 
no one knew about it yet. On the other side, Harry and the three of them kept up with Hagrid, but Hagrid was walking with long strides, and the three of them had to jog all the way to barely keep up. Hagrid, wait. Wait. Hermione shouted. Hagrid walked straight into the house as if he hadn't heard anything. Don't close the door. Shouted Ron. Boom. Hagrid turned a deaf ear and closed the door. The trio had no choice but to stop at the gate. Ron and Harry looked at each other and asked, what should we do? Hagrid, open the door. Harry shouted. Get out of the way. Hermione said, squeezing Harry and Ron away, reaching out and banging on the door. As if she wouldn't get tired, she kept banging for two minutes before the door finally opened. It was opened from the inside by Hagrid. What, are you guys here to laugh at me too? Hagrid said with a stiff face, then returned to the house, hugging Yaya and a dog. The three of them were very familiar. No, we're not, Harry replied immediately. Hagrid asked himself, if I don't open the door, you still keep knocking. Are you not going to give me any quiet time? Yes. Hermione crossed her hands and did not sit down, but looked at Hagrid, who avoided Hermione's eyes. Are you still avoiding us, Hagrid? I'm not hiding from you, Hagrid muttered. Ha! Hermione sneered and said, then why are you ignoring us? Can't you hear such a loud sound? Okay, let's not talk about this anymore. She waved her hand again, without giving Hagrid any chance to argue, and continued, it's just a newspaper, and you're afraid of it becoming like this? You don't understand. Hagrid muttered, Hermione, you are still young, you don't understand. After all, adults have face. Huh, I don't understand. Yes, I don't understand. Hermione sneered, but is your solution the right one? Hagrid, answer me, hide from everyone, and you think nothing happened. Yes, right? Hagrid opened his mouth but did not answer. Ron and Harry stared at Hermione with their mouths wide open, and looked at Hagrid from time to time, as if they were watching a wonderful tennis match. Very good, it seems you don't think so anymore. Hermione nodded and said, it proves that you are not completely confused, Hagrid. What's the use of a daily prophet? Do you think so too? Don't you deserve to be the care of magical creatures teacher? Don't you know anything about magical biology? Would Dumbledore hire someone who knows nothing to be a teacher? Why should you doubt yourself? Hagrid turned into Harry and Ron, with his mouth wide open, staring blankly at Hermione. You are a very good teacher, Hagrid. Hermione spoke very clearly. You may have some problems in some aspects, such as teaching arrangements, but your enthusiasm for teaching and your familiarity with the curriculum are the best. Incomparable to anyone. So why aren't you qualified for a professorship? You can do it, Hagrid, believe in yourself. We all believe in you too. Hermione said with a wink. Only then did Harry and Ron react. They nodded repeatedly and said, Yes, Hagrid, we are very happy that you can become a teacher, and we also think that you are a very competent and qualified teacher. All our Gryffindor classmates they all think so. As for Slytherin. Hey, don't care about their opinions. Tears suddenly welled up in Hagrid's eyes. He took out a rag-like handkerchief from somewhere, squeezed out the snot from his nose, and said moothly, Oh, thank you very much, you three. I really don't know what to say. To be honest, Rita Skeeter's report is not unreasonable. I do think so sometimes, am I really a qualified teacher? With your support, I feel relieved. I will change myself and make care of magical creatures the most interesting course in Hogwarts. Hagrid said loudly. Hagrid, if you think so. Then I'm relieved. A familiar voice suddenly came from outside the door, and then a figure entered the hut, with a smile on his face and pale hair, it was Dumbledore. There was another person behind him, but it was Sia Ran. Chapter, 219 Professor Dumbledore, and Sia Ran, why are you here? Hagrid quickly stood up and wiped away his tears, his face was a little red, and he seemed to be at a loss. Sia Ran chuckled and said, if you meet someone, come over and have a look. He was planning to come over to see Hagrid, but when he was walking out of the castle, 
He happened to meet Dumbledore coming downstairs, so he simply came over together and heard Hermione's words. You are a teacher in the school. It is also my responsibility as the principal to care for the health of teachers and students. Dumbledore smiled, Miss Granger, you are great. He looked at Hermione again and gave a thumbs up. Hermione blushed, trying not to look too proud. Sia Ran suddenly turned around and looked outside, smiling, Dumbledore, it seems we should leave by the way, you three should follow. No one else had to ask, they already understood everything when they saw the tall figure through the window. Hagrid, we won't disturb you anymore. Dumbledore smiled narrowly and followed Xia ran out. Harry, Ron, and Hermione trotted out quickly. Hagrid came out with a red face and ignored the few people returning to the castle. Instead, he greeted Ms. Maxim with an unusually strong smile on his face. It seems Hagrid has found his other half. Ron said. Harry and Hermione were also sincerely happy for Hagrid. The Yule Ball is coming soon, and there should be a lot of students staying in school this year. Dumbledore said softly, the elves will be very busy by then. Oops. Harry and Ron's expressions suddenly changed. As expected, Hermione immediately became excited and said, Professor Dumbledore, don't you think it's so unfair that the elves work hard without complaint, without getting a day off, no subsidies, and no wages? This is labor exploitation. This is this is disgraceful behavior. Sia Ran noticed that Dumbledore seemed a little confused and looked at Hermione blankly. Professor, elves must enjoy the same treatment as us, including wages, subsidies, and various benefits. Even if they are free. Well, freedom can be postponed for a while, but other benefits must be compensated. Hermione was very excited, not showing any signs of it. He restrained himself somewhat due to Dumbledore's status as principal. Dumbledore said distressedly, Miss Granger, I want to do this, really, I am not lying to you, I will give him a salary for the new house elf. I am going to give him a salary for a week. Ten galleons, a weekend off, but he didn't ask for it and acted very frightened. In the end, he only asked for one galleon, one galleon a week and one day off a month, while the other house elf simply didn't want a penny. No need for a day off. Sia Rant's eyes moved slightly, thinking about the plot in the original time and space, and asked, Dumbledore, what are the names of those two elves? Dobby, Winky, Dumbledore replied. More than. Twinkle. There were two exclamations in succession, the first one was from Harry and the second one was from Hermione. Yes, Dobby, Winky. Dumbledore sighed, there are more than a hundred house elves in Hogwarts, and Dobby is the only one who asked for wages and holidays, but even so, I am willing to give him more wages and holidays, but he doesn't want them. It's always been a concept issue. Sia Ran said softly. Dobby was originally a house elf of the Malfoy family, and was later liberated. Winky was a house elf of the Crouch family, and he also sneaked into Hogwarts and captured him. After Harry, who had been struck by Barty Crouch Jr. Or Voldemort's imperious curse, was rescued, he and Dobby found Dumbledore, hoping to get a job at Hogwarts. After all, the only job in the magic world that two elves can do is Hogwarts, and they may not want to go to foreign magic schools. Professor, Dobby is at Hogwarts. Harry asked hurriedly. Is Winky okay? Hermione asked worriedly. She had seen Dobby and Winky before. Dobby was in relatively better condition, so she was more worried about Winky. Dumbledore replied, I didn't go to the kitchen, but it should be fine. Dobby is a smart and enthusiastic elf. He will take good care of Winky. Harry nodded, Dobby was indeed such an elf. Professor, we need to change. House elves are our friends, not our slaves. Hermione's eyes burned. Of course, I recognize this and I have never regarded them as slaves. Dumbledore said. So, freedom. I'm afraid this won't work. Dumbledore shook his head. In the wizarding world, apart from Hogwarts, there is no other place that can accommodate more than a hundred elves at the same time. They need a job, and this job currently only Hogwarts can provide that. But. I will try to increase wages and holidays for other elves. 
there will be an adjustment period. Dumbledore said. Xia Ran smiled and said, Dobby's mind has been liberated, isn't he still unable to accept more wages and holidays? Hermione, the road must be walked step by step, don't walk too fast. Hermione could only accept this reality helplessly, but her eyes flashed, thinking that she might be able to ask Fred and George how to get to the underground kitchen of Hogwarts and see the house elves in person. Status After the first round of competition, time passed very quickly, and Christmas was coming soon, because there was the Triwizard Tournament this year, and the Christmas dance would be held. It would be opened by the three warriors and their dance partners. Almost most students in the school chose to stay. School. I'm not going back, Harry. Ron said, signing the detention list issued by Professor McGonagall. As for Harry, he signed as usual. He originally wanted to spend Christmas at the Black Mansion this year, but since he encountered such a big event, of course he had to slow down. He and Sirius wrote through letters, and Sirius also it is recommended that he stay in school, after all, the Triwizard Tournament is too rare. Xia Ran left school before Christmas, after taking the last class before the holiday, he came to Grimald Place in London and gently knocked on a building that jumped out from between houses 11 and 13. Door. Xia Ran, you're finally here. I've been waiting for you for a long time. Lu Ping opened the door. Xia Ran went in and said, I just finished class and I haven't eaten anything yet. Is there anything to eat? We haven't finished eating yet, let's eat something together. In the kitchen, Sirius poked his head and said. Creature, the house elf of the black family, said enthusiastically, Professor Fremont, what do you want to eat? Creature can make a lot of food. After Regulus's bones were buried, Creature completely changed his temper and recognized Sirius as his master, as well as most members of the Order of the Phoenix. Just have some. Xia Ran smiled, thanks, Creature. Is it just the three of us? Sirius asked, putting down his knife and fork. No, there are others. Lupin said, me, you, Xia Ran, Mad-Eye, Tonks, Kingsley, and Arthur are also there. I hope to meet Death Eaters. Sirius said expectantly, full of fighting spirit. Xia Ran said softly, Mad-Eye will come over later. He has classes. Arthur and the others will meet us at the Ministry of Magic. Chapter, 220 When will you start? Have you decided? Sirius asked, I can't wait, it's been so long. You know, I really hope. He spread his hands and continued, I can break into the Ministry of Magic. Isn't now an opportunity? Xia Ran smiled, but we have to be more cautious. Although we have internal agents and the Ministry of Magic security is much lax during Christmas, Death Eaters may be waiting for the opportunity. By the way, Xia Ran, we sneaked into the Department of Mysteries of the Ministry of Magic. What are we going to take away? Or are we going to listen to a prophecy? What prophecy? Lu Ping asked doubtfully. This was also the answer to the question that Sirius wanted to know. The Order of the Phoenix held a meeting a few days ago, and Dumbledore laid out this plan, led by Kieran and Moody, with Kingsley, Tonks, and Arthur Weasley as internal agents. And Sirius and Lupin as assistants, a total of seven A wizard, working inside and outside, sneaked into the Ministry of Magic, and Xia Ran took away something, a magical item in the Department of Mysteries. Except for Xia Ran, the other six people didn't know what that thing was, including Moody. They were curious, what was Dumbledore's intention behind this move? Xia Ran naturally understood that this plan was formulated together with Dumbledore and Snape. Because of the message in time and space, Xia Ran knew that Voldemort was not only eager to get the Elder Wand, but also eager to get the Prophecy Ball in the Department of Mysteries. To hear the complete prophecy, Professor Sybil Trelawney applied for the job more than ten years ago. The complete version of the prophecy made while teaching divination at Hogwarts. Although the prophecy ball can only be touched by the characters involved in the prophecy. This does not prevent the Order of the Phoenix from taking this opportunity to send a signal that the Order of the Phoenix is also planning on the Prophecy Ball. Coupled with Snape's concealed summons, Voldemort may not be able to hide so much, 
and may be impatient to spend time on wooing dark wizards and dark creatures from all parties, which in turn will buy more time for the Order of the Phoenix. Moreover, the most important thing is that the purpose of Xia Rant's trip is not to obtain the Prophecy Ball. On the contrary, if the time permits, their goal is to smash the Prophecy Ball and completely destroy Voldemort's hope of listening to the complete prophecy. The other two people who knew the prophecy, one was Dumbledore, who was not afraid of Voldemort the other was Professor Sybil Trelawney, who never left Hogwarts all year round, especially after Voldemort returned from Resurrection. May Professor Trelawney step out of Hogwarts even if she doesn't realize it yet, as long as Hogwarts doesn't fall, Professor Trelawney will be safe. The purpose of the Order of the Phoenix is to break the prophecy ball, disrupt the sight of the Dark Wizard's camp, and draw out the undercover Death Eaters within the Ministry of Magic. But this, sneaking into the Department of Mysteries of the Ministry of Magic and breaking the prophecy ball, is not an easy task. If there is no insider, they would not dare to take such a risky move. It's not to listen to the prophecy. Xia Ran said softly, you will know by then. In fact, this plan itself is just a bait. The undercover Death Eaters in the Ministry of Magic must have received the news, you also know, C. Knapp is an undercover, double agent, so this may be a bad fight, and one cannot be careless. Lupin and Sirius nodded. They understood that Voldemort was eyeing a certain item in the Department of Mysteries, and what they had to do now was to get that mysterious item before Voldemort. Needless to say, we knew that the Death Eaters would not give in, and a war might be inevitable. Not long after, Moody also came to the old Blake house at 12, Grimald Place and asked, are you ready? If you are, let's set off. There is no need to contact Kingsley and the others. They have already arrived. It's all arranged, just adapt accordingly. Put on a big robe so as not to reveal your identity, especially since you too are still professors at Hogwarts. Lupin said, carrying four wizard robes and coming out with hoods, somewhat similar to those of Death Eaters. The clothes, but the colors are completely different. This robe is brightly colored, either sky blue, bright red, golden yellow, or turquoise. The sky blue robe went to Moody, and the bright red robe went to Sirius. Lupin finally handed Xia Ran a green robe with a green hat. Xia Ran's face immediately collapsed and asked for a change. He couldn't wear this green robe. So Lupin switched with him. Xia Ran put on a golden wizard robe and a hood. She felt pretty good and said, all that's missing is a mask. We also have masks, you can choose for yourself. Lu Ping replied, also pulling out a box of masks from a cabinet in the kitchen, with all colors and styles available. Xia Ran's eyes were surprised, is this mask sold wholesale? You know, there are quite a few of us in the Order of the Phoenix, just for emergencies. Sirius shrugged. Xia Ran chose a pale mask. On the Snow White mask, there were a few ink marks, like teardrops. Let's go. The four of them stepped out of Blake's old house and disappeared at the same time. The sky was full of snow and wind, and no one was walking on the street, so no one noticed these four strange figures. Because tomorrow is Christmas, most Ministry of Magic officials are on vacation, and there are very few wizards on duty, including several who are members of the Order of the Phoenix. Xia Ran and Moody had both worked in the Ministry of Magic for many years and were familiar with the route. They passed the visitor phone box and went straight to the entrance of the Ministry of Magic Hall. There was almost no one in the Ministry of Magic at this moment, and no wizard had exclaimed when he saw a few people. Statues of wizards, elves, goblins and other creatures still stand on the fountain in the Ministry of Magic Hall, with the words magic is power shining brightly. Xia Ran glanced at it and a strangely placed newspaper came into view. Suddenly the expression on his face under the pale mask changed slightly, and he whispered, be careful. The situation seems to have changed. Let's go to the Department of Mysteries first. Moody said solemnly. This time he did not carry his iconic cane, and his magic eye was covered by a mask. It was extremely difficult for anyone to recognize that this wizard covered in sky-blue robes was an aura. Hero, Mad Eye Alastair Moody. The four of them quickly came to the elevator and took the elevator directly to the ninth underground floor where the Department of Mysteries is located. 
Department of Mysteries, said the cold female voice in the elevator. The fence door slid open slightly, and the four people walked out. Lupin moved his nose slightly and whispered, I smell a wizard. Several people stepped up their guard. Ciaran held the wand tightly in her right hand, which was covered by the golden robe and could not be seen clearly by outsiders, which gave him certain convenience. He walked slowly along a long corridor that ended with a dark door. The Department of Mysteries is often extremely mysterious within the Ministry of Magic. He has rarely been here in the past, so he doesn't know much about it. There's movement. Sirius suddenly said, and without waiting for anyone else to reply, he quickly ran to the side. Reckless. Moody said, and had no choice but to follow. Chapter, 221 Moody and Lupin followed Sirius and ran behind a curtain. Ciaran held the magic wand in her hand, which was attached to the end of her head. Her eyes under the mask looked around, not sparing any hidden corner, and she was cautious and vigilant. He knew that because of Snape's leak, there must be Death Eaters lurking here. In front of him, Sirius, Moody, and Lupin had stepped through the black door one after another and entered the Department of Mysteries. He went in last. Suddenly he stood in a large circular room. Everything here was black, including the floor and ceiling. There are many black doors embedded in the surrounding black walls, all identical, without markings or handles. There are some branch-shaped candles dotted between the walls, the flames are blue, and the swaying cold light casts on the shiny marble floor. Making people feel that they are standing on the dark water under their feet, and it seems that there is some terrifying dark creature lurking under the water. Xia Ran was not moved at all. There were twelve doors on the surrounding walls. With a rumbling sound, the walls began to rotate and the candles moved to the side. When he turned around and looked, he had forgotten which door he had just entered. Xia Ran's expression changed slightly. Blue flames blurred around them like neon tubes. Then, just as suddenly as it had begun, everything stopped again, the roar was gone, everything was quiet again. It seems that they don't want us to find the door back. Lu Ping whispered. Every door was closed tightly, and even with his magic eyes, Moody couldn't tell which door they came in from. But at this time Sirius had broken through a door. Come on. Xia Ran couldn't help but whisper, and followed closely into the room. Be careful. There are enemies. Sirius's voice came from nowhere, with a hazy and ethereal feel. Xia Ran reacted very quickly. When she waved her wand, without making any sound, a layer of illusory armor blocked her body, and sparks shot out from the tip of the wand. Boom! Boom! The armor in front of Xia Ran shattered, and he took advantage of the situation to hide to the right and raised his eyes to glance. It was a large, dimly lit house, rectangular in shape, with a recess in the middle, forming a huge stone pit about twenty feet deep. The room was surrounded by rows of stepped stone benches, and he stood on the top row. The stone benches extended downward at a steep angle, much like an amphitheater. There is a high stone platform in the center of the pit, with a stone arch erected on it. It looks very old, dilapidated, and decayed. Judging from its appearance, it seems that it should not be erected here at all. There was no wall around the arch to support it, and a tattered black curtain or drapery hung over it, and although there was no breeze in the cold air, the drapery fluttered gently as if someone had just touched it. And a group of wizards wearing black cloaks were confronting Xia Ran and the four of them relying on the stone platform. Ah, Death Eaters, yes, obviously. Xia Ran said, her face under the mask turned cold, and she recited a spell without hesitation. Burning Flames a large burst of flame emerged from the tip of his wand and filled the entire room in the blink of an eye. Not only the group of black-cloaked Death Eaters were surprised, but also Moody, Lupin, and Sirius. Isn't the power of Xia Rant's flame spell too terrifying? Quickly exit this room. The water is like a spring. Someone among the Death Eaters shouted in a hoarse voice, but unfortunately, his water spell could not extinguish Xia Rant's fire spell at all. He only made a few chirps before being angry. Melted. Catch them. Moody said in a deep voice, pointing his wand, 
and several rays of light shot through the blazing flames and hit a Death Eater. He stiffened on the spot and fell to the ground at the bottom of the stone pit. It's best to kill them directly. Sirius dodged Xia Rant's fire spell and fired various offensive spells. All turned to stone. Shattered to pieces. Avada Kedavra. The group of Death Eaters directly recited the Avada Kedavra and used the unforgivable curse without any scruples. Flying sand and flying stones. Falling apart. Although Xia Ran wanted to use Avada Kedavra to deal with the Death Eaters, all moral principles are empty, killing them is the first priority. But after all, there are other people present, and it is not until the critical moment, it's better not to use the unforgivable curse carelessly. Anyway, with his magic power, these other offensive spells and magic are also extremely powerful, enough to defeat most Death Eaters. Xia Ran and the four of them started a fierce battle with a group of Death Eaters in this room. Aha, uh -huh, my dear cousin, I recognize you, where are you going? A crazy woman laughed, and the black cloaked figure wrapped around Sirius, and it turned out to be Bella. Trix Lestrange, Sirius's cousin, was the murderer of Sirius in the original time and space. Sirius smiled coldly and said, Bellatrix, it's time for you to pay for your crimes. Is it just you? Sirius, a stupid, extremely dirty big black dog. Bellatrix sneered. She learned Sirius's identity from Wormtail. Just wait and see. All will be petrified. Sirius said and used the petrification spell, but Bellatrix easily dodged it. Your skills have slowed down, my dear cousin. Avada Kedavra. Bellatrix said fiercely, she really wanted to kill Sirius. On the other side, Moody was fighting a wizard with equally superb magic power, and he heard a voice that sounded like Barty Crouch Jr. Lupin and a Death Eater went back and forth, fighting each other, and ran out of the large empty room. Xia Ran could see that most of the Death Eaters lurking here were elite dark wizards. Both Barty Crouch Jr. and Bellatrix were extremely loyal Death Eaters to Voldemort, and their magic power was endless. Weak. Barty Crouch Jr. is even more powerful. Avada Kedavra. A green light suddenly shot toward Xia Ran at an extremely fast speed. Xia Ran dodged and the green light hit the wall behind her, making a hole. The one who attacked him was a pale wizard with a twisted face and crazy eyes. Xia Ran recognized this person, his name was Antonin Dolohov. He had tortured the Longbottoms with Barty Crouch Jr. and Bellatrix, causing them to go crazy, and had also killed Pruitt. Brothers, Mrs. Weasley's two biological brothers. Oh, Dumbledore's lackey, give me a hit. Just as Dolohov was mid-sentence, Xia Ran hit him with a curse. Split into pieces. Dolokhov even lowered his head and dodged. Ha, have the idiots in the Order of the Phoenix learned to strike first? Dolokhov sneered. Xia Ran's eyes were cold, and she held the devil's hand tightly. Although it was covered by a mask, her murderous intent was still overflowing, and Dolohov sensed it in an instant. He suddenly laughed wildly, full of ridicule. Chapter, 222 How ridiculous! Dolohov mocked, hasn't the Order of the Phoenix always advocated kindness and forgiveness? Didn't Dumbledore always talk about his power of love? As a result, you, a member of the Order of the Phoenix, the murderous intent boils over at every turn, and all the words and actions before and after are so shameless, it's really disgusting. That's Dumbledore's opinion, not mine. Xia Ran said calmly, mercy and forgiveness should only be directed at those innocent people, whether muggles or wizards. As for dark wizards like you, he said with a cold smile, killing them all is the best solution. Can someone like you join the Order of the Phoenix? Antonin Dolohov laughed, I invite you to join the Death Eater organization and submit to the Dark Lord. This is where you should stay. Place. The Order of the Phoenix will not change the past, and the new era will be led by us. That's the world of wizards. His expression was twisted and crazy, with a bit of fanaticism. Madman. Xia Ran defined it and didn't want to say anything more. Anyway, a dark wizard and death eater like Antonin Dolohov would kill him a thousand times or ten thousand times. 
shattered to pieces. Torn to pieces. Xia Ran dodged Dolohov's spell and shot out several magic rays, aiming at Dolohov. Although he dodged directly, Xia Ran still appeared in several potholes on the wall behind. The power of magic and the terrifying lethality of his magic. Anthony Dolokhov is not a weakling, Xia Ran can feel that Dolokhov's magic power is as deep as rivers and lakes, and he is 100% at the top of the magic world at level 6. Also, Dolokhov, Barty Crouch Jr. and others were all elite Death Eaters under Voldemort. Back then, Voldemort led a group of Death Eaters and could subjugate most of the wizarding world. Only Dumbledore could conquer the world. Rival it. Obviously, there are many top wizards with level 6 magic among the Death Eaters. Otherwise, how could they have such terrifying power? On the contrary, it was Bellatrix Lestrange. Xia Ran took the time to take a few glances and found that although her magic power was not weak, it was not among the top ranks. It was almost the same as Sirius and Lupin, both of whom were level 5 magic level, but her status within the Death Eater organization. Well, Bellatrix has a different relationship with Voldemort. With this status, it's understandable. Xia Ran secretly thought, pushed the door open and went out. Dolohov's Cruciatus curse hit the black door, closing the door. Beat him to pieces directly. Want to run? Dolokhov said with a ferocious smile, you can't run. I will definitely kill you. He quickly ran out of the big room. Xia Ran was waiting outside the door. When she saw Dolokhov running out, he immediately pointed his wand and muttered something, and a ball of fierce fire that looked like it came from hell suddenly shot out, seemingly capable of burning everything. Fire. Antonin Dolohov's expression suddenly changed, you know how to use the fire spell. Do you know black magic? He stopped himself, intending to turn back and enter the house just now, closing the door to stop the spread of the fire. Sands and rocks. Xia Ran cast a spell. Dolokhov was caught off guard and was hit in the arm. He was immediately in pain and screamed violently. He fell into the big room inside, alarming the Death Eaters who were fighting fiercely. Dolokhov, you loser, can't you stop even a mere wizard from the Order of the Phoenix? Bellatrix shouted angrily, quickly dodging Sirius's spell. Dolokhov only whined, how could he pay attention to her? That's. Li Hua. The others all looked sideways, feeling shocked, and kept moving away, not daring to get close to Li Hua. For fear that they would be contaminated by a trace of it, unable to get rid of it, and would be burnt to ashes by Li Hua and die miserably. At this moment, the terrifying and fierce fire suddenly parted, and a figure stepped out from it, wearing a pale mask and a golden robe. Such a ridiculous outfit no longer violated the rules, but made people feel truly frightened. Xia Ran. Moody and Sirius were both surprised. When did he become so powerful? Lupin was fighting fiercely with another Death Eater outside and did not see this scene. After Xia Ran's magic power became stronger, she could barely control the fierce fire she summoned. She branched out into a fire-free passage and walked indifferently in front of Dolohov. She raised her wand and the life-killing curse was about to be triggered. Stop! There was a loud shout from outside the door on the other side, followed by several figures wearing black hoods and cloaks who quickly entered the house. The first four people each carried a helpless wizard in their hands. The four people were they are Lupin, Kingsley, Arthur Weasley and Tonks. The four of them looked ashamed, unable to move at all as the Death Eaters pointed their wands tightly at them. Xia Rant's expression changed slightly, the spell was not issued, but the wand was still pointed at Dolohov's head. Stop. If you don't stop, I will kill them. A Death Eater said coldly, and drew his wand beside the four of Lupin. Moody and Sirius had no choice but to put away their wands and stood with Xia Ran, looking solemnly at the group of Death Eaters opposite, as well as Lupin, Kingsley, Mr. Weasley, and Don the four wizards of the Order of the Phoenix. Are you willing to stop? The leading Death Eater laughed coldly, making people's hair stand on end, as if there was a rattlesnake swimming around. Xia Ran said in a deep voice, Exchange, Antonin Dolohov, exchange the four of them. One for four. Barty Crouch Jr. 
sneered, a pale and sickly face revealed under the black hood, only one for one, take your pick, who do you want to exchange? Moody and Sirius looked at Xia Ran and opened their mouths as if they wanted to say something. Xia Ran waved his hand to stop them, and said calmly, one must be replaced by four, otherwise, all of you will not be able to leave. If you don't believe it. You can try to see if any of you Death Eaters can escape from the Ministry of Magic after this hostage exchange breaks down. The threat in his words was palpable. Xia Ran did have this follow-up plan, either one for four, exchanging Antonin Dalahov for Lupin and the four of them, or the deal broke down, Lu Peng and others were killed, and Dalahov was also killed by him. And then a fierce battle started again. He believed that relying on his own and Moody's strength, as long as Moody entangled Barty Crouch Jr. He could deal with everyone else one by one, and finally be free to concentrate on solving Barty Crouch Jr. Of the Death Eaters present, no one can escape, no one can survive. As for the exchange of hostages? This is impossible. Ah ha, come on. Bellatrix said with a crazy look on her face, raising her wand to chant a spell. Xia Ran narrowed her eyes and knocked Dalahav unconscious with a silent spell. Then she aimed her wand at Bellatrix, and the level 6 magic power exploded with overwhelming force, which was daunting and frightening. You can try. If you take action, can you walk out of the Ministry of Magic alive? Chapter, 223 Facing Xia Ran's direct threat, as well as the wand and magic power locked on her, even though Bellatrix was cruel and crazy by nature, her heart could not help but tremble. What a powerful magic! In the end, she didn't dare to directly chant the curse to kill. Of course, if Voldemort was present and the Dark Lord was backing him up, Bellatrix would definitely dare to take action directly. When the Dark Lord plans his plan, you despicable bastards will all die. Bellatrix's eyes were sinister and fierce, but she slowly lowered her wand. Xia Ran nodded slightly and said, Very good, Dalahov was knocked unconscious by me, let's exchange, one for four. He winked at Sirius. Sirius understood, passed the wand to his left hand, and grabbed Dalahov's collar with his right hand. A group of Death Eaters over there seemed to discuss it in low voices. Barty Crouch Jr. stood up and said, Okay, we agree, let's exchange. He motioned to the four Death Eaters to bring the four captured Lupins over. Sirius dragged Dalahav over. Xia Ran and Moody did not move, with their wands in hand, ready to deal with any Death Eaters who repented. Barty Crouch Jr. and Bellatrix seemed to have the urge to go back on their word, especially when the four Death Eaters carried Dalahav back and Sirius helped a few people back slowly. But after looking at the two wizards with terrifying magic powers opposite them, they finally gave up the idea of taking action. Let's go. Barty Crouch Jr. said, leading a group of Death Eaters away, leaving only Xia Ran and the others. Are you okay? Sirius asked. It's okay. Kingsley took a breath and said, be gentle, be gentle. Sorry, I was attacked by those Death Eaters and caught. Mr. Weasley said ashamedly. As long as people are fine, Moody said. Lupin helped Tonk stand up and asked, shall we leave now? Officials from the Ministry of Magic should have been aware of it and may return to the Ministry of Magic at any time. Then let's go. By the way, Arthur, Kingsley, Tonks, do you want to stay here or come with us? Xia Ran hesitated for a moment. Let's go together. Fudge doesn't know about our stay, Kingsley said. Xia Ran nodded, waved the wand back, and the boundless fierce fire disappeared without a trace. The group hurried along the corridors of the Department of Mysteries, staggering the direction they took with the Death Eaters. When they finally arrived at the hall, the Death Eaters had already left. They left the Ministry of Magic and immediately operat to Grimald Place. At the same time, a student at Hogwarts was suddenly awakened by a severe pain on his forehead. Ah! Harry suddenly screamed in pain and got up from the bed. His body was covered in sweat, his face was twisted, and he looked very painful. He covered his forehead tightly with his hands, especially the lightning scar. Harry, Harry. He vaguely heard someone calling him, but a blurry picture seemed to appear in front of him. A person was angry and scolded a group of people. 
He was very angry inside a vast manner. That seemed to be him. Harry wasn't sure. Harry. Ron shook him awake and asked with a worried look, Are you okay? Harry quickly put on his glasses and saw his roommates looking at him with concerned and worried eyes, and even said, Um, it's okay, I had a nightmare. Nightmare, it scared me to death. Seamus muttered, then lay down and turned over and fell asleep again. Dean and Neville also returned to bed. Neville said, Harry, I think you need to see a doctor. Frequent nightmares indicate that you are worried about something. It's best to seek guidance from a doctor. Harry replied, Well, I will see you later, thank you, Neville. But in his heart, he was thinking, I would never go to the school hospital because of this matter, otherwise the news would spread, and Draco. Malfoy would say something that he would find intolerable. Ron had not returned to his bed when Neville's snoring started. He whispered, Man, are you really okay? Harry said softly, Let's talk tomorrow. The next morning, Harry got up early. Because it was Christmas and there was a Yule Ball, most students chose to stay in school, mainly the senior students in 5th, 6th and 7th grades, but also 3rd and 4th graders. Were invited to attend the Yule Ball, such as Ginny and Luna. Except for a small part of the 1st and 2nd grade students, most of them went home, many students also got up very early and started to dress up and prepare to participate. There's a dance tonight. Are they crazy? It's only morning. Ron looked at a group of Gryffindor girls laughing and playing, applying various cosmetics, commenting on their evening gowns, and trimming them with wands. He suddenly his mouth opened wide, showing great surprise. My dear brother, you don't understand. Fred said pitifully, while he and George were discussing something. Why did you two get up so early? Ron asked suspiciously. Do you want to eat, Ron? George took out a toffee from somewhere and looked at Ron expectantly. Ron, Harry, and Hermione shook their heads and waved their hands in sync and walked out of the lounge. The twin brothers gave them something. After witnessing the last time Neville accidentally turned into a fat bird, eating a toffee handed over by Fred, they made up their mind to eat it no matter what. Can't eat anything from the twin brothers. Harry, are you satisfied with your Christmas gift? Hermione asked. Yeah, not bad. Harry looked a little dazed. Hermione's Christmas gift was a Quidditch book, which was the book he was most interested in, but he couldn't arouse much interest at this time. Okay, there's no one here, and few people come here. Tell me, what's going on? Hermione asked. They came to the top of a Hogwarts tower and looked down through the round window. It was covered with snow. Many students ran out to have a snowball fight, and students from Bosbatons and Durmstrang also participated. Harry organized his words and said, I saw Voldemort. Ron shivered. Okay, you know who, Harry changed his words, I saw him reprimanding a group of people, they must be Death Eaters. He was very angry. It seemed that he was furious because he didn't get something, or something. He didn't say that he didn't see Voldemort getting angry, but that he felt like he was getting angry himself. He didn't want his two good friends to look at him strangely. You mean the mysterious man? Did you see him? Hermione frowned and said, I'm sorry, Harry, you were in the dormitory last night, right? I know. Harry said worriedly, I was in the dormitory all night, Ron can prove it. Ron nodded repeatedly. But I just saw it. I saw it in a dream, as if that dream connected me with the mysterious man. I can see him sometimes. But I don't want to see him. Harry was also very distressed. He never wanted to experience that excruciating pain again. Chapter, 224 You mean? Hermione looked up at Harry's lightning scar and whispered, This scar has some special ability. Um, a channel? I guess so. Harry scratched his head and said, I'm not sure, but recently, when the mysterious person's mood fluctuates violently, I can always see some scenes, like. It's like I was there at that time. Ron looked at Harry blankly and suddenly said, Harry, I think. You should go to the hospital. Don't you believe me, Ron? Harry said angrily. Of course. Ron said without thinking. 
He immediately saw Harry's angry expression and changed his words, Of course I believe you, man. How could I not believe you? It's just. We don't know anything about the mysterious man. Otherwise, you should ask the professor, Professor McGonagall, Professor Moody or Professor Fremont. Hermione also interjected, Yes, let's ask the professors first to see if they know anything. Anyway, they must know more than us. Harry thought so and nodded. But to everyone's surprise, they searched around and found no trace of the professors, and no one was in the office. Where did they go? The trio was very confused. Since it was almost noon, they simply went to have lunch, and then went out to have a snowball fight with Fred, George, Ginny, and Neville in the snowy square. They didn't know that the Hogwarts professors who had joined the Order of the Phoenix, including Dumbledore himself, had all arrived at No. 12, Grimald Place. Arthur, are you okay? When Mrs. Weasley arrived, she was frightened when she saw Mr. Weasley's face was pale, looking very tired and weak. Mr. Weasley smiled and said, It's okay, Molly, everything has recovered. If you rest for a while, you will be fully recovered. I was really scared when I received the news last night, but because of the confidentiality, I can only come over this morning, oh, Arthur. Mrs. Weasley said and hugged Mr. Weasley. By the way, thank you, Sia Ran. Mrs. Weasley said gratefully, and Sirius and Alaster, thank you. Sia Ran waved her hand casually, chuckled and said, Eat something, Mrs. Weasley, everything is fine, don't worry. We won't take action easily if we are not certain about something that is too dangerous. She explained. Ah, Professor Snape is here. The potion is here. When Sia Ran looked up, she saw Snape walking into the kitchen. He was wearing a big black robe, his face was gloomy, and his hair looked like it hadn't been washed for many days. He took out three bottles of magic potion from his robe, placed it on the table, and said concisely, Swelling agent, bone growing spirit, and wolfsbane potion. Severus, thank you. Lupin thanked him sincerely and took away the wolfsbane potion. He had to make plans for his next transformation, after all, the originally prepared Wolfsbane potion had been used up. Sirius pretended not to notice, with a slightly unnatural expression on his face. Kingsley took away the bone spirit and grinned, I took a magic spell yesterday and lost a bone. I feel better today. Tonks grabbed the anti-swelling agent and applied it directly to her ankles. She had been walking with a limp today. Yesterday, several people broke into the Ministry of Magic. Lupin, Mr. Weasley, Kingsley, and Tonks were captured and suffered some trauma. Therefore, Charon asked Professor Snape to bring some prepared magic today. Medicine. Sia Ran smiled and said, Professor Snape, I think you can write a book and talk about it. It will definitely sell well all over the world. Anyone who is interested in potions will not miss your book. Snape's mouth moved and he replied, Forget it, it's such a waste of time. Sia Ranshin said that when you were young, you dared to directly modify textbooks and called yourself the Half-Blood Prince. Now that you are a potions professor, you are still unwilling to write a book. But this was Snape's choice, and it was entirely up to him. If you really want to publish a work, give it a nicer name. Sia Ran said casually. Snape glanced at Sia Ran suspiciously, always feeling that he meant something. At this time, Dumbledore and Professor McGonagall also arrived. The kitchen was basically full and crowded, and everyone had a cup in front of them. Dumbledore raised his glass first and said with a smile, I wish you all a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. After a glass of wine, the meeting quickly got down to business. Severus, what was Voldemort's reaction? Dumbledore asked. Snape replied, very angry. The mysterious man was very angry, but the main target was Antonin Dolohov. He was defeated and captured by Sia Ran, which caused the other four prisoners to be exchanged. Lupin, Mr. Weasley, Kingsley, and Tonks all looked slightly unnatural. They were what Snape called prisoners. Does he realize it? Dumbledore asked again. Realized, Snape replied. That's good. Dumbledore nodded turned to look at Moody, and said, Alaster, I need you to cover the back. Moody nodded silently, 
he also understood Dumbledore's plan. Sorry, Dumbledore, what are you talking about? Sirius asked with a frown. Except for Sharon, Snape, Moody and Professor McGonagall, everyone else looked blank and confused, not knowing Dumbledore's plan. Snape especially knew that it made Sirius very uncomfortable. You will know later. It is not yet time to make it public. Dumbledore replied. In fact, this is about Harry. They want to sharpen Harry so that he can face death and have the spirit of sacrifice, so that he can but there is a glimmer of hope. And Sirius couldn't let Sirius know about this matter. With his temperament, he might end up causing countless troubles. Besides, the fewer people know about this, the better. How has the Ministry of Magic reacted, Shacklebolt? Dumbledore asked again, temporarily ignoring the dissatisfied Sirius. Kingsley replied, Fudge was also very angry, but he also ordered all officials to strictly refrain from talking about this matter, and to treat it as if the battle in the Department of Mysteries had never happened. Ha! Bill Weasley sneered, that's very Fudge style. Bill originally worked at Gringotts in Egypt, but has now been transferred back to Gringotts in England. He has also begun to participate in the work of the Order of the Phoenix and often lives in the humble home. Charlie didn't come back. He believed that the Order of the Phoenix also needed members abroad, and for the work of raising dragons, Romania was the only one in Europe that had dragon farms. He doesn't want to give up his beloved dragon training career. Xia Ran raised her eyebrows and said, What, Fudge interfered with Gringotts? Judging from Bill's appearance, it was obvious that the target was not aimless. It was determined that Fudge had announced some order, and it probably affected the Gringotts banking industry. Chapter, 225 According to internal information, Fudge seems to be interested in attacking Gring, and wants to completely integrate the banking system into the Ministry of Magic. Bill Weasley said, those goblins' opinion of Fudge has dropped to freezing point. I heard some goblins say when chatting since then, they have decided to join the mysterious man. Is he crazy? Tonks asked in shock, Gringotts has always been the territory of goblins. If this is taken away, won't the goblins rebel? Who knows? Maybe this is the scene he wants to see. Bill shrugged. Sia Ran said decisively, it seems that Fudge is not far away from going completely crazy. Our plan must speed up. Goblins will not easily join the war between wizards. We cannot sit back and watch Fudge push the goblins to join the dark wizard camp. Then let's put it in the first half of next year. Dumbledore said solemnly. Fudge's various actions and the current turbulent situation in the wizarding world also made him determined, the plan will be launched then. Everyone discussed the precautions for a while. The public opinion offensive and the aftermath were all very important. Because there was a Yule Ball at Hogwarts in the evening, Sia Ran, Dumbledore, Professor McGonagall, Snape, and Moody, after the meeting, operat back to Hogwarts together. At this moment, the sky is dark, dark clouds are piled up, and it seems like it will snow heavily. It looks like it's going to snow heavily tonight. Let's go back and change into a dress first. It would be too rude to wear such a dress to attend the ball. Dumbledore said with a smile. Moody shook his head. He had no intention of attending the Yule Ball. Sia Ran and Professor McGonagall will attend. To Sia Ran's expectation, Snape is also willing to attend the Yule Ball. I am the headmaster, I cannot shirk it. Snape said with a gloomy expression. Sia Ran shrugged and went back to the office to change into a dress. At this time, countless candles were lit in the castle. The lights were bright and people were coming and going. Both men and women tried their best to dress up in their best appearance. When he arrived at the foyer, the place was already crowded with students, all milling around, waiting for eight o'clock to arrive, when the door to the auditorium would open. Some people wanted to meet their dance partners from other colleges, so they stood sideways in the hall. The crowd crowded around, looking for each other. The faculty of Hogwarts are located in a corner. Except for Professor Moody, almost everyone has arrived. Even Filch, the administrator of Hogwarts Castle, is accompanying Mrs. Pants from the library, holding hands. They stood together and whispered. Hagrid's figure was very conspicuous. He was looking around. 
Without asking, Xia Ran knew that he was looking for Bozbaden's principal, Ms. Maxim. Xia Ran, good, very energetic. Professor Sprout praised. Xia Ran was wearing a blue dress with a high neckline. His hair was very short and his face was not handsome and delicate, but he was very confident in his coordination. The temperament, powerful magic, self-confidence, but gives people a very amazing feeling. Sorry, Xia Ran, please give in. I have to gather the Hufflepuff students. Professor Sprout said as he passed by Xia Ran. Professor McGonagall, Professor Flittick, and Professor Snape were not here. Instead, they gathered the students from their own colleges and arranged them. Warriors please come here. Professor McGonagall shouted loudly. Cedric Diggory and Cho Chang, Fleur Delacour and Roger Davis, and the most eye-catching Victor Crumb and Hermione Granger. I don't know many girls looked at Hermione with jealous eyes, extremely jealous that she had taken away Crumb's dance partner position. But Hermione's appearance changed so much today that it was difficult for her to say any humiliating words. Even when Draco Malfoy and Pansy Parkinson passed by, they couldn't find a word to insult her at this moment. Hermione. Hermione smiled a little nervously, took Crumb's arm, and winked as she faced Harry. Harry was shocked. He almost didn't recognize Hermione. Her previously messy brown hair was now smooth and shiny, and was pulled into an elegant bun on the back of her head. She was wearing a robe made of flowing light purple-blue material, and somehow her aura was different, Harry guessed, perhaps because she had taken off the twenty-something clothes she usually carried on her body. This is a thick book. Hello, Harry, Hermione greeted. Hello, Parvati. Parvati was Harry's dance partner, but she looked at Hermione with undisguised suspicion. There were many people like her, especially those star-chasing girls who admired Crumb and wanted to take out their wands. Come and kill Hermione. By the way, where's Ron? Hermione asked. Just as Harry was about to answer, he heard a cold snort and followed Ron and Padma into the Great Hall without looking back, as if he didn't even see Hermione beside him. What happened to him? Hermione asked Harry confused. Well, he was in a bad mood. You know, that dress. Harry replied randomly, but he didn't actually say that Ron's mood because of the dress had completely changed when he came to the hall. Coming. Harry carried Parvati into the auditorium. Different from the original time and space trajectory, this time he was not a warrior, so he did not have to wait outside. After all the teachers and students were seated, he finally entered with the other warriors. He could completely advance, go in and take a seat. There was some regret in his heart. The walls of the auditorium were covered with glittering silver frost, and the ceiling was a starry night sky, hung with hundreds of garlands of mistletoe sprigs and ivy. The four academy tables were gone, replaced by a hundred small tables lit with lanterns, with about ten people sitting at each table. He saw the situation at the guest of honor seat. Several judges were sitting in one position respectively, while Professor Fremont and other teachers were sitting at two tables on the other side. Many teachers were alone and had no dancing partners, such as Fremont. Professor Raymond. Harry decided to go over later and ask about his situation. At this time, Professor McGonagall called the warriors and their dance partners in, and everyone applauded warmly. After the warriors started dancing, they were the protagonists of this dance, Harry said sorry to Parvati and then found Professor Fremont who was eating and drinking. Professor, Professor. Xia Ran glanced at it and said with a smile, it turns out to be Harry. What's wrong? You have a dance partner, so you don't have to just focus on eating and drinking like me. Parvati seemed a little unhappy. Harry said awkwardly, Um, Professor, stop teasing me. Lien said seriously, I came to you because I really have something important to do. Xia Ran raised her eyebrows, put down her knife and fork, swallowed the food in her mouth, glanced around and said, Let's go out, there are too many people here. Ron followed at this time, while Hermione walked away with a sullen face. The two seemed to have had a quarrel. Chapter 226. Xia Ran led Harry and Ron, walked sideways around the dance floor, slipped out of the door quietly, and came to the foyer. 
The front door was open, and as they descended the steps the rose garden shimmered with fairy lights, they found themselves surrounded by low shrubs, ornately decorated winding paths, and huge stone statues. They could also hear the sound of splashing water, like a fountain, and occasionally see people sitting on carved benches. Harry, tell me, what's the matter? Xia Ran asked softly, walking slowly among the roses. Harry and Ron were behind him, wandering along a winding path through the rose garden. The two looked at each other, and Harry whispered, That's right, Professor Fremont, last night I. He told the scene he saw in his dream last night, and finally said, Professor, you said. That was indeed a mysterious man, right? How could I see pictures of him? He looked very confused. Xia Rant's eyes flashed slightly, and he knew the reason. Harry was one of Voldemort's Horcruxes, and the only two living Horcruxes, the other was Voldemort's Snake Nagini, and he and Voldemort there are traces of brain connectivity, even if Voldemort may not be aware of it at this time. Voldemort in the original time and space was not interested at first, but later realized this and used this as a means to lure Harry into the Department of Mysteries of the Ministry of Magic, which ultimately led to Sirius's death. Harry is really to blame. This kind of situation is relatively rare, but how can I put it? Xia Ran said softly, and suddenly a familiar voice came from the flowers nearby. I don't know why you are making such a fuss, Igor. It was Snape's voice. Severus, you can't pretend that this didn't happen. Karkarov's voice sounded frightened and hoarse, as if he was afraid of being heard. It has been changing for months, and even burned in the middle. For a while. Severus, I'm very worried right now, I can't deny it, and neither can you. Then run away. Snape's voice seemed a little impatient as he said, Run away, Karkaroff, I will excuse you, but I still want to stay in Hogwarts. The world is so big, you can just run to that deserted place and hide. The sound got closer and closer, and soon the two people turned a corner and appeared in front of Xia Ran and the three of them. Karkaroff's expression suddenly changed, extremely ugly. Harry noticed that Karkaroff even looked a little nervous. He reached out uneasily to touch his goatee, and then twisted it around his fingers. Hello, Karkaroff. Xia Ran said happily, Professor Snape, I wonder what you are talking about. He already had a guess in his mind, but he just asked casually. Snape glanced at Harry and Ron, looked equally gloomy, and replied in a strange tone, nothing. And what are you doing here? Snape asked again. We're taking a walk, Ron choked back, isn't that illegal? Snape had a straight face and an ugly expression. Suddenly he took out his wand and blew the rose bushes aside. As a result, screams came from many flower bushes and several dark figures jumped out of them. Out. Ten points from Ravenclaw, Fawcett. Snape said fiercely, as a girl ran past him shyly and anxiously, ten points from Hufflepuff, Stebbins. He gave Harry a final dirty look, then strode past them, his long black robes flowing behind him. Karkaroff also hurried away with Snape. Professor, do you know what Snape and the others were talking about just now? Ron couldn't help but ask after Snape and Karkaroff were farther away. Why is Karkaroff so worried? Harry asked curiously. Xia Ran smiled slightly and said, I don't know. If you want to know, go and ask Professor Snape yourself. But she was thinking in her heart, I know most of the plot, how could I not know? But there is no need to say more to these two students. Karkaroff was a Death Eater. Why did he come to Snape, other than because of Voldemort? You know, Karkaroff's reputation within the Death Eater organization is not good, and almost everyone despises and hates him. Xia Ran was sure that if it weren't for Igor Karkarov, the principal of Demstrang, who held a high position and great influence, the Death Eaters would have killed this traitor long ago. Harry and Ron stopped asking questions and asked them to ask Snape in person. That is no different from sending them directly to the battlefield. Hey, look, who is that? Ron suddenly raised his hand and pointed. By this time they had come to a large stone reindeer. They looked past the stone deer and saw a high fountain with splashing water and sparkling water. Two huge, vague figures sat on a stone bench, looking at the spring water under the moonlight. They figured out who it was. 
apart from Hagrid and Ms. Maxim, who else in Hogwarts could have such a large body? I knew it as soon as I saw you. Hagrid said in a very strange hoarse voice. The three of them were stunned. It seemed that this scene was something they should not be disturbed and encountered. Let's go, stop eavesdropping. Sia Ran lowered her voice and motioned for the two of them to follow him and walk to the rose bushes on the other side. But Ron refused to leave. Sia Ran looked confused. Is Ron so interested in Hagrid's personal affairs? Harry was confused at first, but in a blink of an eye, he saw two familiar figures, Fleur Delacour and Roger Davis, hiding in a rose bush in that direction. He understood immediately. A few days ago, Ron rashly asked Fleur to be his dance partner. In fact, Fleur wanted to cast a spell on Cedric, but Ron accidentally fell into the trap. He was severely rejected. From then on, Ron was very afraid. Saw Fleur. Harry explained to Sia Ran in a low voice. And then Ms. Maxim spoke. What do you understand, Hagrid? Ms. Maxim asked, her deep voice carrying a whooshing sound. I understand, I understand that you are the same as me. Are you your father or your mother? Hagrid's voice was also low, but there was a hint of happiness. I don't know what you mean, Hagrid. Ms. Maxim's tone changed slightly, and it seemed that she understood what Hagrid meant. Sia Ran remembered that there had been such a scene in the original time and space. Through the Yule Ball, Hagrid confessed his feelings and bluntly said that Ms. Maxim was a hybrid giant like him, which angered Ms. Maxim and eventually the two parties broke up. In the wizarding world, half-giants are often not a popular identity, and they are no better than werewolves. Chapter, 227 At this time, Sia Ran wanted to stop Hagrid from saying the next words, but after a lot of thoughts went through her mind, she gave up. This matter ultimately needs to be faced by Hagrid himself, if he really falls in love with Ms. Maxim. What's more, this is the truth. No matter what lies or deceptions, it can't change the truth. It just depends on whether you are willing to accept it. It's my mother. Hagrid said softly, seeming to miss her. She is one of the few left in Britain. Of course, I can't remember her very well. She left. Yes, in my she left when she was about three years old. To be honest, she really didn't look like a mother. Alas, there is no maternal love in their nature is there. I don't know what happened to her later. As far as I know, she probably has just died. Madame Maxime said nothing. Harry and Ron couldn't help but concentrate and listened. They had never heard Hagrid talk about his own childhood before. When she left, Dad was devastated. My dad was a little little guy and when I was six years old, if he pissed me off, I would lift him up and put him on top of the wardrobe, which always made him laugh. Laughing. Hagrid's low, nostalgic voice was choked with sobs. Ms. Maxim listened, motionless, her face shrouded in the dark night, as if she was staring at the silver fountain. Dad brought me up. But, alas, he died, right after I went to school, and since then, I have been on my own. Dumbledore has helped me a lot. To be honest, he has been very important to me. Very good. Hagrid pulled out a polka dot silk bandana and blew his nose loudly. That's it, okay, I'm done with my situation, what about you? Where did you get your inheritance? Unexpectedly, Ms. Maxim suddenly stood up and said in a cold voice, it's too cold. In fact, no matter how low the temperature is, it will never be as cold as her voice. I want to go in. Uh, no, don't go. Hagrid said confused, I mean, I. I've never met another person before. Other people. Make it clear, Hagrid. Ms. Maxim said, her tone cold and without any warmth. Harry and Ron also looked a little more panicked. They opened their mouths and really wanted to tell Hagrid that it was best not to answer. They stood in the shadows, hoping in vain that Hagrid wouldn't say something stupid. Another mixed blood giant, needless to say. Hagrid seemed even more confused. You are so brave. Ms. Maxim became furious and screamed, I have never been insulted like this in my life. A mixed-race giant? Me? I just. She racked her brain for the right words. 
I'm just big boned. Ms. Maxim's shrill voice cut through the quiet night sky like a ghost's cry. Xia Ran also saw Fleur and Roger jumping out of the rose bushes on the other side. Ms. Maxim walked away angrily, angrily pushing away the flowers along the way, causing groups of colorful fairies to fly into the air, they were basically the size of fingers, and they were angry at Ms. Maxim for disturbing their sleep. But Hagrid was still sitting on the bench, looking at her back. It was so dark that Xia Ran couldn't see the expression on his face clearly. After a while, he stood up and strode away. Hagrid did not return to the castle, but headed in the direction of his hut, towards the dark grounds outside. Oh, let's go. Xia Ran sighed and said, hurry up. The three returned to the auditorium. Xia Ran separated from Harry and Ron, sat on the seat where she was just now, and continued to eat and drink. Harry and Ron found a table far away from the dance floor and sat down. Their dance partners Parvati and Padma were with a large group of Bo's Batons boys, sitting at a table far away. Hermione then danced with Crumb again. Ron didn't look at Hermione at all. Sia Ran, aren't you going to dance? Dumbledore asked with a smile, wiping his sweat with a handkerchief, when you get old, you will be tired after two dances. He ordered himself a drink. Xia Ran shook her head and said, What's the point of dancing? Isn't it better to eat? But this is just a ball. Dumbledore said helplessly. There's not much difference. Xia Ran smiled, but she was thinking in her heart. Giants are a very ferocious group. Their nature is similar to that of giant monsters. They are born to like killing humans, goblins, and their own kind. So people have a very bad impression of giants. For hundreds of years, in Europe, the Ministry of Magic and Aurors of various countries have hunted and killed a large number of giants. In addition, they killed each other, and the giants were basically on the verge of extinction. Most of them were hiding in the mountains and did not dare to go out. Afraid of being visited by a wizard and completely annihilating a tribe. Ms. Maxim is a mixed-race giant, Xia Ran is 100% sure of this. Big frame? If that kind of body shape is just a big frame, maybe her race is not human. However, because of the giant's behavior and the bad impression of staying in the wizarding world, Ms. Maxim does not want others to say that she is a hybrid giant. This is understandable. After all, not everyone can accept this like Hagrid. Dumbledore drank two glasses of wine and danced with Professor McGonagall, while Xia Ran had a full stomach and left the auditorium before the last Weird Sisters, a famous band in the wizarding world, played. In his opinion, this Christmas ball was no different from a banquet. To be honest, Xia Ran is more obsessed with the growth of magic power than attending any banquets or dances. But it's been a while since he found a special magic item containing force points. Xia Ran decided to search around the Ministry of Magic next time. As an official organization of the magic world, there is no doubt that there must be many magic items containing force points in the Ministry of Magic. This is even better than Hogwarts. After all, it's the official Ministry of Magic. The new year passed, and Hogwarts soon resumed regular classes, and the date for the second event of the Triwizard Tournament was getting closer and closer. Hagrid seemed to have emerged from the shadow of the Yule Ball. After all, his identity as a half-giant was already known to everyone by Rita Skeeter, Hagrid had an interview with Rita Skeeter before Christmas. He seemed not to be affected in any way. He only acted slightly strange when he saw Ms. Maxim. Both of them pretended not to see each other. Xia Ran, how are you? You said you needed some small things for combat class, so I brought them to you. Hagrid said loudly on purpose. Ms. Maxim happened to be walking by, and as if she didn't hear anything, she led a group of her students past. Chapter, 228 Xia Ran stood at the door of the classroom, took the cage from Hagrid, and said with a smile, Thank you very much. Ha, <laughs> that's good. Unlike some people. Ha, I don't bother to say more. Hagrid laughed strangely. A group of Bozbaton students looked at Hagrid and then at their principal, Ms. Maxim, in confusion. Madame Maxime was indifferent, as if she hadn't heard anything. Xia Ran shook her head and whispered, Hagrid, if you really mean it, you can't do this. 
You know, many times, the magic world often has an inexplicable hostile attitude towards. Well, people with giant blood. At this time, the Bozbaton students had disappeared at the end of the corridor, and Ms. Maxim's tall figure had disappeared. Why are you avoiding your own origin? Hagrid said angrily, are everyone else fools? It's just that no one said it. Xia Ren spread her hands and said, so, why did you say that? Hagrid was speechless. Xia Ren said sincerely, you can't rush this matter, you have to use your heart to influence it. After all, you get along very well, don't you? Hagrid nodded, then suddenly his expression changed, he looked at Xia Ren suspiciously and said, that's not right, Xia Ren. What's wrong? Xia Ren was slightly startled. You're quite old and haven't had a girlfriend yet, so how can you guide me? Hagrid asked suspiciously, your significant other and happiness for the rest of your life haven't been settled yet, so you should still care about yourself. Xia Ran's face darkened. Hagrid laughed, waved goodbye to Xia Ran and went downstairs. Xia Ran was very depressed. However, before he awakened his memory, whether he was studying at Hogwarts or joining the Ministry of Magic, he had never been in love. After awakening his memory, his main focus was on improving his magic power and with the accumulation of magic knowledge, where can I find the time to fall in love? It's enough to become stronger. If you don't have a suitable marriage partner, it will be a waste of time. Xia Ran whispered. His goal from the beginning to the end is to strengthen himself, whether it is to increase his magic power or accumulate knowledge, it is all for strengthen himself. In his opinion, the love between sons and daughters, the love between men and women, immortality, the realization of ideas, and the realization of personal values are actually not important. There is only one thing that really matters, and that is how to become stronger. Joining the Order of the Phoenix to fight against Voldemort is, firstly, because his parents died at the hands of Death Eaters. As a son, he must avenge his parents. Secondly, it was because he really didn't like the way the Dark Wizards camp acted, but it was the Order of the Phoenix's ideas that he agreed more with. For reasons and reasons, he would join the Order of the Phoenix to fight against Voldemort and the Death Eaters. Of course, no matter what happens, nothing can or will stop him from becoming stronger. That is his ultimate goal. Xia Ran shook her head, carried the cage into the classroom, waved her wand, and slightly modified the classroom for the next class. As time passed, the second event of the Triwizard Tournament was getting closer and closer, and the entire Hogwarts once again fell into a sea of joy. The last round of competition was for adult fire dragons, so what will be the event for this second round? All students are looking forward to it. Harry is not a Hogwarts warrior this time. He does not need to rack his brains to think about the secret of the golden egg, nor does he need to worry about the second round of the game. He can just be a melon eater, standing in the stands and laughing loudly. But when I think of that Ravenclaw girl Chiu Zhang, I can't help but feel sad in my heart, secretly muttering why am I not a Hogwarts warrior. Look, the warriors are coming out. Ron shouted from the side. Harry was about to pass by. They were located next to the Hogwarts lake. They had built many stands and they were crowded with students. Dumbledore, Karkaroff, Ms. Maxim, Ludo Bagman, Jack the Five Referees, Rom Button, sat aside and watched several warriors make their final preparations before the game. Karkaroff seemed confident. Victor, I say, as long as you do what you planned, you will definitely be able to do it. Trust me, it's no problem. Karkaroff patted Crum on the shoulder, and several warriors stood at the referee's table. Edge. Crum looked even more gloomy. That arrogant boy must. Otherwise, I won't be able to spare him. Ron glared at Crum angrily. Harry knew why Ron said that. The second round of the competition is when the warriors dive into the bottom of the lake to find and bring back the people they cherish. Unfortunately, the person Crum wants to bring back is none other than their good friend Hermione Granger. Cho Chang is the object of Hogwarts warrior Cedric Diggory and Harry's crush. So he glared at Cedric as well. Neville was confused, blinked, and finally decided to focus all his attention on the upcoming game. I wonder who will come back first. Professor Flittick stood on a stool, he was too short, 
and looked at the three warriors on the shore. They lined up in a row, with ten feet between each person, and each took out of the wand also carried other special items for example, Crum brought a pair of swimming trunks. They were all ready and just waiting for the referee's order. Xia Ran said softly, I think it's Cedric, and Crum doesn't necessarily think so. It's not very likely that Fleur will come out on top. I hope it's Cedric too, Hagrid said. He is our Hogwarts warrior after all, right? Then referee Ludo Bagman spoke. Hello everyone, welcome to the second round of the Triwizard Tournament. Bagman said loudly, and bursts of cheers came from the audience. In the second round of the competition, the three warriors cherished people were snatched away and brought to the depths of the lake. They must bring back their robbed people within an hour, otherwise. Then they will. Never seen again. Many people in the crowd shouted, Ron and Harry were one of them. The three warriors were also extremely nervous. Okay, our warriors are ready. Bagman decided not to hear it and continued, as soon as I whistled, the second event started. I counted to three, one. Two. Three. He blew his whistle suddenly, and the sharp whistle spread throughout the lake, and a burst of cheers and applause broke out in the stands. The three warriors threw themselves into the lake one after another, causing a splash of water. I hope they can keep a calm mind. If they get too anxious, something may happen easily. Professor Flittick said. Xia Ran chuckled and said, Before the game is over, you should not be able to see through this obvious dilemma. You know, how can a school let students die? As long as you understand this and are not arrogant or impetuous, you can rescue them within an hour. The probability of your own goal is very high. The other professors nodded slightly. Thus began the second round of the Triwizard Tournament. Chapter 229 Xia Ran and his group of teachers, unlike the students in the stands around them, understood the content of the second competition event. Last night, the school's professors took away three of the warriors' cherished people and placed them in the depths of the lake on the edge of the grounds outside Hogwarts Castle. They also knew the content of the competition, but they had no chance to tell the warriors. Guarded by the fishmen in the lake, Today the warriors are told the truth and asked to bring back the person who was robbed within an hour, otherwise they will never see that person again. Of course this is a threat. Those three people, Hermione Granger, Cho Zhang, and Gabri Delacour. The three of them are Victor Crumb, Cedric Diggory, Fleur Delacour's beloved one. And neither Dumbledore, nor Ms. Maxim, nor Ludo Bagman, nor Jerome Barton would allow students to lose their lives, but Karkaroff didn't care at all, even if Graham in his opinion, Lum was only valued because of his fame. Because it was a prepared competition event, and the people outside could not see the situation in the depths of the lake. Xia Ran looked at it for a while. He could see almost nothing except the calm lake water, so he seemed a little interested. Missing. If I had known earlier, I would have placed some cameras at the bottom of the lake so that everyone could see it. Xia Ran said boredly. Camera. Professor Flittick said enthusiastically, is it a muggle thing? I heard people in my village mention it, but it's just a small town and there are no cameras installed yet. This is the end of the 20th century. Big cities may be fine, but small towns and villages do not have so many high-tech products. However, wizards' residences are mostly located in remote villages. After all, the International Wizarding Secrecy Act jointly signed by the Ministries of Magic of many countries prohibits wizards openly use magic in front of muggles. The original copy of the International Statute of Wizarding Secrecy has always been something Xia Ran longed to touch once, and it definitely contains a lot of force points. Xia Ran narrowed her eyes slightly and decided to rest her mind and take a nap. It would take about an hour to see the results anyway. Sure enough, almost an hour later, Bursts of cheers erupted from the stands. Someone came out. Hagrid, who was also drowsy at the side, woke up, looked up, and pushed several professors on both sides, it's Cedric, and sure enough, he was the first to succeed. Xia Ran and the others came to their senses. Looking down from the bleachers, they saw Cedric and Chiu Zhang being pulled ashore by the school doctor, Mrs. Pomfrey, and the two deans, Professor McGonagall and Professor Sprout. Cedric was panting and seemed exhausted. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the first warrior has returned successfully, he is Cedric Diggory. Bagman shouted. Students in several houses of Hogwarts burst into cheers and applause. Even Harry couldn't help but cheer because Cho Zhang was successfully rescued. That's great, Cedric. Hagrid clapped his hands heavily. Xia Ran suddenly narrowed his eyes and was keenly aware of something strange deep in the lake. After a while, the others' excitement subsided and they slowly discovered something was wrong. I saw the lake surface churning, and a very huge whirlpool appeared, followed by a figure with long silver hair thrown out. It was Fleur Delacour. She was the only one. She. Failed. The cheers stopped abruptly. No. Gabri. Gabri. Fleur Delacour broke away from Ms. Maxim's arms and ran to the lake with the intention of diving into the lake again and bringing back her biological sister, but Max Ms. Moot chased after her and held her tightly. The crowd looked at each other, all a little scared. Could it be that? Someone was going to die like this? Fleur wailed sadly. Poor little girl, Professor Trelawney said pityingly. Xia Ran took a look and said, Crumb is out. Sure enough, Crumb appeared on the lake with Hermione. The shark head struggled to transform back into a human form, and Hermione slowly woke up. The crowd didn't cheer much as Fleur's cries were still ringing in their ears. But Harry and Ron couldn't help but wave their fists. After all, Hermione was rescued. Hermione saw the crying Fleur and seemed to want to comfort her, but Ludo Bagman shook his head and told her not to tell her the truth until the game was over. She had to be pulled ashore by Madame Pomfrey and underwent a comprehensive examination by the school doctor. After knowing that an hour had completely passed, Fleur was heartbroken, and then Bagman announced, the warrior Cedric of Hogwarts, and the warrior Crumb of Durmstrang, they successfully completed this time. Mission, congratulations to them, but unfortunately, Miss Delacour failed. No, Gabrielle. Fleur covered her face and cried. People also showed signs of sympathy. But. Bagman changed the subject, although Miss Delacour has failed, Miss Gabrielle Delacour is innocent. Let us ask our mermaid friends to send Gabrielle Delacour back. Miss Lacour. Fleur was stunned, then overjoyed, and hurriedly said, Mr. Bagman, is it true? I mean. Gabriel. She. Yes. Bagman said with a smile, will we care whether the students live or die? Miss Delacour, you must believe in the Ministry of Magic, Hogwarts, Durmstrang and Bosbatons. Fleur, don't cry, Gabriel will be back soon. Ms. Maxim comforted her. But Furong cried with joy. The audience in the stands also cheered loudly, happy for the turn of events and Furong's luck. A group of mermaids emerged from the water, bringing with them a little girl with flowing silver hair, who was none other than Fleur's biological sister, Gabrielle Delacour. As soon as the little girl opened her eyes, she saw her sister and couldn't help but laugh. Fleur cried even more sadly, and kept saying, I'm sorry, Gabrielle, it's all my sister's fault. My sister is so bad. She hugged Gabrielle tightly, and finally Madame Pomfrey had to use Madame Maxime's power to take Gabrielle out of Fleur's arms, give her a full body check, and feed her a refreshing drink potion. Dumbledore walked to the lake and started a conversation with a mermaid, making a mermaid's high-pitched voice. Apparently, Dumbledore was able to tell the mermaid's prophecy. Finally, he turned to the other referees and said, let's have a meeting first and then make a score. So the five referees gathered together and discussed something in low voices. I wonder how they will score. Professor Graplan asked expectantly. Xia Ran shook her head and said regretfully, Fu Rong is the last one in the second round. Alas. Hagrid sighed and said, Is she sad? His eyes focused on Ms. Maxim. All the professors were already used to it. Chapter, 2.30 Ladies and gentlemen, we have finally made a decision. Mercus, the leader of the mermaids, told us exactly what happened under the lake. We decided to rate the warriors as follows based on a full score of 50 points. Bagman said in a loud voice, although Fleur Delacour showed excellent application of the bubble curse, he was attacked by Grindylow when he approached the target and failed to rescue the hostages. 
Therefore, we decided give her 25 points. There was a round of applause from the stands. I should get zero points. Fleur shook her graceful head and said hoarsely. Sister. Gabrielle raised her head and looked at Fleur. Cedric Diggory also performed the bubble charm brilliantly and successfully brought back the hostages first. Unfortunately, he returned one minute later than the one-hour limit. There was regret in Bagman's voice, but the Hufflepuff students in the stands cheered loudly and deafeningly. Therefore, we decided to give him 47 points. The cheers became louder and louder, causing Ludo Bagman to pause for a while. After the cheers subsided, he continued, Victor Crumb used the transformation technique. Although it was incomplete, it was still very special. Effective, he is the second to return with the hostages, we give him 40 points. Karkaroff slapped his hands very vigorously, looking very proud of himself. Finally, the last competition event will be held at the end of the semester, that is, on the evening of June 24. Bagman announced to the entire audience, the Warriors will know the details of the event one month in advance. Content, thank you all for supporting the Warriors. The audience in the stands slowly began to disperse. Everyone was loudly discussing the scores of the three Warriors, and even more intensely discussing what dangers the Warriors encountered at the bottom of the lake. They must have encountered mermaids. Mermaids appeared one after another just now. And Grindylow, who knows what other creatures there are. It must be very dangerous. Fortunately, Dumbledore is there. He can speak the language of mermaids. It's really strange. Wouldn't he be more strange? Xia Ran also walked down the stand, heard the many discussions, and asked Hagrid, what is under the lake? To be honest, he didn't know what was going on at the bottom of the lake. After all, he had never been there personally, so that place was not the wizard's territory. Hagrid smiled and said, there are many mysterious little guys, the mermaid and Grindylow are just one of them. If you are interested, you can find time to go down and take a look for yourself. Forget it. Xia Ran shook his head. He was really just a little interested. After the second round of competition, Hogwarts ushered in a long-lost calm, although during this period, people kept asking several warriors and hostages. Hoping to learn more about the situation at the bottom of the lake, until the end of June, nothing happened what a big event. A group of students from Bose Batons and Durmstrang followed the students of Hogwarts, but did not need to take the final exams the students of Hogwarts were envious of this. Of course, students from these two schools still have to complete the homework assigned by the teachers of each course on time, which makes the students at Hogwarts feel a lot better. Harry and Ron still felt extremely burdened because they had to attend extra classes on weekends with the combat professor, Sharon Fremont, and the potions professor, Severus Snape. While other students were happy because of the weekend, they sighed and frowned. Relax. Fred said happily, the two professors are making up for the class. This is an opportunity that many people can't ask for. You should cherish it. Ron, mother said, if you are not serious, I can write to her and tell her. Ginny gloated from the sidelines. Ron glared at Ginny. Ginny's eyes narrowed with laughter. At this time, Hermione ran down from the girls' dormitory with a big school bag on her back, looking excited. Look at Hermione. George said with a tone of hatred, she has to take supplementary classes just like you, and she can accept it calmly, so why are you rejecting her in every way? Try it. Harry said angrily. George smiled and said, forget it, the two professors didn't find me. It's my misfortune, Fred. Yeah, it's so sad. Fred said regretful words with a smile on his face. Come on, Hermione said, Fred, George, Ginny, see you tonight. Fred, George, and Ginny all waved their hands and looked at Harry and Ron with pity. The two sighed. A weekend that I finally got was wasted like the previous weekends. They have been spinning for a whole semester. Hurry up, stop stalling, Hermione urged, climbing out of the Gryffindor common room with her bag in hand, followed dejectedly by Harry and Ron. After the new year, in the second semester of fourth grade, they were basically in a state of constant rotation. They had a lot of classes and a lot of homework on weekdays, and they were not allowed to rest on weekends. 
they had to go to Xia Ran and Snape successively to make up lessons. They are now going to Xia Ran's office to attend makeup classes. Fortunately, it's Professor Fremont tonight. Ron said thankfully. Harry cursed in a low voice, I just hope. Snape got food poisoning tomorrow and was sent to the hospital, so we don't have to make up classes. It would be better to be directly burned by the flames of an adult fire dragon. Ron also cursed. Why are you doing this? Hermione said dissatisfied, we should be grateful to the two professors who are willing to continue teaching on weekends, okay? Yes, thank you, thank you very much. Ron said. Harry didn't know whether Hermione heard it or not, but he thought Ron had a sarcastic tone. After a while, the three of them arrived at Xia Rant's office and knocked on the door. Come in, the door is open. Xia Rant's voice came out. The three of them pushed open the door and entered, their expressions suddenly startled, and they looked at Professor Fremont's office in surprise. The lights in the office were flickering, the moonlight filtered in from the window, and stars twinkled on the ceiling, as if they were in an open wilderness. Close the door. Xia Ran turned around from behind the desk, waved her wand, and a few bright white firelights flew out, hanging high at the top of the starry sky, seeming to illuminate the endless night sky and the universe. Harry came in last and closed the office door. Today is a new course. We have already learned many common magic spells. How have you mastered them? Xia Ran asked suddenly as she spoke. Harry and Ron's expressions froze. Hermione raised her hands high and said, Professor, I have mastered most of them, but there are still some that I am not very proficient in. Chapter 231 Not bad. Xia Ran praised, those magic spells are usually learned by senior students in fifth grade and above. They will be tested in the two wizard magic level exams you can come into contact with these magics during the fourth grade period. To be honest, I am already quite anxious. Harry and Ron smiled awkwardly and scratched their heads. You two haven't practiced in private? Xia Ran said with a half-smile, magic still requires more practice to become proficient. Memorizing the definitions and principles is of little use. Don't worry, Professor Fremont, we will work hard. Harry nodded. Just know it well. Xia Ran said, today is a new course. Well, I can't say a new course, I can only say a new kind of magic. What is it, Professor? Hermione asked curiously. Xia Ran whispered, soul magic. Soul type. The three of them were stunned and looked at each other, feeling confused. Is there this type of magic in the world? In fact, this is Xia Ran's goal. Harry is one of Voldemort's horcruxes, and his body contains a fragment of Voldemort's soul. If that fragment of soul is not destroyed, Voldemort cannot be completely killed. And if he wanted to destroy that soul fragment and save Harry's life at the same time, Voldemort must take action himself and rely on a special connection to destroy the fragment of his own soul without harming Harry. Sharon, Dumbledore, and Snape definitely still hope to save Harry's life. Otherwise, wouldn't it be more appropriate to take action on a random person and kill Harry directly? When the host dies, the soul fragments that are attached to the host's survival naturally disappear. The reason why this kind of tutoring is led by Xia Ran and Snape is mainly because Dumbledore is too afraid of Voldemort, and now Voldemort may have realized this special connection between him and Harry. Dumbledore believes that it would be better for him to have less contact with Harry. First of all, let me ask a question. Xia Ran said softly, who among you three can tell you the definition of soul? Or, in your opinion, what kind of thing or thing is soul? He looked at the three students who came to make up classes. Hermione didn't raise her hand immediately this time, and she hesitated because she didn't find any books about souls in the library. In fact, Xia Ran wanted to say that there were still some books decades ago, such as a book Advanced Black Magic Revealed, which involved souls and roughly recorded the extremely evil black magic of Horcruxes, but since Tom Riddle after the book came up with the idea of making a horcrux, and later he put it into action. When Tom Riddle was a student, he also had the nickname Voldemort, although it was only spread in a small area, Dumbledore so he took away some of the more esoteric books in the library, 
as well as those that involved too much black magic, and hid them in the principal's room, and no longer allowed students to borrow them easily. If the teacher and professor are interested, they can tell Dumbledore personally that he usually doesn't get stuck. For example, Xia Ran once browsed through almost the entire principal's office library. Ron opened his mouth, but was speechless. Only Harry seemed to have something in mind. Harry, tell me. Xia Ran named him. Professor, Dementors. Dementors were stationed at the school in the third grade. At that time. Well, as you all know, I fainted. Harry still felt embarrassed when he mentioned that incident. Fortunately, there was no such thing here. Everyone else was familiar, which made him feel at ease. I saw, or rather heard, the scene of my parents' death, and the mysterious man, with his crazy laughter, telling my mother to get out of the way and not block his way, he wanted to kill me. Harry he whispered, my mother blocked him and begged him to let me go, and finally the mysterious man killed her. Ron and Hermione glanced at Harry uneasily. I was only one year old at that time, maybe less than one year old. Harry said in a very low voice, I think that was a scene that was engraved deep in my soul and made me never forget my parents. He died for me. Xia Ranshin said that it was just your own memory, but you were too young at the time and had no memory. Without external help, it would be impossible to recall it. The soul is different from memory. Xia Ran said with a slight hesitation, actually, the existence form of soul and memory itself cannot be thoroughly verified by Yen Ming. Forget it, let's not go through the examination. That's not something we should consider. Xia Ran waved her hand and said, the soul is very different from the body. It is both virtual and real. In fact, what you see every day is inseparable from the soul. See it every day. The three of them were stunned, why didn't we know? Ron's mind suddenly changed and he shouted out loud, Ghost? Yes, ghost. Xia Ran said, the form of ghost existence is between life and death. It neither belongs to our world of the living or the world of the dead, but they cannot be said to be pure souls. The soul should belong to the world of the dead. Actually, there is a magic that I have taught you, and it has been involved in this aspect. Xia Ran looked at the three of them with a smile and asked, Tell me, what kind of magic is that? A name flashed in Harry's mind and he asked tentatively, Patronus Charm. Yes, the patron saint spell relies on the wizard's own happy memory as the source of power. This is actually a special kind of soul magic. Xia Ran said, but in addition, there are two more common ones. No, I can't say it's more common, but it's more magic that fits this definition. One is called legilimency and the other is called acclimency. Did Professor Snape teach you? He asked at last. Hermione replied, Legilimency has never been taught, but acclimency has, but none of us have learned it. She blushed and looked very embarrassed. There is no need to blame yourself. Xia Ran shook his head and said, These two magics are extremely difficult to learn. Eighty to ninety percent of adult wizards in the world can't do it, and even fewer are proficient in it. Today, we will also mention these two magics. The three people's expressions immediately became clear, and they became more focused. They still hadn't forgotten the hardship they suffered under Snape. Xia Ran saw it and said with a smile, Relax, legilimency magic is a very hidden magic. If the magic power is not enough, or you have no knowledge of this magic, it is possible that I cast this legilimency magic on you and found me. You are not alert at all to what you want, and you cannot detect it at all. The expressions of the three of them fell, and Harry smiled bitterly, Professor, if you say this, we will be more nervous, okay? Xia Ran shrugged. Legilimency magic can indeed be used very covertly, peeking into your brain and memory, without you being alert at all and not discovering anything at all. Therefore, when Xia Ran sometimes faced Dumbledore, she would pay attention to guarding her brain and release the acclimacy technique at all times. Dumbledore is the truly top legilimency master. Chapter 232 Xia Ran thought that she had reached level 6 magic, and had the same level 6 knowledge of magic. She also had profound knowledge in legilimency and acclimacy. Even though she faced Dumbledore, who was a master, 
He was not far behind Snape, and it couldn't be easier to teach these three fourth-year wizards. You must remember that with legitimacy, the first priority is concealment and not letting others notice that you have used magic the second priority is to understand the soul. Xia Ran explained. All three listened carefully. The soul is not a book that can be flipped through at will, nor can thoughts be stored in the head, and cannot be drilled into and read. The soul, or the mind, is a complex and multi-layered thing. Ah, at least most minds are. Xia Ran smiled, however, wizards who are proficient in legitimacy can study other people's minds under certain circumstances and make correct explanations. For example, you know who can almost always tell when others are lying to him, which is why the Death Eaters are so afraid of you know who, and only those who are good at acclimacy can seal away feelings and memories that contradict lies. I think Professor Snape has already mentioned this knowledge to you. The three of them nodded, and Hermione said, Professor Snape demonstrated acclimacy to us. All three of them looked uncomfortable, especially Harry, who looked even more disgusted. Yes, acclimacy is the most effective magic to deal with legitimacy. It is also an extremely advanced magic. Xia Ran said. Do we want to study together? Ron couldn't help but ask, Professor, I mean, acclimacy and legitimacy magic. Xia Ran pondered for a moment, clapped her hands and said, What a good idea. These two magics happen to be mutually reinforcing. As long as you learn one of them, you can naturally learn the other easily. There is just a difference in proficiency. Professor, let's start. Hermione said excitedly, I remember Professor Snape said that legitimacy seems to be that eye contact is very important. Harry glanced at Ron resentfully. Ron scratched his head and smiled awkwardly. Yes, for legitimacy, eye contact is extremely important. Xia Ran nodded and said, which of you is willing to be the first to test it? The three of them all seemed hesitant when they heard this, as if they had recalled some bad memories. Um, Professor, I. I'll do it. Ron raised his hand tentatively. Xia Ran smiled and said, Don't be afraid, I'm not Professor Snape, right? He winked as he said that. Ron took a deep breath and took two steps forward. Have you seen the starry sky? Xia Ran waved her magic wand and saw the starry scene in the office. The stars above her head shone, making her dreamy and intoxicating. As he waved his wand, the stars turned, and several meteors seemed to streak across the virtual space. There seemed to be a star in the distance that slowly became silent and extinguished, and the starry sky became dark. It's so magnificent! Hermione exclaimed. Ron raised his head and looked at the boundless starry sky. Even though he knew it was the magic performed by Professor Fremont, he felt amazed. Ron, take out your wand. I hope Professor Snape has taught you relevant magic knowledge. Xia Ran said. Ron became nervous again, swallowed, and tremblingly took out the new wand he bought last school year. It was no longer available because the wand maker Ollivander had been killed by Voldemort. He aimed the wand at Professor Fremont. Very good, that's it. Xia Ran nodded with satisfaction and said, Use all your means and the knowledge you learned in class or somewhere, as long as you can resist my magic, don't worry about whether it will hurt me. He smiled and said, I think. With your magic power, you can't hurt me. Come on, Ron, Harry whispered. Ron, are you ready? Ron nodded slightly. Hermione gave him a worried look. Okay, now, get ready. Legilimency. Xia Ran suddenly took action. Before Ron could resist, the office swayed and disappeared in front of his eyes, and pictures flashed through his mind like a movie. He could no longer see what was around him. I envy the toys of other wizard children, and I only have a few old things and second-hand goods left by my brothers. The surprise when I saw Harry Potter on the train. The sudden envy and jealousy in my heart when Harry is admired by people. Xia Ran flashed through these memory fragments deep in Ron's mind. He was not Snape, and he was not interested in them. In fact, Snape was only interested in Harry's past. He deliberately slowed down the magic power. Output, saying, Ron, concentrate, don't think about those memories that have long passed. 
When Ron was in a trance, he seemed to hear a voice coming from far away, and his heart stirred, and he growled, No, that is my private memory, you can't watch it. Cannot. He suddenly felt a sharp pain in his knee, and he suddenly woke up completely. The office with a scene like a starry sky came into view again. He found himself standing next to a chair. The chair fell to the ground, and the knee of one of his legs I also felt severe pain. He looked up at Professor Fremont and saw that he was holding a wand in one hand, with a calm expression on his face, and said, it's not bad. I have some resistance, but it still needs to be strengthened. Hermione and Harry helped Ron stand up. Ron actually wanted to ask Professor Fremont what he saw, but after thinking about it, he decided to just pretend that he didn't know. Next, come Harry. Xia Ran said calmly. Harry stepped forward, holding his wand carefully in defense. Legilimency. This remedial lesson lasted for more than an hour. It was not until the sounds of playing and fighting in the castle died down that Xia Ran took back her wand and said, that's it for today. Harry and Ron helped Hermione, who was swaying and about to fall. All three of them looked pale. Um, Professor, there's an exam next week, and I'm afraid we won't be able to come, Harry said. Ah, uh, yes, this semester is almost over. Xia Ran suddenly realized, then the courses for this semester are here first, and the rest will wait until you return to school in fifth grade. Just have a good rest this summer. The trio returned to the Gryffindor common room. Xia Ran touched his chin and muttered, The disguise plan is coming soon. I have to get familiar with it first. He made a plan in his mind and went to bed after washing himself. The last round of the Triwizard Tournament is held after the final exams at Hogwarts. This is also to prevent students from being too excited about the competition and forgetting to review, causing them to fail all exams. After all the exams on the last day were completed, Everyone had dinner in the evening and then, under the command of Ludo Bagman, gathered at the Quidditch pitch of Hogwarts, which had been used by the Ministry of Magic Sports. The staff in the athletic department had been transformed. Xia Ran fell behind everyone and stayed in the foyer. After a while, Snape came over wearing wizard robes, his expression as gloomy as ever, and holding a medicine bottle in his hand. Chapter 233 Polyjuice Potion Snape said, stuffing the bottle of medicine into Xia Rant's hand, and said, Be careful, the polyjuice potion is only valid for one hour, and the Ministry of Magic is not an easy place to break into. Those arrogant people Luo could doesn't know that you are Xia Ran, and after seeing your disguise, it's absolutely impossible for anyone to show mercy. Thank you, Professor Snape. Xia Ran chuckled, Don't worry, I have a plan. As long as Dumbledore or Voldemort don't take action personally, no one else can keep me. He shrugged his shoulders and continued, Besides, the image of Voldemort is enough to scare many wizards. How can they think about distinguishing between true and false? Who would have thought that someone would dare to pretend to be Voldemort? Snape thought to himself that this was the truth. He would never pretend to be Voldemort anyway. Moody and the others have all arrived in London. Snape raised his hand and looked at the time, the watch was not cheap, and said, in half an hour, they will all enter the Ministry of Magic. Before that, you must disguise yourself and force your way in. The Ministry of Magic wouldn't have thought of this. It's not difficult to break in. Xia Ran was confident. Yes, it's not difficult to break in. Snape said coldly, but there are countless Death Eaters in the Ministry of Magic. If they find out that you are a fake, you may not be able to escape after notifying the mysterious person. Then we can only hope that Dumbledore will rush over as soon as possible. He is the referee of the Triwizard Tournament. He cannot be that fast. Snape said, anyway, be careful and don't die in the Ministry of Magic. He turned and headed directly to the Quidditch pitch. Xia Ran shook the medicine bottle and whispered, I hope this plan will succeed. He concentrated slightly, and a screen of light appeared in his pupils. Name, Charin Fremont. Age, 28 years old. Magic, level 6 elementary. Force points, 20 points. Transformation, level 5 medium. Potion science, level 5 elementary. Charms, 
Level 6 Medium. Herbalism, Level 5 Elementary. Flying, Level 5 Elementary. It's not that he has made any progress throughout the school year. In addition to the increase in force points by 5 points, originally 15 points were retained, and the force points from absorbing the Goblet of Fire were not all used up, the flying skill reached 5. Level Elementary, Charms to Level 6 Intermediate, and Transfiguration to Level 5 Intermediate. There has been growth in these four points, but other aspects have remained the same as before, with little change. After all, in addition to enhancing his own strength through force points, he can also rely on his own learning to make significant changes in various aspects of strength, such as magic, transformation, and flying. With level 6 elementary magic, combined with level 6 intermediate charms, and level 5 intermediate transfiguration, he believed that he was no longer inferior to the top wizards in the magic world. Probably. Equivalent to Professor Flittick and Professor Snape, right? Xia Ran whispered in her heart. He walked out of Hogwarts school, the school was protected by magic and could not apparate, and there were bursts of cheers and cheers from the Quidditch pitch next to him, especially when the names of several warriors were introduced. The sound was even louder. A lucky group of students. Xia Ran chuckled and walked out of the protective range of Hogwarts magic. He no longer felt any restrictions on magic. With a snap, he disappeared completely. Since the Polyjuice Potion had a time limit, Xia Ran drank it at the right time after apparition in London. He waved his magic wand and wrapped himself in a big black robe. His whole image instantly changed 180 degrees. A dark wizard with flashing red eyes, a face as narrow as a snake, and basically no hair on his nose appeared under the sunset. Fortunately, there was no one on the road around, otherwise he would have frightened a few muggles. It's really hard to breathe. Xia Ran frowned, unable to imagine how Voldemort would live with such a body. Luckily it only lasts an hour. Xia Ran exhaled and stopped staying. She waved her wand lightly and suddenly rose into the sky. The sleeves of her robe trembled and made a hunting sound in the wind. Snapped. Before the muggles could detect his trace, one operat then disappeared again. At the entrance of the Ministry of Magic, Voldemort in Xia Rant's disguise appeared. She looked around and found Moody, Mundungus, Sirius, and Lupin hiding in a corner, and nodded slightly. Their nervous and frightened expressions were slightly relieved. They lowered their wands and understood that Voldemort was Xia Ran in disguise. Xia Ran broke into the hall of the Ministry of Magic directly through magic. There were constant rumbling sounds along the way. He destroyed the facilities along the way to get to the Ministry of Magic. When he appeared in the lobby on the eighth floor of the Ministry of Magic, all the Ministry of Magic officials who were walking out of the elevator one after another and preparing to go home from get off work were stunned. The originally bustling hall fell silent for a moment, as if everyone had been cast under a silent spell. Ah, uh -huh, many old friends, we haven't seen each other for many years. Xia Ran chuckled, but with his current appearance, this would only make everyone feel more frightened. Dark. Dark Lord. All the wizards were frightened, with fear on their faces. They hurriedly took out their wands and aimed at Xia Ran. But no one dared to take the lead in chanting the incantation. Everyone's hands were trembling, and cold sweat instantly flowed down. Xia Ran slowly took out his wand from the pocket of his robe, touched it, and chuckled. Are you going to attack me, the most powerful wizard in history? He suddenly floated up, his robe sleeves bulging, and his scarlet eyes glanced around. No wizard dared to look directly at him, even though the Ministry of Magic officials had an absolute numerical advantage. Bang! The elevator came down again, and several wizards came out. Seeing the extremely quiet atmosphere in the venue, they couldn't help but frown and said, Why are you standing here? Don't block the road. Xia Ran turned her gaze, saw the man, and said with a smile, It turns out to be Cornelius Fudge. I heard that you are the current Minister of Magic. Your policies are a bit against my wishes. You are. Fudge's eyes suddenly widened, as if he had seen a ghost. His feet trembled and he almost fell to the ground. The witch in pink clothes beside him helped him. Umbridge. 
Siar Ran knew who the witch in pink clothes was, the notorious umbrage in the original time and space. It's really annoying. Siar Ran said softly. With a wave of her wand, a powerful magic power filled the entire Ministry of Magic Hall, overwhelming all the Ministry of Magic officials and making many of them surrender to the ground. There are also some wizards who are holding on, not afraid of his pressure, and are even preparing to counterattack relying on buildings. Xia Ran did not use the Expelliarmus magic. This was not the magic that Voldemort should use. The Avada Kedavra was. But after all, he was not Voldemort. He was just pretending. How could he act unscrupulously? However, it would be a good idea to take this opportunity to eliminate some Death Eaters lurking in the Ministry of Magic. Chapter, 234 Corneli Fudge, oh, you are so disgusting. Sia Ran sighed deliberately, because he discovered the disguised identity and appearance, which made Fudge feel nervous and secretly thought that something was wrong. Others around him immediately moved away from Fudge. They understand that the power of the Dark Lord cannot be matched by themselves and others, only Dumbledore. What's more, as the Minister of Magic, Cornelius Fudge is the Dark Lord's primary target. This is very reasonable. At this time, they wish they had not followed Fudge down just now, and it would be best if they stayed in the office. Percy Weasley's expression moved slightly. He was still a member of the Order of the Phoenix, lurking in the Ministry of Magic. Through Professor Snape's channel, he understood the plan of the Order of the Phoenix, and knew that the seemingly sinister Voldemort in front of him was probably disguised by Professor Sharon Fremont. He retreated quietly and hid aside. Professor Fremont wanted to take the opportunity to teach Fudge a lesson, and he was happy to see it happen. After all, Cornelius Fudge's suppression and exclusion of his father undoubtedly made Percy very dissatisfied. However, to avoid exposing his identity, he could only suppress this dissatisfaction deep in his heart instead of showing it to the outside. He even even show recognition. The thought of this made him sick. Teach Fudge a lesson, Professor Fremont. Percy thought to himself. Dark. Dark Lord, what are you going to do when you break into the Ministry of Magic? Fudge shouted with a fierce expression, this is the Ministry of Magic. Ministry of Magic, do you understand? We have hundreds of wizards, and one of us can be killed with just one spell. You. Kill me. Siaran imagined Voldemort's arrogant attitude, so she smiled coldly and said, you mean. Kill me, the most powerful wizard in the world, the wizard who has gone the furthest on the road to immortality. Fudge groaned, cold sweat dripping down his cheeks directly to the ground. Most of the others were silent and did not dare to say a word. They relied on the building to hide their figures and shivered. They did not even have the courage to look up at Xia Ran, even though he was now in the form of Voldemort. From it we can also see how outrageous the wizarding world's fear and fear of Voldemort is. As Fudge said, the Ministry of Magic is almost off work now. There are hundreds of wizards, but he is the only one. However, he has an overwhelming advantage in the situation. Almost no one dares to stand up and point the wand at Xia Ran. As timid as a mouse. Xia Ran shook his head secretly. I am merciful. Xia Ran deliberately said in a pity tone, there is not much blood in the magic world. Everyone is crucial. I don't want to see unnecessary casualties. Yes, that is what I feel sad about. Xia Ran said, feeling a little nauseous, and even sped up her speech, saying, Submit to me, the Ministry of Magic can continue to exist, and it will still be an official institution of the magic world, otherwise. A scarlet light flashed in his eyes, and he said softly, You know the consequences. There was silence. The place fell into dead silence for a moment and all the wizard officials of the Ministry of Magic looked at each other with uneasy eyes. Some seemed to be preparing to raise their wands to attack the Dark Lord, while others seemed to be ready to kneel on the ground and surrender to the Dark Lord. They may be Death Eaters. Call out. Suddenly, the Dark Devil raised his hand, and a red light flashed. Before anyone could react, it flew dozens of meters away and hit one person. Ah! A scream came, and a figure twitched on the ground, screaming in severe pain. 
none other than Cornelius Fudge. Everyone shivered twice and broke out in cold sweat. Sia Ran gently stroked her wand and laughed in a hoarse voice, Corneli Fudge, do you think you can take this opportunity to escape the Dark Lord's gaze? Ah, uh, right. He pretended to pat his bald head, of course he was not bald, but Voldemort was, and chuckled, Fudge, I have to thank you. When I didn't want to announce the news of my resurrection, you he took the initiative to do this for me. Ah, uh, yes, Albus Dumbledore, he has always been my biggest enemy. He was also one of the first wizards to know that I had returned from resurrection, and this was the last thing I wanted to see. While I still have a headache, I have to say, Fudge, your policies have helped me a lot. I am a person who repays kindness and I must express my gratitude to you. Fudge's body twitched violently and his face was distorted. He felt the hateful gazes from around him. He knew that he was finished, completely finished. Regardless of whether the Dark Lord kills him or not, after the Dark Lord said these words, he is finished. Expelliarmus. Suddenly someone chanted a spell to Sia Ran. Sia Ran's wand moved slightly, silently casting spells, using armor protection magic to block the disarming spell, appearing to be light and easy, like a master. He turned around and saw a familiar person. Amelia Bones, Director of the Department of Magical Law Enforcement. Xia Ran whispered, you are a pure-blood wizard. I want you to join my family. Amelia, I will forgive you. This time of rudeness, as long as you surrender to me. Xia Ran used to be a member of the Anti-Abuse of Magic Office of the Department of Magical Law Enforcement of the Ministry of Magic, and her boss was Amelia Bones. Therefore, he knew that Amelia was determined not to surrender to Voldemort. Someone in the Bones family died at the hands of Death Eaters more than ten years ago. Amelia also agreed with Dumbledore's philosophy and was on a death-to-death -death stance with Voldemort. Although she is a pure-blood wizard with a high position and powerful magic power, if she really surrenders to Voldemort, she will definitely have a certain status. Don't even think about it. Amelia Bones raised her wand in her right hand and shouted with a cold expression, Either you kill me or I kill you. You want me to surrender to you, the big devil? It's simply a wishful thinking. Well, that's a pity. Xia Ran sighed deliberately, the wizards have shed enough blood. I really don't want to see continued bloodshed, so I broke into the Ministry of Magic alone. I don't want to see too much bloodshed. But. Xia Ran's expression suddenly turned cold, and she said coldly, If anyone wants to go against me, I will never show mercy. Come on, I'm not afraid of you, Dark Lord. Said Amelia Bones, the only person present who stood up without fear of Voldemort. She seemed to have infected many Ministry of Magic officials who were willing to resist. Wizards in twos and threes emerged from behind the buildings in the hall, holding their wands tightly and aiming at the Dark Lord floating in the air. Dark Lord, just come over here. Xia Ran chuckled and said, What a group of courageous wizards. I admire them very much. The Dark Lord is very happy and is willing to give you one last chance. Submit to me, or be killed by me. Tell me your answer. Chapter 235 Expelliarmus All petrified. Heartbreaking and bone-cutting. Facing the question of the Black Devil disguised by Xia Ran, the group of wizards were furious and answered Xia Ran's question with a series of magic. Xia Ran waved his wand gently, and he cast protective magic spells such as impregnable soup and armor protection, blocking the offensive magic of this group of wizards. So strong. The wizarding officials of the Ministry of Magic suddenly became awe-inspiring. As expected of the Dark Lord, he blocked so many spells with such ease. I'm very sad. Xia Ran sighed, it seems that more wizard blood will be shed today. Don't even think about it. Suddenly a shout came, and a group of people came in from the entrance of the passage that Xia Ran had just broken. They raised their wands and aimed at Xia Ran in the air. It was a group of people from the Order of the Phoenix, Mad-Eye Moody, Sirius, Mundungus, and Lupin. At this time, the elevator opened again, and a group of wizards came out. The leader was Shacklebolt Kingsley. Tonks, Mr. Weasley, and other members of the Order of the Phoenix were also among the crowd. People from the Order of the Phoenix. 
Xia Ran raised her eyebrows. Voldemort, if you come alone, then today will be the day of your second death. The last time was in Godric's Hollow, and this time it will be in the Hall of the Ministry of Magic. Moody said solemnly. After meeting the legendary Aura hero and Mad Eye Alastair Moody, who captured half of the prisoners in Azkaban, many people present quietly breathed a sigh of relief, only to realize that they were already wet with sweat. Even though Moody is not an opponent of the Dark Lord, but with so many of them joining forces and advancing and retreating together, the Dark Lord must be no match for him alone. The reason why the Dark Lord makes people fear him is not only because of his own magical power, which is the most powerful in the wizarding world, but also because of the group of crazy Death Eaters under his command and the dark creatures gathered under his banner. They suddenly realized that if Voldemort was really alone here, they would have a chance to defeat the most terrifying enemy in the wizarding world again. At the thought of this, all the wizards' hearts skipped a beat. Xia Ran noticed the change in the atmosphere, smiled softly, and said, Mad Eye, you are worthy of respect. Are you willing to abandon Dumbledore and switch to me? You can become the number two under me. Figure. Keep it for others, Dark Lord. Moody said, there is a situation in Azkaban prison, but if you, the biggest criminal, are captured, it will be enough to fill many gaps. Ha ha. Xia Ran smiled and said, so this is your idea. I have to say, Alastor, I haven't seen you for more than ten years, but your ideas are becoming more and more naive. It's because you is it the reason why you became a professor. I heard that you accepted Dumbledore's invitation and took up the position of Professor of Defense against the Dark Arts at Hogwarts. You are really brave. Your curse. Moody said indifferently, didn't you also apply for this position? I heard that you also said a curse. Therefore, every Professor of Defense against the Dark Arts cannot take up this position for more than a year's time. They talked for a long time, but they were not in a hurry to take action, because the dark devil in front of them was Xia Ran in disguise, how could he really be facing life and death? You can just ask the werewolf next to you to find out. Xia Ran chuckled. Lu Ping suppressed the strange emotions in his heart. Seeing Xia Ran pretending to be Voldemort chattering, it always felt unreal. The easiest way to break a curse is always to kill the wizard who cast the curse. Sirius whispered, and he forced his cheeks to tighten to prevent himself from looking at the surrounding Ministry of Magic officials, who looked like they were sweating and timid. Sirius was afraid that he would laugh out loud accidentally. Yes, Sirius Black, you are talking about the best solution to break the curse, but you seem to be targeting the wrong target. Suddenly a cold and cold voice echoed in the hall. Xia Ran's heart skipped a beat and she immediately turned around. She saw a group of figures in black robes coming to the Hall of the Ministry of Magic. The first person was wearing a big black robe. The snake had no nose on its face and its eyes were glowing red. The image was very familiar, and it was similar to Xia Ran looks the same at the moment. It's Voldemort. Voldemort is really coming. Xia Ran secretly thought something was wrong, and flicked his sleeves to cover his own wand, but it did not prevent him from using any magic. Moody, Sirius, Lupin, Kingsley, and Mr. Weasley all had some changes in their expressions. The Voldemort just now was disguised by Xia Ran, who is disguising this Voldemort now? Or? Is Voldemort really coming to the Ministry of Magic? The other wizards in the Ministry of Magic looked confused. Why did two Dark Lords appear? Voldemort was also floating in the air, located at the entrance of the passage, staring at Xia Ran with his scarlet eyes, and said, How brave, there is still someone in the magic world who dares to impersonate me. Master, I am willing to kill him for you. Bellatrix shouted immediately. Master, let me do it. I will kill that daring guy. Barty Crouch Jr. said. Voldemort waved his hand, and Bellatrix and Barty Crouch Jr. immediately stopped talking. At this moment, the wizarding officials of the Ministry of Magic almost understood that it seemed that the Voldemort who appeared at the end was the real one. After all, Bellatrix and Barty Crouch Jr. were both famous infamous Death Eaters. Then this person. The way they looked at the other Dark Lord changed. Who on earth had the audacity to impersonate the Dark Lord? 
Who are you? Voldemort asked. He was in no hurry to take action. In the absence of Dumbledore, he thought he was invincible. Me? Sia Rant's mind turned and she said, Voldemort, who do you think he is? Court death. Voldemort narrowed his eyes, but before he could say anything more, Sia Ran had already launched an attack. Fire is blazing. A red flame suddenly appeared, filling the sky above the Hall of the Ministry of Magic, and swept towards Voldemort, mixed with several hidden offensive spells on the way. Voldemort held the wand with his slender fingers and waved it, knocking away the magic spells and hitting the wall nearby. Several stone pits suddenly appeared. With some strength, no wonder you dare to impersonate me, noble Lord Voldemort. Voldemort said softly, I have nothing more to ask, Avada Kedavra. Sia Rance wand moved, and a statue flew up in the fountain, blocking the way between him and Voldemort, intercepting the green light and making a banging sound. Avada Kedavra. Sia Ran also used Avada Kedavra. He almost never uses this magic, but it doesn't mean that he doesn't know this magic. Usually he just has some scruples, but when facing the terrifying Voldemort, he is no longer timid. That will only drag yourself into the abyss. He is not Dumbledore after all. Chapter, 236 Avada Kedavra Voldemort's high-pitched, cold voice echoed through the halls of the Ministry of Magic along with green lights. Sia Ran flashed his body. Fortunately, his flying skill had reached level 5 and he could keep up with Voldemort's speed, after all, he was in the air, and the space for moving around was large enough, and his magic skills were at level 6 medium. With level 6 elementary magic power, he can be called a top wizard, but he can already fight against Voldemort. Armor Protection Avada Kedavra In addition to defending, Sia Ran also used Avada Kedavra, one of the three unforgivable spells. Voldemort raised his wand, and a green light flew towards Sia Ran, the disguised Voldemort. Sia Ran twisted her body, her big black robe suddenly swung around, and she disappeared. When she reappeared, she was on the right side of the hall, waving her wand towards the statues in the fountain. The statues suddenly came to life, as if they were sentient beings, and they rushed towards Voldemort without saying a word. Voldemort fired spells one after another, smashing the stone statues into pieces. At the same time, he also disappeared, and then appeared next to the pool in the center of the hall. Endless water gushes, blocking Sia Rant's sight and covering those few dazzling green lights. A statue of a centaur rushed forward, blocking the green light of Avada's cadaver, but it was also broken into countless pieces and scattered on the ground. So strong. All wizards in the hall, whether they were officials from the Ministry of Magic, Death Eaters, or other members of the Order of the Phoenix, were shocked. Both the real and fake Voldemort are so strong. In particular, the members of the Order of the Phoenix knew who Voldemort was when he appeared at the beginning. He was clearly Sharon Fremont. When did he become so powerful? A group of people were stunned and stunned, almost forgetting that this place was still in the middle of a fierce war. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Everyone. Get out of the way. Lu Pinglian shouted. They didn't expect that at this time, the real Voldemort would suddenly appear. At this moment, Xia Ran started fighting with him. Both of them had extremely strong magic power and their magic knowledge was at the master level. The scale of the battle was huge, magic was intertwined, and spells were shot randomly. No one could hold back, Voldemort was cruel and did not value the lives of others. Xia Ran was already at a disadvantage, but relied on the terrain and powerful spells to temporarily resist Voldemort. Many magic spells that are insignificant to them are deadly to others. The crowd seemed to be waking up from a dream and even fled in panic. The entire hall of the Ministry of Magic turned into a chaotic place, with no trace of the original order. Moody leaned on crutches, waved his wand, and directly joined the battle. He knew that Sia Ran alone was by no means an opponent of Voldemort, in the Order of the Phoenix, except for Dumbledore, no one else could be an enemy of Voldemort when fighting alone, he had to help Sia Ran. Catch those Death Eaters, Sirius. Moody said solemnly. Don't worry, they can't escape. Sirius found his cousin Bellatrix Lestrange. 
Bellatrix laughed crazily and said, Sirius, are you looking for death? Oh, I am your sister, so I will fulfill your request. Avada Kedavra. Her wand shot out a green light, and her face was crazily twisted. More than ten years of prison life in Azkaban had a great impact on her. There are many obstacles. Yes, I am looking for death, but I think you will die before me. Sirius said politely, with a smile on his face. Sirius, be careful. Mundunga said suddenly, armor for protection. A green light was blocked by the armor curse, and it was Barty Crouch Jr. Who fired the Avada Kedavra? Thank you, Dunge. Sirius's heart skipped a beat, and he calmed down his playful mood. Your opponent is us. Kingsley, Tonks and other Aurors, as well as Amelia Bones, Mr. Weasley and other Ministry of Magic Wizard officials also joined the battle group, and the White Wizard camp suddenly took advantage of numbers. However, a large part of the largest number of wizard officials in the Ministry of Magic are hiding and hiding, regardless of the chaos outside. A small number of wizards have directly rebelled, merged into the Death Eater camp, and counterattacked their original colleagues. The whole situation became increasingly chaotic. The Dark Lord disguised by Xia Ran fought against the real Voldemort, and Moody soon joined the battlefield. It would be foolish to come here tonight, Voldemort. Moody said solemnly, Dumbledore will be here soon. By the time I'm done, you'll be dead too. Voldemort said viciously, suddenly frowning, it seems like you know Alastor, this arrogant wizard who dares to pretend to be me. A trick from the Order of the Phoenix. Voldemort's eyes flashed with scarlet light, and he said viciously, it seems that the great Lord Voldemort is still too kind. Avada Kedavra. He fired another killing curse at Xia Ran, but it missed. Xia Ran dodged it and hit the security guard's table. The table suddenly ignited flames and expanded in an instant, as if it was hit by a fire curse. It seemed that in his eyes, this order wizard who had disguised himself was the one that annoyed and annoyed him the most. Xia Ran waved the wand gently, and the spells he had learned, the magic that could be used in battle, were released according to his will. The spell cast by the wand was so powerful that even though the wizards hiding nearby were protected by buildings, they still felt as if their hair stood on end when the spell passed by. Moody's magic was no weaker than Xia Ran's. Magic lights flashed one after another. Voldemort was one against two, but he had to be serious. He conjured a shining silver shield out of thin air, like an indestructible shield. When Xia Ran and Moody's magic struck it, the silver shield only made a low, gong-like trembling sound. This strange sound was frightening. As the battle between the three became more intense, the surrounding buildings were almost destroyed. Even other members of the Order of the Phoenix, Ministry of Magic Horrors, and Death Eaters had to retreat to a corner of the hall to avoid the aftermath of the three's battle. Spread. Ah. A building was blown to pieces, and several figures hiding behind screamed. From the corner of Xia Rant's eyes, she saw a witch in pink clothes, who looked like a toad, and the Minister of Magic, Kong Nai, Li Fudge also let out a scream again. These people. Ha, yeah, it would be best if they died. Xia Ran secretly sneered, but Fudge, Umbridge and others are terrible, so it doesn't matter if they die, but most of the other wizard officials in the Ministry of Magic are innocent people, Xia Ran of course I don't want them to be affected. We have to move the battlefield. Xia Ran's eyes flashed, and she suddenly cast a fierce fire spell. This was black magic, and it could be considered a black magic that Xia Ran was very proficient in. Voldemort's expression changed slightly. He didn't think his silver shield could withstand the fierce fire. Chapter 237 is this the choice of the Order of the Phoenix? How is it different from us in using black magic? Voldemort said loudly, narrowing his blood-red eyes above the silver shield, it turns out that we have always been in the same camp. I wonder why Dumbledore has the face to shout and kill us. The words were full of sarcasm. Order of the Phoenix. Ran laughed and said, Am I not Voldemort? Dumbledore is my biggest enemy. What do you think? the fake Voldemort in disguise. Voldemort's expression became more and more gloomy. 
He had always had a high self-esteem and believed that his bloodline was unparalleled in the world, even though he had half of the Muggle bloodline inherited from his father. This was selectively forgotten by Voldemort, he gave up on communicating with himself. With the same name as his Muggle father, he changed his name to Voldemort. This name lived up to his expectations and made almost 90% of the wizards in the entire wizarding world fearful. For decades, no one has dared to impersonate me, the great Lord Voldemort. Voldemort said softly, Dumbledore. Wouldn't dare. I admit that just taking your life will not satisfy me. But taking your life will satisfy me. Xia Ran smiled, all the wizards who impersonated me, Voldemort, must die, right? He looked at Voldemort jokingly, and saw that snake face with murderous intent, so gloomy that it could drip water. I haven't appeared in the magical world for more than ten years. It seems that the wizards in the magical world have forgotten the majesty of Lord Voldemort. Voldemort said viciously, I hope you can hold on for a few more moves, I won't do it all at once I will kill you slowly. Then it depends on whether you have the ability. Xia Ran said. He admitted that he was no match for Voldemort, but he was not fighting alone. He also had the help of Mad-Eye Moody, and soon Dumbledore also they will rush to the Ministry of Magic. By then, maybe they can catch Voldemort and slowly cook up this big devil. As for the use of black magic, such as the fire curse, Xia Ran himself has never shied away from it. He learns and uses black magic as usual, except for extremely evil black magic such as Horcruxes, which are unethical and must kill innocent people before they can be used. Is what Xia Ran doesn't want to use. The fire curse, Avada Kedavra, etc. can be used when facing an enemy, so why not? Could it be that we still have to talk to the enemy about morality? That was never Xia Ran's idea. Since you think you are an enemy, you should kill and deal with it. Violence is not the best solution, but it is always the fastest solution. Voldemort blocked Moody's spell, pointed his wand at Xia Ran, and another green light shot out from behind the silver shield. Xia Ran disappeared in a flash and appeared next to the elevator. The sky was filled with fierce fire as he waved his wand, surrounding most of the foyer, making Voldemort frown. Xia Ran broke the elevator and descended rapidly along the elevator passage. At the same time, she laughed and said, I have to find what I want. The prophecy about me, Voldemort and Harry Potter, more than ten years ago. But it has always been what I hoped for. Seeking death. Voldemort looked fierce, his robes were flowing, and he followed Xia ran into the elevator passage. Moody was the last to enter. The three wizards with the most terrifying magic power left, and the others were relieved. Most of the hidden wizards dared to sneak their heads out, clenched their wands, and seemed to want to take action against the Death Eaters. But at this moment, another group of Death Eaters came in from outside, about twenty of them, all wearing big black robes and black hoods, exactly the most standard Death Eater attire. The battle in the hall on the eighth underground floor of the Ministry of Magic became more intense. Previously, due to the presence of Xia Ran, Moody, and Voldemort, the wizards had to be on guard against sudden powerful magic, but they did not dare to attack wantonly. However, it was different now. They only needed to just attack and kill with all your strength. Members of the Order of the Phoenix and wizard officials from the Ministry of Magic teamed up to deal with the incoming Death Eaters. The war situation was at a stalemate for a while and entered a white-hot stage. On the other side, Xia Ran led Voldemort and Moody to the Department of Mysteries. The Department of Mysteries is located on the ninth floor underground, just below the Great Hall of the Ministry of Magic. I hope I can bump into something valuable that can absorb force points. Xia Ran secretly thought, turned around and cast a spell, and quickly broke into a black door, dodging the killing curse shot by Voldemort. Want to run? It's too late. Voldemort chased Xia Ran so hard that he didn't even care about Moody behind him. No matter who dared to impersonate him, they would die. He was filled with murderous intent at the moment. Voldemort waved out several green lights, and at the same time several green ropes fell to the ground, and instantly turned into several wild pythons. Swimming on the ground of the Department of Mysteries, almost silently, with only angry screams coming from his mouth. Hiss. 
All these big snakes jumped toward Xia Ran's position. Voldemort disappeared, and appeared a few steps behind Xia Ran in the next second. His eyes flashed with a proud red light. The wand was pointed at Xia Ran's back, and a green light lit up. But Xia Ran disappeared immediately, and appeared in front of a door the next second, broke the door and broke into the next house, while Voldemort's green light hit the wall on one side. At the same time, there were signs of magic fluctuations in the rear, which showed that Mad Eye Moody also used a powerful spell. Voldemort looked gloomy and disappeared in a flash. Moody's magic had no choice but to hit the wall of the Department of Mysteries as well. The two of them are running so fast, I can hardly keep up. Moody was secretly surprised. Voldemort was just a legendary wizard in the magic world. Only Dumbledore can rival him in the magic world today. But when did Xia Ran have such magical and terrifying abilities? He stepped up his pace, trying not to let Xia Ran face Voldemort alone, and fired spells from time to time in order to block Voldemort's progress. Xia Ran, who was at the front, moved quickly. He hoped to take this opportunity to visit the Ministry of Magic and find items containing force points. As the official organization of the magical world, the Ministry of Magic must undoubtedly have collected many rare magic items, many of which are special magic items containing force points. That is what Xia Ran longs for most. After passing through several rooms in a row, Xia Ran suddenly focused his eyes and saw a few large books placed in a corner of an empty house. A stone platform seemed to have existed for thousands of years, showing model traces of growth rings. Xia Ran's heart suddenly pounded. He arrived in front of the stone platform in a flash. After a cursory glance, he immediately beamed with joy. The International Statute of Wizarding Secrecy. That's it. Chapter, 238. Xia Ran's fingers touched the ancient parchment text. The International Statute of Secrecy of Wizards, Force Points, 500 Points, Do You Want to Absorb It? A message immediately appeared in Xia Ran's mind, and his eyes glowed with joy. 500 Force Points. So many. Xia Ran was excited and even silently said, Absorb. Suddenly a cool feeling came from the ancient parchment text. After he concentrated his attention, he could clearly see that the column of force points on the system panel displayed on his pupils was increasing rapidly. Force points, 20 points 40 points 70 points 120 points 200. Quick. 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 Xia Ran secretly thought, turning around and taking a look. Because he was not slow before, and could freely choose the direction and room to move forward, the initiative was in his hands. Voldemort was chasing passively, so Voldemort and Voldemort were chased. There is a certain distance between them. Xia Ran definitely hopes that before Voldemort comes to kill him, he has absorbed all the force points contained in the International Statute of Secrecy of Wizards and increased his own magic power and related magic knowledge level. He had heard the loud boom of Voldemort's spells, getting closer and closer to his position. Finally, before Voldemort arrived completely, he had absorbed all the force points on the ancient parchment. Force points, 520 points. He originally had a base of 20 force points, but now with the 500 points from the International Statute of Secrecy of Wizards, he now has 520 force points. This is a huge amount of force points that Xia Ran has never had before. Xia Ranlian focused his attention on the system panel and began to add some magic power to the column. Suddenly, he turned around and waved his magic wand, saying, The divine edge is shadowless. Bang! There was a loud noise, the door exploded, and a black figure stepped into the room. It was Voldemort. His expression was extremely gloomy, and his face was particularly ugly. As the greatest wizard of all time, Voldemort was afraid of only Dumbledore, but he was frustrated in front of this bold wizard who disguised himself, oh. He seemed to have lost his nose, Voldemort was naturally angry, and his murderous intent was completely boiling over. You dare to use a spell of this level in front of me? Voldemort said with a ferocious smile, no matter who you are, I have no interest in knowing who you are, you have offended me, the most powerful wizard in history. There is only one way to die. Xia Ran stopped moving and stayed quietly, waiting for the addition of points in the magic column to be completed. 
this took time, even though it was very fast. He smiled softly. Seeing that face that was exactly like his own, actually smiling like this, Voldemort was filled with rage and didn't want to talk to Xia Ran anymore. He waved his wand directly and fired green light, all of which were Avada Kedavra. The killing curse is his standard equipment for Voldemort. At this moment, Xia Ran's aura changed. He squinted his eyes to cover up the joyful light blooming in his eyes. His magic power had reached level 6 medium. Armor Protection While using the Iron Armor Curse, Xia Ran disappeared in a flash, appeared in front of another door, and targeted Voldemort with the Avada Kedavra Curse. He never hesitated to use these unforgivable spells against Voldemort. Voldemort also disappeared, dodged Xia Ran's Killing Curse, and followed Xia Ran. Various green and red lights shuttled in and out, almost completely destroying the room. Mad Eye Moody also arrived and cooperated with Xia Ran to start besieging Voldemort. But Voldemort is indeed the most powerful dark wizard in the contemporary era, a legendary wizard alongside Dumbledore. Even though he was one against two, facing two top wizards in the magic world with level 6 magic, he still had the upper hand. If Xia Ran and Moody hadn't become weaker, other wizards would have died under Voldemort's killing curse in less than two spells. Phew. Voldemort disappeared, and flames burst out above Moody's head. At the same time, Voldemort appeared again, standing on the stone platform where Xia Ran absorbed the force points just now, stepping on the copy of the International Joint Statute of Secrecy of Wizards. Be careful. Xia Ran reminded, a ball of fire was thrown from the tip of his wand, filling the entire room in the blink of an eye, bypassing Moody and focusing on Voldemort. Voldemort frowned. Flames had always disgusted him. A large stream of water spewed out from the tip of his wand, fighting against Xia Rant's fire spell. He soon gained the upper hand, and the water flooded half of the room. Moody took this opportunity and cast out several spells with his wand, including a disarming curse, a stun curse, a crushing curse, but no killing curse. Ah ha, Alaster, you are still so merciful. Voldemort sneered, how disgusting. He did not hide his disgust and disgust at all, and fired several green lights and rushed towards Moody. Moody was not slow at all and dodged the killing curse. He was also proficient in the iron armor curse. After all, he was an aura hero who had been fighting dark wizards for almost his whole life. Have you forgotten me, Voldemort? Xia Ran smiled, and fired a few Avada Kedavra spells, and waved the wand with smooth movements. Several steel ropes appeared out of thin air, entangled with a roar. To Voldemort. Voldemort glanced at Xia Ran fiercely, and with a sweep of his wand, the steel ropes immediately broke, breaking into seven or eight pieces, and fell into the clear water below. And a silver shield appeared next to Voldemort again, blocking several spells fired by Moody. Xia Ran's eyes flickered slightly. He suddenly upgraded his magic power to level 6 intermediate, and also upgraded his knowledge of magic to level 6 advanced and transfiguration to level 6 elementary. These three things used up 280 points of his force power. Points, there are still 240 force points left. But he is not ready to continue to increase the magic level for the time being. Although magic is related to his level of strength, if it increases too much all at once, he will have to take some time to adapt to the familiarity. From level 6 elementary to level 6 intermediate, if he can still barely control it properly, then it will be straightforward after adding points to level 6 advanced. It seems that the magic level has been improved, but because he cannot fully control his own magic power, his strength has actually declined. Xia Ran didn't want to make such a fatal mistake at this critical moment. He postponed the improvement of his magic power until it was safe. Avada Kedavra. A high-pitched and cold voice sounded, and the green light of the killing curse rushed towards Xia Ran. Xia Ran flashed out of the room. Voldemort did not chase Xia Ran this time, but instead concentrated on dealing with Moody. It seems that I must kill you first, Mate, before I can deal with that audacious wizard. Voldemort said viciously. Moody was once an aura hero and captured half of Azkaban prison by himself. Voldemort also knew his name, and he also believed that Moody was the person he feared most in the Order of the Phoenix, besides Dumbledore, 
far above Professor McGonagall. As for everyone else, he ignored them. Of course, now we have to eliminate that abominable wizard who dares to impersonate him. Chapter, 239 Scarlet light filled Voldemort's eyes, and he killed him directly, and the green light of the killing curse flew around the room. Moody's expression was solemn. He was eager to capture Voldemort, the Dark Lord, but that didn't mean that he didn't know how powerful Voldemort was. On the contrary, he understood Voldemort's power better than many people. Armor protects you. Impregnable. His protective magic almost collapsed at the first touch, and could not stop Voldemort's killing curse within one breath. Fortunately, Xia Ran came back to kill him at this moment. I really want to kill all the wizards in the Order of the Phoenix. Voldemort said coldly, even if I cherish the blood of wizards and don't want them to bleed and die in vain, but the wizards in the Order of the Phoenix. I will definitely kill them all. I promise. Believe me, I will do what I say. Voldemort's face became ferocious, and his figure sometimes disappeared and sometimes appeared somewhere. The terrifying magic radiated in all directions, making Xia Ran and Moody a little tired of dealing with it. Oops. If you defend for too long, you will lose. This is not the way to go. Xia Ran was secretly anxious, but he had no way to break the situation. Even if he could add some magic power, it would only lead to a decline in his combat effectiveness. Voldemort was sure of winning, but his expression suddenly changed. He was completely at a disadvantage, and the two people he would soon defeat and kill one by one turned into a black shadow and escaped from the Department of Mysteries, heading for the elevator. Fly away from the passage. Xia Ran and Moody were stunned, and in an instant they understood. There must be reinforcements from wizards, Dumbledore. Their figures flashed and followed closely. Xia Ran dodged a few times, and suddenly felt a twisting and shaking body, and even returned to the ground. She held her hand on the wall and shook her head. What's wrong, Xia Ran? Moody asked. It's okay, it's time for the polyjuice potion. Xia Ran replied, Mad Eye, you go chase Voldemort. Dumbledore and the others should be here. I'll disguise myself a little and I'll be here soon. Moody didn't say much. Xia Ran's strength was here. Even if he encountered Voldemort who had returned, he could hold on for a while and wait for their support. He safely passed through the broken elevator passage and went to the Ministry of Magic Hall on the 8th underground floor. Xia Ran's figure shook and twisted for a while, and after a few seconds he returned to his original appearance, but this time he was wearing a big black robe, which seemed a little too big. It's too conspicuous. If others know that I was pretending to be Voldemort at the beginning, it will be a lot of fun. Xia Ran whispered, transformed into a set of fitting clothes, and put them on urgently, and that disguised the big black robes worn by Voldemort were burned to ashes with a wave of his wand. Xia Ran. At this time, a wizard went down to the ninth underground floor of the Department of Mysteries and called. Xia Ran turned out and saw Lu Ping holding a magic wand and just walking out of the elevator passage. What's going on? Has Voldemort escaped? Xia Ran asked. Now that Lupin has arrived, it is obvious that Voldemort has either been caught or has escaped from the Ministry of Magic with his Death Eaters. Judging from the sound and movement above, the latter is more likely. Lupin replied, Dumbledore and Snape are here. The mysterious man just flew out from below and ran away with several Death Eaters. Dumbledore couldn't stop him. After a pause. Continued, it is also because there are too many wizards present. Dumbledore is afraid of forcing the mysterious person to go too far. Is Fudge dead? Xia Ran asked again. Lupin was speechless and said, he is not dead. He is the Minister of Magic after all, so he cannot die easily. It seems that when I pretended to be Voldemort just now, I should have killed him with a curse instead of just teaching him a lesson. Xia Ran said while touching his chin. Lu Ping advised, Xia Ran, even if Fudge is at fault, just hand it over to the wizarding court for trial. We'd better not kill people directly, otherwise we will be no different from Death Eaters. Just kidding. Xia Ran smiled, changed the subject, and said, Okay, let's go out. I hope no one notices me. 
the two returned to the eighth floor underground, where an unknown number of wizards gathered. Dumbledore was inside, arguing loudly with Fudge, and no one noticed the two people coming out from behind. Dumbledore, did you control? The attack on the Ministry of Magic. That caused so many. Fudge looked pale and shouted loudly. Xia Ran secretly thought, it seems that the curse he just cast was still weak. Dumbledore looked at Fudge, turned to all the wizards present, and said, I think Cornelius Fudge is no longer suitable to serve as Minister of Magic. If you agree, please raise your hands. Dumbledore, you. Fudge was furious, but the hands raised by the crowd made his face even more pale. You. Amelia Bones stood up and said, Corneli Fudge, you have violated the original intention of the Ministry of Magic. The Ministry of Magic serves the entire magical world, not any individual or organization. In when Dumbledore announced the return of the mysterious man, you smeared him and tried your best to suppress it. We have reason to suspect that you and the mysterious man are suspected of being an accomplice. At this moment, the way all the Ministry of Magic wizard officials looked at Fudge changed. Fudge's pale face flushed red, and he scolded, Nonsense. I am the Minister of Magic, how could it be possible? But what you did is what Voldemort wanted to see most. Sirius said coldly. Fudge was speechless. People moved away from Fudge, their eyes full of disgust. Yes, no matter what his thoughts are, what he does is what the Dark Lord likes to hear and see. Isn't this enough? Tomorrow morning at ten o'clock, we will hold a meeting of wizards at the Ministry of Magic. Dumbledore, I hope you can attend. Amelia Bones invited. I will arrive on time. Dumbledore nodded, and after the medical staff from ST. Mungo's hospital for magical injuries and injuries arrived, the Order of the Phoenix and the others left the Ministry of Magic. They did not say hello to Mr. Kingsley and Mr. Weasley in order to prevent their identities from being exposed in the Ministry of Magic. Even though many people had already made speculations, they could only hide them for a while. Sirius, Lupin, please return to Grimald Place first. After the wizards' meeting at the Ministry of Magic tomorrow, we will also have a meeting at 8 o'clock in the evening to discuss follow-up plans and measures. Dumbledore said, Now horror there are still many things in Quartz that we need to go back to solve first. With that said, Dumbledore, Sia Ran, Moody, and Snape all operate away. Alaster, Sia Ran, how are you? Voldemort's current situation. Moody replied, Very strong. Compared with his heyday ten or twenty years ago, he is not weaker at all. Xia Ran and I are no match for him if we join forces. In the end, if you hadn't arrived in time, the Ministry of Magic will probably have to collect the bodies for me and Xia Ran. Dumbledore looked thoughtful. Chapter, 240 By the way, what was the result of the Triwizard Tournament? Who won in the end? Xia Ran asked. The winner in the original time and space was Harry, and Cedric Diggory also counted, but he was already dead at that time. So Harry is actually the winner. I don't know how the final result will change this time. After all, Harry did not participate in the Triwizard Tournament. Dumbledore smiled and said, Cedric won the Triwizard Cup. There should be students from various colleges celebrating in the school's auditorium now. You will announce this news later. Snape suddenly said coldly, there will definitely be numerous reports on the Dark Lord in tomorrow's Daily Prophet. Dumbledore looked solemn and sighed, there is nothing we can do about it. I hope they can be happy. I will do my best to ensure this. Albus. At this time, several wizards came forward. The first one shouted, it was Professor McGonagall, Professor Flittick, Professor Sprout, and Hagrid. Hagrid asked hurriedly, how is it, Xia Ran? Did it succeed? That dark devil. There were no casualties, right? Professor Sprout asked worriedly. Xia Ran smiled slightly and replied, the result is very good. Everything develops according to the normal track. Voldemort can no longer hide in the dark. Dumbledore also nodded. Several people immediately felt relieved. Professor Flittick smiled and said, now, let's go back to the Great Hall. The celebration party has just started not long ago. 
The principal is not here, so I feel like something is missing. Ha, huh, I'm honored. Dumbledore said with a smile. Professor McGonagall hesitated for a moment and said, Albus, if you can. Let's announce it tomorrow. This is probably the last night for students to celebrate without having to think about other things. You know, anyway, tomorrow everyone will every newspaper will report it. Dumbledore was silent, then finally nodded and sighed, just do as you say, Minerva. So a few people returned to the castle. Before they entered the auditorium, they heard noisy discussions coming from the auditorium. Dumbledore, Snape said suddenly, I have something to do and need to go back to the office, so I won't go in. As he spoke, he walked directly to the underground classroom nearby. He was still covering one hand. Xia Ran understood that it must be the Death Eater mark on his arm that had gone off. It seems that today's failure made Voldemort furious. Xia Ran narrowed her eyes, thoughtfully. The worried look on Dumbledore's face flashed, but he could not help Snape. He could only rely on Snape to lurk in the Death Eater organization. They entered the auditorium. I saw students from various houses cheering enthusiastically. Whether they were from Hufflepuff House or not, even Slytherin, Gryffindor, and Ravenclaw, they all cheered for Cedric Diggory's victory. After all, this it's an honor that belongs to Hogwarts. Of course, the students from Bosbatons and Durmstrang, the two magic schools, inevitably seemed a little depressed. The celebration dinner lasted for a long time, until midnight. At Dumbledore's repeated request, the students set off to return to their respective common rooms, but it was obvious that Hufflepuff students would definitely stay in the common room. Another celebration will be held in the room. As for how angry Voldemort would be after summoning the Death Eaters, Xia Ran and the others had no way of knowing. This time, in his extremely excited mood, although Harry felt a sense of anger, it was suppressed by his own emotions, and the expression was not as strong as the previous times. Add some. Magic. Xia Ran closed the door to his office, sat on the chair, and concentrated. The system panel suddenly appeared in his pupils. He still had 244 points left, which was just enough to upgrade his magic power to level 6 advanced. Although his magic power increased continuously in one day, it would affect his control over magic power. Therefore, when he was in the Ministry of Magic and fighting Voldemort, he did not dare to directly increase his magic power to level 6 high level in one go. He only dared to start from level 6 elementary is upgraded to level 6 intermediate, so that his combat effectiveness will not be affected too much. But now that we are back at Hogwarts, with Dumbledore in charge, are we still afraid of Voldemort breaking in? At the worst, I just need to spend more energy to slowly adapt and adjust in the future. In the end, Xia Ran's magic power was raised to level 6 advanced, which was only one step away from the legendary level 7 wizard's magic power. But Xia Ran understood that this last step was not something that could be easily overcome. 244 points just helped him increase his magic power by another level. Obviously, if he wanted to break through from level 6 advanced to level 7 elementary, it would take more than just 244 points. Xia Ran guessed that it would probably take more than 300 force points. He scratched his head and didn't think about where to absorb the force points. He simply put this concern aside for the time being and focused on observing his system panel. Name, Charin Fremont. Age, 28 years old. Magic, level 6 advanced. Force points, 0 points. Transformation, level 6 elementary. Potion science. Level 5 Elementary. Charms, Level 6 Advanced. Herbalism, Level 5 Elementary. Flying, Level 5 Elementary. Xia Ran looked at the zero in the column of force points and sighed quietly, but then turned to look at the numbers in the three columns of magic, magic and transfiguration, and immediately became excited again. Magic is level 6 advanced, charms is also level 6 advanced, transfiguration is also level 6 elementary. Xia Ran chuckled softly, hey, with my current strength, apart from Dumbledore and except for Voldemort, no other wizard can defeat me, or at most be tied with me. He calculated that it had only been three years since he awakened his memory, and he had jumped from an ordinary level 4 magic wizard to level 6 advanced magic. 
he was only one step away from the legendary wizard of level 7, which was really impressive. It feels like being in a dream, erratic and unreal. Level 7, the legendary level. Xia Ran sighed. Now that he has reached this point, of course he would expect to become a legend. The next day, when the sky was just getting bright and the sun had not fully risen, countless owls flew in from outside the school, carrying a copy of the Daily Prophet. Today's Daily Prophet arrived more than ten hours earlier than usual. Many students opened the windows for the owl in a daze, flicked the newspaper, and were all stunned. The man who must not even be named is back. This is the largest line of text on the front page of the newspaper, and it is definitely the first thing anyone sees. The person who cannot even be mentioned by name. Voldemort. Many people immediately sobered up. Chapter, 241. Last night, under the witness of countless Ministry of Magic officials, that person who must not even be named forced his way into the Ministry of Magic and started a fierce fight with the Aurors. What is confusing is that two people appeared before and after him. A Dark Lord. You're kidding. Ron said in surprise, who dares to impersonate him? That mysterious person. That's what it said in the newspaper. Hermione said impatiently, don't you want to listen to it anymore? Keep talking. Ron shrank his head. The others smiled, but only reluctantly. They had all gotten up, many still in pajamas and pajamas, and were in the Gryffindor common room to discuss today's surprisingly early daily profit. We later confirmed that the Dark Lord who broke into the Ministry of Magic for the second time was the real Dark Lord. The Dark Lord for the first time was probably disguised by some bold wizard. We are here to investigate I appreciate his shocking behavior. Is there really such a madman? Fred said in surprise. You said. Ginny looked around to make sure no one else was eavesdropping, then lowered her voice and said, could the wizard who disguised himself as the Dark Lord be Professor Fremont or Professor Moody? The others were stunned, and Harry asked, Why do you think so, Ginny? Ginny blushed slightly and replied, Did you see the two professors yesterday? They didn't show up at the Triwizard Tournament at all. They must be on a mission from the Order of the Phoenix. No. Hermione said, As mentioned here, Professor Moody joined the battle between the two real and fake Dark Lords. Look, the fake Dark Lord is definitely Professor Fremont in disguise. Ginny clapped her hands and said, Otherwise, why would Professor Moody join the fight? He can obviously sit back and watch the fight, waiting for the two-way Dark Devil will beat you to death before he strikes again. The group of people looked at each other, and they had to say that what Ginny said did make some sense. Hermione, what's behind, what's behind? Harry couldn't help but ask. Finally after Dumbledore arrived at the Ministry of Magic, the Dark Lord left with his Death Eaters, but the other Dark Lord disappeared and seemed to have been eliminated by the real Dark Lord. In addition, at noon today, the Ministry of Magic will hold a meeting of wizards to convene the trial of the former Minister of Magic, Cornelius Fudge. Hermione read and said, How happy! Fudge is going to be tried? It's best to put him in Azkaban prison and spend the rest of his life there. A group of people said each other one by one. It's a pity. Hermione shook her head and said, It is with almost the same regret that we report the collective riots of the Dementors in Azkaban. They have expressed their unwillingness to continue to be employed by the Ministry of Magic. We have reason to believe that, the Dementors are currently working for that devil king you know who I am referring to. This has been expected, hasn't it? Harry said. Ever since the Dementor attack at the World Cup, only Fudge and his gang have thought wholeheartedly that the Dementors are still on our side. How can a few prisoners in prison compare with the happy memories of so many wizards and muggles in the world? Ginny said, the Dementors cannot refuse the Dark Lord's terms. Anything else? Ron asked. Hermione looked at it and said, well, there are some warnings, look here, we strongly urge the wizarding community to be vigilant. The Ministry of Magic is publishing a basic defense guide for families and individuals, which will be sent to all for free next month wizarding family. The Ministry of Magic's announcement has caused annoyance and alarm in the wizarding community. And just last week we received assurances from the Ministry of Magic that continued rumors that mysterious individuals are operating among us again are nonsense. 
We have yet to get a comment from Albus Dumbledore on this matter, he has been criticized and smeared over the past year for spreading a message of terror. And now he has been proven right, he has all positions that had been revoked were reinstated, such as Commissioner of the International Confederation of Wizards and Chief Wizard of the Wisingamot. For the past year, he has insisted that you know who is not completely dead as people, mainly the Ministry of Magic, generally hope and believe, but has returned from the dead, recruiting followers and preparing to usurp power again. At the same time, the boy who lived began to gain people's trust, because he was destined to be you know who's old enemy. Even though he had suffered a lot of criticism like Dumbledore. Suffered a lot of criticism? Ron said unhappily, they seem to have forgotten where those criticisms first appeared. Isn't it the Daily Prophet? Compared to the Daily Prophet, I still want to read the Quibbler. At least the game on it is quite interesting. George said, if there wasn't that long article about harassing flies. It's unrealistic for you to ask them to admit their mistakes. Ginny said calmly. According to what the newspaper said, all those criticisms, slanders and ridicules seem to be done by the Ministry of Magic. It has nothing to do with their daily profit it has nothing to do with it. Hermione looked at the pages at the back. Let me see what other news there is. You know whose last effort to usurp power, see pages 2-4 what the Ministry of Magic should tell us, see page 5 why no one listens to Albus Dumbledore speaks, see pages 6-8 exclusive interview with Harry Potter, see page 9. Humph. Hermione said, folding the newspaper and throwing it aside, Haha Lee, have you given any exclusive interviews? You must be making things up again. Never mind them. Harry shook his head and said, as long as they change their attitude and remind more people in the wizarding world, this is a good thing. I wonder what will be talked about in today's wizard meeting. Ron said longingly. Fred said thoughtfully, maybe we shouldn't go back to the burrow during the summer vacation. What? Harry and Hermione were startled. In their opinion, the burrow is one of the best and warmest places in the wizarding world. Think about it, the mysterious man has been completely exposed, and the entire magical world is in panic. Will there be any less things about the Order of the Phoenix? George lowered his voice and said, if we live in Grimald Place, we will definitely know many secrets. Breaking news. I want to ask Dad if we can go to Grimald Place during the summer vacation. Fred said, and immediately got up and went back to the dormitory, obviously to write a letter. Well, that makes sense. Hermione said softly, maybe after I have been with my parents for a while, I can find an excuse to go there. Harry became more and more envious as he listened. He knew that the Dursleys would never want him to go to a happy place. If he was unhappy, the Dursleys would be happier. Chapter, 242 At night, Sia ran, together with Moody, Hagrid, Snape, and Professor McGonagall, operat to Grimald Place, London, and entered the old mansion of the Black family. Amidst the ear-piercing howls of the old Mrs. Black, go through the corridor and enter the kitchen. Lupin pulled the curtains firmly, and old Mrs. Black's curses immediately disappeared. Here, do you want something to eat? Lupin said, following him into the kitchen. Sirius was busy at this time. It seemed that there were rarely so many people in this place. He expressed welcome and joy, and also helped Creature carry things. Mrs. Weasley also helped. Let's have a beer, Hagrid said, accidentally sitting on another chair, he had his own chair because of his weight, and the chair shattered into pieces, causing Hagrid to apologize. It's okay, Hagrid. Sirius said. While waving his wand and bringing the dinner plate over, he touched the broken chair and it was instantly intact. Sia Ran scanned around and saw that there were many people in the room. In addition to a few wizards from Hogwarts, Mr. and Mrs. Weasley, Bill Weasley, Lupin, Sirius, and Mundungus. In addition, Tonks was also there, but Kingsley was not there. Like Dumbledore, he was probably participating in a meeting of wizards held by the Ministry of Magic. Wait a little longer. Mr. Weasley noticed Sia Rant's movements and said with a smile, after Dumbledore and Kingsley come back, we will know the content of the wizard meeting at the Ministry of Magic and make a series of decisions. Supplementary or other measures? Yes, Sia Ran, would you like some sausage? 
Mrs. Weasley said and sat down. She was smiling and seemed not to be bothered by the external situation at all. But if you look closely, you can find that there is always a glimmer of worry in her eyes. Well, have some. Xia Ran had not eaten anything in the afternoon, and she was hungry now. Bill looked at his parents and said, Dad, Fred and the others said they wanted to come in here during the summer vacation. Welcome. Syria said, Fred, George, Ron, Ginny, Hermione, I warmly welcome them here, and I will also personally invite Harry. His aunt and uncle are not good to him. Harry would be better off living here with me. I'm afraid not, Sirius, said Moody. Why? Sirius said, I am his godfather, and I believe Harry is willing to live with me. Snape suddenly let out a sneer. What are you laughing at, Snotlout? Sirius immediately glared at Snape. Okay, let's all stop for a while. Xia Ran rubbed her forehead. Whenever Sirius and Snape met, there would always be quarrels and conflicts of one kind or another, which was really a headache. Others were not surprised. Xia Ran whispered, Sirius, Harry must stay at his aunt and uncle's house before he reaches adulthood. Seeing Sirius open his mouth as if to refute, he raised his right hand to interrupt Sirius, and continued, Listen I'm done. I believe you all understand the reason why the mysterious man broke into Godric's hollow more than ten years ago and wanted to kill Harry as a baby. Sirius, you should know the prophecy. Sirius nodded slightly uneasily. Snape's eyes flickered. The prophecy about Harry and the mysterious man has completely connected the two of them, well, the mysterious man may not be called a human being. His nature has indeed changed greatly, but in any case, Harry, the mysterious man in the end, only one person can survive. Xia Ran said softly, Lily's magic is maintained by blood, and only Lily's sister, and of course Lily's sister's children, have the same magic as her. Bloodline Sirius, you are Harry's godfather, and you are a good friend of the Potters, but you do not have that bloodline, so Harry must go back to his aunt and uncle's house to ensure that the magic continues to work. Sirius was silent and replied after a while, I know, I just hope he can come to my place to relax for a while during the summer. That's definitely no problem. Xia Ran smiled, Harry will probably be happy to see you too. Sirius seemed relieved. Come, eat quickly. Dumbledore and the others are probably arriving soon. I wonder if they have eaten. Mrs. Weasley said, and suddenly there was a knock on the door in the hall, they are here. I'll open it. Lupin said. He sat near the door, got up and opened the door. Dumbledore and Kingsley followed him into the black mansion. Dumbledore, Kingsley, would you like some? Mrs. Weasley asked. Thank you, Molly. We happen to be hungry. We had a meeting all day, and the Ministry of Magic didn't even provide a glass of water. It's really uncomfortable. Dumbledore said with a smile. Professor McGonagall asked, Albus, how is the situation? What was said at the wizarding meeting? Everyone listened attentively. About the trial and handling of Fudge and other former high-level officials of the Ministry of Magic, as well as how to deal with Voldemort and Death Eaters, and how to maintain stable order in the wizarding world. Kingsley replied, Fudge has been sentenced, 100 years in prison. He is locked up in Azkaban prison, where he will spend the rest of his life. It's an advantage for him. Sirius said, all the Dementors have left, and Azkaban prison has lost all its original terror. By the way, Arthur, you may be busy later. Kingsley looked at Mr. Weasley and said. What? Mr. Weasley looked confused. This wizarding conference has rectified the departments of the Ministry of Magic and added many new emergency offices. Arthur, you will be responsible for one. Of course, your original office for prohibiting the misuse of muggle items will also be responsible for it. Kings. Lai said decisively, in short, your burden is heavier. Congratulations, Arthur. Lupin said with a smile. He was in charge of one more office and still held his original position. In fact, he was promoted. Mrs. Weasley and Bill were also beaming with joy. Xia Ran remembered that such a thing happened in the original time and space. 
After the news of Voldemort's return was completely exposed and Fudge stepped down, Mr. Weasley was transferred to a new office as the office director. What office? Mr. Weasley asked. Let me think about it. Kingsley seemed to have forgotten his name and said apologetically, that name is a bit long, I forgot it. Office for the Investigation and Collection of Counterfeit Defense Spells and Protective Supplies. Dumbledore added, the wizarding meeting initially decided on a full staff of ten people. Arthur, you are really busy in the future. Fortunately, I'm not unfamiliar with it. Mr. Weasley breathed a sigh of relief. Judging from the name, it was similar to the duties of the office for the prohibition of misuse of muggle items where he originally worked, but the scope of items targeted was slightly different. By the way, Dumbledore, has the new Minister of Magic. Been decided? Who is it? Sia Ran asked, this is the question that everyone is most concerned about. Chapter, 243. Deal. Dumbledore nodded and said, based on the votes of the 78 wizards participating in the wizards meeting, the person with the most votes will be inaugurated as the new minister of magic. Amelia Bones, she is the new minister of magic. Amelia? What she said is a very good choice. Everyone in the room whispered. Although Kingsley never became the Minister of Magic as he wished, Amelia Bones, as the Director of the Department of Magical Law Enforcement. The largest department of the Ministry of Magic, also had a sworn relationship with Voldemort and the Death Eaters due to the death of her relatives. It is absolutely impossible to make peace with the Dark Wizard, but it is indeed a good choice. After all, Kingsley's responsibilities are still low, not even the Director of the Auror Office. It is indeed difficult to become the Minister of Magic in one fell swoop when the heads of other departments are not in the way. Sia Rant's previous thoughts were somewhat ideal. After all, Amelia Bones was killed in the original time and space, and Scrimgeer, the current director of the Auror Office, was also killed. Many other people were also persecuted, and many of them defected to the Dark Wizard camp, Voldemort, so after winning the final battle, Kingsley had the opportunity to jump through several levels and become Minister of Magic. Now that Amelia Bones is alive and Scrimgeer is alive, there is really no possibility for Kingsley to recreate the footprints of the original time and space. Of course, in the next few years, Kingsley will not have any chance of becoming the Minister of Magic. But that's not what the Order of the Phoenix values. Amelia. Sia Ran whispered. He had worked under Amelia Bones before and knew what kind of person she was. He hated evil and was fair and just. Although he was not a member of the Order of the Phoenix, he in fact, what they do is no different from the Order of the Phoenix. After all, the Order of the Phoenix was originally an organization founded because of the rampant Dark Wizards. Are there any other decisions? Moody asked. Kingsley replied. A manual on preventing the Dark Devil is being urgently produced and compiled. It will probably be printed and published in the next two days. By then, everyone in the wizarding world will have a copy. I hope it can be helpful to people. If you encounter danger, what measures should be taken? After all, the magical world has been at peace for more than ten years, and many people may have forgotten how terrifying it was when Dark Wizards were rampant. By the way, Sia Ran, Alastor, your battle with Voldemort caused a lot of losses to the Ministry of Magic. Dumbledore said with a smile, at today's meeting, someone also proposed to ask Hogwarts to compensation. Ha! Snape sneered. Sia Ran raised her eyebrows and said, why don't they go to Voldemort to ask for compensation? You didn't agree, did you, Dumbledore? Of course it's impossible to agree. Dumbledore blinked and said, the Hogwarts family has a big business. With so many students, teachers, and more than a hundred elves, it is really not easy to raise them. Where is the spare money to compensate, right? This matter was settled in the end. Kingsley said, but Amelia, now it's time to change her name to Minister, is determined to provide greater support to Hogwarts, on the condition that Hogwarts more of our graduates will enter the Ministry of Magic. What kind of condition is this? Snape said in a strange and authentic tone, nine out of ten graduates of Hogwarts want to work in the Ministry of Magic, right? So, we hit it off right away. 
Dumbledore waved his hand and said, We definitely hope to solve the problem of employment difficulties for students, and the Ministry of Magic is in urgent need of more capable people to join in this year's situation. We both hit it off right away. This year's magic various departments in the ministry will expand enrollment at Hogwarts, and I can tell the students when I return, which is good news. But in this current situation, Professor McGonagall frowned, will there be so many students willing to enter the Ministry of Magic? After all, the Ministry of Magic must be a key target of dark wizards, especially the Auror Office. Dumbledore was silent for a moment and said, it depends on their own choice. After all, they are already adults, and they can see the pros and cons. How to choose, we have said it no longer counts, they all have it. Has his own ideas. Upon hearing this, Mrs. Weasley sighed. Fred and George don't want to enter the Ministry of Magic. She sighed. I don't even know what jobs they can do if they don't enter the Ministry of Magic after graduation. Who would want them? Their grades are not good. They are very interesting, Molly, you don't have to worry too much. Lupin comforted, they have their own ideas and don't need adults to worry too much. Mrs. Weasley still looked uneasy, as if she was afraid that her two sons would go astray. Sia Ran chuckled and said, aren't they going to come here during the summer vacation? Can't we just ask their opinions then? Children have to be rebellious, and they may not listen to what their parents say. It has to be like this. Mr. Weasley rubbed his forehead and said, he also felt a headache for his two sons. Sia Ran knew what Fred and George were thinking, and decided not to join the Ministry of Magic. She wanted to open her own shop. In the original time and space, she relied on Harry's Triwizard Tournament prize of 1,000 gold galleons as starting capital to start her own business. The journey was ultimately a success. Weasley's Joke Shop is one of the hottest shops in Diagon Alley. They had the same idea this time, but without the startup capital donated by Harry, their pace of opening the store might be much slower. Sia Ran touched her chin and asked me to invest in the shares. Anyway, based on the business skills of the Weasley twins and the deeds of the original time and space, if he invested, he would probably make a huge profit and just sit back and collect the money from his golden investment. Although he was not short of money, he was not very rich. Apart from being a professor at Hogwarts, he had no other jobs, so investing in the twin brothers was a good idea. Sia Ran made a plan and decided to talk to them after they came to Black's old house during the summer vacation. After the meeting ended, everyone except Lupin, who lived here and had a special room, and Sirius even expressed a warm welcome, left one after another, and Sia Ran and the others returned to Hogwarts. The school year at Hogwarts is over, the exams are over, and the Triwizard Tournament has also come to a successful conclusion. The students of Bose Batons and Durmstrang left uniformly on the fourth day after the Triwizard Tournament. What's interesting is that Durmstrang's principal Karkaroff still escaped this time because he knew the news about Voldemort's return. Which completely confirmed that out of extreme fear, he directly escaped from the British wizarding world without knowing who he was. When will the Death Eaters find him? But no one cares about Karkaroff anymore. Ms. Maxim seemed to have accepted Hagrid and agreed to Dumbledore's request. Sia Ran heard clearly from the sidelines that Hagrid and Ms. Maxim would go abroad during the summer vacation to look for giants living in seclusion in uninhabited mountains. To persuade them not to join the Dark Wizard camp. When Sia Ran passed by, she accidentally discovered the little secret of Harry and the others. Chapter 244 Harry, I hope we haven't met again. A familiar female voice said. Sia Ran turned a corner and walked down the stairs. She happened to see Fleur Delacour hurriedly in the foyer of the castle. Climbing the stone steps, I shook hands with Harry. At the other end of the field behind her, Sia Ran could see Hagrid helping Ms. Maxim harness the two giant horses. Bose Baden's carriage was about to set off. I hope to find a job here and improve my English. Fleur said. Your English is already very good. Ron's voice seemed to be suffocating. Fleur smiled at him and Hermione frowned slightly. Sia Ran thought that Fleur's decision helped her find her other half, Bill Weasley. However, they still don't know each other because they both work in Gringotts and Bill Weasley helps Fleur Delacour tutored in English, 
and the relationship between the two warmed up, and they eventually tied the knot. How about I give it a push? What if Fleur didn't work at Gringotts this time? Wouldn't she miss Bill's lifelong event? Ahem. He coughed lightly and walked into the hall. Professor Fremont. Several students said. Miss Delacour, are you working in London now? Sia Ran asked. Yes, Professor Fremont, do you have any recommendations? I heard others said that you only arrived at Hogwarts two years ago, right? Fleur's eyes lit up. Sia Ran smiled and replied, I do have a recommendation, I believe you will be interested. Really? Fleur asked hurriedly, what kind of job is it? Is the salary high? Of course, I'm not saying that I reject some jobs, but... Well, you know, I always have to live, and I can't always rely on my family. In. Hermione glanced at Professor Fremont strangely. In her impression, the professor was not a boy like Ron and Harry who only liked pretty girls. Sia Ran didn't know what Hermione was thinking, so she smiled and said, the salary at Gringotts should not be low. I remember that Bill is usually very generous. After a pause, he continued, Bill is also a child of the Weasley family. My eldest brother, he is the curse breaker of Gringotts and a very fashionable person. I will write to him to help you talk and see if I can let you work in Gringotts. But you can also go to the borough to find Bill in person and tutor in English. Bill is a good guy. Bill Weasley. Fleur Delacour said thoughtfully, Okay, Professor Fremont, I will pay Bill a visit. Bill will probably write to you later. Sia Ran said, I will mention it in the letter. Goodbye. Fleur nodded, turned and left, saying, It's a pleasure to see you all this time. Harry and Ron watched Fleur hurriedly running along the lawn towards Madame Maxime, her silver hair rippling like waves in the sun, and their moods couldn't help but become happy. Hermione frowned again and asked Sia Ran, Professor, do you want to help Fleur find a job? No. It's not me. Sia Ran shook her head and said, It's not me who helps her, but Bill who helps her. Would Bill agree? Ron asked. It depends on their fate. Sia Ran shrugged. Ah. The three of them were stunned. However, the three of them did not pay too much attention to Sia Ran's words. Ron looked at the big boat on the lake and asked, I wonder how Donstrang's classmates can go back. You said that without Karkaroff, they can still can you pilot that ship? Karkaroff doesn't take the helm, said a hoarse, dull voice. He usually stays in the cabin, and we do all the work. Crumb came to say goodbye to Hermione. Hello, Professor. He greeted Sia Ran first, and then asked Hermione, Can I say a few words to you? Oh. Okay. Um, okay. Hermione replied, with a slight blush on her face, and followed Crumb through the crowd and disappeared. You better hurry up. Ron shouted at her back, it's coming soon. Sia Ran entered the auditorium. There were only a few people there, most of them were faculty and staff. After having breakfast, he was ready to return home with his things. A few minutes later, he came out again after eating only to see Ron stretching his neck and looking at Crumb and Hermione from a distance, trying to see what the two of them were doing. At this time the two people came back, Ron stared at Hermione, but Hermione's face looked very calm. I have always liked Hogwarts. Crumb suddenly said, although Durmstrang is very good, Hogwarts is not bad either, and the climate is better than ours. Have you found a new principal? Sia Ran asked. Not yet, but that is something the school board should consider. They should already have a suitable candidate in the country, and they may announce it when we return. Crum replied, and he stretched out his hand like Fleur, and talked to Holly and Ron shook hands. When shaking hands with Sia Ran at the end, he said, Professor Fremont, I have to say, your course is very good. Because we don't have this combat course, I hope the new principal can also open a combat course after returning. During the almost a year that the Durmstrang and Bosbaton students stayed at Hogwarts, they followed the students of the same grade at Hogwarts and naturally listened to Sia Ran's teachings. I wish you all your wishes. Sia Ran smiled. Ron's expression was twisted, as if he was suffering from some painful inner conflict. 
Clum was about to leave when Ron suddenly said, Can you sign your name for me? Hermione turned her face and looked at the calm lake. The horseless carriages, actually pulled by Thestrals, were slowly driving towards them along the driveway, with an inexplicable smile on her face. Crumb looked surprised and pleased, and signed a piece of parchment for Ron. Harry, Ron, and Hermione carried their things and got on the carriage. Their expressions were strange because they didn't see the creature pulling the carriage. Thestrals need to be seen by those who have faced death. Professor Fremont, we will meet again in the summer, Hermione said, we will go to Grimald Place. Ron nodded. Harry forced a smile. He had to go back to Privet Drive and stay at the Dursley's house, although in his heart he also longed to go to Grimald Place and meet his godfather. Well, goodbye. Sia Ran waved goodbye to the three of them, went up the stairs, and took a look outside. In the square outside the castle, there were many Thestrals pulling carriages, heading towards the platform where the Hogwarts Express train stopped. After a while then it will head to platform nine and three quarters in London. Another year is over. This is my third year at Hogwarts. Sia Ran sighed, but when she thought about her greatly improved magic level, she suddenly felt happy again. Chapter, 245 Sia Ran returned directly to Fremont Manor through the floor network. Dust accumulated in the house and the yard was overgrown. Even if he used magic, it took him a while to clean it up. After everything was cleaned up, he made something to fill his stomach. Well, the cooking skills are far inferior to those of the elves at Hogwarts. Sia Ran muttered. His cooking skills are not bad, after all. He has nearly twenty years of personal life, but compared to the house elves. Get up, that's still a long way off. He took out the parchment and quill again and wrote a letter to Bill, telling about Fleur Delacour. Edsna, please, send it to the borough and Bill Weasley will collect it. But as long as you get to the borough, it doesn't matter who collects it. Sia Ran told her owl. Edsna pecked him gently and flew out of the window with fluttering wings. Bill wrote back a day later. The letter said that he had heard Ron mention it about Miss Fleur Delacour. He would not mind doing her a favor. He would personally write the letter and send it to Miss Delacour. If the if Miss Recall didn't mind, he would find her a job at Gringotts. Of course, Bill also said in the letter that this requires Miss Delacour to pass the goblin assessment. After all, Gringotts Wizarding Bank is the property of the goblins. As for helping with English tutoring, let's wait until Miss Delacour applies for a job at Gringotts. A few days later, while attending a New Order of the Phoenix meeting at Grimald Place in London, Sia Ran took the time to ask Bill, How is it, has Fleur replied to the letter? She is a beautiful girl, Bill, seize the opportunity. Bill smiled helplessly, Sia Ran, please stop teasing me. After a pause, he continued, she replied and said she would come to London in two days and hope to visit me once. I asked my parents, and they agreed. Son, of course we agree. Mrs. Weasley squinted her eyes and smiled, I heard Ginny say that Miss Fleur Delacour is from Beausbatons in France, right? She's quite beautiful. I also want to meet this girl in person. Mom, where did you want to go? Bill asked helplessly. Sia Ran thought to herself that you don't have this idea now. I'm afraid you will go to the borough to attend the wedding in a few months. Son, you are already so old. Your parents will not interfere too much in your life. You can make your own decisions. Mr. Weasley wiped his glasses and said. Bill was completely helpless and could only look at Sia Ran complainingly. He should not have accepted the favor from Sia Ran in the first place. You will thank me, really, Bill. Sia Ran said confidently. He was confident because Bill and Fleur got together in the original time and space, and eventually got married, and their married life was very happy. Sia Ran, look at this document. Are there any questions? At this time, Lu Ping handed over a document from the other side of the long table and asked Sia Ran. Preparations for the Prophecy Sphere of the Ministry of Magic's Department of Mysteries. Sia Ran flipped it over, nodded and said, it's not a big problem. Through Snape's undercover, the Order of the Phoenix learned that Voldemort had never given up his desire for the Prophecy Ball, which had recorded the prophecy of Professor Sybil Trelawney more than ten years ago. 
Voldemort had only heard the first half of it. Part of the prophecy, this time he was determined to hear the complete prophecy. As for Dumbledore, he did not want to face him directly, and Professor Trelawney had been living in Hogwarts. If Dumbledore was not dead, he would not rashly step into Hogwarts territory, so in the end he could only the orb, which is stored in the Department of Mysteries of the Ministry of Magic, is the way to go. The mission of the Order of the Phoenix is to prevent Voldemort from obtaining the Prophecy Ball. Although Xia Ran had a proposal to directly smash the Prophecy Ball, it was ultimately rejected because the Prophecy Ball was related to many things. And if that thing existed, it could also attract Voldemort's attention and let him focus almost all his energy on it. Come up, this way, the Order of the Phoenix can be more relaxed in its arrangements in other places. Xia Ran thought about it and felt that Dumbledore's statement made sense. The main discussion at this meeting was how to prevent Voldemort from sneaking into the Ministry of Magic, as well as the Death Eaters lurking in the Ministry of Magic, to prevent the Prophecy Ball from falling into Voldemort's hands. The Order of the Phoenix will form a defensive front with the Ministry of Magic. Does this mean there are still some problems? Kingsley asked. Looking at Dumbledore who was talking to Moody, and Snape who was concentrating with his eyes closed. Xia Ran recalled that the prophecy ball in the original time and space was because Voldemort discovered the connection between his and Harry's brains. Through special means, he tampered with his thoughts and let Harry know that he impulsively broke into the Department of Mysteries of the Ministry of Magic. With Death Eaters acting as internal agents, the Ministry of Magic has no one but the hidden Death Eaters. This ultimately led to serious death. He whispered, Harry is the biggest problem in this plan. Harry? Kingsley and Lupin said in shock. Others turned their eyes in surprise when they heard this. To prevent the prophecy ball from being stolen by Voldemort, Harry is a protagonist in the prophecy, but what does this have to do with him? You have forgotten, Harry's head. Xia Ran pointed to the brain and said, it is connected with the mysterious man's brain, and Harry cannot freely grasp this connection, but I think the mysterious man will soon. will realize this, and then he can take the opportunity to create a false picture to deceive Harry. If Harry is really deceived, as another person mentioned in the prophecy ball, don't you think Harry can get it? Got the prophecy ball? Dumbledore sat up straight, his expression serious. He understood what Xia Ran meant. The connection between Harry and Voldemort had always been a very unsettling factor. Although others had heard about this matter, they did not understand it deeply. Sirius asked, this connection. Could Voldemort still use this to control Harry? Xia Ran thought about it, and to be honest, there were signs of this in the original time and space. For example, when Harry saw Dumbledore several times, he had the desire to bite Dumbledore. This must be the fragment of Voldemort's soul in it affected Harry. Everyone is in the same camp, so I'll be honest. Xia Ran said softly, I think this is possible. Ha, Xia Ran, are you kidding me? Mr. Weasley's voice sounded strange. Harry hasn't been under the Imperious curse, so how could he be controlled by a mysterious person? Tonks didn't believe it either. But those who knew better, Dumbledore, Professor McGonagall, Moody, and Snape, all had serious expressions. Xia Ran, do you have any basis? Sirius stared at Xia Ran. Xia Ran wants to say that the basis is based on the facts in the original time and space. Will you believe me? Chapter, 246 The connection between them is real. No one can argue with this, right? Xia Ran said softly. Whether everyone was willing to accept this or not, they really couldn't refute it and had no choice but to nod. But. Sirius seemed to want to say something else. What do you think of the mysterious man's attainments in the two magics of legilimency and acclimacy? Xia Ran asked, will it be lower? I dare say that all of us wizards here, even Dumbledore, can't he said that he must be better at these two magics than the mysterious man. Yes, Tom's attainments in some magics, I have to say, are indeed better than mine. Dumbledore nodded. Everyone was silent. Xia Ran glanced around and said, now maybe the mysterious man has realized the connection between his brains and Harry's. If he takes this as an opportunity. He smiled a little as he spoke, and quickly said seriously, we is there any good solution? 
I'm afraid I'll have to avoid Harry by then. After Dumbledore learned this in the original time and space, he intentionally or unintentionally avoided contact with Harry. By the way, Severus, how are Harry's control over a clemency? Dumbledore asked. Snape seemed to sneer, but then restrained himself and said, It's terrible. I have never seen such a terrible person. Dumbledore, you let Snotlout teach Harry? Sirius looked very dissatisfied and said, You might as well let me teach Harry and the others. At the very least. I won't be self serving, but teach with all my heart. You. Snape smiled coldly and said, Are you qualified? What did you say, Snotlout? Sirius was furious. Sirius. Lupin hurriedly grabbed Sirius to prevent him from moving arbitrarily. After all, he was now a comrade in the same camp. Sirius sat down angrily. Snape smiled contemptuously. Ran touched her chin and said, I can't tell Harry directly about this matter, but I can teach them a clemency. Anyway, Professor Snape, Harry and the others must be very vindictive. If you are satisfied, you will learn well from me. Grudge. Dumbledore said, it is indeed a good method. Young people are much older than us old men. By the way, Remus, what is the internal voice of the werewolf group now? What attitude do they hold towards Voldemort's recruitment? Dumbledore looked at Lupin and asked. Lupin replied, it's okay, within the controllable range. Because many werewolves are innocent victims, and I am one of them. He smiled helplessly, Tonk stared at Lupin, with concerned eyes, continued, however, as you all know, the attitude of the magic world towards werewolves is not friendly. So the attitude of most werewolves is that they are unwilling to intervene in this war between black and white wizards. The white wizard has gained power, and their situation will not improve. The black wizard has won, but it doesn't conform to their ideals, so they simply don't help each other. Anyway, you know the life of a werewolf. Lupin looked tired as he spoke. Looking at Lu Ping, Xia Ran secretly lamented that because werewolves transformed once a month, at the full moon, and those who were bitten by werewolves would also become a new werewolf. This led to the magical world's attitude towards werewolves. Bad attitudes, even though many werewolves are innocent victims like Lupin, people's attitudes are still difficult to change. Therefore, werewolves live in isolation and are unwilling to participate in any battles. Even if they want to join this war, they will mostly side with the dark wizards. For example, the werewolf leader Greyback, who is cruel by nature and hopes that the world will be full of werewolves, will naturally follow Voldemort. There are very few people like Lupin who stand in the white wizard camp, and he may even be the only one. Of course, there are not many werewolves who are cruel in nature, or werewolves who are resentful, so there are actually only a few werewolves in the dark wizard camp. Your stuff. Snape seemed to remember something, took out a potion bottle from his loose black robe and placed it on the table. Tonks handed it to Lupin. Lupin couldn't help but smile and said, Thank you, Severus. He felt that he had inherited a lot of favors from Snape. After all, preparing Wolfsbane potion for free was not something everyone was willing to do, especially if they had old grudges when they were students. As the master of potions in today's wizarding world, Snape's Wolfsbane potion is much more effective than the Wolfsbane potion sold on the market. If he wasn't afraid of troubling Snape too much, Lupin would beg Snape to deploy more. He wanted to help some other werewolves he knew, all of whom were wizards who were innocently bitten and turned into werewolves like him. This bottle is not for you to use for one month, but for three months. Just divide it into three equal parts. Snape said calmly, drinking too much will cause problems. Lu Ping was slightly startled, then immediately became happy. It seems that Snape has made some progress in his research on Wolfsbane Potion. Originally, such a bottle of magic potion was only enough for him to transform once, but now it was enough for three uses, and the natural effect was greatly enhanced. Dumbledore smiled and asked Hagrid, Hagrid, when are you going to set off? Hagrid replied, Ms. Maxim has to return to Bozbatons first, so she has to wait for another two or three days. I will go directly to find her. Giants basically live abroad, not at home. Well, you and Ms. Maxim must be more careful along the way. 
Voldemort will definitely send Death Eaters to win over the Giants. Dumbledore warned. Don't worry, Professor Dumbledore. Hagrid said confidently, with a smile on his face. It was obvious that he was extremely happy to be walking with Ms. Maxim. Sia Ran shook her head and laughed, and couldn't help but said, We are naturally relieved about Ms. Maxim. Hagrid smiled sarcastically and scratched his head. What about the goblins' movements, Bill? Dumbledore asked again. Bill Weasley retracted his gaze and looked at Hagrid with a smile, and replied, The goblins are more hesitant, but I think they may be more willing to get closer to the Dark Wizard, because the mysterious man can promise them freedom. This is what the goblins have desired most for centuries. He knows how to do business. Moody said angrily, when we defeated the goblins, I didn't know how many human wizards' blood was sacrificed. We should all know that in the eyes of the mysterious man, humans, fairies, and werewolves, including vampires and giants, are not valued by him. Sia Ran said softly, he only values himself from the beginning to the end. You can find out through the Horcrux. The reason for wooing these groups is just because he wants to gather more powerful forces to defeat our alliance of the Order of the Phoenix and the Ministry of Magic. Chapter, 247 Werewolves basically don't want to get involved in this war too much. The attitude of the giants is still unclear, and the goblins are leaning towards the Dark Wizard camp. Sia Ran pondered, the Dementors have long since surrendered to Voldemort, and the same is almost true for vampires. It seems that our situation is still a bit difficult. Professor McGonagall said, Fortunately, the Ministry of Magic and us have formed an alliance at this time, and we are on the same camp and on the same line. If Fudge is still in power. She couldn't help but shudder as she spoke, obviously thinking of all the obstacles and obstacles in the past year. Cornelius Fudge's sentence was also very satisfying. How about? Syria said, we just take down Gringotts and drive out all the goblins. No. Sia Ran objected, the number of goblins is not small, and the goblins' territory is Gringotts, and there is no other place. If the plan is implemented like this, the goblins will inevitably break out in a collective uprising. This will really directly affect the situation. They're siding with the Dark Wizards. It really doesn't have to be so extreme. Dumbledore also said. Bill said, I observed the situation in Gringotts. The goblins just have this tendency, but they are actually similar to werewolves. They don't want to get too involved in the war between black and white wizards. Anyway, they only have Gringotts. Territory, no matter who wins, their basic territory will not change, and it is impossible to change, unless one party completely annihilates the goblin race. It's just that the mysterious man's promise of freedom still makes them more excited. Genocide is unlikely, Dumbledore said, but we must make early plans for the record that the goblins will really turn to the side of the dark wizards at the critical moment. I have consciously or unconsciously asked many curse breakers in Gringotts. Their attitude is consistent with that of the Ministry of Magic. They also agree with the philosophy of our Order of the Phoenix. Almost no one is willing to join the Dark Wizards. Bill smiled, so if there is a goblin rebellion, they will first have to pass the level of our curse breakers. Subsequently, a group of people discussed for a while about the dark creature races in the magic world and made various targeted measures. Don't worry about winning, think about defeat first. Kingsley, please tell Amelia about these measures and ask for her opinion. Dumbledore finally said. Now the Order of the Phoenix and the Ministry of Magic are allied. Although Dumbledore is the most powerful white wizard, they are on both sides. Although he is a leader-level figure, he still does not want to steal the limelight from the Ministry of Magic. He hopes to have more exchanges with the Ministry of Magic and work together to fight against Voldemort and the Dark Wizards. After the meeting, Sia Ran originally wanted to say a few words and give some advice to Mundungus, but after thinking about it, she decided not to do it. In the original time and space, the reason why Harry was attacked by Dementors during the summer vacation was because Fudge was still in power at the Ministry of Magic. Umbridge privately ordered the Dementors to attack Harry. Now that Fudge is in prison, Umbridge is also under attack. After being imprisoned in Azkaban prison, all the Dementors surrendered to Voldemort. According to Voldemort, 
Harry must deal with Harry's temper personally. How could it be possible for Dementors to attack Privet Drive? Moreover, the member of the Order of the Phoenix who secretly cared for Harry was not just Mundungus, but also Mrs. Fig. Although she was a squib, she actually cared more about him than Mundungus. Sia Ran, what's the matter? Mundungus caught Sia Ran's gaze. Sia Ran shook her head and replied, nothing. By the way, Sirius, I have something to ask your opinion on. Mrs. Weasley said, clearing her throat, it's like this. Several children want to live here for a while during the summer vacation. They want to contribute to the Order of the Phoenix. Do your best for the job. Well, if you don't want to their request really makes trouble I will just. Welcome. Sirius smiled, I welcome you warmly. We just need someone to help clean this old house. They will be happy. Mrs. Weasley said with a smile. Sure enough, when Sia Ran came to the Black Mansion again a few days later, Fred, George, Ron, Ginny, and even Hermione were all here. Hello, Professor. Hermione explained with a smile, I stayed with my parents at home for a week, when I went home during the summer vacation, I bought a lot of things in Hogsmeade. My parents were very happy. I saw so many interesting snacks, I felt bored, so I went to the borough, and then we went to Grimald Place together. I wonder when Harry can come. Ron said excitedly, the feeling of staying at the Order of the Phoenix headquarters is just different from being at home. Sia Ran smiled and said, you will know how boring it is after a while. Bored? No, no. We find it very interesting. George said. How is the development of your prank products going? Sia Ran asked. Fred smiled and said, Professor, do you want to buy some? We have a lot of orders. Wizards inside and outside the school have written letters to order. Suddenly he lowered his voice and said, By the way, don't tell mom, she has been you don't want us to do this kind of thing. It's better, dad, let us make our own decisions. George whispered. Ron said depressedly, you even charge your own brother for taking things away. My dear brother, George said, when doing business, you always have to clearly mark the price, so that it can last for a long time and be really prosperous, right? Ginny laughed. You are about to graduate, what are your plans then? Open a joke merchandise store in Diagon Alley. Sia Ran asked again. Fred and George looked at each other, scratched their heads, feeling distressed, and said, that's what we planned. But the location in Diagon Alley is too good, the rent is very high, we don't have that much money, and our mother is not willing to support us. She just wants us to work in the Ministry of Magic. I'll invest you a thousand galleons. Sia Ran smiled, it's enough for you to rent a store in Diagon Alley. People are panicking right now, and rents have declined to varying degrees. Real? Professor, you didn't lie to us, did you? The twin brother's eyes instantly lit up. Ginny was surprised, Professor, do you really want to invest in Fred and George? I think your talent, your talent in pranks, is still very good. Sia Ran smiled, by the way, don't tell your mother, it doesn't matter if Mr. Weasley knows. Don't worry, Professor, we won't tell. The two brothers said together, looking very excited. Now they will have the funds to open a store after graduation. They were still worried about this before. A few days later, when Sia Ran came over again, he gave the bag of galleons that Bill had asked Bill to take out from Gringotts to Fred and George. Bill was surprised when he saw it. Professor, what are you? Bill, this is Professor Fremont investing in our joke shop. Fred said, carrying the bag upstairs with George. By the way, Bill, how are you and Fleur? Sia Ran asked. Bill blushed and smiled awkwardly, she is already working at Gringotts. I am helping her with English lessons. She is studying very seriously. Ginny snickered and said, Bill has a crush on Fleur. Chapter, 248 Don't talk nonsense, Ginny. Bill blushed. Ginny snickered and said, I think that Fleur also has a crush on you, Bill, seize the opportunity. Bill scratched his head and went into the kitchen to help. Sia Ran also entered the kitchen. Mr. Weasley was reading the new issue of the newspaper and said, Sia Ran, 
you are mentioned in it. What? Xia Ran asked. He didn't know that anything about him could be published in the newspaper. Well, of course, putting aside the whole pretending to be Voldemort thing. The newspaper said that Ms. Bones intends to invite you to return to the Ministry of Magic to serve as a high-ranking official in the Department of Magical Law Enforcement. Lupin smiled and said, Xia Ran, you are very popular. Really? Xia Ran asked, taking the newspaper and taking a look at it, it was indeed what Lu Ping said. Are you going to resign? Sirius asked. Xia Ran shook her head and said in confusion, why did Amelia suddenly have such an idea? I used to work in the office for the prohibition of abuse of magic at the Ministry of Magic, but I didn't have any outstanding performance. Could it be that she knew about the last real and fake mysterious man incident, that you were pretending to be a mysterious man? Lu Ping said. Xia Ran touched her chin and said, it shouldn't be the case, right? Then you may have to be more careful. If Ms. Bones noticed you, it's hard to say that the mysterious man didn't notice you. Lupin reminded, I believe that after the last real and fake mysterious man incident, we of all people, apart from Dumbledore and Harry, the mysterious man may want to kill you the most. That's right. Sirius agreed, Voldemort thinks very highly of himself, of course he has this qualification, his parents didn't want to use the name, and he also didn't want others to mention the name he chose, so he put a curse on his name. Many people. Even we must be careful not to use the word Voldemort at certain times and call him by his first name, so as not to attract his attention. It is conceivable how much he values himself and how unique he thinks he is. When Voldemort knows that someone dares to disguise himself, I boldly speculate that he will definitely hate you to the bone. This kind of hatred, you are no younger than Dumbledore, and if your identity is exposed, you will not be as deeply afraid of Voldemort as Dumbledore. Sirius warned, Xia Ran, you'd better decorate your residence with more magic as a precaution. Xia Ran nodded. He knew how powerful Voldemort was. After all, they had fought against each other once before, and both of them were at a disadvantage when they teamed up with Moody. If Dumbledore hadn't arrived in time, the two of them would have even been in danger of death. However, his magic level has been greatly improved compared to his own at that time. At that time, he had level 6 elementary magic power, but now he also has level 6 advanced magic power. If he fights Voldemort alone, it is impossible to defeat him, but in a short time if you take one move inside, it won't be a big problem to block him for a few minutes. After all, Dumbledore and Voldemort were only level 7 legendary wizards. Of course, this step is extremely difficult to overcome. Xia Ran estimated that he would need at least 2 to 300 force points to help him cross the huge gap between level 6 and level 7 to become a legendary wizard. Boom! At this time, someone knocked on the door suddenly, and the movement was loud. It was obvious that the person who knocked on the door was very anxious. I'll drive it. Ginny said first. Serious, Lupin, something big. Something bad is going to happen. It was the voice of Mundungus. He was trembling slightly and walked into the kitchen with a pale face. Sharon and Arthur, you are here too. What's the matter, Dunge? What's wrong? Sirius asked. Mundungus wiped the cold sweat from his forehead and said, Harry. Harry was attacked by Dementors. When did this happen? Harry isn't hurt, is he? Is he okay? The group of people in the kitchen suddenly became frightened and became confused. Lupin stood up immediately and asked, Dunge, what's going on? Aren't you and Mrs. Fig specially designed to protect Harry? Xia Ran frowned, this was indeed the case in the original time and space, but didn't Umbridge make her own decision at that time and order the Dementors to attack Harry? Now Umbridge has been sentenced to Azkaban prison. Ah, uh, yes, the Dementors had already rioted in groups and defected to Voldemort's dark wizard camp. Perhaps they were instigated by Voldemort? Xia Ran shook her head secretly, it was impossible. According to what Voldemort has shown all along, he wants to kill Harry with his own hands, wash away the shame of more than ten years ago, and end his old enemy in this prophecy. He will never instruct the Dementors to attack and kill Harry. Could it be that it was the same as Umbridge's situation in the original time and space, 
where she hid her immediate boss and acted privately. But who was the person who commanded the Dementors? Ordinary Death Eaters certainly cannot command Dementors. Mundungus swallowed and said, Harry is fine. He used the Patronus charm to repel the Dementors. Mrs. Fig saw it with her own eyes and sent him back to Desley herself. Home. Mrs. Fig saw it with her own eyes and escorted it herself. Where are you? Mrs. Weasley asked aggressively. Mundungus said with big drops of sweat, I. I had a business at the time, a big business. I didn't mean to. Mundungs. Mrs. Weasley said like an angry lion. Even if she said she wanted to eat Mundungs, no one would believe it. Mundungus trembled and shivered. Others could not give Mundungus any sympathy, because they were really angry at Mundungus' dereliction of duty. I'll settle the score with you later. Sirius said, I'll go to Privet Drive first. No. Lupin said, Sirius, we can't have too many people passing Harry's place, and Dumbledore's instructions. Instructions? What more instructions are there? Sirius asked irritably, are you waiting to collect Harry's body in the end? Sirius, you are not the only one who cares about Harry here. Mr. Weasley said, we also care about Harry and hope that he is safe and sound, but this matter must be directed by Dumbledore, especially now that Harry is safe. Safety. Ha, the Dementors have appeared, so why talk about safety? Sirius said angrily. Sirius, calm down. Ran frowned, turned to Mundungus and said, Mundungs, you go back to Privet Drive first and work with Mrs. Fig to protect Harry secretly. If there is another emergency, notify us immediately. Ah. Okay, yes, no problem. Mundungus said, running out of Black's old house and disappearing with a snap. Sia Ran, what do you think we should do? Do we just have to wait here and wait for news? Sirius asked. Sia Ran was about to reply when her ears suddenly twitched, she looked at the door and said, someone is here again. Sure enough, with two snaps, two familiar figures walked into the black old house, Kingsley and Tonks. The Ministry of Magic has detected it. Chapter 249 The Ministry of Magic has detected it. Tonks said loudly. Harry, who is underage, used magic outside the school without permission. He was tracked by the Legal Enforcement Department of the Ministry of Magic through traces. A letter has been written to warn him. It's not a warning, Tonks. Kingsley said seriously, it's to destroy his wand. According to Mafalda, they prohibit the misuse of magic in the office, yes, the office where Xia Ran originally stayed, I have already written to inform Harry. And we will soon select a candidate to go to Privet Drive to destroy Harry's wand and inform him face to face again that he has been expelled from Hogwarts. No. Hermione said sadly. Ron and Ginny were also frightened, with their mouths wide open and looking at Kingsley blankly. Perhaps you don't know. Kingsley said, Harry has a record of using magic outside of school before, so this is his second violation of the Restraint of Minor Wizards Act, which prohibits abuse. The wizard's office decided to expel him from Hogwarts, destroy his wand, and return him to the muggle world. Ron, Fred, and George blinked. They knew why Harry was warned last time. It was actually Dobby who used apparition, but because there were no other wizarding families on Privet Drive, and there were no adult wizards. Traces appeared, so that magic wave was recorded on Harry's head. Does Amelia know about this? Sia Ran asked. It should be unclear. After all, she is already the Minister of Magic and will not be in charge of the affairs of the Department of Magical Law Enforcement. Moreover, the Office for the Abuse of Magic is only an office under the Department of Magical Law Enforcement. Kingsley replied. We have already informed others to report the news, and Amelia will know about it soon, Tonks added. That's okay, Amelia will take back this order. Sia Ran said with some relief. I'm afraid I'm not that optimistic. Kingsley said solemnly, when we came out, we heard some people talking about this matter, hoping that the two illegal records would be superimposed and Harry Potter could return to the muggle world. Obviously, those people they all lean toward the dark wizard camp. Is there nothing we can do? Hermione asked in horror. 
Ron, Ginny, Fred, and George looked around, their faces also filled with fear. Don't worry, Harry will be fine. We are here, as well as Dumbledore. Bill comforted him. Sia Ran pondered, the letter from the office for the prohibition of abuse of magic should have been sent to Privet Drive. We also need to write a letter to tell Harry not to run around, especially not to give more clues to people with ulterior motives in the Ministry of Magic. I have paper and pen. Hermione continued, taking out the paper and pen from the small bag on the table and handing them to Sia Ran. Sirius, you write it. You are Harry's godfather. You can comfort Harry more at this time. Sia Ran pushed it to Sirius and said, Remember, don't let Harry escape. Impulsive, otherwise, I can't even explain it with ten mouths. It can still be said that it is because of the Dementors. Harry had to use magic because his life was threatened, which violated the law. But if he takes the initiative to escape, it will be equivalent to directly handing over the initiative to other people with ulterior motives. In the hands of someone else. What's more, as a minor wizard, how can he resist the representative wizard of the Ministry of Magic? Yes. Sirius quickly wrote the letter and asked the owl postman to deliver it to Harry Potter on Privet Drive. Watching the owl fly away, everyone's mood reached a very heavy point, and no one in the room spoke. Snapped. At this time, Snape operat in front of the old black mansion with a gloomy expression. He did not express surprise when he saw everyone standing at the door. He only said in a solemn voice, Dumbledore has arrived at the Ministry of Magic and is investigating the cause and reason of the entire incident. While communicating with Ms. Bones, you all stay at Grimald Place and write letters to communicate with Harry Potter. The message is over, goodbye. Snape followed with another snap and disappeared in front of the gate of Black's old house. It's okay. Mrs. Weasley breathed a sigh of relief. Dumbledore has gone to the Ministry of Magic, so there should be no problem. He has great powers and can always do many things that others can't do. Everyone has full confidence in Dumbledore. By the way, we have to go back and inquire about the situation in the Ministry of Magic. Kingsley said. I'll come with you, said Mr. Weasley. Molly, kids, I have to go back to the Ministry at this time. So Kingsley, Mr. Weasley and Tonks all disapparated at the same time. The others went back into the house. Creature, Sirius and Mrs. Weasley brought the food to the table. Everyone ate in silence. After waiting for almost an hour, Mr. Weasley, Kingsley and Tonks came to the table. Back here again. How is it? Lupin asked. It's not a good situation, but it's okay. It would have been much better at first. Mr. Weasley replied, Is there anything left? We haven't eaten. And... Sirius jumped up and asked, Arthur, Kingsley, Tonks, what do you want to eat? The three people said what they wanted to eat, and Sirius and Mrs. Weasley helped Creature prepare it. However, because the kitchen in Black's old house was very large, the others just sat at the dining table, and everyone could hear the conversation. Got to see. What's Amelia's attitude? Sia Ran asked. Tonks replied, Amelia's attitude is not bad. She agreed to Dumbledore's request and ordered the Office for the Abuse of Magic to modify the notice. It no longer directly expels Harry or destroys his wand, but instead to hear Harry's detailed report, but some people objected. Who? Sia Ran frowned. Lucius Malfoy. Mr. Weasley said coldly, he and a group of people were obsessed with Harry's two consecutive violations of the law and forced Harry to hand over his wand. Finally, Amelia Ye and Dumbledore backed down due to their tough attitude, but also demanded that a trial must be held so that witnesses could appear to prove that Harry was indeed forced to use magic because of the Dementors. Tonk said helplessly, in this situation, it is impossible for Amelia and Dumbledore to continue to be tough, because Harry broke the law twice in a row. Last time it was clearly a house elf who used magic, but it ended up being blamed on Harry. Ron, Fred, and George said angrily. But at this time, it is impossible for you to reverse the case for the first violation. It will be thought that you did it deliberately, but it will attract more dissatisfaction. Lu Ping said. 
However, due to Amelia's insistence, the trial regarding Harry was rescheduled to a hearing on August 12. Kingsley said and took a sausage. He was obviously hungry. Xia Ran nodded slightly and said, that's okay, the hearing is something like that. The Minister of Magic, Amelia, is on our side, and Dumbledore. Harry did encounter a Dementor. The hearing is definitely there won't be any problem. Chapter, 250 You are wrong, Sharon. Mr. Weasley said as he ate. The mysterious man will definitely not let go of such a great opportunity, indeed it is true for him, as long as Harry is expelled after leaving Hogwarts. His wand was broken and destroyed by the misuse of magic office, so Harry basically had nothing to resist. Well, to say the least, we provided Harry with the elder wand that no one was using. And we could also help him tutor him in magic knowledge in private, there is indeed a lot of professors in the Order of the Phoenix, but after all, this is not as good as in school. Class, not to mention that Harry is someone who is banned from using magic by the Ministry of Magic. Lupin also nodded and said, Yes, at this critical moment, we cannot go against the Ministry of Magic, especially after Fudge has been defeated and Ms. Amelia Bones has taken over. We must abide by the legal provisions of the Ministry of Magic. At least we must abide by the legal provisions on the surface. Those Death Eaters lurking in the Ministry of Magic also do the same. Mr. Weasley said, Falling people never do anything that is a handle. Xia Ran nodded. What Mr. Weasley and Lupin said made sense. This is a war, a war between black and white wizards. Winning more friends and dividing the enemy's strength is what they should think and act, instead of doing many irrational things on impulse. Which is tantamount to going against the grain, he took the initiative to help reduce the number of friends, which pushed many neutral people to the side of the dark wizard. More than ten years ago, we did not completely liquidate the Death Eaters. Kingsley said, many wizards who were originally Death Eaters now rely on family power. Many of them occupy high positions in the Ministry of Magic. There are also people such as Lou Pureblood nobles like Hughes Malfoy have been receiving various benefits for more than ten years. Even if Amelia becomes the Minister of Magic, she will still encounter many constraints. The mysterious man will definitely use the power of his Death Eaters to entangle the Ministry of Magic, and will also involve our energy and attention, creating opportunities for his actions. Sirius said. Xia Ran smiled and said, but we are not without advantages, right? The Minister of Magic, Amelia, is on our side, and Scrimgeer, the Director of the Aura Office, is also on our side. Someone who might have compromised with the mysterious man. The situation is much better than when Fudge was in office. Everyone nodded. Indeed, the situation has changed drastically. The Ministry of Magic and the Order of the Phoenix have a cooperative attitude, rather than the original repressive policy. The hearing on August 12th. Sirius said, we have to bring Harry to the Order of the Phoenix in advance. Before the hearing, we must explain the situation clearly to him, otherwise he may be impulsive. I understand. He understands it very well. Mention that to Dumbledore next time, said Mr. Weasley. Xia Ran said goodbye and left the Black Mansion. Along the way, he was thinking about who was behind the appearance of the Dementors on Privet Drive and the attack on Harry. Time soon came to early August, Sirius mentioned to Dumbledore about picking Harry up from Grimald Place, and Dumbledore agreed. I also need Harry's help for something, Dumbledore said. Of course, after the hearing on August 12th, I believe he can walk out of the Ministry of Magic without guilt. Then I. Sirius continued, he wanted to set off to pick up Harry. However, Dumbledore called Xia Ran's name and said, Xia Ran, please go and pick up Harry. Sirius, sometimes you are impulsive and impulsive, and. After a pause, he decided to tell the truth, if Xia Ran goes, even if she encounters Death Eaters, I can rest assured that even if Voldemort personally attacks, Xia Ran can resist for a while and support me until I arrive at the battle site. Sirius smiled helplessly, yes, after more than ten years in prison, his magic power has stopped improving long ago and is stuck at level five. Basically, there is no hope of reaching level six in his life. Xia Ran, is it okay? Just these two days, are you okay? 
Dumbledore looked at Xia Ran and said. Xia Ran nodded slightly, indicating that she could take on this task. The next day, Xia Ran disapparated and arrived at Privet Drive. He had been here once before, in fact, during last summer vacation, he took Harry to the borough to watch the Quidditch World Cup, as long as he had been to a place that had an impression. And if the distance is not very far, Xia Ran can reach it through apparition and apparition. He is particularly good at this space magic. Who? He heard a familiar voice coming from the room nearby. He turned around and saw Mrs. Fig coming out of the house with a bag of cat food in her hand. She seemed to be feeding her cat food just now. Cat. Oh, it turns out to be Xia Ran. I was shocked just now. I thought some dark wizard had operat over. Mrs. Feige breathed a sigh of relief. Mrs. Fig, good evening. Xia Ran said politely. Mrs. Fig invited, want to come in and have a cup of tea? Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot, you are here to pick up Harry, right? He has been at home since that incident. She pointed to a house and said, that's the Desleys. Thank you, Mrs. Fig. Goodbye. Xia Ran said politely, without saying that she knew the location of the Desleys' house. Mrs. Fig turned around and entered the room. Xia Ran may feel slightly worse than Dumbledore now. Xia Ran knocked on the door of Desley's house. Who? Came a woman's voice from inside, probably Harry's Aunt Petunia Desley. Then the door opened. It's you. Petunia Desley was obviously surprised when she saw Xia Ran. Hello, good evening, Mrs. Desley. Xia Ran said also very politely. Oh, hello. Penny said casually, still looking very surprised, who are you? That professor. A professor at Hogwarts, a teacher who specializes in teaching combat classes. Xia Ran said. Penny gasped, as if she had just heard something ominous. Well, don't you invite me to come in and sit down? Xia Ran glanced into the room. Vernon Dursley had just come out of the kitchen with a box of food. Dudley Dursley looked towards the door furtively. When he saw Xia Ran's eyes, he was startled. Lien turned around and stared at the TV. Okay. Penny said reluctantly, come in. Summer happily walked into the Dursley's house and said, Good evening, Mr. Dursley, and hello, Dudley. Vernon Desley blinked his little eyes, as if he was wondering if he had seen it wrong. Why did a wizard come to his home? Dudley was trembling, as if he was afraid of people related to magic. Except Harry, of course. Well, Mrs. Desley, could you call Harry down? As Xia Ran said, there was a sound of footsteps at the top of the stairs, and then a thin young man with black hair and green eyes appeared. Wearing a pair of glasses, he said in surprise, Professor Fremont. Chapter, 251. Harry, good evening, I'm here to pick you up. Xia Ran smiled, are everything ready? We will leave soon. Harry suddenly became anxious and said hurriedly, uh, professor. Wait a minute, I'll be down with my suitcase in a minute. He didn't say that he hadn't packed his luggage yet, and was rushing back to the bedroom to pack his things. Xia Ran saw it, smiled, and walked to sit on a sofa in the Desley's living room. Vernon Desley had bulging veins on his forehead. He seemed extremely angry at Xia Ran's actions, but at the same time he was afraid of his strange magic. In the end, it was Petunia Desley who was the first to react. She sat next to Dudley, some distance away from Xia Ran, and asked him, You came to pick up Harry and go to what? School. He's not was he fired. Because he used magic on Dada. While speaking, he looked at Dudley lovingly. It's true that Harry used magic, but I believe he didn't use magic on Dudley, but on a dark creature. Xia Ran said softly, Maybe Harry has told you that the name of the thing. Photograph. Dementors. Dudley suddenly spoke, his voice trembling. Vernon and Petunia were obviously startled and looked at their son in surprise. Dudley said intermittently, he said. Harry said that dementors absorb people's happiness. He couldn't help but shuddered as he spoke, with a look of fear on his chubby face. The people who encountered dementors at that time, besides Harry, were also present, 
and had their happy memories absorbed by a Dementor. If Harry hadn't summoned the Patronus in time, he would have been kissed directly by the Dementor on the spot. Turned into a vegetative state with a dead soul. Yes, that's right. Xia Ran nodded, Dementors are terrible things, but they are terrible. They specialize in the happiness of living people as food. If you want to deal with them, you can only use the Patronus charm. Others no spell will work. Vernon and Petunia both twisted their faces, as if Xia Ran had said something disgusting. Xia Ran shrugged her shoulders. The atmosphere in the living room seemed very depressing, mainly due to the Dursleys, who expressed their sincere distaste for magic. But because they were afraid of Xia Ran's magic, they did not dare to put forward any opinions, so they could only sit on pins and needles. After a while, Petunia suddenly spoke and asked, That Voldemort, the person who killed Lily, is he? Back again. Her eyes were very strange, her big light-colored eyes were wide open, and inside there seems to be not only fear, but also other emotions, such as hatred. Xia Ran didn't know if he had seen it wrong, because Penny quickly looked away and said, Yes, Voldemort, Dumbledore should have mentioned to you that the extremely powerful and powerful man who killed the Potters the evil dark wizard is back. Isn't he dead? Vernon asked doubtfully, his face wrinkled, and he said impatiently, the big guy said that he left, died, and will never come back. Don't even think about it. Lied to me. He stared at Xia Ran, and suddenly saw Xia Ran raise an eyebrow, and suddenly realized that the person in front of him was not his nephew Harry, who would not let him press him, and was even proficient in various magics. He still remembered the last time a young wizard came over and gave Dudley a pig's tail. Vernon immediately avoided Xia Ran's sight. Just because he's dead doesn't mean he won't come back. Xia Ran smiled softly and said, Even if you don't understand the magical world, you can still understand a concept from so many movies and TV dramas that have been broadcast on TV. What? Petunia asked, actually already having the answer in her mind. Xia Ran whispered, Resurrection from the dead. Voldemort, he is back again. Resurrection. The Dursleys huddled in a corner of the sofa, with extremely frightened expressions on their faces. Yes, resurrection. Xia Ran sighed, in the magical world, there are many things that you think only exist in myths and legends, such as ghosts, werewolves, vampires, giants, etc. Not to mention that Voldemort is so powerful that he can be called a legend. He is a wizard, so in fact, resurrection is something he can do, so you shouldn't act so surprised. Um, Professor Fremont, what is this? At this moment, Harry came down carrying a suitcase and an owl cage. When he saw the Dursleys huddled together with frightened expressions, he was stunned for a moment. Professor Fremont taught the Dursleys the lesson. We just chatted about something. Xia Ran said, let's go and get to Grimald Place early. Everyone else is waiting for you to come and have dinner. Harry walked down the stairs in two steps at a time, carrying his suitcase and owl cage tightly. Xia Ran stood up and said, Mr. Dursley, Mrs. Dursley, excuse me. Harry was already at the door ahead of him, clearly eager to leave the Dursleys. Suddenly Petunia Dursley spoke and asked slowly, that dark wizard, the reborn Voldemort. Will you kill him? As soon as the words came out, there was two seconds of dead silence. Petunia Dursley and Xia Ran looked at each other without moving their heads, avoiding Xia Ran's eyes that turned to look over. Vernon and Dudley looked at her with wide eyes. Harry's mind was also in confusion. Aunt Petunia. Why? Wasn't she the most reluctant to mention anything related to the wizarding world? Why? He won't win. Xia Ran was silent for a while and said, All of us will do our best to stop Voldemort. Our war will completely kill him this time. I hope you can succeed. Penny whispered. I'd like to lend you some good advice. Xia Ran nodded and said, Harry, let's go. Harry walked out of the Dursley's house in a daze, his mind still confused. Harry, take my hand. Xia Ran's voice seemed to come from a distance, if you can already disapparate on your own, I certainly welcome you to rush to Grimald Place by yourself. But obviously, you he has not reached sixth grade yet and is underage, so he does not meet the requirements for learning apparition and apparition. 
Harry woke up from a dream and put his hand on Xia Ran's outstretched arm. Hold your owl cage tight. Xia Ran reminded again. Harry grabbed the suitcase and the birdcage tightly with his other hand, turned around and took a look. The Desley's house was brightly lit, and someone seemed to be watching through the window. Before he could see clearly who it was, his eyes suddenly changed and distorted, and his whole person it seemed that everything was twisted. The next second he stepped on the hard ground and looked up to see the grim old place that he had been longing to come to. A shabby house squeezed out between eleven and thirteen, grim old place, and then dirty walls and gloomy windows appeared, and the muggles living in houses eleven and thirteen, apparently not noticing anything. Harry had already been here once, so he didn't express much surprise. Instead, he was full of doubts and had no answers. Professor Fremont, just now. Aunt Petunia. She. Chapter, 252. Are you referring to your aunt's words? Xia Ran said, waiting for the black old house at No. 12, grim old place to completely pop out. Yes, Professor. Harry said in confusion, Aunt Petunia. Why? She knows so much about the wizarding world. Harry nodded, he was indeed very curious. Xia Ran smiled and said, What's weird about this? Harry was startled. Harry, your parents are both wizards. Do you think that as one of your mother's only remaining relatives, if you count the time since you were born, there are three, your aunt really knows nothing about the wizarding world? Do you know? Xia Ran said, don't say that your aunt has always shown that she hates the magic world and hates you and your parents. This is not the reason why she cannot understand the magic world, but the reason why she should know something about the magic world. Harry thought for a moment, and that was indeed the case. If he was a muggle and Dudley became a wizard, he would inevitably hear something about the wizarding world from Dudley, just like Lily and Petunia once did. He almost forgot that his mother and Aunt Petunia were biological sisters who had lived together for many years. But. Aunt Petunia. Why does she pretend that she knows nothing about the wizarding world? She clearly knows a lot of things. Harry was still confused. Xia Ran said softly, Harry, you will understand the reason if you put yourself in his shoes. Suppose you are a muggle who cannot enter Hogwarts, and Dudley is a wizard. Think about it again. Harry simply couldn't imagine his life without a wizard, especially after learning about magic through Dudley. He couldn't help but said, Aunt Petunia, does she envy my mother? Maybe. Xia Ran was noncommittal. Judging from Snape's memory in the original time and space, Penny was not just envious, but also jealous. But Petunia is not without merit. At least, when Harry was a baby, she pooped him and raised him up. No matter whether she was good or bad to Harry, her upbringing was a blessing. After all, it is truly true. Harry's life was not easy compared to Dudley's, but at least he had enough food and clothing and didn't have to worry about his own food and clothing, right? Especially if Xia Ran remembers correctly, when Dumbledore left Harry at the door of Desley's house, he explained the situation behind Harry through a letter, that is, the old enemy relationship between him and Voldemort. The prophecy of Professor Sybil Trelawney is all told. In the end, Petunia Desley chose to adopt Harry. She would no longer be sorry for her sister. Why did she? Aunt, she. Harry felt his mind was in a blur, and he said in a daze, why did she tell the professor? To kill Voldemort? It's simple, isn't it? Harry was still confused. Harry, you are confused. Xia Ran shook her head and said, no matter what, even if her surname is changed in the end, Lily will always be Petunia's biological sister, right? She hopes to kill her sister's murderer. Is there any problem with being sanctioned? Um, no problem. Harry said blankly. Then it's over. Xia Ran said, let's go in, the others will be impatient to wait. Harry opened his mouth, but finally said nothing, but at this moment, his heart was particularly complicated. Creak. The door opened, and a red-haired head popped out. When he saw Harry, he immediately said happily, Harry. It was Ginny. She turned and shouted into the room, Mom, Harry is here, and Professor Fremont. Bastard, dirty fool, scoundrel. 
Mrs. Black's curses also sounded. Ginny stuck out her tongue sheepishly. Bill and Lupin went over and pulled down the curtain, and the curses suddenly disappeared. Harry. Sirius hugged Harry, are you okay? Harry saw a group of people in the kitchen, the Weasley family, except for Percy, Sirius, Lupin, Tonks, Professor Fremont, and the silver-haired girl. Harry wiped his eyes, the girl with silver hair. The girl turned her head and smiled at Harry, Hello Harry, long time no see. I heard that you encountered a Dementor. It was really a great experience. It was Fleur Delacour. Why is she at the Order's headquarters? Harry looked confused. Ginny whispered in his ear, Bill brought them here. They are in love. Harry. Mrs. Weasley hugged him hard, leaving him unable to ask any questions. Mrs. Weasley looked at Harry and said, Oh, you have lost weight. Sit down quickly and wait. You can start eating when you arrive. Serious, Mrs. Weasley, do you mind if I have a meal? Sia Ran smiled, then pulled out a chair and sat down. Sirius said, Welcome. I welcome you warmly. Creature, are things ready? He walked over and asked the house elf. Hermione frowned immediately. Creature replied sharply, Master, now, Creature's best meal will definitely satisfy the guests. We'll be satisfied, Ron muttered, as long as you don't come in at night. What? Harry didn't hear clearly. Ron said, You will know after you stay here for two nights. People gathered around the dining table, and the atmosphere was very lively. Drinks were exchanged, and even Harry had forgotten about the hearing he was going to attend in a few days. He didn't want to think about unhappy things at this cheerful time. But the happy time is always short-lived. Everyone was chatting after the meal, and Harry was also talking to Sirius, Fred, and George. Harry, you're hearing. Come with me to the Ministry of Magic when the time comes. I will take you there. Mr. Weasley took a sip of beer and said softly. Harry felt his body suddenly become cold. Don't worry, Harry. Lupin comforted, you will be fine, Dumbledore and Ms. Bones, they will all help you. Harry's heart relaxed a little, but he still felt heavy. He asked, if the hearing fails. Will I be expelled from Hogwarts? The wand will also be destroyed by the Ministry of Magic. I'm afraid so, Tonks said. Harry looked at Sirius and asked, Sirius, can I live with you then? I welcome you to live with me, Sirius said, but I believe you would prefer to stay at Hogwarts and be with your friends. Seeing Harry's uneasy eyes, Mr. Weasley comforted him, Don't worry, Harry, there is a reason why you violated the Restraint of Minor Wizards Act. Your life is threatened, why don't you allow it? Pull out your wand and fight. That doesn't make sense. Sia Ran stood up, patted Harry on the shoulder, and said with a smile, Don't be afraid, Amelia is not fudge, and she will not mindlessly oppose Dumbledore, unless Dumbledore really makes a wrong decision. Okay, so will I am going back, goodbye everyone. Chapter, 253 The hearing on August 12th is coming soon. Sharon is no longer an employee of the Ministry of Magic, nor is she a person with many honorary titles like Dumbledore, so she will not be invited to attend the hearing. But when he was reading books about transfiguration, an owl flew to Fremont Manor. Amelia wants me to attend this hearing about Harry Potter. Sia Ran opened the letter and was a little surprised. At Harry's hearing, what did Amelia invite him to do? Wouldn't it be better to invite Professor McGonagall than him? Sia Ran thought about it and decided to go once. He walked out of Fremont Manor, out of the protective range of his own magic, and operat outside the Ministry of Magic's visitor phone box. It was a bleak little street with only a few shabby-looking offices, a tavern and a dump truck that was almost overflowing. Harry and Mr. Weasley have arrived early. Sia Ran muttered, looking around but found no trace of the two of them. He walked straight to a dilapidated red phone booth, with several pieces of glass missing and a wall behind it that had been painted over. He walked in, reached for the phone and picked up the phone. The phone seemed to be broken, but Sia Ran knew that its current appearance was caused by the Ministry of Magic Special Magic. Well, let me see. It looks like. 6, 2, 4, 4, 2. 
he dialed the visitor number. As the dial whirred back to its original position, a woman's cold voice sounded in the phone booth, and the woman's voice came from the microphone in Xia Ran's hand. It was loud and clear, like a the invisible ghost of a woman is standing next to Xia Ran. Welcome to the Ministry of Magic, please state your name and your business. Xia Ran held the microphone casually and said, Xia Ran Fremont was invited to attend the hearing of Harry Potter. Thank you. Said the cold female voice, guest, please pick up the badge and pin it in front of your clothes. Ding ling ling. A small object slipped out of the metal chute usually used to withdraw coins. Xia Ran picked it up. It was a square silver badge that read, Xia Ran Fremont, hearing. He took the badge in his hand, and the cold woman's voice spoke again. Guests of the Ministry of Magic, you are required to be checked and register your wand at the security desk. The security desk is located at the end of the main hall. As soon as he finished speaking, the ground of the phone booth suddenly trembled. He slowly sank into the ground. Xia Ran raised his head and saw that the sidewalk outside the glass window of the phone booth was rising higher and higher, and finally there was darkness above his head. Exquisite little mechanism. He commented in a low voice. After about a minute, a thin golden light shone on his feet, and then the golden light gradually widened, expanded to his body, and finally shined directly on his face, forcing Xia Ran to cast a spell on his face. To avoid being shot in the eyes. The ministry hopes you have a good day, the woman's voice said at last. The door of the phone booth opened suddenly, and Xia Ran walked out, not looking unfamiliar or surprised at all. After all, he also worked in the Ministry of Magic for eight years. He stood at the end of a long, splendid hall. The ground was a polished dark wooden floor, and the peacock blue ceiling was inlaid with sparkling golden symbols. They were constantly moving and changing, like a huge bulletin board. The Ministry of Magic moves very quickly. Xia Ran secretly thought. The last time he broke in disguised as Voldemort, he destroyed many things during the war. Now it seems that they have basically been repaired. Xia Ran. Said a familiar voice, aren't you a professor at Hogwarts? Why did you come back to the Ministry of Magic? It's a former colleague. Xia Ran spread her hands and said, participate in Harry Potter's hearing. The man suddenly understood and followed the crowd into the elevator. Xia Ran walked lightly and didn't go to any security checkpoint to register her wand. She just walked to the elevator. Because he fell at the end, there were not many people waiting outside the elevator at this moment. Eighth Floor, Ministry of Magic Hall With a clanking and clicking sound, an elevator stopped in front of him. The elevator door opened, and the people inside were surprised when they saw him. Xia Ran Professor Fremont the people in the elevator were Harry and Mr. Weasley. They looked at Xia Ran in surprise. Xia Ran walked into the elevator, pressed the button leading to the Department of Mysteries on the ninth floor, and said, Amelia seems to think that I should also participate in this hearing, and specially sent an owl to notify me. Great! said Mr. Weasley. The more people who come to the hearing, the harder it will be for those who want to get in trouble. Harry knew what Mr. Weasley meant. A few days ago at the order of the Phoenix headquarters. Others also analyzed that the reason why he had this hearing was mainly due to the push of those Death Eaters who had not yet been completely exposed, and after all, he had violated the law twice. Doctrine, at least that's what's in the ministry's records. Since those Death Eaters have not been exposed, or have exposed too many flaws, Voldemort obviously does not want to see them reveal their flaws so soon. In addition to the three of them, there was a sad and depressed wizard in the elevator. He stared at Harry almost intently, making Harry feel very uncomfortable. Nine underground floors, Department of Mysteries. The indifferent woman fell into silence after speaking. Let's go. Xia Ran said, taking the elevator first and waiting for Mr. Weasley and Harry. The three of them walked through a corridor together. The walls on both sides of this corridor were different from the ones above. There were no windows or doors. There is only a black door at the end. Harry thought they would open the black door, but when they were approaching the door, Xia Ran and Mr. Weasley turned and walked to the left. There was a gap there, leading to a staircase. 
why did they set the hearing so deep down? Mr. Weasley gasped. Xia Ran shrugged her shoulders and said, it's up to them, but with me and Dumbledore, I don't know if he's here or not, it doesn't matter what the situation is. Voldemort can only get in and out when he breaks into the Ministry of Magic. Well, Dumbledore must be there. Harry forced a smile, his heart pounding. The three of them walked under the rough stone wall, with torches stuck on brackets. The doors they passed here were all heavy wooden doors with iron bolts and keyholes embedded in them. The tenth courtroom. Harry, we are here. Xia Ran stopped and said, Mr. Weasley, do you want to go in together? Chapter, 254. No, no, Mr. Weasley said breathlessly, I'm not going in. There's no reason to be in the courtroom. Seeing Harry's worried expression, Mr. Weasley comforted him, Don't worry, Harry, as long as Xia Ran is here, Dumbledore will be there too. Harry nodded and took a deep breath, his heart still beating wildly. He walked to a gloomy black door with a large iron lock, and his outstretched right hand trembled slightly. Xia Ran smiled and said, Harry, you go in first, you are the protagonist. Harry wanted to laugh, but he didn't know if he laughed in the end because his muscles were already very stiff. Harry, good luck to you. Mr. Weasley took a few breaths and slowly walked back the way he came. Harry's heart beat harder and harder. He swallowed hard, twisted the heavy iron handle on the door, and walked into the courtroom. He took a breath of air. He couldn't control himself. This was a deep dark room. He had seen this dark room in Dumbledore's pensive, and witnessed the Lestranges being sentenced to the Albanian prison. Zikaban was sentenced to life in prison. Of course, now the Lestranges have all escaped from Azkaban prison. The surrounding walls were made of black stones, and the light from the torches was dim and eerie. On both sides of him were rows of empty benches that were gradually rising. In front of him, on the highest benches, many figures suddenly appeared. A dark figure. They had been whispering just now. When the heavy door closed behind Harry, an ominous silence enveloped him. He immediately turned his head and looked around. When he saw Professor Fremont, he couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. A cold man's voice echoed in the courtroom. You are late. I'm sorry. Harry said nervously, I. I didn't know the time had changed. That's not the fault of the Wisengamot. The voice said, I sent an owl to inform you this morning. You need to pay for this. This kind of failure to respect time. Ahem. Xia Ran coughed and said softly, Yaxley, the minister hasn't spoken yet, why are you in a hurry? You. The indifferent man's voice seemed to be angry, and he reprimanded, Xia Ran, who allowed you to enter the Ministry of Magic. Since you are no longer an employee of the Ministry of Magic, you should stay away from the Ministry of Magic and don't leak the confidential information of the Ministry of Magic. I allow it. In the middle of the row of seats in front, a serious witch wearing a monocle said in a loud and deep voice, Yaxley, do you have any opinions? A wizard with a sinister face and a fierce look looked ugly and said bluntly, no, since it is the minister's order. Xia Ran chuckled and said, it seems that Yaxley is a little dissatisfied with the minister's decision. Amelia, how about I teach him a lesson for you? You know, I always have the ability to teach people. You. Yaxley's expression became increasingly livid. Xia Ran smiled. The atmosphere in the trial room seemed to have changed subtly. Many wizards were whispering without concealing anything, and shifted their gaze from Harry to Xia Ran. Harry gave the professor a grateful look. He was under so much pressure just now that he almost felt like he couldn't breathe. Only then did he have time to look at the wizard in this room. What he could see was about fifty people, wearing purple-red robes with a delicate silver W embroidered on the left chest. They all lowered their eyes and looked down. Their eyes were on him just now, but now they were focused on Xia Rance. Some had dissatisfied expressions on their bodies, some had very serious expressions, and some did not conceal their inner curiosity. In the middle of the row of benches in front sat the new Minister of Magic, Amelia Bones. Ms. Bones is a very majestic wizard, with a wide chin, a square figure, short grey hair, and a pair of monocles. She is a bit short, 
but this does not affect Her Majesty at all, at least Harry. I just thought the look on Ms. Bones's face was intimidating. He also saw the wizard Yaxley, who had initially scolded him, sitting on the right side of Ms. Bones, with a witch in between. Okay, Sia Ran, this is the Ministry of Magic. Don't talk nonsense. You used to be an employee of the Ministry of Magic. You must abide by some rules. Ms. Bones said without any scolding words. Yaxley's face was particularly ugly. Sia Ran smiled and motioned for Harry to sit on the chair in the middle. Harry lowered his gaze and looked at the chair in the center of the room. On the armrests of the chair were chains on the left and right. He had also seen these chains suddenly jump up in Dumbledore's pensive, tying up the person sitting on them tightly. His feet echoed loudly across the stone floor. Harry sat gingerly on the edge of the chair, the chains clanking menacingly but not binding him. He suddenly felt dizzy and nauseated, and quickly looked up at the people sitting on the bench above. Very good, Yaxley said loudly, the defendant has finally arrived. Yaxley, let the minister speak. You have no place to speak here. Sia Ran interrupted him without giving him any face. Because he knew that Yaxley was one of the Death Eaters planted by Voldemort in the Ministry of Magic. Yaxley was also a major suspect in the death of Amelia Bones in the original time and space. Sia Ran was wondering if she should take some time to ambush Yaxley and intercept him halfway. I am an employee of the Ministry of Magic, and I must be more qualified than you. Yaxley said gloomily. Sia Ran smiled nonchalantly and said, I'm not a minister anyway, why don't you and I give it a try? Whoever wins will be qualified to speak. He looked at Yaxley and said interestingly, Do you dare? Yaxley's face became more and more gloomy. He asked himself that his fighting ability was not weak, but Xia Ran showed such confidence that he did not dare to agree easily. After all, the Dark Lord still wanted him to stay in the Ministry of Magic. Ms. Bones glanced coldly at Yaxley and said, Okay, let's get started. Are you ready? She asked loudly across the bench. Yes, ma'am, a voice familiar to Harry said urgently. Ron's third brother, Percy Weasley, sat at the edge of the front bench. Harry knew that Percy had severed contact with the Weasley family. For his dream of power, he used to follow Cornelius Fudge and now follows Amelia Bones. Will he follow Voldemort in the future? Harry thought angrily. Sia Ran nodded slightly. Only three people knew about Percy's undercover identity. He, Dumbledore and Snape. Originally, after Fudge fell, they planned to let Percy reveal his identity and intentions, and lift the relationship with his family. Misunderstanding between. However, Percy believes that Voldemort has not died for a day. As a wizard who betrayed the Order of the Phoenix, he will always have a certain use. It may not be certain what role he will play in the future. For the opportunity that may arise, he is willing to continue to accept all the strange look in his eyes was like that of Professor Snape. It can only be said that he is worthy of being the last undercover agent trained by Snape. Chapter, 255 There was no expression on Percy's face. His eyes hidden behind his horn-rimmed glasses were staring intently at the parchment in front of him, with a quill in his hand ready to record. Ms. Bones looked at Sia Ran and said, Do you need a chair? I can do it myself. Sia Ran said briskly, took out her wand and waved it, and a soft chair appeared next to Harry's chair. Ms. Bones nodded and said, the hearing on August 12th. Percy hurriedly started taking notes. About the case of Harry James Potter, who lives at 4, Privet Drive, Little Whinging, Surrey, for violating the Act for the Restraint of Minors and the International Statute of Secrecy. Ms. Bones's voice was loud and clear. Then he said in a low voice, Interrogators, Minister of Magic, Amelia Susan Bones Director of the Department of Magical Law Enforcement, Piers Thickness Deputy Director of the Department of Magical Law Enforcement, Peter Yaxley. Trial Recorder, Percy Ignatius Weasley. Ms. Bones paused as she spoke and asked, Isn't Dumbledore here yet? He may have been delayed by something, but I can also serve as a witness for the defendant. Sia Ran replied. Ms. Bones nodded, clearly satisfied. Good, then let's start now. Ms. Bones said, pulling out a piece of paper from the pile of documents in front of her, 
handing it to Pierce Thickness, the also newly appointed director of the Department of Magical Law Enforcement, and saying, you read it out. I shall obey your will, Lord Bones. Thickness said politely, took the piece of paper, and read aloud, the defendant is accused of the following crimes, the defendant has previously received a written complaint from the Ministry of Magic for similar accusations. Warning. This time, with full knowledge that what he was doing was illegal, he deliberately and knowingly used it at 7 o'clock in the evening on July 20, in a muggle residential area, in front of a muggle. A Patronus Charm. This behavior violates Section 3 of the Restraint of Minor Wizards Act promulgated in 1875 and Article 13 of the International Statute of Secrecy of Wizards. Thickness' voice was very loud, and he looked down at Harry coldly from the top of the parchment, and asked, Are you Harry James Potter who lives at 4, Privet Drive, Little Whinging, Surrey? Yes. Harry answered. Xia Ran thought to herself on the sidelines that he had already come into contact with the original text of the International Wizarding Statute of Secrecy and obtained a full 500 force points. The force points contained in it are not as high as the International Statute of Secrecy of Wizards, but it's not much different if you think about it. A sudden desire arose in his heart, as long as he could touch the original text document of the Act on the Reasonable Restraint of Minor Wizards. Thickness questioning of Harry became more and more urgent. You were officially warned by the Ministry of Magic three years ago for illegal use of magic, right? Thickness asked aggressively. Yes, but. Harry wanted to explain, but Thickness didn't give him much chance to speak. And you used magic to create a patron saint on the night of July 20th? Thickness continued to ask. Yes. Harry replied, but. You know that you are not allowed to use magic outside of school because you are under 17. Yes, but. Knowing that you were in a place densely populated by muggles. Are you fully aware that there was a muggle next to you at that time? He is my cousin, of course I know that. Harry said angrily, but I only use magic because we. You were fully aware of your situation and fully understood the relevant legal provisions, but you still chose to break the law and use magic. Do you want to show off in front of your cousin who has been bullying you? No. At that time. You. Xia Ran interrupted Thickness' aggressive questioning and said, Thicknessy, you didn't organize the hearing like this. Now it's time for us, the defendant, to describe the situation in detail. She ignored him and her face changed. The livid Thickness said to Harry, Harry, tell me in detail what happened that night. Don't hide it and don't add jealousy. Harry nodded, took a deep breath, and said, because two Dementors appeared in front of us, me and my cousin, he is a muggle, and I must stand up to save both of us, otherwise we will definitely. Dementors deserve to be kissed. Everyone knows the consequences of being kissed by a Dementor. The surroundings suddenly became extremely quiet. It seemed that everyone had lost the ability to speak at this moment. They only stared at Harry blankly. Dementors? After a while, Ms. Bones repeated these three words. Her thick eyebrows were raised high, and her monocle seemed to be about to slip off. She said, What do you mean, child? You should it is clear that the Dementors have escaped from the confines of Azkaban prison and have taken refuge with the person who cannot even be named, yes, that is Voldemort. There was a gasp from behind. Facing Ms. Bones's gaze, Harry felt calmer and said, Yes, I can believe it because I have seen Dementors, when I was in third grade at Hogwarts. Dementors monsters once besieged Hogwarts for half a semester, at that time two Dementors appeared in the alley and came directly towards my cousin and me. Ah! Thickness spoke again, making an obnoxious mocking sound, while looking at the hearing wizards in front and behind. Who were basically members of the Wisengamot Wizarding Organization and seemed to hope that they would take action on this matter. Jokes also get the message, yeah, yeah, I knew we were going to hear shit like that. The Dementors are in little whinging. Ms. Bone said, her tone full of surprise. I don't understand. Don't you understand? Thickness sneered, let me explain it kindly. He really took great pains, this famous savior, boy who lived Harry Potter special, when he figured out that Dementors could be a great excuse, brilliant indeed. Muggles can't see Dementors, right, kid? Very clever, very clever, 
and I have to say, I applauded him. So there are no witnesses, only your one-sided story, Harry Potter. I didn't lie. Harry argued loudly and angrily, his voice drowning out the renewed whispers in the courtroom, there were two of them, blocking each other from both ends of the alley, and everything became so dark and cold. My cousin touched them and tried his best to escape. That's enough, kid, that's enough. Thickness said impatiently, with a very arrogant look on his face, I'm sorry that I interrupted you from telling your carefully crafted lie. I can bet you a galleon, this is definitely an argument that Harry Potter has rehearsed for a long time. After all, he has a professor beside him, who is also a professor of combat class, right? Of course the professor knows about Dementors. Chapter, 256 Xia Ran patted Harry on the shoulder, told him to calm down, and said softly, May I think so, Thickness, do you think the appearance of the Dementors is a lie, a big lie, used to deceive the Ministry of Magic and the of all people, and was this a lie that Harry and I spun together? It's obvious, isn't it? Thickness said haughtily. Harry glared at Thickness angrily, clenching his teeth, and wanted to cast a curse on this man. Unfortunately, his wand was registered by the security checkpoint, and he would definitely be discovered if he used magic. Of course, he also knew that using magic without authorization in front of so many adult wizards was extremely unwise and irrational behavior. The whispers in the courtroom became louder, and the looks of many people looking at Harry, including Xia Ran, changed subtly, which undoubtedly made Harry even more annoyed. Xia Ran smiled calmly and said, Perhaps you have overlooked it, or you may have ignored it intentionally, are dark creatures like Dementors normally something that an underage wizard can deal with? Even many adult wizards don't know the Patronus charm, and you all should know that, right? Yes. Ms. Bones nodded, looked at Harry and asked, So, Harry Potter, you created a Patronus, a complete and mature Patronus? Dementors will not retreat easily. Yes. Harry replied. A physical patron saint? I'm sorry, what? Harry felt like he didn't hear clearly. A physical Patronus. Ms. Bones said in a booming voice. Your Patronus has a distinct form. I mean, is it not just vapor or smoke? Yes, said Harry, feeling irritated and a little desperate, a stag, always a stag. Every time. Ms. Bones's voice could be found to have changed slightly as she said, Have you ever transformed a patron saint before? Yes, Harry replied, I've been doing this for months. Are you fifteen now? Ms. Bones asked. Yes, and. Did you learn it at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry? Ms. Bones interrupted him and continued to ask. Harry answered truthfully, yes, Professor Lupin mentioned it when I was in third grade, and Professor Fremont taught us when I was in fourth grade, because. It's amazing. Ms. Bones looked at him from above and said, Harry Potter, at his age, he can transform into a real Patronus. It's really amazing. Some wizards around her began to whisper to each other again, some nodded, while others showed displeasure and shook their heads. It's not a question of how amazing magic is, minister. Thickness said in an annoyed voice, in fact, I think the more amazing it is, the worse it is, because the kid did it in front of a muggle. The wizards who looked displeased, such as Yaxley, murmured their approval. As a result, Harry actually saw Percy Weasley nod his head pretending to be serious. He glared at Percy angrily, but Percy pretended not to notice. As you wish, Thickness. Xia Ran said softly, in order to ensure the implementation of the two laws, the International Wizarding Secrets Act and the Reasonable Restraint of Minor Wizards Act. Even some of our young wizards, underage wizards encounter fatal dangers and are not allowed to use magic. They can only sit back and wait for death. That's not what I meant, Thickness said angrily. No, that's what you mean. Xia Ran said softly, I know that in the eyes of people like Thickness and Yaxley, sacrificing for the confidentiality of the magical world, yes. There are legal provisions to support it, sacrifice some wizards maybe they are underage wizards at this time, and they may be adult wizards in a while are necessary and very reasonable. Just like what our greatest enemy, yes, you should all be able to guess, is the man who must not even mention his name, you call him you know who. But actually he should be called Voldemort, does and preaches, 
what does it mean to sacrifice some half-blood wizards and muggle wizards for the greater good, for the benefit of pure bloods? Thickness, Yaxley, you said. Am I right? Xia Ran looked at the two people with livid faces with a smile. The courtroom was extremely quiet for a moment. No one spoke, and there was deathly silence. Everyone seemed to be frightened by Xia Ran's words, and stared at him blankly, a little at a loss. You. Are talking nonsense. Thickness scolded angrily, we are officials of the Ministry of Magic and are responsible for maintaining the stability and peace of the magical world. How can we come together with the Dark Lord? Ridiculous, really ridiculous. Really? Xia Ran raised her eyebrows and asked, Did I misunderstand you? You are slandering. Yaxley shouted loudly, Xia Ran, I want to sue you for slander. Everyone was present and heard Xia Ran slander against me and thickness. This is jealousy. Jealous. You guys? Xia Ran burst into laughter and said, Jealous that you have become Voldemort's servant, but I can't. Or jealous that you can call Voldemort his master, but I can only call him by his first name. Harry couldn't help but tremble when he saw many wizards on the trial bench. Thickness and Yaxley also looked unnatural, and he felt very happy. Ahem. Ms. Bones coughed twice and said, Okay, Xia Ran, don't talk nonsense without evidence. We will then start the trial of Harry Potter for violating relevant legal provisions. A case of unauthorized use of magic. Xia Ran said that the Dementors appeared in Little Whinging because Harry Potter and his cousin were attacked by Dementors and had to use the Patronus charm when their lives were fatally threatened. Come and drive away the Dementors. Yaxley said solemnly, Evidence. Witnesses. Physical evidence. Nothing. Thickness sneered and said, Don't tell me that in addition to Harry Potter, his cousin named Dudley Dursley is also a witness. We have seen false testimony for relatives. Is it still missing? Everyone, I hope you can all calm down and think about it carefully, and don't let Charon Fremont take the lead and disrupt your thoughts and judgment. Of course there is a witness. Xia Ran smiled, but please wait a moment. At that time, among the residents of Little Whinging, in addition to Harry and Dudley who saw Dementors, Mrs. Fig also saw Dementors. She was a squib and could not use magic, but she could still see many of them. Something that only wizards can witness. Mrs. Fig should be brought to the Ministry of Magic by Dumbledore. The question is why it took so long for him to come to court. Chapter 257 Wait. Thickness sneered and said, Are there all of us just to accompany you in your mischief? Minister. Yaxley looked at Ms. Bones and said, I think the situation is very obvious now. Harry Potter has teamed up with Kieran Fremont to lie. We should sentence Harry to Potter's punishment is to imprison him in Azkaban prison. Xia Ran should also be charged with making false evidence. Thickness added. Ms. Bones glanced at Xia Ran calmly, and Xia Ran looked helpless. He really didn't know where Dumbledore had gone and why he hadn't arrived at the Ministry of Magic after the court session for so long. Did he meet Voldemort and was delayed? Xia Ran muttered to herself. He also noticed the changes in the eyes of the wizards at the trial. Some people voiced their support to wait for a while, while some wizards urged the current Minister of Magic, Ms. Bones, to read out the judgment of Harry Potter as soon as possible. Xia Ran was thinking of a way to delay it for a while. If he had known that Dumbledore had slipped up at the critical moment, he would have gone to Privet Drive in Little Whinging, Surrey to pick up Mrs. Fig. Harry looked awkward and frightened. Xia Ran patted his shoulder and said softly, Don't worry, leave it to me. He glanced around the courtroom, coughed, and was about to speak when he suddenly heard the sound of the courtroom door being opened. And an old voice said, Witnesses for the defense, Dumbledore Percival Wolfric Brian Dumbledore, and witness Arabella Dorian Fig. Dumbledore strode into the courtroom calmly. He was wearing a black and blue robe and had an extremely peaceful expression on his face. He walked to a place parallel to Harry, nodded to Xia Ran, then raised his head and looked at Ms. Bones through the half-moon glasses on the crooked bridge of his nose. His long silver-white beard and hair glittering in the light of the torches. The members of the Wisengamot were all whispering to each other, and all eyes were on Dumbledore. 
Some seemed annoyed, some seemed a little scared, and the two elderly witches sitting in the back row actually waved their hands. Hands come to express welcome. Yaxley and Cynix's expressions changed involuntarily, and then they immediately became expressionless. As soon as Harry saw Dumbledore, a strong emotion arose in his heart, making him feel at ease and full of hope, just like the song of Dumbledore's Phoenix Fox once made him feel. Although Professor Fremont also has a high reputation, compared with Dumbledore, he is really average. Dumbledore, you are finally here. Ms. Bones said in a loud and deep voice, I thought you forgot about today's hearing. No. Dumbledore said in a brisk tone, I just encountered a little obstacle on the way to pick up the witness. Ah, yes, that's right, I was stopped by Voldemort. The air in the courtroom seemed to have been drained out in an instant. Everyone opened their mouths and stared blankly at Dumbledore. Sorry, Dumbledore, I heard you right, you were talking about. Voldemort? Did you bump into him? Ms. Bones asked. Bumped into it? Maybe. Dumbledore's tone still sounded brisk. Sia Ran touched her chin and suddenly realized that the sudden appearance of the Dementors on Privet Drive this time was indeed the work of Voldemort, who even personally went out to fight Dumbledore. Fortunately, the witness, Mrs. Fig, appeared to have suffered no injuries. Cynics looked gloomy and stared at Dumbledore below. After a while, he seemed to regain his composure and said, I'm afraid we don't have time to listen to these thrilling deeds of yours, Dumbledore, we all I hope this Harry Potter case will be handled quickly. Yes, you shouldn't talk too much about me. Dumbledore said pleasantly, then, my witnesses will be invited to testify. No. Dumbledore, you misunderstood me. Thickness snapped, the case has been concluded. Harry Potter will be imprisoned in Azkaban prison, Sia Ran. Sia Ran actually smiled when he heard this, and said slowly, Thickness, when has this case been decided? You decided it alone. Pull it down. Sharon, don't be presumptuous, this is the Ministry of Magic, not Hogwarts. Thickness shouted. Really? I know this, I don't need you to remind me. Sia Ran smiled nonchalantly, perhaps I should invite you to a duel, Thickness, will you agree? He stared at Thickness. Thickness suddenly started to sweat. Yaxley took over the words and said coldly, so where are the witnesses? Our time is limited, if we don't come out. Of course he will come out. Sia Ran said directly, looking at Dumbledore to ask. Dumbledore said, Mrs. Fig, please come in. The door to the courtroom was pushed open again, and Mrs. Fig came in. She looked very scared and looked even weirder than the last time Sia Ran saw her. Harry opened his mouth, wishing she would have thought of changing out of her thick slippers. Sia Ran gave up her chair to Mrs. Fig, stood on the left and right with Dumbledore, and said encouragingly, Don't be afraid, just tell the truth. Mrs. Fig nodded tremblingly, still looking uneasy. Full name. Thickness asked loudly, just as Mrs. Fig sat down timidly on the edge of her chair. Arabella Dorian Fig, answered Mrs. Fig in a slightly trembling voice. Who are you? Thickness asked in an impatient and haughty voice. I'm a resident of Little Whinging, also on Privet Drive, next to Harry Potter's house. Mrs. Fig replied. We have no records of any wizards living in Little Whinging other than Harry Potter, Ms. Bones said immediately. That area has been closely monitored because. Because of something that happened before. Sia Ran knew she was talking about Harry. I'm a squib, said Mrs. Fig, so you won't register my name, will you? Squib, huh? Thicknesses looked at her suspiciously and said, we'll check it out. You'll tell my assistant Weasley about your parents later. By the way, can Squib see Dementors? He added uncertainly, looking left and right at the people on the bench. Yes, we can see it. Mrs. Fig said angrily. Thickness looked at her condescendingly again, raised his eyebrows, and said coldly, very good. So, what is your statement? Chapter 258. Sia Ran stood doing nothing. Although he actually had the urge to pull out his wand and kill Thickness, his reason told him to endure it. This is at the Ministry of Magic. Thickness has no clear evidence that he is a Death Eater. Even if Sharon, Dumbledore, 
and Ms. Bones have guessed that he is a member of the Death Eater organization, there is no the evidence is unavailable. Alas, I still don't have enough combat power, otherwise why would I worry so much? Xia Ran sighed inwardly. On the night of July 20th, around 7 o'clock, I went out to buy cat food at the corner store at the intersection of Wisteria Road. Mrs. Fig said in a cramped voice. Listening to her words, it seemed that she had already finished what she was going to say. I memorized all the words, later I heard a commotion coming from the alley between Magnolia Crescent Street and Wisteria Road. I walked to the entrance of the alley and saw a Dementor running. Run. Ms. Bones said sternly. Dementors can't run, they can only slide. Yes. Yes. That's what I mean. Mrs. Fig said quickly, with a blush on her dry face, as if she was nervous. They were sliding in the alley and pounced on people who looked like two boys. What do they look like? Said Ms. Bones, squinting her eyes so tightly that the edges of her monocle dug into her flesh. Oh, Mrs. Fig replied, one is quite big, bigger than the boy, and the other is skinny. No, no. Ms. Bones said impatiently, Dementors. Describe what they look like. Oh, said Mrs. Fig, the blush now spreading to her neck. They're big, big, and they wear cloaks. Harry felt his heart sink horribly as he listened to Mrs. Fig's testimony. No matter what Mrs. Fig said, it sounded to him like she had only seen photos of Dementors, and photos could not convey the true nature and terrifying abilities of those guys. The weird and terrifying look of them as they levitate inches above the ground, the putrid stench they give off, and the horrible creaking sound they make as they devour the air around them. None of these things can be reflected simply by photos. On the second row of benches, a short, fat male wizard with a big black beard approached a curly-haired wizard next to him and whispered in the ear. The witch smiled triumphantly and nodded. Xia Ran didn't seem worried. As long as Mrs. Fig could testify in court normally, Harry's final acquittal was almost foreseeable. Big, wearing a cloak. Ms. Bones repeated, and Thickness snorted sarcastically beside her, I see, is there anything else? Yes, yes. Mrs. Fig nodded and said, I felt them. Everything was getting colder at that time. It seemed that it was the coldest winter. Don't forget, it was still a very hot summer night. What? Then I felt. As if all the happiness had disappeared from the world. I remembered so many terrible things. Her voice trembled and gradually became inaudible. Miss Bones's eyes widened slightly and she asked, What did the Dementors do? A glimmer of hope suddenly rose in Harry's heart. They jumped on two boys. Mrs. Fig replied, her voice stronger and more confident now, as if talking about the Dementors had given her confidence, and the blush on her face receded. A boy one fell down, and the other one stepped back while trying to fight off the Dementors, this one was Harry. He tried twice, but all he conjured was silver smoke. The third time he tried again, he conjured a Patronus. The Patronus rushed over and knocked down the first Dementor. Then he mustered up his courage and turned it over again. The second Dementor ran away from Cousin Harry. This. This is what happened. When Mrs. Fig finished speaking, her voice began to sound a little weak again. Ms. Bones looked at Mrs. Fig silently. Thickness didn't look at her at all and just fiddled with the papers on the table in front of him. Finally, Thickness raised his eyes and said, somewhat aggressively, that's what you saw, isn't it? That's what happened at that time. Mrs. Fig nodded emphatically. Very good. Thickness said proudly, you can go. Mrs. Fig looked timidly at Thickness, then at Dumbledore and Sharon, who nodded to her. So she stood up and shuffled toward the door. Harry heard the door slam shut behind her. This witness is not convincing enough, Thickness said arrogantly. Yaxley and others nodded in agreement. Oh, I don't think so, Ms. Bones said in her usual strong voice. She described the power of the Dementors' attack very accurately. I can't imagine that if they weren't there at the time, she would why do you say that? But a Dementor ran into a muggle residential area and happened to meet an underage wizard? Thickness said contemptuously, this possibility must be very small, almost negligible, even Bagman won't bet either. 
Well, I don't think any of us would believe that the Dementors being there was a pure coincidence, Dumbledore said softly. Xia Ran laughed and said, I think all of us already know one thing. When the previous Minister Fudge was in office, the Dementors had completely surrendered to the mysterious man, ah, uh, yes, of course. Voldemort is dead, and we should all know that Harry is the only person who survived Voldemort's killing curse. Voldemort had a certain intention. Or, one of his Death Eaters had a certain intention. Sent Dementors, rushed to Privet Drive and launched this attack. If you think about it this way, doesn't it make sense? It's no longer a coincidence or an accident, but an inevitable event. Thickness, Yaxley and others moved slightly, but the others remained motionless and silent. I would like to remind you that the behavior of the two Dementors, regardless of whether it is true as Harry Potter said, even if they are not the product of this child's random thoughts. They should not be the subject of our interrogation this time. Topic. Thickness said rudely, we are here to interrogate Harry Potter's violation of the Reasonable Restraint of Minor Wizards Act. Of course it is, that's right. Dumbledore said, but the appearance of Dementors in the alley is closely related to this case. Article 7 of the law states that under special circumstances, a young wizard can using magic in front of muggles. As for those special circumstances, I don't need to say more. Everyone knows that the lives of the wizard himself or other wizards or muggles present at the same time must be threatened. We are very familiar with the contents of Article 7. Thank you very much. Thickness roared. Chapter, 259. Director Thickness, please maintain a calm attitude. Xia Ran said lazily, otherwise we will have to ask you to leave the courtroom, and you will be unable to complete your mission, right? Thickness' face turned the color of pig liver, and he glared at Xia Ran angrily. The implication behind his words was that Thickness was a death eater under Voldemort. This hearing about Harry Potter was also on Voldemort's order, aiming to bring Harry Potter to justice. Expelled from Hogwarts and completely destroyed his wand. Of course, from a factual point of view, Thickness had to say that Xia Ran had indeed guessed correctly. He did obey Voldemort's orders and was also a member of the Death Eater organization. But you definitely don't want others to know about this, and you just have to find substantive evidence. Slander. Thickness roared, Charon Fremont, you are slandering purely out of personal resentment. If you do this again, I will have to file a lawsuit with the Wizarding Court. Xia Ran shrugged her shoulders. Dumbledore took over and said, since Harry and his cousin have indeed suffered life threats. We all agree that the situation when Harry used the Patronus charm is in compliance with the reasonable restraint of Minor Wizards Act what is the scope of the special circumstances described in Article 7. That's if a Dementor really appears, but I highly doubt it. Yaxley said coldly. You have just listened to the account of an eyewitness. Dumbledore said in an unassuming tone. If you still suspect that she is not telling the truth, you might as well call her in again and ask her questions again. I think she will not object. That. Isn't. Yaxley yelled angrily, this is. I want to end this matter today, Dumbledore. But you will definitely take the trouble to listen to the testimony of a witness, right? Because acting hastily will cause serious miscarriages of justice. Dumbledore said. A serious miscarriage of justice? Oh, my God. Thicknesses said deliberately exaggeratedly, Dumbledore, what I want to ask is. Have you ever paid attention to this student of yours? How many absurdities has this child made up? Ridiculous lie, just to cover up his blatant abuse of magic outside of school. I think you have probably forgotten the hovering spell he used three years ago, right? Harry immediately interjected, that's not me, that's a house elf. See, Dumbledore. Yaxley yelled, gesturing more exaggeratedly in Harry's direction, a house elf. In a muggle residence. Is this possible? The house elf is currently employed at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Dumbledore said calmly, if you are willing, I can summon him here right away to testify. Xia Ran knew that they were talking about Dobby. When Harry was in second grade, he went to Privet Drive to report the news to Harry Potter because of Lucius Malfoy's plan. It turned out to be self-defeating and caused Harry to suffer another death. Illegal record. 
It's not. We don't have time to listen to a house elf talking nonsense. Thickness shouted loudly, punching the judge's bench and knocking over a bottle of ink. And not only in this matter, two years ago, this kid blew his aunt up, my god. It's so vicious, that's his aunt. Harry looked uneasy, as if he wanted to argue something. Sia Ran winked at him and signaled Harry not to speak randomly. This incident was really Harry's fault. Fudge did not hold him accountable at first, mainly because Sirius escaped from prison. At that time, everyone thought that Sirius was a shameful informer who betrayed Harry's parents. So the Ministry of Magic punished Harry Lee deliberately opened the internet, but even if it was brought up at this moment, it would be best to try to fool him. The previous Minister Fudge, and, of course, the Minister Ms. Bones and the Director Mr. Thickness, very kindly refrain from pressing charges, and I think you agree that even the best wizards are not always able to control your emotions. Dumbledore said calmly. Thickness hurriedly wiped the ink off his notebook. I haven't even begun to talk about the bad things he did in school. Yaxley said coldly. But. Dumbledore was still modest and polite, but at this moment his words undoubtedly revealed a coldness. The Ministry of Magic has no right to punish Hogwarts students for their misbehavior in school, so Harry what he did there has nothing to do with this case. Oh, Thickness said in a sinister tone, we don't need to worry about his behavior at school. Well, do you think so, Dumbledore? The Ministry of Magic has no right to expel students from Hogwarts, Dumbledore said, nor does the Ministry of Magic have the right to confiscate wands unless those accusations are proven to be true. Director Thickness, you are eager to ensure that the law is upheld. That's commendable, but you yourself seem to have, through what I believe was a moment of inadvertence, ignored several laws. The law can be changed, Thickness said viciously. Ms. Bones coughed heavily and said calmly, Thickness, okay, your questions should have been perfectly answered by Dumbledore. As for changing the law, that is not your decision. Sorry, Minister. Thickness apologized immediately. Xia Ren chuckled and said, A trivial matter of minors using magic is now being tried in a formal criminal court. This change in the direction of the law is really praising. Several wizards were moving uneasily in their seats. Thickness, Yaxley and others stared at Xia Ran with no expression on their faces, or in other words, their murderous eyes had already explained their attitude. What Xia Ran said makes sense. We should hold a meeting to discuss the matter later. Dumbledore, I hope you can attend. Ms. Bones nodded. Dumbledore bowed slightly. Xia Ran thought to herself, why didn't you invite me? Still didn't ask, he didn't belong to the Wisengamot Wizarding Organization after all. Then, let's start the voting, Ms. Bones said. Anyone who agrees that the accusation is unsubstantiated, please raise your hands. Harry raised his head suddenly and raised his hands one by one. There were quite a few. He didn't have time to count them clearly, but they must have been more than half. His breathing suddenly became rapid, and he wanted to count again to avoid being mistaken and happy in vain, but before he could finish counting, Ms. Bones said, If you agree with the crime, please raise your hands. Thickness, Yaxley and others immediately raised their hands, along with six or seven other people, including an unshaven wizard and the curly-haired witch in the second row. No need to count, there are definitely not as many people raising their hands this time as there were the first time. Thickness, Yaxley and others looked around, their expressions becoming extremely gloomy and livid. Chapter 260 Then the accusation of Harry Potter violating the Reasonable Restraint of Minors and Wizards Act is not established. Ms. Bones said in her usual loud voice. That's great, Dumbledore said cheerfully. Xia Ran patted Harry, and he stood up happily, feeling sincere joy. He was finally able to return to Hogwarts, and he thought he would probably be expelled from the wizarding school. At this time, Ms. Bones packed up the documents and walked outside. Xia Ran said softly, thank you very much. She just smiled and left the courtroom with Percy and a few others. When Thickness, Yaxley and others left the trial room, their expressions were gloomy and lifeless. They glanced at Xia Ran and the others several times, all filled with hatred and anger. Harry looked slightly embarrassed. Don't worry, Harry. 
Xia Ran smiled, they are worried about their own punishment. Then he looked at Dumbledore and asked, Did you really meet Voldemort? Yes. Dumbledore nodded slightly and said, When I was about to leave Privet Drive, I had to fight with him. Privet Drive? Harry was startled, then asked quickly, What about Aunt Petunia and the others? Nothing happened to them. Dumbledore smiled, Nothing happened to anyone, and the Desleys are protected by magic that your mother used her life to cast and was connected by blood. Voldemort did this before you came of age and that magic didn't work. Nothing happens. Harry felt relieved. No matter what his relationship with the Dursleys was, he never wanted to bring disaster to them because of himself. Okay, let's go out. Mr. Weasley must be eager to know the result. Xia Ran smiled, and the three of them almost walked out of the trial room. Dumbledore also said hello to several old wizards. Mr. Weasley stood outside the door, and he came back here again at some point. He looked at the group of wizards attending the hearing in the distance, his face was pale and he looked terrified. Dumbledore, Xia Ran, the result. He asked anxiously. Clarified. Harry grinned, all the accusations are false. Mr. Weasley immediately beamed, grabbed Harry's shoulders, and said happily, Harry, that's great. Actually. Of course, they can't convict you. You have witnesses, but I still you can't pretend that you're not nervous and worried. I want to send you back directly, but with Xia Ran and Dumbledore here, I don't think there's any need for me. Harry said, No, Mr. Weasley, thank you very much for bringing me to the Ministry of Magic. Mr. Weasley patted Harry on the shoulder and said to Sharon and Dumbledore, I can't go back at this time. I have to go to the toilet in Besner Green. As you know, there are always wizards like this. Charming muggle items is extremely troublesome. By the way, Molly should have prepared the food, and Sirius is very welcome to have you over as his guests. He added at the end. Dumbledore said politely, I'm sorry, I have to take Mrs. Fig back to Privet Drive in Little Whinging first. There are a few things I need to do later. I'm afraid I won't have time. That's a shame, said Mr. Weasley. I feel sorry too. Dumbledore said, by the way, Harry, I hope you have a good rest these days and relax. I have one more thing that I need your help with later. What? Harry was surprised at first. He didn't expect that Dumbledore would need his help. Then he immediately came to his senses and said, oh, okay, no problem. Dumbledore and Charon separated and found Mrs. Fig and walked out of the Ministry of Magic first. Xia Ran, Mr. Weasley, and Harry walked up the stairs, and the chatter suddenly stopped. They had just walked to the corridor on the ninth floor. Pierce Thickness was standing a few steps away from them, talking quietly to a tall man with smooth blonde hair and a pointed face. White and shameless. Hearing their footsteps, the tall man turned around. He stopped suddenly before he finished speaking, narrowed his cold gray eyes, and stared at Harry's face. It was Lucius Malfoy. Okay, okay, okay. Patron St. Potter. Lucius Malfoy said coldly. Harry suddenly felt very confused. He stayed at the Order of the Phoenix headquarters for a while and learned a lot of information, such as Lucius Malfoy, a Death Eater. He couldn't believe that Lucius Malfoy actually dared to appear in front of the Ministry of Magic. In the majestic Ministry of Magic, Pierce Thickness, the director of the Department of Magical Law Enforcement, was actually talking to him. This was really disturbing. Unbelievable. The director just told me how you narrowly escaped, Potter. Mr. Malfoy said in a tone of voice. It's amazing how you can keep getting out of very narrow holes. To be honest. Really like a snake. Mr. Weasley immediately grabbed Harry's shoulders tightly and warned him not to act rashly. Yes. Harry said angrily, Yes, I am very good at escaping. Xia Ran suddenly laughed and said, Lucius, if you use such a metaphor, I think your master will be very unhappy when he hears it. Do you want me to mention it to him the next time I meet him? You know who I'm talking about, Lucius, of course, and Thickney's, a member of Voldemort's Death Eater organization. Xia Ran's voice was cold. Mr. Malfoy and Thickness' expressions became stiff, and they glared at Xia Ran angrily. 
Xia Ran raised her eyebrows and said with a smile, What, you want to take action? Okay, I welcome you to take action. He held out his hand as a sign that he wouldn't be the first to draw his wand. If you can really defeat me, I will be very impressed with you too. Xia Ran said softly, The question is. Do you dare to do it? Or, do you think I dare to do it? He said and touched his pocket, which contained his wand. Mr. Malfoy and Thickness were both angry and frightened. They glared at Xia Ran fiercely and strode away, carefully guarding against Xia Ran's sudden cold arrow behind them. Look, Harry, when facing people you don't like, as long as you act stronger, they will naturally be afraid. Xia Ran smiled, but you have to have confidence, no matter your own strength or the power of numbers everyone, after all, you can never lose in a fight. Xia Ran. Mr. Weasley said helplessly. Harry seemed very interested. Professor, are you going to ask us me, Hermione, and Ron? Weren't we tutoring at your place last semester? He asked. Ah, this is the matter. Xia Ran said, it depends on Dumbledore's intention. If he thinks it's okay, you don't need to continue tutoring. If he thinks you are still not ready, then the fifth grade will also have to continue tutoring. He smiled and asked, what, you're not tired of it? Harry scratched his head and smiled sheepishly. Chapter, 261 Mr. Weasley hesitated for a while, then asked, Xia Ran, if they. Do you really want to do it? Well, that's the question. Xia Ran said, I can't say clearly, but I do have the urge. The Ministry of Magic is more stable, Mr. Weasley warned. Many Death Eaters or wizards who have recognized the concept of pure blood supremacy are in the Ministry of Magic. We don't have any advantage yet, and we are even at a disadvantage. Xia Ran nodded. By the way, if they want to talk things together, why doesn't Lucius Malfoy wait outside Thickness' office? Harry asked, What is he doing down here? It seems to me that he is trying to sneak into the courtroom. Mr. Weasley said. He looked very upset and kept turning his head to see if anyone was eavesdropping. Want to find out whether you have been shot. Except. We have to leave a message for Dumbledore, he should know what Malfoy is whispering to Thickness again. What's the private matter between them? I think it's gold, said Mr. Weasley angrily. For many years, Malfoy has been generous to all kinds of people so that he can establish friendship with powerful people and then ask for special favors. Allowing those laws that he does not want to be passed to be delayed again and again, such as many bills involving muggles. Oh, Lucius Malfoy, he is really capable and has great powers. The elevator came, and there was no one inside, just a bunch of notes flying around above the heads of the three people. Mr. Weasley pressed the button to the main hall, and the lift door clanged shut. He waved the note away impatiently. Sharon, please send Harry back first. I've finished taking care of the toilet matter, and I should be able to get off work. Mr. Weasley said. Xia Ran took Harry out of the elevator. When passing by the golden fountain, Harry poured all the gold coins in his wallet into the fountain and said, I said it when I went in, if I am not guilty. They soon returned to Grimald Place. I knew it. Ron shouted, punching the air with his fist, you can always escape. Xia Ran smiled, and Harry knew that Professor Fremont remembered Mr. Malfoy's words, but he was still excited at the moment and couldn't care less about being embarrassed. They'll definitely acquit you, said Hermione. She had looked so nervous that she might have fainted when Harry walked into the kitchen, and now she was covering her eyes with a trembling hand. No. There is no reason to convict you. Although you all knew I would be fine, everyone seems to be relieved. Harry said with a smile. Mrs. Weasley was wiping tears with her apron, and Fred, George and Ginny performed a kind of war dance, singing over and over, He's okay, he's okay, he's okay. That's enough. Be quiet. Mrs. Weasley shouted, but she also had a smile on her face, Will Xia Ran stay and have something to eat? Yes. Xia Ran smiled, I'm just waiting to come over and have a meal. That night, a banquet was held at the Black Mansion to celebrate Harry's innocence. In addition to Kieran, Kingsley, Tonks and Mundungus were all present. The entire kitchen was full and lively. 
After the banquet, Xia Ran returned to his family's Fremont Manor. There was nothing that required him to be busy until the start of school. On the way, he also heard that Harry helped Dumbledore convince an old professor who had retired long ago. He had expected this, so he didn't seem surprised. When attending the banquet for the opening of the new school year, one figure was missing from the staff table. It was Hagrid. Due to Dumbledore's instructions, he went abroad with Ms. Maxim, and he still didn't know where he was digging a cave. The person who temporarily replaced him was Professor Graplan, and it was she who carried this year's freshman across the lake. There was one more person at the dining table than usual. He was a bald, fat old man, wearing gorgeous clothes. He looked at all the students in the school with a smile. He caught Xia Ran's gaze, took the initiative to shake hands with Xia Ran, and said, You are Professor Fremont, right? I heard Harry mention you, you are a very good wizard. Professor Slughorn, I have heard of your name before. Xia Ran smiled, it's a pity that you had already retired when I enrolled. Oh, yes, retired. Slughorn said and sighed, but Dumbledore is like this. He always hopes that us old guys can try to spread the remaining warmth as much as possible. Of course, I am not interested in taking charge again. I'm still very happy about the potions class. The two chatted for a while, and the sorting hat sang a new song. After the sorting ceremony, there was a lot of delicious food on the plate in front of them, and they stopped talking. Xia Ran was particularly hungry and wolfed down chicken legs and steak. Sybil Trelawney, the divination professor on the side, looked at him arrogantly and ate his dinner elegantly. Xia Ran ignored her. Desserts and drinks followed one after another. Xia Ran had a full meal. Life in Hogwarts was still very comfortable. Professor Slughorn on the side also did the same, praising repeatedly, I haven't been back for many years, these house elves are so good at cooking. At this moment, Dumbledore stood up behind the staff table, and the laughter of the students that echoed in the auditorium immediately subsided. Good evening to everyone. He said with a kind smile, spreading his arms as if to embrace the entire auditorium. The students' eyes were all focused on Dumbledore. New students, welcome to school old students, welcome back to school. What awaits you is a new school year of magic education. I hope you can all gain something. The administrator, Mr. Filch, asked me to tell everyone that students are absolutely prohibited from using all kinds of prank items without authorization. Students who want to join the college Quidditch team should submit their names to the dean as usual. Of course, finally, we are still very happy to welcome a new teacher, Professor Slughorn. Dumbledore said and clapped his hands. The students and teachers in the auditorium clapped their hands. Slughorn stood up, his bald head shining in the candlelight, and his waistcoat-clad belly casting a large shadow on the table. Dumbledore continued, Professor Slughorn is a former colleague of mine and he has agreed to return to his old position as potions teacher. Potions? The word echoed throughout the auditorium, and everyone wondered if they had heard it correctly. Harry looked at Dumbledore in surprise. He originally thought that Professor Slughorn was the defense against the dark arts professor. At the same time, Professor Snape. Dumbledore said, raising his voice to cover up the discussion, he readily agreed to take up the position of teacher of defense against the dark arts. No. Chapter, 262. No. This objection was so loud that everyone turned in the direction of the sound. At the Gryffindor table, Harry glared angrily at Snape behind the staff table. Why did he end up giving the defense against the dark arts teaching position to Snape? Didn't everyone know for so many years that Dumbledore didn't believe he was qualified for the job? Ron was startled by his voice, and Hermione frowned and asked, But, Harry, you said Slughorn was going to teach defense against the dark arts. I thought it was him. Harry replied, trying his best to remember when Dumbledore had told him. However, thinking about it now, he couldn't remember Dumbledore telling him which subject Slughorn was going to teach. Course. Snape sat on the right side of Dumbledore. When he heard Dumbledore mention his name, he did not stand up like Slughorn, but lazily raised a hand to show that he heard it. Cheers from the Slytherin table. But Harry clearly saw, he kept glaring at Snape, 
a trace of triumphant joy on the face that he hated so much. Well, at least there is some benefit to this matter. Harry said through gritted teeth, Snape will leave in less than a year. What do you mean? Ron asked confused. That job was cursed. No one can last more than one year. Professor Moody and Professor Lupin always resigned for some reason even if they taught well because of other things. Harry lowered his voice. Said, Chi Luo even risked his life. I personally sincerely hope that another murder will happen. Harry. Hermione scolded in horror. At the end of term, he probably went back to teach his potions class. Ron said rationally. That guy named Slughorn probably doesn't want to stay here for a long time. That's the case with Moody. Look, Fry Professor Meng even congratulated him. Several people looked over and saw Xia Ran congratulating Snape. Professor Snape, you got your wish. Xia Ran smiled. Snape smiled consciously and reservedly. He had dreamed of teaching the defense against the dark arts course for many years, but he finally got it. Harry, Ron, and Hermione were not the only ones talking below. Everyone in the auditorium was talking a lot when they heard the news that Snape finally got his wish. Dumbledore didn't seem to realize how sensational the news he had just announced was. He did not say anything more about the teaching position, but waited a few seconds to make sure everyone was completely quiet before clearing his throat and continuing to speak. Everyone in this hall knows that Voldemort and his followers are making trouble again, and their power is growing. As Dumbledore spoke, the Great Hall fell into a tense, heart-wrenching silence. I would like to emphasize that the current situation is very dangerous and everyone at Hogwarts needs to be extremely cautious to ensure our own safety. The castle's magical defenses have been strengthened during the summer vacation and we have received new updates. Effective protection, but every one of our teachers and students must still be vigilant at all times and not take it lightly. Therefore, I ask that you strictly abide by every safety rule set by your teacher, no matter how annoying they may be, especially the rule about not getting up and going out after lights out. I implore you, whether inside or outside school, if you see anything any abnormal or suspicious situations must be reported to faculty members immediately. I believe that you will restrain your behavior for the safety of yourself and others. Dumbledore said, his blue eyes scanning all the students, and then a smile appeared on his face again. Okay, your bed is waiting for you, as warm and comfortable as you expected. I know your top priority now is to get a good rest and prepare for class tomorrow. So, let's say, good night, Dudu. As usual, the benches were pushed behind them, making a harsh friction sound, and hundreds of students began to file out of the auditorium and toward their dormitories. Xia Ran returned to his office, reviewed the advanced magic books on transfiguration borrowed from Principal Dumbledore's library, and then went to sleep. In the next week, Xia Ran received a summons from Dumbledore. He and Snape would no longer give lessons to Harry, Ron, and Hermione, and Harry would come to him to make up lessons once a week. Xia Ran understood Dumbledore's thoughts and hoped that Harry would understand his mission and be determined to fight against Voldemort. Because Harry is also one of Voldemort's horcruxes. What's more, Dumbledore also expected Harry to know from Slughorn's mouth how he told Voldemort, that is, Tom Riddle, about the horcruxes when he was still a student. Dumbledore wanted to determine how many horcruxes Voldemort had made. Xia Ran could indeed tell him this, but the source could not answer it. Moreover, Dumbledore relied on Harry to find out this from Slughorn, so he was not prepared to intervene in the matter. Sure enough, on Halloween, Dumbledore found Sharon and Snape and told him the news he had obtained from Slughorn through Harry, it has been basically confirmed that Voldemort made seven horcruxes. Seven. Snape exclaimed softly. The portraits of the old male and female principals hanging on the wall, although Harry had already heard it mentioned once, but now when Dumbledore mentioned it again, he still felt angry and frightened. How to kill Voldemort completely? We have determined that there are diaries that have been destroyed, Tom Riddle's diary, and Slytherin's locket, which was taken out by Sirius' brother Regulus. It was also destroyed, by the way, Marvolo Gaunt's ring that Xia Ran destroyed was also one of the horcruxes. Dumbledore said, we have only destroyed three of the seven horcruxes. Harry was the last horcrux made by Voldemort, 
and should also be the last Horcrux destroyed. After all, there are still three Horcruxes. We don't know the whereabouts or circumstances. As he spoke, his face was solemn and he looked very solemn. Siaran decided to make a point, thought for a while, and said, based on these known Horcruxes, we should be able to get the rules for Voldemort's production of Horcruxes. Oh, what do you mean? Snape asked. Riddle's diary, Slytherin's locket, and Marvolo Gaunt's ring all have extraordinary significance. Needless to say, the locket and the ring are one of the four giants of Hogwarts. The other relic of Slytherin is the symbol of the Gaunt family. The Gaunt family is also the direct descendant of Slytherin and is of great significance in the entire magical world. Sia Ran said softly, the diary is also of great significance to Voldemort. It was the first time he learned about his ancestors. The blood of Slytherin flows in his body. I think he will be very proud and happy about this. Chapter, 263 Excluding Harry, the Horcrux made by accident, do the remaining three Horcruxes also follow a certain pattern? Sia Ran looked at the two people in front of her and said slowly, we have talked about Voldemort's hobbies more or less in the past few months. He likes to collect trophies, this is Dumbledore's summary of Voldemort. The answer came out the locket, the ring, that was all. You mean? The remaining three Horcruxes are also the trophies of the mysterious man? Snape asked. No. Not necessarily. Sia Ran shook his head and said, the trophy may be Voldemort's Horcrux, but the premise must be of great significance. In addition, some items that are also very special to him will also be its the object of his Horcrux creation. For example, relics of the Big Four at Hogwarts. Sia Ran said, Gryffindor's sword is with Dumbledore. He obviously didn't find it, Slytherin's locket is indeed a Horcrux. Fortunately, it has been destroyed by us Hufflepuff's golden cup may also be his Horcrux Ravenclaw's diadem must be his Horcrux. He said it with confidence at the end. Sia Ran, why are you so sure? Dumbledore asked slightly doubtfully. He had more or less made some assumptions about Sia Ran's conjectures in the past few months, but after all, there was no fact as a basis. You have to add words like maybe and probably. Why does Sia Ran dare to be so sure? Sia Ran replied, because I discovered Ravenclaw's diadem. He had actually known for a long time that the location of the Ravenclaw diadem was in a form of the Room of Requirement at Hogwarts, because the Room of Requirement would take on different appearances according to the requests of the visitor, and he had also absorbed it before. He knew the force points contained in the crown, but he had never found a chance to bring it up before. Now is the best time. What, you found Ravenclaw's diadem? Dumbledore was slightly surprised. Snape also looked very surprised. Marvolo Gaunt's ring was discovered by Sia Ran. Is he so familiar with Voldemort's past? Sia Ran said, yes, and the crown was not hidden elsewhere by Voldemort. In Hogwarts? Snape said in surprise. Sia Ran nodded and said, in the room of requirement on the eighth floor of Hogwarts Castle. Sorry, what room? Snape asked confused. He had never entered the room of requirement, or it was possible that he had, but he did not realize it. Eighth floor, room of requirement. Dumbledore was stunned for a moment, shook his head and sighed, I once got up in the middle of the night to look for the toilet and entered a bathroom in a daze. There were many very exquisite chamber pots inside. What happened to me afterwards? I couldn't even find that room, it turned out to be the room of requirement, and indeed it was the room of requirement. Sia Ran led the two of them out of the principal's office and went directly to a blank wall on the eighth floor. Next to it was a portrait of a troll, looking at the three of them menacingly. Sia Ran walked back and forth three times, thinking to herself that I need a place to hide things. Sure enough, a door appeared in the center of the corridor, and he pushed the door handle and entered. This is a... Dumbledore raised his eyebrows and said, a place where countless things are collected? It seems that you know who thinks such a place is safe. Snape regained his composure. Sia Ran smiled and said, as long as anything has existed, it must have left traces. Voldemort still values the sense of ritual too much. 
If he randomly found a few stones from the roadside, made them into horcruxes, and then traveled around the world all continents and oceans, in that case. He will never be killed. Xia Ran shrugged her shoulders and said, because no one will ever find all his horcruxes. Yeah, so we have to thank him for this characteristic. Dumbledore smiled. Xia Ran led the two of them to turn left and right, crossing the crumbling pile of debris while chatting, I accidentally needed a room to hide things, and the room of requirement appeared. I was hiding things. At that time, I saw an ancient crown, but I didn't realize what it was at the time. Later, when I thought about it accidentally, I realized something was wrong. Come, come this way, have you seen that ancient crown? He pointed in front of him as he spoke. It was a very messy place filled with a lot of messy things. An ancient and dusty crown, like the crown of a king of an ancient secular kingdom, had been placed there for many years. It's been months. Dumbledore glanced at Xia Ran and walked over. Snape said suspiciously, Are you sure, Xia Ran? I have to admit, that crown does not look like a Ravenclaw crown, but there is no doubt that. Yes, I checked it. Xia Ran said. Yes, that's right. Dumbledore touched the crown inside, this is Ravenclaw's crown. I can feel the magic fluctuations inside. An ordinary crown will never have such a deep and evil black color. Magic. As if sensing Dumbledore, the crown began to tremble slightly. Dumbledore narrowed his eyes slightly and said, Well, it's a great confusion magic, but unfortunately, it doesn't work for me. Dumbledore, the crown should be destroyed. Snape reminded. Yes, Severus, you are right. Dumbledore nodded, retracted his right hand touching the crown, and said, like Riddle's diary, this crown also has the ability to seduce people's hearts. Xia Ran was eager to try, Dumbledore, we have to destroy it, let me do it, I have experience, I will destroy the ring, a fire. Yes, a fierce fire. I still have the fire curse very insightful. I have never doubted this, Xia Ran. Dumbledore said, looking at the vast room and the messy piles of clutter, but if the fire curse is used, this room may be destroyed. Destroyed together. Although Hogwarts has many special places and many deep hidden secrets that even I don't know about, for example. I had no understanding or knowledge of the room of requirement before you mentioned it, but if we can preserve such an interesting place, it doesn't matter if we work harder. Dumbledore came back with the crown and said briskly, I remember that there are basilisk fangs in the Chamber of Secrets. That thing can destroy horcruxes effortlessly. Okay, Dumbledore, it's up to you. Xia Ran nodded and put the wand he took out back into his pocket. In the end, they used the basilisk's fangs to destroy Ravenclaw's crown in the secret chamber. A layer of thick black blood flowed out, as if the crown was a living life, and a faint howl came from a very far away place. It sounded in the ears of the three people. At the same time, in the Gryffindor common room, Harry screamed, his body twitched violently, and he fell to the ground, foaming at the mouth, and his face was contorted in pain, frightening all the students in the common room. Chapter, 264 So, Harry fell into a coma for no reason? Dumbledore asked. Yes, sir, Hermione replied. It was already in the school hospital. Harry lay down on a hospital bed, his face pale, and after taking the potion, he fell into a deep sleep. Sharon, Dumbledore, Snape, Professor McGonagall and Madame Pomfrey stood in front of the hospital bed, lowering their heads and staring at the sleeping Harry Potter. Ron, Hermione, Ginny, Fred, and George sat in a circle around the hospital bed. Do you know why he was unconscious, Poppy? Professor McGonagall asked Madame Pomfrey. Madame Pomfrey shook her head and said, I don't know. But it should be that his spirit has been greatly fluctuated, which is why his brain cannot accept a kind of pain. Or something else, so the brain's self-protection mechanism next, he passed out. Xia Ran, Snape, and Dumbledore looked at each other, and they all knew the reason for Harry's coma. They must have used the basilisk fangs to destroy Ravenclaw's diadem and destroy a fragment of Voldemort's soul, which attracted the attention and anger of Voldemort himself. And because Harry's brain was connected to it, he was finally succumbed to Voldemort's emotions. 
It was extremely affected and caused unbearable pain. Professor McGonagall noticed the little moves of the three people, but did not point it out directly because she also remembered Harry's identity. Professor McGonagall also knew that Harry was one of Voldemort's horcruxes. In the Order of the Phoenix, in addition to Kieran, Dumbledore and Snape, Professor McGonagall and Mad-Eye Moody also knew about this matter. Sia Ran coughed lightly and said, Okay, kids, it's already very late. You go back to the dormitory to sleep, and come back to visit Harry tomorrow. Hermione, Ginny, and Ron had no choice but to walk out of the campus hospital together and return to the Gryffindor Lounge. Sia Ran and the others also left the school hospital one after another after a while. Albus, is it because of what you did? Professor McGonagall asked. Dumbledore told the story about the Ravenclaw diadem, and Professor McGonagall whispered, another horcrux. Or the Ravenclaw diadem. It's terrible, you know who, Hogwarts two of the relics of the Big Four have been defiled by him. Slytherin's locket, Ravenclaw's diadem, and Gryffindor's sword are all safe for the time being. Only Hufflepuff's gold cup remains. We don't know the specific situation of the gold cup yet. Dumbledore said, I have already made some discoveries, but I still need a little memory, the memory of an elf. I believe I can convince her. Sia Rant's heart moved slightly. It is said in the original time and space that Hufflepuff's Golden Cup was originally a collection of an old witch. Later, Voldemort, who had just graduated, took a fancy to it. He used magic to kill the old witch, took away the Hufflepuff Golden Cup, and framed the blame. A house elf given to an old witch, resulting in the elf being imprisoned in Azkaban prison until death. Dumbledore's progress is very fast. Sia Ran muttered in her heart. The known horcruxes include the locket, diary, ring, and crown. These four horcruxes have been destroyed by us. Snape said, there are still horcruxes that have not been destroyed. As long as one horcrux still exists yes, then the Dark Lord is immortal. Dumbledore nodded, feeling very heavy. Even though Voldemort has various hobbies, such as collecting trophies, and liking things with great historical significance, special magical items such as Slytherin's locket, Ravenclaw's diadem, Hufflepuff's golden cup, etc. But knowing what they need to look for doesn't mean they can actually find that item. Besides Voldemort himself, who else knows where Hufflepuff's golden cup is? Sia Ranshin said that I knew, but Dumbledore had almost discovered it, so he didn't interrupt to avoid explaining the source of his information. The next day, students from all colleges learned about Harry's coma. There was an endless stream of students going to the school hospital, not necessarily to visit Harry, but just to see why he was in a coma. The students were very curious about this. Harry's close friends are tight-lipped, and in fact they don't know the specifics. And time soon came to Christmas. Harry, Hermione, Ron, and Ginny all went to the Black Mansion to spend Christmas and New Year. Sia Ran and the others were running around, dealing with some Death Eaters from time to time. Both sides suffered casualties. The magical world is also in turmoil, and a small movement can scare a wizard. All wizards are afraid that when they return home, the Dark Mark will be hung over their houses, so they forcefully demand the Ministry of Magic to do something about it. Fortunately, the current Minister of Magic, Amelia Bones, is also a resolute and decisive witch. She openly criticized Thickness, the director of the Department of Magical Law Enforcement, and others. And cooperated with Wesson some wizards in Gamor, including Dumbledore, imprisoned high-ranking Ministry of Magic officials who were considered Death Eaters. The atmosphere in the Ministry of Magic suddenly cleared up. But this also led to a big problem, that is, the Death Eaters became more and more unscrupulous and began to attack wizard families and muggles. Every day, unfortunate news came. When Sia Ran and the others spent Christmas at Black's old house, they felt very complicated every time they read the newspaper, fearing that they would learn some unfortunate news from the newspaper. Although many tragedies of wizards and muggles were reported, after all, they did not know or were unfamiliar with them. Even though it inspired their determination to fight against Voldemort, they could not empathize too much. What news was reported again? Mrs. Weasley asked. She was supervising a row of knives peeling potatoes with her wand. Creature was cooking rib soup on the side. 
The aroma was so fragrant that it whetted your appetite. Sirius also held a wand to supervise the cutting of meat with a kitchen knife and said, It's Christmas, Death Eaters have to celebrate the holidays, right? Oh, that's not necessarily true, Sirius. Kingsley said, unfolding the newspaper, his expression darkened, and he sighed, Another family of muggles has been killed. Mr. Weasley also held a newspaper and read, In a village in Scotland, a family of seven was found dead in the yard of their home. There were no signs of thieves infiltrating, and there was only a skull suspended in the sky. And we all know what this mark means. Oh, my God! Mrs. Weasley said in shock, looking very panicked. She had always been like this for a while. Everything would make her feel worried and scared. Lupin said, We have Dumbledore, we will defeat the mysterious man. He looked at Harry and said, of course, we also have the boy who lived, and, Savior Star, Harry Potter. Special. Harry smiled helplessly. Newspapers always gave him various names. Savior Star was generally recognized and accepted by people. People in the Order of the Phoenix also teased him about this. Glancing at Harry across the table, Sia Rant's eyes flickered. He, Snape and Dumbledore had already discussed Harry's follow-up matters. Chapter, 265 Harry is one of Voldemort's horcruxes, and there is a fragment of Voldemort's soul in his body. If he wants to save Harry's life and destroy that fragment of soul, then Voldemort can only do it himself. Only Voldemort himself can destroy the horcrux fragments he inadvertently created without harming Harry himself. If Sia Ran and the others were to come, they would certainly be able to eliminate the fragments of Voldemort's soul, but Harry would also be killed by them at the same time. This is something Sia Ran and the others don't want to see. Thinking about the plan that had been agreed upon for several months, Sia Ran sighed leisurely, hoping that Harry could hold on. Alas! Bill also sighed, Gringotts is almost in chaos, and those goblins are even more yearning for the promise given to them by the mysterious man to give them freedom. Now the relationship with us curse breakers has begun to gradually deteriorate. Yes, there was almost a conflict the day before yesterday. Fortunately, both parties tolerated it in the end. Fleur said. She and Bill also worked at Gringotts. Mr. Weasley warned, you must be careful. The situation is deteriorating. Those goblins may riot at any time. You are in the most danger when you work in Gringotts. Bill and Fleur nodded. Xia Ran looked at Lu Ping and asked, how are you now? Lupin looked more haggard than before, and his clothes were full of patches. He was among the werewolves, and his life was much worse than that of others. Tonk stared at Lupin with her big eyes, concern evident in her words. Lupin coughed unnaturally and deliberately ignored Tonk's concern and said, It's okay, I can always accept it. There are some dangers, but it's okay and it won't endanger my life. But I see that you are looking very haggard. Tonk said anxiously, how about I go apply to Dumbledore, but don't. Don't be like this, Tonks. Lupin said with a bitter smile, I volunteered for this job. I hope to do something for the Order of the Phoenix. As for the lurking werewolf group, except for me, no one else can complete this task. Harry and the others finally understood why Professor Lupin had experienced so many vicissitudes after not seeing each other for a while. They all knew that Professor Lupin didn't like his werewolf identity. They couldn't help but feel a little resentful towards Dumbledore. You'd better not write to me. It's almost impossible to receive letters where I live, let alone write. It's easy to expose myself. Lu Ping said. Talking about the current situation and personal tasks, the atmosphere in the kitchen suddenly became heavy and depressing. The entire magical world now has such an atmosphere. Fred and George took Harry and Ron upstairs to get some fireworks they made themselves, and they exploded in the kitchen, colorful and crackling, finally giving them a bit of a festive atmosphere. Everyone deliberately forgot about other things and enjoyed the tranquility and peace of this moment. After Christmas and New Year, Harry and others took the train back to Hogwarts to go to school, only to find that there were not as many students returning as those who left before the holiday. Many children from wizarding families are no longer allowed to leave their families and go all the way to Hogwarts. The atmosphere inside the train also seemed dull, 
and no one seemed to be in the mood for fun. Have you heard that Hufflepuff's Hannah Abbott has not returned? Neville said worriedly. Luna pushed up her self-made glasses and said ethereally, I heard that Hannah's mother was killed by Death Eaters, so her family didn't want her to return to Hogwarts. The leaky cauldron is closed. Seeing the confused expressions on Harry and others' faces, Luna explained briskly, Old Tom from the leaky cauldron is Hannah's relative. This was the first time Harry knew about this, but thinking about another familiar classmate leaving, his heart always felt heavy, as if a big stone had been weighed down on him. Hermione turned her head and saw a group of owls flying towards her, and said, The newspapers are here. Opening the window and letting the owls fly in along with the rain, Ginny and Luna fed the owl that delivered the letter some food. Open it quickly and take a look. Who was killed again? Ron asked. Hermione rolled her eyes at Ron, glanced at the newspaper, and said happily, Good news. Tell me quickly. The other people in the box immediately looked excited, and Harry urged, Hermione, read what's in the newspaper. This morning, through the cooperation between the Auror Office of the Ministry of Magic and the Strikers, as well as the participation of some enthusiastic wizards, we successfully ambush a group of Death Eaters. It turned out that the Order of the Phoenix cooperated with the Auror Office of the Ministry of Magic to stage a beautiful ambush, killing more than a dozen Death Eaters, and temporarily suppressing the Death Eaters' arrogance. For the magic world, which has bad news every day, this is the rain after a long drought, and they finally achieved an unusually significant victory. Harry, Hermione, Ron, Ginny, Neville, and Luna all laughed happily. That's great. Ginny said, I just said. They will definitely get results. Cheers also came from the nearby train carriage. This good news boosted the mood of people in the magical world. For a long time, newspapers were filled with reports of various ambush and counter-ambush. Sometimes the Ministry of Magic and the Order of the Phoenix ambushed the Death Eaters and won a great victory the Death Eaters took advantage of the situation and killed a group of Ministry of Magic Aurors and wounded Order of the Phoenix Wizards. The two sides seemed to be engaged in a tug-of-war, and no one was willing to back down and show weakness at this time, even if it cost them blood. For this reason, Dumbledore and Ms. Bones wrote letters and communicated every day to come up with a way to break the situation. Unfortunately, Voldemort's whereabouts are still difficult to grasp, and Dumbledore needs to stay at Hogwarts, unable to leave school frequently and for long periods of time. But he finally figured out where the Hufflepuff Gold Cup was hidden. Where, Dumbledore? Snape asked urgently. Sia Ran seemed relatively calm and collected because she had expected it. Dumbledore slowly uttered one word, Gringotts. Gringotts? Snape was stunned. Sia Ran said, Are we going to do it now? We might alert the enemy. There is no problem if we break into Gringotts, but Voldemort will definitely know our plan. There is no other way. The situation is deteriorating now. Innocent lives are being brutally killed every day. We must end this war as soon as possible. Dumbledore said tiredly. Then. Is Harry ready? Sia Ran said softly, can he really accept his fate? Dumbledore was silent for a long time, then smiled bitterly and said, I don't know, but I believe Harry, he is a man with power that Voldemort has never had. Love? Snape seemed to want to sneer, but in the end he held back. Yes, it's love. Dumbledore nodded, as if he knew Snape's thoughts, it's because of love that Harry becomes hostile to Voldemort. Even if he can peek into Voldemort's brain, it will only make him angry. He was in agony, not in the ecstasy of a Death Eater. With the protection of love, his will has been strengthened. I believe he can defeat fear. I hope so. Sia Ran sighed. Chapter, 266. You want to fake your death? Snape asked. No, I want to really welcome death. Dumbledore sighed, but I won't die completely before Voldemort is dealt with. Because of many things that happened in his youth, Dumbledore changed his character and ideals, and desperately yearned for peace. Naturally, he wanted to end the threat of Voldemort. You know, among the White Wizards, only Dumbledore is the person Voldemort is truly afraid of. 
Now Xia Ran has made great progress and is now able to fight Voldemort head-on without falling behind in a short period of time. Xia Ran's experience in all aspects has won Dumbledore's trust. However, Xia Ran is still a little behind after all and cannot compare with the legend. Level Voldemort Dumbledore knew his mission was not yet complete. Of course, the Mesozoic era has Kieran Fremont, and the Cenozoic era also has Harry, Hermione, and others. He feels that he just needs to do his best to burn the last fuel, and then leave the world to others. He couldn't wait to go to the world of the dead. Of course Xia Ran didn't know Dumbledore's trust in him, but he didn't care. Now his goal was to touch a magical item with great historical significance, absorb the force points in it, and help him cross the biggest hurdle. Difficulties, promoted to level 7 legendary level wizard. He was still thinking about taking the opportunity to visit the Ministry of Magic one day and touch some items of extraordinary significance. Whenever he gets this opportunity, he will not be surprised if he counterpressures Dumbledore and Voldemort. Fake death. Xia Ran pondered. Dumbledore was really dead in the original time and space. After some planning, he was disarmed by Draco Malfoy and died in the hands of Snape. This was also his plan. Important section. Now that Malfoy has not received Voldemort's order, could Snape directly step forward and kill Dumbledore? In the case where Xia Ran disarmed Dumbledore in advance, it was not impossible. But if he fakes his death, there will definitely be a funeral. So, how can his body not be exposed by Death Eaters? He asked the question. Snape was also focused on Dumbledore. Dumbledore smiled and said, then we need the help of Professor Snape's potion. I don't have such a powerful potion. Snape immediately shook his head and said, and what can I pretend to be you? In other words, how can I keep you alive while you look extremely dead? Where should I go? Found this magic potion. As he spoke, he stared at Dumbledore and said, Dumbledore, you can't die easily. You promised me. Don't worry. I won't rush to the world of the dead until the threat of Voldemort is completely resolved. Dumbledore said, there is no need for a potion that is too good. After I fake death, the corpse, okay, let's call it a corpse, Xia Ran will take over immediately, and then it will definitely be put away and awaiting burial. No one would pay too much attention to a corpse. Snape interjected, you are different, Dumbledore. Same. Dumbledore said, as long as Xia Ran announces my death, other people will naturally accept Xia Ran after seeing my appearance and relying on Xia Ran's words. Random statement. But you may have to find time later in the summer to dig me out. Xia Ran touched her chin, remembering that in the original time and space, after Voldemort discovered that the Elder Wand was in Dumbledore's hand. He personally went to Dumbledore's cemetery to dig his grave if he had dug up Dumbledore in advance, Voldemort would have missed it. Wouldn't it be all exposed? What if Voldemort digs your grave? Ciaran asked, because of your things, such as the wand, Voldemort finally made the decision to dig your grave, but did not see your body. Dumbledore pondered, then we must advance the plan as soon as possible, destroy the golden cup as soon as possible, and kill the big snake named Nagini. The most important thing is. He looked at Snape and said, Voldemort must kill Harry himself. If you want to remove the soul fragment in Harry's body without harming Harry, Voldemort can only do it himself. When the rest of us kill Voldemort's soul fragment, we will also kill Harry together. Die. Snape's face darkened, he hummed, but did not answer. What I'm worried about is. Xia Ran rubbed her forehead and said, is Harry really prepared to die? In the original time and space, Harry experienced all kinds of hardships, and had to live and die many times before he finally made up his mind to die. In the end, this action saved him. But now, although Harry is more experienced and determined than he was at the end of fifth grade in the original time and space, after all, he has never experienced many things and tribulations in the next two years. How is his will? There is a question mark here. We can only trust him, and Severus. Dumbledore said, you need to let him grow up as soon as possible. According to the plan, you are the last one, Severus. Yeah. Snape frowned and nodded solemnly. After discussing for a while, 
Xia Ran returned to her office. The semester was coming to an end and the plan was finally fully launched. Let's see if the White Wizard still wins this time, or the Black Wizard finally has the upper hand. Xia Ran couldn't wait to start the battle with Voldemort. After Harry and the others finished their exams, the O.W. L.S. exam was coming to the fifth grade. Of course, many students were taken home early and were unable to take the exam, but there were also many students left. The Ministry of Magic still organized examiners to conduct the exam. Because of Harry's mother's magic, he had to return to Privet Ludsley's house. Although people in the wizarding world were panicking, he knew that the muggle world was not so chaotic yet, and he still had a peaceful and peaceful summer vacation. Although he wants to join the Order of the Phoenix to participate in the war against Voldemort and the Dark Wizards. But Dumbledore rejected him time and time again, including his godfather Sirius, not only because he was underage, but also because he still needed to go to school. When he graduated, he could join the Order of the Phoenix. This was Sirius's reply. As his guardian, Harry respected his godfather very much. After getting off the Hogwarts Express, saying goodbye to the Weasley family and the Hermione family, Harry was greeted impatiently by Uncle Vernon and returned to Privet Drive in Uncle Vernon's new car. When he first entered the house, he was surprised to see the change in Dudley. Dudley actually gave him a glass of water. Thanks, um, Brother D. Harry smiled. Dudley didn't seem to know what to say. He muttered but said nothing. Oh, Dada, my good boy. So kind, so kind. Aunt Petunia almost cried holding Dudley in her arms. Good boy, pour me a drink too, cried Uncle Vernon. Harry rolled his eyes, carried his things upstairs and returned to his dormitory. He was about to usher in his summer vacation here, but he didn't know what would greet him during the summer vacation. Chapter 267 One day in July, after attending another meeting of the Order of the Phoenix, Xia Ran, Snape, and Dumbledore all left the Black Mansion. What was Voldemort's reaction? Dumbledore asked. Snape replied, he has ordered me to find an opportunity to assassinate you. After a pause, he continued, you are not the Minister of Magic, but to the mysterious man, you are a far greater threat than the Ministry of Magic. Therefore, it is more cost-effective to assassinate you with only a certain risk than taking greater risks to assassinate the Minister of Magic. After all, the Minister of Magic is the head of the official organization. No matter how prestigious and powerful Dumbledore is, sometimes his influence is still inferior to that of the Minister of Magic. Dumbledore, where is the elf? Xia Ran also asked. Dumbledore said, when Dobby came to clean the room, I pretended to reveal a lot of information unintentionally. I believe that when he learned about my death, he would take Harry away. Then. When will we do it? Xia Ran asked in a deep voice. In the next few days. Dumbledore said worriedly, we can't delay it any longer. Enough people have died. This war must be ended as soon as possible. As he spoke, he looked at Snape and said worriedly, Severus, do your best. Snape nodded calmly, obviously he had been on guard over the past few months. Xia Ran breathed a sigh of relief and seemed a little eager to try. Sure enough, a few days later, a breaking news spread from Hogwarts to the entire wizarding world. Dumbledore is dead. Died at the hands of Potions Professor Severus Snape. According to the Daily Prophet report, Combat Professor Charon Fremont was the first wizard to rush to the scene of the incident. He saw Snape's escape with his own eyes, but according to him, he did not realize it at the time. Snape rebelled and took refuge in the man who must not even be named, so he allowed Snape to leave, which undoubtedly made Sharon Fremont very regretful. At the same time, Kieran Fremont confirmed the news of Dumbledore's death. He told this reporter, Dumbledore died at the hands of Severus Snape. We will hold a final funeral for Dumbledore, and at the same time, we will cooperate without any secrets with the Ministry of Magic to combat the growth of dark magic as much as possible. But can his words really come true? You know, because of the news of Albus Dumbledore's death, the wizarding world has been completely panicked. Countless wizards are panic-stricken and feel that their future is precarious. So, let's wait and see. Hogwarts was holding Dumbledore's funeral. 
Xia Ran waited for the funeral to be over and dug the grave in the middle of the night when no one was around. And Harry Potter in Privet Drive also welcomed an uninvited guest. Penny, long time no see. In Harry Potter's horrified eyes, he saw that Severus Snape, the potions professor whom he hated the most and hated him the most, actually visited the Dursleys, and he actually knew Aunt Petunia. Aunt Petunia knows him too. Vernon Dursley and Dudley Dursley both looked confused and looked at each other, wondering if they had entered the wrong house. Petunia looked very surprised and a little uneasy, and asked, Severus, I haven't seen you in many years, you are here. I'm going to take him away. Snape pointed at Harry and said calmly. No. Two voices sounded at the same time, one was Harry himself, which didn't surprise him, and the other turned out to be Aunt Petunia, which made Harry even more surprised. I'm sorry, I'm not here to ask for your opinion. Snape said and took out the wand from his arms, with a firelight flickering at the tip of the wand. The Desleys suddenly screamed in horror. Harry shouted, Are you going to take action? Snape, aren't you a member of the Order of the Phoenix? Aren't you afraid of Dumbledore? Dumbledore? Order of the Phoenix? Snape smiled contemptuously and said, There will be no more Dumbledore. He is dead. Potter, Dumbledore is dead. Impossible. It was the same two voices. This time, Harry didn't bother to watch Aunt Petunia. He glared at Snape fiercely and said, You lied. How could Dumbledore die? Snape did not answer his question. He looked sideways outside the Dursley's house and saw a figure flashing by. He said slowly, Well, it seems that the news of my coming has been spread. Potter, I I don't want to talk to you anymore. I'm going to take you away and hand you over to the Dark Lord. The Desleys seemed to be frightened, huddled on the sofa and shivering. Harry wanted to pull out his wand and face the approaching Snape, but when he touched it, he realized that because it was summer vacation at the Desleys' house, he had forgotten to bring his wand with him, and he had left it upstairs. In the bedroom. Dudley Desley didn't know why, but he suddenly had the courage and shouted to Snape, No, you can't do this. Aren't you Harry's teacher? Get out of the way. Harry shouted. Snape fired a spell, hitting Dudley's side and hitting the window. The glass was shattered and shattered all over the floor. Dudley was so frightened that Aunt Petunia and Aunt Vernon pulled Dudley and hid behind the sofa. Snapped. There was a violent explosion, and Harry only saw a familiar short figure standing in front of him, grabbing his hand and disappearing. He knew this feeling, which was that of operating. But he didn't want to leave like this. What should his relatives, even if neither party recognized it, but the blood connection could never be broken, face the rebellious Snape alone? After Harry was operat away by the elf, there were several more explosions, and several figures came in from outside. Xia Ran took the lead and looked at each other with Snape, exchanging a covert look. Then Xia Ran shouted, Everyone is petrified. Snape disapparated, and Xia Ran's spell hit the dining table in the living room. The dining table immediately became petrified and cracked into seventeen or eight pieces. Leave, that coward ran away. Sirius rushed into the room angrily, holding the wand, but Harry was nowhere to be seen. Where is Harry? Where has he been? Was he taken away? Sirius was extremely anxious. Lupin, Mr. Weasley, and Kingsley followed closely. They all looked solemn. After receiving the summons from Mrs. Fig at the funeral, they immediately ran out of Hogwarts and Operat to Privet Drive, but it seemed that they were still a step too late. The Desleys had met Xia Ran and knew that he was Harry's teacher. At the same time, he seemed to be here to save Harry. Petunia said tremblingly, he was taken away by a little. No, an ugly little man. It was just right. Before you arrive. Elf? Xia Ran asked. Aunt Petunia nodded, then shook her head. Xia Ran didn't care, but said, since he was rescued by the elf, Harry should be safe for the time being, but his relatives. Several people immediately breathed a sigh of relief. I'm afraid you have to leave Privet Drive. Lupin looked at the Desleys and said, I'm afraid such attacks will happen again in the future, because you are Harry's relatives, and in the eyes of the Dark Wizard, you are forcing Harry to the best person to show up. 
Xia Ran clearly noticed that Vernon Desley's expression suddenly became extremely confused. Chapter 268 Whether you believe it or not, the kinship is here. For Death Eaters, this is a plan after all. Xia Ran said, waving her wand and repairing various broken furniture. In the end, the Desley family of three reluctantly accepted the arrangement of the Order of the Phoenix. Someone else from the Order of the Phoenix came to take the Desley family away from Privet Drive. Xia Ran and the others said a few words to Mrs. Fig before phantoming again. Disapparated back to Hogwarts and informed everyone about the incident at Privet Drive, which undoubtedly made everyone angry. But they didn't have much time to blame Snape, because the situation deteriorated rapidly with the death of Dumbledore. It seemed that dark wizards came out from all directions in one day, appearing everywhere they could name. Place. Xia Ran, we need to find Harry, Harry Potter. Mr. Weasley said to Xia Ran, he is the person mentioned in the prophecy, the old enemy of the mysterious man, we must find him. And he is the only one it's too dangerous for people to live in exile, it's really too dangerous. At this time, Dumbledore's corpse had been buried. Many wizards who came to attend the funeral had left Hogwarts. Only some Hogwarts faculty and staff or members of the Order of the Phoenix remained in the auditorium. Xia Ran was thinking about what time to dig the grave in the middle of the night. After listening to Mr. Weasley's words, she said, the elf who took Harry away was Dobby. I recognize him. He will protect Harry well. If necessary, I believe Harry will find you all too. The problem is. Lupin smiled bitterly, you have all seen this situation. The Death Eaters will never let Harry go. Will he be willing to find us and bring us danger? Danger? Sirius shouted, I will protect him. It doesn't matter whether he is in danger or not. Many in attendance nodded. Lupin took the trouble to say, I said, this is not a question of what we think or think, but what will Harry think? Now Sirius opened his mouth, but had nothing to say. He knew Harry and knew that Harry would not be willing to bring danger to others. If he knew that he was the target of Voldemort and the Death Eaters, he would definitely hide. If possible, Harry would never want to cause trouble. Any of them. Xia Ran finally made the final decision, Harry, we must continue to search, and we cannot let him live in exile and encounter all kinds of fatal dangers similarly, we must cooperate more closely with the Ministry of Magic. Now that the situation has worsened, Ms. Bones is also eager to the connection with our Order of the Phoenix is even closer. Kingsley, Tonks, and Arthur, you must be careful when staying in the Ministry of Magic. I believe the Death Eaters will definitely be willing to kill you and destroy the cooperation between us and the Ministry of Magic. He warned the three of them. Kingsley, Tonks, and Mr. Weasley all nodded solemnly. Now that Dumbledore has passed away, Xia Ran has demonstrated his powerful combat power, and he has become the new leader of the Order of the Phoenix. At the same time, Xia Ran also became the number one person ordered to be killed by Voldemort. Harry is the wizard that Voldemort wants to kill himself. No Death Eater has the right to kill Harry. This is the condition for Xia Ran and the others to safely implement this plan. I have to say that Voldemort helped them a lot. Because Dumbledore was dead, Voldemort took the stage completely and called on the wizards in the wizarding world to surrender to him. He did not want wizards to shed more blood. It is true that many wizarding families have defected to Voldemort. Fortunately, the Ministry of Magic is still continuing to resist. As the Minister of the Ministry of Magic, Ms. Amelia Bones has suffered numerous assassinations. Fortunately, because of the addition of the Order of the Phoenix, Amelia Bones in the end, they all escaped the assassination of Death Eaters. As for the assassination of the new leader of the Order of the Phoenix, Charon Fremont, although two plans and operations were carried out, both ended in killing people. Xia Ran publicly stated that unless Voldemort himself took action, any Death Eater who faced him would just be looking for death. This undoubtedly stabilized the Order's military morale. Originally, Dumbledore had passed away, Harry was missing, and there was no news. Even though they were determined to fight against Voldemort, deep down in their hearts they could not help but doubt whether they could succeed. Xia Ran, you did a great job. Dumbledore praised. 
He had been dug out of the grave by Xia Ran and was now staying in the Pig's Head pub in Hogsmeade Village. This is Aberforth's territory. So Aberforth naturally understood the plan of the three of them when Dumbledore came to visit. Dumbledore has been staying in the Pig's Head bar recently, chatting with the portrait of Ariana hanging on the wall. He seems to have relaxed for a long time, staying with his family. The responsibilities he originally needed to bear have been temporarily handed over to Xiao. But on the shoulders. Aberforth was sarcastic to himself, but Dumbledore always smiled and didn't seem to mind at all. How is Harry? Aberforth asked, wiping his glass and pretending not to care. Dumbledore smiled, Dobby accompanied him, they also found Miss Hermione Granger, and even Mr. Ron Weasley joined the group, of course, Arthur and Molly were not allowed you know. Ron also seems to not want his parents to be completely involved, even if the Weasleys are already being targeted by Death Eaters, Harry and his friends are doing fine, and I'm sure he'll make up his mind eventually. Aberforth, have a glass of beer. Xia Ran said. Aberforth grumbled and brought him a beer glass. Xia Ran said, I'm afraid Voldemort is about to find traces of the Elder Wand. Dumbledore, it's not far away from him digging your grave. Dumbledore's face straightened and he said, the final battle must be launched as soon as possible. He is a trump card and must appear after Voldemort personally kills Harry, otherwise Voldemort may not reveal any flaws to them. Especially the big snake Nagini, which is also Voldemort's horcrux and must be eliminated before the final battle. I informed Snape, just in the last few days. He went to capture Harry, took him to find Voldemort, and encouraged Voldemort to attack Hogwarts as planned. Harry's body will be a good bargaining chip, then it's also the time for Harry to be resurrected, Xia Ran said. Sure enough, three days later, Hermione and Ron found the burrow, with sad expressions and a shaky elf Dobby. They brought sad news. Harry was captured by Snape. Then Voldemort announced to the wizarding world that he would take Hogwarts as a base for dark wizards to develop the power he recognized, and he would take Harry Potter's body with him. The wizarding world is in mourning. The Aurors and ministers of the Ministry of Magic all personally went to battle, as well as members of the Order of the Phoenix, all gathered at Hogwarts a few hours in advance. They understood that the fall of Hogwarts really meant that Voldemort was in power and would no longer be able to do anything. Suppressed. Chapter, 269 Before sunset, Xia Ran stood in the corner of Hogwarts Castle, overlooking the setting sun in the west. Countless wizards came in and out of the castle below, and the atmosphere was very solemn, waiting for the arrival of Voldemort and his followers, the Death Eaters. He looked at his system panel. Age, 30 years old. Magic, level 7 elementary. Force points, 0 points. Transfiguration, Level 7 Elementary. Charms, Level 7 Advanced. Flying, Level 6 Elementary. His magic power, including transfiguration and conjuration levels, has reached the legendary level of Level 7. When Xia Ran was digging Dumbledore's grave, she finally absorbed the force points contained in the Elder Wand, which were far more than the Invisibility Cloak and the Resurrection Stone. After all, an Elder Wand was half the history of its rise and fall. How many duels and the rise or death of famous wizards naturally contain a lot of force points? In addition, he also took the opportunity to rush to the Ministry of Magic to discuss important matters with Amelia Bones. He touched the original copy of the Reasonable Restraint of Minor Wizards Act and absorbed a lot more. Force points. That's why he was able to jump to level 7. In particular, the level of charms has been raised to level 7 advanced, which is only one step away from level 8. Xia Ran asked herself that in a head-on confrontation with Voldemort, it was not certain who would win and who would lose. It's just that Voldemort has too many backups, and all of his horcruxes must be destroyed. Only in this way can Voldemort be truly killed. Otherwise, it will just be another recurrence of what happened more than 10 years ago. The task of destroying the Hufflepuff Gold Cup in the Lestrange family vault of Gringotts was given to Dumbledore. He is a dead person and has super strength. He can break through Gringotts. Blockade and protection, forcefully break into the underlying vault to eliminate the fragments of Voldemort's soul in the Hufflepuff Gold Cup. 
then Dumbledore rushed back to participate in the final battle. Xia Ran needs to hold on to the period ahead. Snapped. 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 Countless explosions came from outside Hogwarts. Voldemort and Death Eaters, as well as werewolves, giants, vampires, dementors and other dark creatures who followed him all arrived at Hogwarts. Charon Fremont, I heard that you want to fight me. A high-pitched, cold, and cruel voice resounded in everyone's mind, and a black shadow flew out of the Death Eater army and came to Hua Hua. The Edge of Gwart's Shield Hogwarts has been placed under protective spells by many wizards. Xia Ran also flew in the air without using any external objects, such as broomsticks, etc. He stood dozens of meters away from Voldemort and swept a circle below. His appearance undoubtedly boosted the morale of the White Wizard. After all, Xia Ran was the one they saw. The second wizard who can fly out of thin air, the first is Voldemort opposite. Snape stood at the forefront of the Death Eater army, and he had obviously caught the eye of Voldemort. He was stared at with hatred by countless wizards. Harry Potter seemed to be really dead, being held in the arms of a strong wizard with a sneer on his face. Oh, no. Many wizards cried out in pain. This undoubtedly made the Death Eaters even happier. Xia Ran glanced around and saw the big snake Nagini hovering on the side of the Death Eater army. He glanced at Snape, and Snape smiled. Everyone thought Snape was ridiculing, the Death Eaters were satisfied, and the Ministry of Magic and the Order of the Phoenix became increasingly angry. Only Xia Ran knew that Snape told Xia Ran that he was sure to kill the big snake Nagini. Now that you have the opportunity, you can start immediately. Xia Ran held the wand in her hand, looked at Voldemort, and said with a smile, Voldemort, your career will expire as of today. Dumbledore is dead, and Harry Potter is dead. Who else can stop me? Is it just you, Charlene Fremont? Voldemort said coldly, and waved a green light from the tip of his wand. Hitting the Hogwarts shield hard. Everyone was horrified to see that the protective shield reinforced by many wizards was shattered by Voldemort alone. Kill. All those who resist. Voldemort ordered cruelly. The Death Eaters roared excitedly. Suddenly, Snape waved his wand and hit the wizard holding Harry Potter. Harry fell to the ground, got up, and ran to the inside of Hogwarts. This turn of events was beyond everyone's expectations. No one knows why Snape rebelled again, and no one knows why Harry Potter is still alive. Snape ran to the side of the woods, and some Death Eaters chased him. Some Death Eaters fired curses at Harry Potter, regardless of the orders given by Voldemort. Harry, be careful. People from the Order of the Phoenix and the Ministry of Magic came forward in surprise. Harry turned around and seemed to see several spells that seemed to be hitting him, but he was deflected by another spell and passed him by. That spell was cast by Draco Malfoy and Lucius Malfoy. Fu seemed taken aback and looked at his son blankly. Narcissa Malfoy took out her wand to protect her family. But at this time, no Death Eaters were paying attention to the Malfoy family anymore. They had already started a war with the Order of the Phoenix and the Wizards from the Ministry of Magic. Harry looked at Draco Malfoy and looked away, feeling secretly grateful. Harry, you're okay, that's great. Hermione hugged Harry and shed tears. Ron, Ginny, Neville, Luna, and the rest of the Weasley family, including Percy, have proven their identities, and Sharon personally came forward. In the end, the Weasleys are proud of him. Okay, kids, stop chatting. This is a battlefield. Stay back. Sirius was equally surprised, but he knew what he should do at this time. He shouted like a group of young wizards and followed the other adult wizards to the Death Eaters rushed. Are we going to retreat? Fred asked playfully. We're going to the war too. George replied. A group of wizards who had not yet graduated or had just graduated joined forces to deal with the Death Eaters. In the sky, Voldemort was furious. Snape actually betrayed him. At the same time, he felt a little uneasy in his heart. Why was he still unable to kill Harry Potter? When he was furious, a green light had already shot out, and Xia Ran would not give him a chance to launch magic spells at the crowd below. 
Voldemort raised his wand to fight back against Xia Ran, and said coldly, Xia Ran Fremont, don't think that you can possess my strength just because you pretended to be me once. I am unique. Really? Xia Ran sneered, you are so arrogant. Voldemort failed even though he failed to wake him up completely. He and Voldemort launched a fierce battle in the sky. Various powerful spells were fired everywhere, forcing the wizards below to retreat into the Forbidden Forest or enter Hogwarts Castle in a tacit agreement. At this moment, Voldemort screamed in pain, feeling that a fragment of his soul was destroyed, followed by another burst of pain, and another fragment of his soul was also destroyed. Dumbledore and Snape have already succeeded. Xia Ran was overjoyed, and of course she would not let go of such an excellent opportunity. A green light hit Voldemort. Voldemort froze, his face twisted, looking at Xia Ran in disbelief. But in the end, he fell into the dust from the sky, making a loud banging sound. This scene was seen by many wizards who were fighting fiercely. Whether they were wizards from the Ministry of Magic, members of the Order of the Phoenix, Death Eaters, or Dark Creatures, they were all stunned. Voldemort. Is dead. Was he killed by Charon Fremont in a head-to-head -head confrontation? Everyone suspected that they had seen it wrong, but Voldemort's body lay on the ground and never moved again. Xia Ran flew high into the sky and began to help others kill the Death Eaters. The Death Eaters were instantly defeated, especially after a loud explosion, and the long-dead Dumbledore reappeared. The Death Eaters finally understood that the situation was over and began to surrender to the Ministry of Magic and the Order of the Phoenix. In this wizarding war, the Ministry of Magic and the Order of the Phoenix won a great victory. The subsequent trials of the surviving Death Eaters, as well as related aftermath matters, as well as some liquidation work, are all matters of the Ministry of Magic. The Order of the Phoenix has been disbanded. Under Dumbledore's order, all members of the Order of the Phoenix all returned to their duties. And Snape was cleared of his grievances and was hailed as the best undercover. He, of course, continued to be the potion's master at Hogwarts. Xia Ran is known as the most powerful wizard in the magic world today. Killing Voldemort in a head-on confrontation was something that even Dumbledore had never accomplished. Everyone was impressed by Xia Ran's terrifying strength. He later resigned from the job of Professor of Combat, the post of Headmaster of Hogwarts was taken over by Minerva McGonagall, Deputy Headmistress and Professor of Transfiguration. Dumbledore retired, traveling around the world, only in some relationships come back at nice people's weddings, such as Lupin and Tonk's wedding, Bill and Fleur's wedding, Ron married Hermione, Ginny married Harry, etc. Peace and tranquility have been restored to the magical world. End of book.